this. These, these are always so fun to do, actually, because every year you just like getting like your pose or whatever, and they had like the funny like green screens. That, I mean, it was pretty sick as a kid, you know? I'm just like, yeah, I want the flames. Like, that would be so sick. So I loved that as a kid. Oh yeah, this was uh, my first MLG that I went to with my StarCraft team. The, these, these are awesome guys, by the way. I think, I don't even remember how old I was in this picture. Maybe like 13 or 14. When StarCraft came out, I mainly just wanted to be a pro player. I just like saw like how fun it was and how like big the scale was. And I never cared what game I was playing. I just wanted to be a pro. I just knew that I wanted to be a pro in gaming. I didn't really care what game it was. There was just like a point where I didn't really, I just felt like a lot more frustration than I did uh, like advancing. And since I played Counter-Strike my whole life, I kind of just like went to it after like one of the WCS qualifiers uh, that didn't go so well. And yeah, that's pretty much like what my thought process was. This was my first international LAN. And I remember we played F Fnatic the first game or something and we just got like smashed. Like I remember this tournament, we just got smashed. Like NACS was not even close to the level that it is like even now. We had Fugly on the left, Nitro, Daps, Adren, and me. This was the first time that I ever like left, uh, left the States. I mean, I thought that it was fun. I just felt like I was in one of those like British movies. I'm just like, dang, look at all these buildings. It looks all fancy. There's like gold on like the buildings and stuff. We went to Buckingham Palace and there's gold on the gates. I'm like, geez, man, this actually feels like a movie. That was when we got to the finals uh, at Cologne. We got, we got to the finals. We played super well in all the other matches. We you know, had crazy upsets against like Fnatic and Na'Vi. And Simple wasn't even technically part of the team. He was just standing in and yeah, in the finals, we just got absolutely obliterated by SK. So <laughs> wasn't the best ending to the story, but still a really good result for us. Oh, this was uh, I Buy Power. I mean, it wasn't the best LAN ever because there wasn't like the craziest teams there, but us like finally getting a win over Astralis felt really good, especially for like our new lineup. We just got uh, Stewie on the team and we were feeling really good about it, even though, you know, people could say all the tech issues of like the LAN was like a factor, but I think that's always just cope. I think that you can always still win and like the best teams usually do win. Still a really good land for us and I'm happy that we were able to get like that first win over Astralis under our belt. This was sick. I remember in 2019, like as soon as we got these jerseys, you just know that we're gonna win. Like I thought that those were our coolest jerseys by far on Liquid. I love those ones. It felt sick and we were just like on a roll. That's probably the best way that you could win the Grand Slam is like in Cologne. Any of like the historic uh, venues where you can just see like the depth of the crowd, how many people are there is just makes it so epic. And it was such a cool memory. So yeah, this is uh, my brother on the right, my cousin in the middle, uh, my mom to the left. It's so nice when you're at an event that like people can go to from your family, especially being from the US, like we just don't have a lot of events and you can't always get like all your family coming compared to if you lived in Europe. So it's always nice whenever anyone can come uh, support. So this is Munira, this is my girlfriend. Uh, love her so much. We just met like in a mutual friend group that just like played CS together and just naturally just grew, grew closer as we played more. We play all the same spots. So whenever we puck together, it's always like a battle of like, does she want to let me just play my spot or do I let her play her spot? And I play like the op spot or something like that. So we play like literally all the same positions, but I'd say that she's probably the best on Mirage. I think that like that's probably like her comfort map that she ha she knows like everything that's going on in that map. Hello everybody, welcome back to the lobby. That's right. This is going to be the group stage. We're going to have new teams coming in, fresh faces. Everybody's getting ready to play. So, where is everybody? Let's go take a look. Hey Kerrigan, this is what it looks like, right? When uh, when when I'm interviewing you, is this what it looks like? Exactly. I don't know. Like, do you look down normally when you answer Kerrigan? Yes. So you got your wristband, you're safe. Uh, yeah, I can get back in. Okay. What are you guys doing right now? Can I follow you or what? Yeah, Let's go. Oh, I follow you. No, I follow you. I follow you. No, but you're the IGL, so I gotta like follow you, oh, right? No, I bait. Okay. New style. Fair enough. 2024. Rain, talk to me about what it's like, um, you know, being a dad and stuff. Oh, it's cool, very cool. Some like a sleep, but other than that, it's, it's very fun. How much sleep would you say you get on average at home? Actually, he's doing pretty good at the moment. It's like 12 hours straight. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Whose man's is this? Okay, well that's uh, that's cool. Did you learn anything from being a dad so far that you uh, maybe take with you, tell your friends? Maybe don't do it. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> do it, guys. Do it. Become dads. Yeah. Uh, I have to agree as a dad myself. So. Straight away. What are we playing here, Rain? I'm not sure. 
It doesn't work, nothing. If you've just been sitting here pressing the buttons yeah, and it's, it's not even... Show him this screen the entire time. Yeah, this looks all jacked up, bro. I can't even... Huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll let him figure that out because obviously he's a little lost in his own sauce over here. And that's Rain from FaZe Clan. Let's see who else we can bother. Returning G2 champion, technically. Technically, yeah. Yeah. Uh, is that something you guys have talked about this week? Obviously, I mean, it's it's been a year, a uh, completely different squad. Um, is it something that's on your mind? It's huge shoes to fill. We got to be real, right? Yeah, of course. It's a really big uh, shoes to fill. Um, I think Katowice in general is one of the special tournaments even for me. I think my first S-tier event that I made the grand finals of is actually Katowice back then with G2. And I know for the guys it meant a lot because they played, I think, three grand finals. I mean, at least Hunter did before he actually got to win one. So coming back here, I know they, they want to defend the title and I'm going to do my best to help them. Are you a little jealous of the teams that got to start with the play-in to kind of hit the ground and warm up? Or or what's your mind of that? Have you been keeping an eye on the play-in? Hell no, hell no. I've been through play-in for yeah. Katowice and Cologne for the last two years. I'm not jealous at all. Okay, so you got the life of luxury. You're coming in as the returning champion. Yeah. You're coming in straight to the group stage. Uh, life is good for Nexa. Yeah, exactly. Vibes at an all-time high? Yeah, of course. That's why I'm here, for the vibes. Yeah, all for the vibes. All right, we're going to find your other teammates, bro. Good luck out there. Thank you. Look good. Monas, you got a second? Okay, come here, bro. I got a quick question for you. Obviously, we've been seeing the play-in. Donk is here, right? Donk is a player who I think is looking up to somebody like you. Young, when you hit the ground, obviously different styles of player. But what's something in terms of advice that you would have for a player like Donk? What an advice I would give to him. I think to not stop playing like he's playing, to not uh, overthink, and he will continue destroying people. He's, he's playing really good. Just do not, don't stop and uh, believe in yourself. Believe in yourself, yeah. Because if you, if, if you don't believe in yourself, nobody can believe in you. Is that good advice? Yeah, don't go away with this confidence that you have right now, and uh, everything will be good. Uh, all right. <laughs> Does he make you a little nervous? No, no, of course not. But, it, but I mean, he talks so much smack, man. He's always yelling. All right. Every single round from the start to the end, he's loud, he's rowdy. It, it kind of feels like Donk is showing up and wants to take people out. Don't you feel like you're on his list? I don't know. Sometimes it's funny to hear what he's scream screaming because I understand what he's, he's screaming. And uh, it's also funny that he's screaming like this, you know, <laughs> you cannot just look at this without smiling, you know, I don't know. But people, some people saying it's annoying, some people saying it's too much, but I don't think it's too much and it's annoying. It's just like, it's good that players are scream screaming, you know, like, it's uh, eSport, so don't bully him. Yeah, I feel like uh, it's a kid that's living his dream, man. Let him enjoy it. Of course, he's enjoying CS, he's enjoying his, like, just playing playing on, the, on his first big land, so just let him play, bro. You're really good right now, all right? Nobody can seem to stop Monacy, and we had this, this, this interview with Nico not long ago who said, uh, you know, Monacy one day will be the best player on this G2 team. Are you going to do it here in Kato? I'm playing not bad. Can be better still, and... Uh, Let's let's find out. Did you get all that, Tess? Is this overwhelming? We're in the middle of a media day. You're being barked around, orders left and right and center. I, I, I mean, how, how are you handling all this, man? Is this a young man's game? Yeah, it's it's tough, you know. But it's not my first time. So you're still all good. Back in Katowice, must bring back memories. Floods them, actually. Yeah, I mean, uh, actually, last times we were here, we didn't have good success as VP. So I hope that uh, this time it's be better. Yeah, just forget about the bad times. Think only about the good times. Bring that in. Um, how I saw you as a bodyguard at the HLTV award show. Uh, can you do every possible job that's out there? I, I'm, I will do whatever is needed for a team to win. So if they need me to bodyguard uh, Ilya, I'm here. Okay, that's good to know. Uh, it feels like Donk maybe has Ilya in his crosshairs. Uh, young player, obviously Donk. Um, somebody who's so influential, I think, in just like everybody's kind of hyping him up. Everybody wants to see great things from him. Um, do you see a little bit of yourself in him as an older man when it comes to such a young, fresh player? He doesn't remember. I, I think I think he doesn't remember. I think it looks uh, a little bit different when yeah. I was streaming. When I was screaming, it kind of was more like uh, intimidating. Okay. When he's screaming, it's more like, hey, yo, bro, just chill. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's how it looks for me. It's because your stature's changed, bro. Maybe, maybe. But it's also his size and the screams. Like, the screams are bigger than his size. And uh, it's yeah. kind of like, yeah. Uh, it's, it's cool. It's cool. If, if it helps him, then, then I'm looking forward to playing against them. Look at all these guys walking, watching you, man. They're all inspired by you, Taz. E each and every one of them. They look up to you and they want to be the returning champions. 
Can you do this? Can you bring them to the top? I mean, it's uh, part their job, part my job. Uh, if I inspire them, they inspire me as well because, you know, they are a great team, great players, and uh, they're in different parts of their careers. And uh, I just want to help them to, you know, break even further. It's always a pleasure. It's always a pleasure. See you around, brother. That's G2. Hey, man. What's good? Official comment? Or are you busy? Or I'm not busy. I just finished uh, an interview, but my team also have some stuff, so I have a... Uh, 10 minutes of uh, free time. Perfect, man. Well, here, you go in this way, I'll walk with you. Come on, please. Yeah, see, that way the cameraman has to walk backwards. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Making his life harder. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they like that, though. That's why they edit videos all the time, yeah. because no one. Your watch, your step, watch your step, yeah. watch your step, watch your step, watch your step. Don't uh, die. <laughs> please. <laughs> Not today. So, dude, what's, uh, what's good? How are you feeling in Katowice? Like, it's kind of cold outside, but how are you feeling? Well, uh, I know a lot of players don't like Katowice. Like, they like the tournament, mm -hmm. but they're not a fan of the, maybe the city, the weather, the hotel, especially the order food part, it's uh, making life difficult. But uh, I actually like Katowice. Uh, I think yeah. it's nice. Yeah, I think it's nice. I like, uh, I like coming to this tournament. Even in the cold? I'm not a fan of the cold, yeah. but we've been to Denmark, yeah. so we can handle everything. Fair enough. Sorry. Right, so, what do you have planned today? There's media day. Obviously, we say all that, like uh, the normal run through of media stuff. What about? Uh, sorry, Rain's trying to ruin your interview. What about? Uh, what about you though? Like, what do you do on a day like today after you get done talking to a camera over and over and over? You say the same thing, or you don't multiple times. Uh, you know, how do you look at this day and then get ready for the next? Well, first of all, we also have a practice today, so okay. our staff team is not uh, letting us go so easily. Uh huh. But uh, uh, this day for me it will be usually May the day. You finish May the day, maybe you chill a bit, and then you have some practice with the team. Okay. And then it will be mostly like individual, like performance, like working kinda. We will, I will probably play face it. Mm -hmm. So I, I assume some of my teammates will join because. Uh, what else are they gonna do? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I, I think it will be just practice and then some face, just some face it to keep the form. Yeah, as long as you got a plan of something to do, uh, that's mm -hmm. that's good. You keep your hands busy. They say idle hands are the devil. I don't know who said that. I didn't say that, but somebody said that. Uh, so I'm looking at this and I'm sitting here thinking like, you know, that we have a new game in CS2, new, right? And it's been out for a couple months. You know, there's been a, you know, a bunch of plays and, and gameplay to be reviewed. What do you like or dislike about it now in its current iteration? And be honest now, just tell these people, don't worry, the internet is forever. Overall, I like CS2. Sorry, Rain's playing on a on a ping pong. Or a, yeah. Sponge needed coffee, guys. He oh just needed, it. so it's fine. But uh, I overall I like CS2. One thing that I really miss is the other maps of the community, like other mods uh -huh. you can have, Savski, Jailbreak, what's like whatever people prefer. Because I remember, for me, because before I was like professional CS player. Yeah. I just enjoyed this mod so much. It was so nice to play yeah. South or Jailbreak with your friends. Or this kind Soccer of Jam, maybe? Or maybe that's a little older, sorry. Soccer Jam of 1.6? Yeah. I played it a bit, but it's so long ago. I'm, uh, I don't uh, remember it that much. Well, here you go. Here's one for you. Just the other day at a pub server, I was playing D-Rats. You remember Rats? We played it as a team. Oh, really? Yeah, we took... Uh, what tournament? It was one of the... I think it was in World Finals. Because okay. it's, uh, you don't have many servers there, mm -hmm. and we are like... <laughs> so you played rats. <laughs> we, we, we wanted like, what, what do we do? Yeah. And then uh, lot, someone suggested, that let's, like, we started like, with the map just to have fun. And then uh, someone suggested this map, the rat. And uh, we just put like high gravity. Everyone yeah. has a scout only. Oh. Three v three with x on one team. And we just play three v three against each other. And it was, I think it was one hour of fun. Were there any sort of ramifications, like, was there something that would happen if someone got knifed or tased? Was there any sort of, like, you know, payment or punishment for that? Uh, I think the punishment would be you are, like, embarrassed in front of the team because we are, we are making fun of you. I need a job, mate. Oh, hey, Chad, good morning to you. That's Chad Burchell. Uh, look, uh, I was hoping if I could get an apology from you, mate. Uh, the other day, uh, <laughs> queuing in the face at me, Justin Aaron. Uh, Israeli five stack trace, Flamesy on the other side, Shushan in the server. You got dunked on. Uh, just out trying to enjoy my day, I have a couple of enjoyable faces, you know, up against the five stack. Uh, First game of the day for you? 
I will say it was. I don't know if it was. Uh, <laughs> but I will say it did ruin my entire day. And then oh. I had the same thing happen yesterday with a Danish five sack. So, you know, how do you feel about ruining an old man's day? Uh, I like it. <laughs> no, but it's my stuff. They make us, they say, you need to play, guys. You need to do this and this. What other way to play than five stack face it against five stack? Uh... Well, we weren't five stack, man. We, it was just, it was only, th actually, there was four of us. We've made a Serbian <laughs> friend. We've made a Serbian friend, Can Foos, out there, if he's watching. Uh, it's hard for me, Aaron, and Justin to make friends. People don't like Australians overseas mm -hmm. for some reason. And I hate to hear that for you, Chad. But also... Yeah, you need to find some friends to play with. Yeah, you can that's... come forward on five stack if you want next. Yo, that's Elo right there. That's Elo. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Everybody. All right, everybody, and break. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. What's up, gentlemen? How are we this morning? Brilliant. Fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic. I, I bind to that so well when you say it, I believe it. Ah, you fucking fuck. It's so close there. I hope we got the audio on that. We, I need a sound bite of that, like as a text tone or something. How you doing, man? Brilliant. Delightful. <laughs> really delightful. <laughs> Yeah, just change, just copy my homework, just change it up a little bit, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, yeah, I was just sitting here talking to Spinks. He was saying you guys have to play pugs and stuff. And then Chad is on the receiving end of that sponge, right? So. Oh, did you play with us? Huh? Yeah, so we played, I don't know if you played with us. We played against JKS, Sponge, and AZR. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you played with us? No, I didn't. I, I, I it was, it was like an Israeli stack with, uh, with some, some international guy. I don't know who. How'd that go for him? Uh, for a Chad? Well, I actually won a 1v2, I think. Okay. But we were a bit trolling. Uh, but we owned him, of course. And uh, JKS was really bad as well, so... Well-deserved <laughs> ban from G2. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. Demon won now. And on that note, do you want to drop this microphone or do you <laughs> want to... <laughs> no, no, I'm, jo I'm joking. It was just, you know, you come against five players that are professional. Yeah. You're a caster and a little TV confirmed person. Like, a, how do you call it? Like a, a media person. Uh, I mean, there's words like talent get used. I personally, I don't know. I don't like that word personally, but... Yeah, that, I mean to describe us as talent. Like, I mean, you guys are talent. Yes, but we're you, talent. You're also talented because, yeah. like, you, you know how to hold the mic, you know how to talk to people, you know to to bring words that you know to 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 longer the essay. You know what I mean? True. Yeah. Sometimes. Well, thank you for that. Yeah, no problem. So, so, and then he played with AZR, which he didn't play professional for wow, like long time. Yes. Yeah, so, so it was f fair enough, and they did play good. So, no, no blame to Chad. I, I just wanted a bit of uh, mean YouTube uh, YouTube uh, words. So, uh, you know, Mr. Mezzi, you're, you know, you're, you're on everybody's minds from the UK, at least. Um, so in that notion, tell me what it's like playing over here with Vitality, but moreover, what do you hate about it the most? What do you hate? I didn't say that, did I? Yeah, I said that. You there's, yeah. there's nothing to hate. Everyone is beautiful human beings. <laughs> it's, it's fun playing with this guy. You, you see the way he articulates himself, uh, uh -huh. the way he speaks. It's just, it's fun playing with these guys. Articulate. So. Yeah. Yes. You know, there's a there's like class clowns and jokers and yeah. stuff. I think that helps a team's vibe. Is that is that fair to say? Yeah, I mean, there's a, a lot of clowns in this team. I think. So. <laughs> <laughs> Are we just clowning all the time? Okay. You want to go to Fnatic? <laughs> no, no I don't think so. <laughs> Damn. All right. Well, uh, that looks like a fun conversation for you two at another time, <laughs> gentlemen. See you around. You, you are lucky um, as fuck. <laughs> yeah, I'm struggling, but we're winning. So. <laughs> <laughs> is is not good on CS2? Just shut the fuck up. Like, number for real. First stage. What's up, baby? Let's talk shit, boys. Welcome to Five Stack. I'm, I'm joined by Vitality, obviously. You guys have been through so many like roster changes over the past year. Obviously, Flames coming in, Mezzi coming in, new coach coming in, X-Taz. What's it been like? Because you guys are still winning. Like, you guys, it doesn't seem like you have lost a step through any of these changes, which is crazy. We lucky, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Just lucky. No, I think, um, I think what, what, what happened in 2023... Uh, during the world you helped us to grow a, a strong trio, I would yeah. say, between uh, Zaiwu, Spinks, and me. Um, we understand that the, we, I mean, we grew up together in some sense uh, in the game uh, as 2022 has been, uh, has been really rough. So I think we just, uh, we just improved together and uh, we had like a, a strong like idea how to play CS, yeah. how to, to build things out, outside of the server as well with uh, back then with uh, Zonic and Lars. And it helped us to to get into uh, films into it without any problem. Yeah, the guy was uh, easy to play with. Was uh, I think um, in terms of just pure firepower and pure like just enjoyment of Counter Strike, it was an upgrade from Dupree. And in those areas, obviously in big games, uh, Dupree was so important and and etc. But uh, we felt like uh, he could uh, fill the gap. Those are big uh, shoes to fill. Yeah, how's that been? Um, 
Well, well, right now it's not my, uh, like, it's not something I, I think about that much. And back then it was also something that I, I didn't really think about. Yeah. I was just like excited to have the opportunity to play on stage and, you know, maybe win some events and eventually sure. it came. But uh, I think I, like, I felt that everybody takes more responsibility or like, at least like, I felt the experience from Dan, from a, a meal back then, from yeah. a two, from lot, and everybody was charming in a lot towards to, that to help. And uh, that's where my firepower came from as well, that I, I could rely on the people uh, beside me as well. Yeah. Um, it, uh, but it, it didn't, I didn't think about, you know, like... Didn't feel the pressure of stepping into Dupree shoes, yeah. joining a team that had just won a major. Yeah. I didn't think about that. I just okay. wanted to play. What about you? You got your mind on that at all? Nah, not really. I think, um, I think it was a bit different, but I think for me it was just... Obviously, it was a bit of a surprise getting the offer in the first place. Sure. Um, Obviously, these guys were... They want me. They really like me. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I think um, it's not something I focus on too much. I think it's it was it always going to be an impossible job to fill the shoes of, like, Majiska. What player can fill the, those shoes? I think one of the best anchors, if not the best anchor in the world, and four-time major winner, and it, it, the list goes on. So I think for me, it's, there's no point focusing on this. Um, and just focusing on myself as new roles, <laughs> new things to focus on within this team. And like these guys said, they've got the, the core, which made it a lot easier for me to come in and like learn new things. Because I think in previous teams, like in Fnatic, I felt like I was getting a bit like stale in like my progression and right. not really going so far. And I was kind of at the same level. And I think now it's, I've got so much to learn and obviously takes a hit on performances sometimes, but I think it'll, in the future, it's only going to get better as well. well. For you two specifically, it had to be like kind of weird because as you mentioned, you come into a team and you feel like everyone's communicating and everyone kind of knows what to do and coming out of a team like OG that always felt a little disorganized and not at the same level and at a fanatic trying to like get this whole project going, you guys are stepping into a team that like no longer had some of these small issues. Like that was, that had to feel like, oh, this is nice. Yeah. You know, this is a lot more comfortable. Yeah, I think... You go, you go. No, I think... Uh, <laughs> Okay. Obviously, it's, obviously, it's different. <laughs> it's different for me because, especially coming in and winning the first two tournaments, it's like in previous teams, like in fact, like the expectation I think was never to win these tournaments, and obviously, we never did win any of these tournaments. Sure. So it's like the expectations for me also changed like so fast because you go into a team that expect to win and also have the firepower, have the teamwork and chemistry to actually win these events as well. So expectations and stuff change so quickly as well coming into this team. So it's. It's definitely different, but it's a, it's a good different as well. Yeah. I mean, for someone like you, because I feel like in your teams previously, you, you've done like in-game leadership, you've, you've been anchors. It feels like you've played so many roles, like so adaptable. Is it fun having oh, like a player like that? Yeah. You could do everything. Like, <laughs> <laughs> coming from you as well. Is, I mean, is that, that's got to be like a cool feeling, for, especially for you, Apex, where you're like, this guy's so malleable. Like I can use him in so many different ways and you can, you can try and find solutions because he's, he's got such a well-rounded game. Well, to be honest... Um, of course, everyone know that uh, we wanted Twist first, and uh, because he was uh, like, uh, I mean, he's a legendary player. Yeah. Um, role wise, I mean, he can do a lot of things as well. And, Skill, uh, yeah. But uh, like William was really like the second, the second choice. Um, also, Twist was for free. Uh, yeah. He had no, no contract and everything. William was the second choice because of what you said. I think for me, when I watched him play, it was really my focus because I really liked that he had this experience of being. Just not a player, not an in-game leader only, but he did everything. He did yeah. the entry, he did the encode, he did the rotation, he did the in-game leading. And I really liked that in him. And I just felt like in Fnatic, he couldn't like show his full potential mm -hmm. in some sense. I felt it was a bit um, like um, he needed more consistent. Sometimes he did just one game by himself. Sometimes he was like done, done, uh, pretty down. And I just felt like he had so much potential that we could bring into the team because what happened is that I really didn't want myself to change anything in the team. Yeah. I just tried to get a piece into the team. Sure. Uh, not one for one, as we said, not Magis for Messi exactly, because we changed some things. Mm -hmm. uh, Messi's playing different uh, different way than than, uh, than uh, Magis. Um, yeah, William playing different way than Magis, but what was important is that I, I also liked the way that Magis also had also this experience as in-game leader. He was also... The, he could do like some aggressive, some passive, and I, it's just really good to have a role player in your team. Uh, and that's why I think uh, picking up uh, William was like just key for that because yeah, sure. he is able to do a lot of things and that just uh, really enjoyable for in, in game leader. Yeah. Intel Extreme Masters Katowice is brought to you in part by Intel, Acer, Predator. 
DHL, Monster Energy, the United States Air Force, One X Bets, and White Market. Jason, yeah. this is no pity party. I know, I know we had a long day yesterday, but come on, come on. This is the Hall of Heroes. This is where legacies built. I don't think Zonic was coming in yesterday and thinking, uh, oh yeah, I'll just turn up and play some games. No, he was saying 10-2 is the most dangerous scoreline. He really, really was. When I say Caddo, you say Witzer. Caddo. Witzer. Caddo. Witzer. Caddo. Witzer. Let's get this on. Three, two, one. <laughs> Oh yeah, we are back and we mean serious business today because that elimination already beckoning in our first game on the A-Stream at you. You're right, Coach. It's going to be Vitality versus Heroic. We are going to be both at the edge of our seat. Survival is the name of the game and I need to see a reaction from Sphinx. On the inverse, uh, either G2 or Ents are guaranteed to be making it through to the Spro deck. That's, uh, That's a nice little for one of them. That is sick and I love the Hooksy versus Glade matchup. There's so much history going into this matchup and we'll have to see how it goes. Eternal Fire versus Na'Vi. Now that's just a simply a question of surviving the gauntlet. Two teams on quite different paths at the moment. Who are you taking in that one, Matthew? Well, the namesake might go towards Navi, but I actually disagree. I think Eternal Fire have shown better Counter-Strike, Zentaris, Waikiria. They've given me enough to believe in an upset here. They've been looking absolutely red hot. That concludes the A stream side of things. So uh, what's going down on the B stream? That huddle has got me feeling thank you, Pump. And yeah. on the B stream, I'm super hyped because we have two elimination games, which are always really tense. Complexity up against Falcons. And then we've also got Monty going up against Cloud9. How do you think those are going to play out? I think Cloud9 is going to win that game against Monty. However, it's probably going to be close as Cloud9 have been struggling. I think Falcon's complexity is going to be super interesting. Two teams who are struggling a bit, but if I have to pick one, I'd go with Falcons. There we go. And then, spot in the Spodic, up for grabs. It is Miles up against Gamer Legion, who Who's going there? I don't think anyone saw Gamer Legion play that well throughout the tournament. I, I must have been very, very surprised by them every single time I've seen them play. However, I do think Mouse is a better team, better individual, so I'm going to go with Mouse. There you go. You got it straight from Pimp. And now, Freya with our top stories. <laughs> All right. <laughs> 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 Yeah, that's the question. How exactly did we get to these matches that we find ourselves in today? Day number six here at IAM Katowice. I've got Steel joining me to go through the top stories of the day, or yesterday, I guess, technically. Cloud9 versus Mouse. Uh, that was a marathon of a game. Mouse coming out on top despite, you know, losing their star player. Frozen no longer in the mix, but uh, things looking pretty good for the Mouse squad, right? Yeah, things are looking pretty good. I, it was a bit of a nail-biter that last series on Ancient, especially in the triple overtime with the Oh man, it's like one of those matches that haunts you for years to come. You just have like the PTSD flashbacks. If I just hid for one more second at that pillar, we wouldn't be in this situation right now. So that's something that they're definitely going to be thinking about for a long time. Yeah, how do you think that leaves Cloud9, you know, in the long run for the rest of the groups? Because they're going to have to win uh, quite a few games to even just make it into the spot. Do you think they have the balls to do it, Steel? 
I think they do, but at the same time, they've looked really shaky. They got upset round one in the play-ins against Rebels, and from there, it was just like, okay, are they going to do it? Are they not? And then they go against Virtus Pro, and it's like, oh, maybe they can, but then Virtus Pro's sleeping, and then it's just like you never really know what you're going to get. It's every game something else is happening. The one good thing is like, well, Electronic's looking good again. <laughs> We want that. We definitely need that. We're demanding that from Cloud9 going forward. Uh, speaking of the teams that have actually made it through to the Spodek, we've got FaZe, we've got Spirit. First of all, Spirit, did you expect them to be making it through to the playoffs in this fashion, right? Not dropping a series. I didn't know exactly what to expect. I always have some base level hesitation of just fully buying into a new phenomenon. So when I saw this, I'm like, eh, I'm not sold yet. But then when I saw them play and how confident they were, in the fashion that they were winning the games in, I'm like, oh, you know what? I can get on this bandwagon. You know what? I can get on this train. How hot are the donk stonks looking right now, <laughs> The donk stonks are looking pretty hot right now. FaZe also making it through. Uh, surprises there, or does that, that, that make sense? Because they're one of the teams that's come into the groups, and we were kind of looking at the other teams that are, are doing good work, and they already had a warm-up in the play-ins, but, you know, FaZe, FaZe looking pretty, pretty decent. Yeah, I mean, FaZe have looked really solid, you know, even since uh, Sydney. They were looking really good there. They they won a, a bunch of events. The only thing that I was really gonna be like, eh, what's going on with FaZe was the whole minus twist plus frozen. Mm -hmm. How is that gonna slot in? Are they gonna change a lot of things up? But it looks like they're kind of playing everything the same way that they've always, business as usual type of thing. Well, two teams earning a spot in Spodek yesterday, but unfortunately for two more, uh, they're out, eliminated. That is Rebels and of course Apex. Um, I was surprised at how competitive the Apex and Na'Vi series was. We went to the full three maps, but was that off the back of, you know, Apex looking solid or was that Na'Vi looking bad? Which, which way would you take it? I would say Na'Vi's looked really bad this event so far. Not what you would expect from a team of their caliber. They really need to figure something out. I don't know if it's that they're playing too static, they're not innovating enough, or they're just like stuck in their ways or what it is. But I mean, I was just like from the start of the event thinking like, oh yeah, this is when Apex goes home. Oh, this is when Apex goes home. So, you know, finally we, we see it happen, but I, you just never really know these days. Yeah, I think it was an achievement for them to be making it through to the group stage. And obviously, you know, uh, it was unfortunate that they lost out to Na'Vi alongside Rebels. Also, unfortunately, going home. But for Cloud9, they need to be bringing everything and the kitchen sink today. So, uh, Banks, how's Groove feeling this morning? Just a reminder, guys, over on the B stream, we've got Cloud9 taking on Monty. The guys are warming up and they're getting themselves ready. Perfecto, mm. today, you feel like it's going to be a different day today? It's going to be a winning day? Uh, yeah, I think it's going to be a lucky day. So oh, because a, it's a lucky day? Yeah, because it's before, it's an unlucky day for me. So <laughs> I just <laughs> pretty sure it's going to be like it for me. A swapping of them out, I like that. We got a, a hopefully happy Hobbit this morning. He's got a smile on his face. Of course, as always. As, as always. Now, yesterday's game was very tough, right? But is it something where you guys still feel like you're progressing as a team, you're improving? You can see it. Yes, uh, progress on your face. You can see we're improving every match. Mm -hmm. Of course, we still have a lot of mistakes. It's it's all, yeah, it's, it's all about time. It yep. easily can be fixed, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. I hope you can enjoy your warm-up. Mr. Boomich, you have been loud and wild all event long. You ready to put the hurt onto Monty? I'm talking about the game plan, sorry, uh, guys. Okay, I'm going to leave him. He can't talk about anything. You're talking to Electronic about it, so I'm going to leave him as well. Axel, you going to say anything? Hello. Hello. Oh, there we go. Oh, you, 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 you talk to Boomich, I'm going to take Axel. He's, <laughs> He's listening to you as well. Okay, they're talking about game plan. I can't do anything. Say hi. Hi. There we go. That's all we need. Thank you very much. We'll get back to the desk. <laughs> you know what, Banks, you did well. Full focus, and I would hope so for Cloud9 going forward. But, uh, gentlemen, I think we need to revisit something that we theorized way, way back mm -hmm. in the play-in stage. We've got our 1x spec power ranking. This is what we thought we should be expecting coming into this tournament. Um, I can already see we're quite wrong about <laughs> quite a lot of these things. How much right. influence did Banks have, by the way, on putting Navi as number two? Like, what was Blood Waffling about? You know what? I don't even think that's the worst out there. I think <laughs> there, are, there are two names that we can mention straight from the get-go, and I'm not going to make fun of them because I was on that bandwagon as well, but VP and Astralis, obviously, we I, I want to say we overestimated them. I don't think so. I think we rated them fairly when they came to Katowice, mm -hmm. but then, wait, hold on. Let me find just a pure 
boom, here we go. That's a Michael Bay sound effect right now. <laughs> That's what happened here. That was an absolute catastrophe for Astralis and VP. Maybe we can uh, have a look at some positive vibes, Jacob. Pick, uh, you, pick you, a positive vibe. You, you're cool. Huh? You're all right. Yeah. I, if you have money, I am like a jukebox. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, Matthew. I love how you just ignored vi 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 vitality. It's still up in the what air. It is. It's ah, also, okay, okay. Whenever I talk about vitality, people say, oh, this guy, every time he's on the desk, he talks about vitality. I don't do it once. You put me under the bus. Yeah. Listen, there's, there's two teams I want to highlight here. Two teams I want to highlight here. One being these boys right here. Eternal Fire have actually looked like one of the better playing teams. To be 17th right now, nah, no way. They're playing some good, beautiful, solid Counter-Strike. The way they're going up against Face Clan as well, yes. almost beating them, almost booking a spot into the Spodic, they came very, very close. So that's the team I want to look out for. And then we have the, the likes right here, Matthew. We cannot get around it. Oh, I think absolutely. This has been the best playing team in the tournament so far. They have the best individual right now, and Dunk going off the chart. You have Shiro coming in, and the team play we were discussing about me and Yanko yesterday is not like it's all the Dunk show. It's actually a well-rounded team. So for Team Spirit right now, they're probably more like up here. Yeah, it feels like in terms of power ranking, they've played the best Counter-Strike. Yeah. They've had the best individuals. I want to give a shout out if I'm allowed to uh, to Rebels Gaming because I think their story sort of changed throughout this thing in Katowice. They started as, hey, I'm just happy to be here. Uh, wow, this is the hotel where players are staying. Wow, this is the Holo Heroes. And actually throughout their games, we started giving them the time of day. We started listening to their story, seeing them progress and sort of make a, a little mark here in Katowice. And I think that deserves some praise. Yeah, it was impressive that they made it through to the group stage. Um, I do want to draw your attention to Two teams that are going to be going head to head. Got Mao's Game Legion guaranteed Wait, let me help. to have a mm -hmm. Polish in game leader in the Spo deck because one of these two is going to net that today. I think we've got to give some credit to, to Game Legion again. I feel like every single time I turn up to a tournament of a big caliber, they somehow exceed my expectations. I never really recognize them. I never really think, okay, they're going to do well. They're going to qualify. They're going to be a factor in the tournament. They're just going to be here. They're <laughs> just going to win a map once in a while. But they exceed my expectations every single time. They played some solid Counter-Strike. They don't necessarily have the best individuals on the server, but team play, chemistry, and synergy, that's one strength of this. I agree with you that they exceeded our expectations, but I don't think we should say sorry. I, I think it's disingenuous to now stand and be like, well, actually, no, it makes, it makes complete sense. Of course they were going to do it. No, let, let's appreciate for what it is. They're overperforming compared to what we expected. They're doing way more than what we thought. Good for them. Why would I pretend now that this is, oh, actually, no, it makes a whole lot of sense. Maybe it's just my conscience, because the, the problem for me is they've done, it, they've done it three times. They've done it at the major. They've done it now here as well. They did it uh, sort of also at Cologne last year. Every single time they turn up to a big tournament, they play better than I expect them to be. So maybe I need to raise my expectations. Maybe a, I'm a stupid. A guilty conscience. Yeah, well, it does exist. Just trying to very much atone. He's atoning here. Where is Trace so we can have uh, an actual atonement, pure atonement? <laughs> I think we need Aww. to go back to the drawing board with this, maybe revisit exactly what on earth we were thinking coming into this. So uh, whilst we do that, Harry Hugo, how's it going down in the player booths? Another day of group stages here at IAM Katowice, and we have Cloud9 and Monty on the line for elimination. It's not just sad news, though. Playoffs are waiting for one of Game Legion Mal's. All that and more at IAM Katowice groups. Isn't that right, Harry? Did, did they win? Did they win? Did, I, did Eternal Fire win, Hugo? I'm sorry to break it to you, Harry, but the Turks did fall last night. Phaser in the spot, though, and Eternal Fire get another chance. Another chance? But versus who? Na'Vi. That all will be coming up later today. Don't worry. Get a nap, we'll get ready for Monty Cloud9, and there's all that and more in store here at IAM Katowice. Welcome, my friends, to the Cathedral of Counter Strike! Elevated level on our way to the top, headed to the peak. All the boys want to talk, hit them out of love, but don't got receipts. Same place there, simple, just jumping casually into the side. Wait, 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 what, 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 what was that? Never miss a play again. That's not allowed. This is not FPL. This is a major. Finally. With Face It Watch, you're in control. Switch between player POVs live and see the game through the eyes of any pro. Never miss a moment with replays. Relive each highlight on demand from all angles. Watch it, control it, face it. It's so hard to think about the best position for Zaihu because he's so good on every position. I'm trying to think the map you have the best, like, crazy games, maybe Nuke? No, I have no idea. He's so good. 
He's so good. Going up against Saibu, he's very unpredictable everywhere. I mean, he does play a really type of perfect CS, but he's perfect in a way where if he has to be there, he'll be there, and it's the best place for him to be, and you can't really counter. He has this sixth sense, and there's nothing you can do. No matter what game, how his team is playing, or how uh, we are playing, he's always gonna find impact uh, with a rifle or with a op. It's funny because he's such a good rifle that sometimes you just like you just say he can just rifle and still be the best in the world, probably. So you can call him an op, but in my opinion, you can call him anything you want. You can call him a pistol player, a rifle player, shotgun player. He will do great with every weapon in the game. The backlash he got or the criticism, I think it was definitely undeserved. I mean, they are really focused on the what just happened one month ago or two months ago, but they don't remember this guy has been the best for five years, so it doesn't just disappear in the moment. I think that people really underestimated how good he is and obviously he proved it, even though I, I didn't think he needed to. I think the criticism was nonsense. Uh, I was laughing about it when I was watching it at home, like he played Sydney and then they had a long break that he didn't play officials. People were like, he's washed, he's washed. And I'm like, well, what are you talking about? This guy's still gonna be the best player in 23, possibly obviously in 24 if he keeps at this form. He has incredible stats. I don't think people understand, but sometimes if you are top one in the world and you're performing so good and all you have all this fame, I think it's easy to turn into a cocky guy, I would say. And for him, I admire that he stayed the same through his career and he's still humble and even so he will be the best in the world or whatsoever is still like we have a saying that uh, you know where you came from in the past so I, I really like it about him as a person he's a good guy to have fun with you enjoy with him you laugh with him we have like specific topics we like like to talk with each other and I really like him Vitality versus Heroic. What just a few months ago would have been a grand final matchup, now simply a question of survival. Two teams who have stumbled, unfortunately, into that lower bracket. Heroic making G2 bleed, and if it wasn't for a monstrous Manasi, might have been in that qualification game. Whereas for Vitality, it was a stumble, it was a fumble versus Ents. I've got Jacob and Machu joining me to dissect every moment of this game. And uh, this is a surprising one, isn't it? We're quizzical mm. as to how both these teams kind of ended up in this situation. Well, you're absolutely right and it definitely does not mean the same for either squad. Like yeah. on one hand, you have a Heroic who is a brand new team, brand new project, new leader, and we are willing to give them time in order to show their best Counter-Strike. And on the other, you have the best team in the world, which is currently mm. fighting for survival here in the group stage of IEM Katowice. So might be at the same match, very much different situation. To be completely honest, it's a nightmare for Heroic to, to lose that first game in the fashion they did. They put up a great fight against G2. I think they could deserve some credit for that matchup. And then they go down in the lower bracket and the first team they face is Vitality because they couldn't get their shit done in the first game. So if you're Heroic right now, you're coming in with no pressure. It's a tough game, but it's going to be a rough one. Some frustrated images of Apex, understandably so, because mm. that matchup, uh, can you give me a synopsis of exactly what happened there? Uh, listen, I was watching the game from my hotel room and I myself had a really bad time just watching the game. Uh, <laughs> I, I I like to think I have empathy for players when I watch them play and I could feel the frustration, I could feel Vitality being far from what they can do and they know they can do and I think this was this sort of reflective moment you were catching from the players that they they were aware that whatever they were doing right here was far from their best mm -hmm. and I think it was kind of a snowball that got out of control on map three and some of the images that you would then see from Vitality say a year ago I don't need to remind you of the liquid catastrophe a year ago mm -hmm. yeah. I had flashbacks like literal PTSD meme flashback dog being shocked watching Vitality play that's exactly the vibe I had in that first game I'm really hoping this was just a, a, a once a mistake an alarm and then 
that's my issue, right? Because we did see it a bit in Copenhagen a couple of weeks ago as well. They were struggling a little bit. They were losing a game to Astralis. There was a couple of, you know, reactions coming out from some of the players. I think we saw the tendency of that happening in Copenhagen, and they transfer that into this tournament. So I'm a little worried. Hopefully they will be in much more control today. Well, let's see how Flamesy is feeling this morning. He had a few words with Shocks ahead of the series. So, Vitality is up against it. Flamesy, a bad start to IEM Katowice. Now that you've been able to watch the own demo, what the hell went wrong? Well, uh, it wasn't about, you know, we just didn't hit our shot. We had an off day and uh, team-wise we didn't play our best. It, it was really off day for us in, in many aspects and we, we didn't push ourselves enough to, to fight for the game. And uh, today we're coming with a different mindset and uh, we need to, to, to do the, the stuff we, we know that are good for our team to win these games. Uh, so the, yeah, the, the, the end game is uh, behind us, which is good, but it's a good wake-up call. Okay. So you're saying the fans have absolutely nothing to worry about, simply an off day? Well, it's, uh, it's an off day, but it's yes. If, yeah. you know, many teams are going to have an off day and some teams are going to have a good day. You don't know if you're going to win. You just need to come and do your best. And, uh, and if you lose, you lose at your best, not in, you know, lose because the other team was better than you. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's our aim for today. If, you know, we, we're hoping to win, obviously, but we cannot control it. Okay, um, well, of course, it was your very first match here in Europe against teams that have been here for a few days, played a lot of matches. Heroic is one of them. They have been one of the surprises, I want to say, of the tournament so far. So what's going to be the focus going into that match? Well, just to, to focus on ourselves. They are a new team. We're more prepared than them. Um, we want to beat them because they have uh, one Israeli player and we have two. And we, we me and Spinks always want to beat the other Israeli players. Um, but either ways, we just... We just need to focus on ourselves and uh, do our stuff that, that works for us. And if we do them good, you know, we, we know we can win. Okay. Good luck. Thank you. Okay, and loss behind Vitality. That's the first thing we want to hear. But uh, we do want to see a little bit more of some individuals going forward, Matthew. No, absolutely. I mean, listen, uh, Zaiwu is always going to have a million eyes on him. And I think whenever he's not an extraterrestrial, then the conversation will be had. And on map one, it's, I think it's somewhat justified. The rest of the series is a little bit different. But Sphinx is also someone we have to talk about. When you're talking about the second best rifle that there is in the game currently, who had, unfortunately, a miss in that map versus Ents. And I'm, I'm going beyond just... Aim-wise, because it's one thing to have a player sometimes who just aim isn't really on point. But I felt like he got caught off guard a couple times. And as a player, I think this is a very much symptomatic situation of I'm not in my game right now. Like I'm losing, I'm keep, I'm losing track of the timings. I'm losing track of the comms. Either it's the team that isn't giving him good information or he wasn't reacting to it. And against Ants, unfortunately, there were a few moments where that was exploited. We have a few highlights, call it low lights, where indeed he gets caught off by timing here. Glevi is waiting for him. Kylar a couple times dropping down in, in mini. That's the situation right there out of door as well. It, it's, it, that's my point. He's not exactly mis-aiming, but he's getting caught off guard. And in the positions that he plays, he needs to have situational awareness at all time. That's why he's playing some of these positions. I 100% agree with you. It wasn't a great showing from Spinks. It wasn't a great showing from Vitality, but it did feel like a day off. Watching that game, it felt so out of character for Vitality to play in that fashion, to be, you know, run around with Glaive, you know, who are calling a great game coming in from Ends right here. But for my money, it was one game. It's a best of three. I'm willing to call it a day off if they show up today. You mentioned Zaiwu as well, you know, struggling just for a little bit in this series, Ooh, but we put so much weight on this man's shoulders, right? So when he doesn't show up, everybody's willing to pounce and go, hey, Hey, is that we washed? Are we back to the beginning of CS2? <laughs> yeah, we already tried that in Sydney, and how did that go down, right? Yeah, pretty bad. But, but at the same time, for, for the, the Ragers and the haters out there, they did have ammunitions on that map one. Uh, as a matter of fact, it was the end of an incredible streak of, of positive ratings uh, for, for his eye. So, of course, uh, that's enough to be said. Yeah, there we go. That's how the end of the streak. How ridiculous is that? That is relatively like, ridiculous, right? But also, insane. you have to remember, in terms of the mystique of this player, Katowice remains uh, a dragon that he cannot tame. This is how stupid the record is for a man that is now the best player in the world, is going to go down as the greatest player of all time in any FPS. Quote me on that, I'll fight you. But he does not conquer Katowice. He hasn't quite yet. And it would be, not, I don't even have a word. Like you would have to give me a thesaurus to find the right word for him going out today in Katowice. It'll be disingenuous saying that he, he hasn't found success here yet. But I will also make the argument that if he can't find a success, if he's having a bit of a rough time performing at this tournament, he got teammates, he got four next to his side that sometimes maybe could help him. Bailey 
feeling out of a, a rough situation, right? It's not only a, a one-way relationship in that regard. <laughs> it has been for more than 60 maps almost, but I reckon, you know, Saibu, he'll come to live a day. And, and again, we shouldn't be too worried. I felt like it was a day off. I felt like it was a, a rough one for Vitality, but it'll be fine. We've had Vitality, you know, listening into this segment. They're literally they are very just much so. they're right there and they're, you know, they're on they their merry me, way They honestly now. told like, me to shut up just before, so, yeah. you know, in Danish. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Not only Vitality telling you that, Jacob. Um, how are we comparing, you know, Apex on one side in terms of the leadership with uh, the leader on the other side of the server? How do they stack I think up? what is really interesting in this whole Kicks and V Apex matchup is who's, who the pressure is on currently. And that is one-sidedly Apex. There, there's no other narrative you can build on. Mm. And I think Kixon, the way he's been calling, is now in a prime position to make gamble, aggressive calls, try to get in Apex's head. As I said, they have nothing to lose. If, if you go down, if you bow down here to the best team in the world, no one's going to bat an eye. No one, gives a, no one gives a flying duck. That's okay. So he has the luxury, the opportunity to call out of left field, to, to try and take Vitality off guard with timings and contact plays. And I really hope, actually, I don't. I really don't hope so, but I think he should. I think he should too. It's also a team heroic right now that don't have a lot of material. There's not a lot of data out there on heroic. Mm -hmm. New team, newly formed team coming in with a new brand uh, of Counter-Strike, so to speak, a new vision for how they want to drive this international roster. So if you like to prepare for your opponents and you only seen heroic play the maps once or twice, there's not much data to go out there and look at. So I think heroic is in a prime position to at least play up the ball and be a little unpredictable in this game. Well, let's check in with Kixon to see exactly how he's been preparing for this Vitality squad. Kixon, a really, really big match for you today uh, and probably a very difficult one, up versus Vitality. Um, from your route here at Katowice so far, I think you went from a very high high in beating Astralis and big, then being taken down a little by G2. So how is the feeling in the camp right now? I think the feeling is still good, even though we lost the last game. I feel like we've been playing good recently and we are improving day by day. And uh, I felt like we played close game against G2. Another day maybe we win it. So I think we're feeling good and confident. I was reading an interview uh, with Nerds with HLTV a while ago where uh, he said that uh, it's all about what we do in practice, being able to translate that onto the server. That is always the case, but I'm assuming that means that you're doing really well or better than you expected in practice. Would you agree with that as the IGL? Yeah, I think so. I think we've, we've been uh, good on practice. And uh, of course, the most important thing is to try to play the same way as, you, as we do in practice, but sometimes it's hard. But uh, I feel like we're trying our best and we're improving day by day. It definitely looks like it. Of course, on the other side, Zawu is always the most dangerous player on the server. So how are we going to keep him down? I think we don't want to focus too much on the enemy because we know that if we play our game and just do what we want, that we can win against any team in the world. Of course, Zawu is the best player in the world. So it's going to be a hard game, but I think we can do it. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, playing your own game has been impressing us so far, Kixon, but uh, where's the veto landing in this one, Matthew? Is there anywhere that Heroic can get the edge over Vitality? Well, I'm, I'm still pondering the ideas and the possibilities. I think uh, a map like Mirage, for example, is, is a place where we have seen Heroic already a couple of times. They've been very, very able, very capable, very efficient on it. Mm. This might be where you take it, whereas for Vitality, it's a little bit uh, unclear. I don't think Inferno is going to be allowed. If it is, they could pounce on it. Anubis is a map that they've been relying on, but I have a couple of dust. I don't really know where Vitality should take it. No, me neither. I, I think for Heroic Mirage is a, a great shout. I think Vitality have shown inconsistency on the map. We know they can play the map to a high level, but they haven't really been consistently performing on it uh, as of late. So I think Heroic are coming again, just like the whole theme for this match, into this video with a, a bit mm. of an open opportunity. The fact that they would remove Inferno, which I think is what going, they're going to do in the first uh, round, is problematic for Vitality, right? When you're a team that's obviously facing a little bit of a problem, then you are looking to go for a known territory, a familiar place. Inferno would be that of it. And it's not going to be allowed for them right now. So we're, we're going to have to see. Uh, I think I think Anubis could be a, a, a good shout out. It's a map that has been very, very safe for them. I love how we're getting some uh, audio vitality singing. Yeah. I wonder what That's they're Apex. singing. It's just Apex. Apex will sing. Apex will rap. Uh, he Apex can do will that. cry, will scream. He'll do all the things. Uh, we do get the veto coming in. Okay, oh, would you look at this? That's a Mirage, Mirage pick from Heroic. Who could have guessed? It's an Anubis pick for Vitality. Wow. That is really Are you pretending incredible. to be surprised you now? Wrote the Actually, I did not have the veto, so I'm going to tout my own horn or whatever it is you guys say. So cheers to that. A very good third. Now, OK, let's uh, real real talk for half a second. If we go to the third map, okay. I'm going to get slightly worried. I, I have to be honest, the, the vitality that I saw versus ends, and I know there is the nine core, and I know okay. there is the lore of their dominance on Vertigo, 
but holy moly, that was not great from Vitality. That's, that third map gives me a little jitters. Listen, I'll buy into that, but I won't be I won't be worried on behalf of the map. I'll be worried on behalf of Vitality. They're supposed to win this game 2-0. They're mm -hmm. supposed to take down a newly formed Heroic, a team coming in with three different variations of how they want to approach Counter-Strike, international roster, very limited practice. We're talking about Vitality, who are, in fact, as of right now, the best team in the world. There's no way they should allow this game to go to a third map. So I don't care whether it's Vertigo, whether they're playing Train, Cobblestone, or Cash for the third map. Vitality should be winning this one too. Bring train back, baby. Uh, Mirage, that's what we're landing on to start with, though. Uh, what should we be looking at Vitality to be delivering from the very offset, Matthew? Well, listen, I'll uh, grab the train where we left it in a pre-show. I'll talk about Spinks, the man that we have on, on camera right there. Uh, he's got a very fight-centric position on the CT side. He's going to be playing that short side, having help as well from Connector. And this is where I need to see, I need to see movement from Vitality. I need to see them be ambitious with the calls, trying to get the fight too heroic, not be too passive, not be the one who are sort of suffering the fog of war. Go out there. You have skill players. You have more skilled players. Have your come flowing. Go for fights. Make the difference. Keep an eye on Spinks. I'll keep an eye on the body language because I think that's going to be vital for Vitality in order to overcome this one. It has to be. This is an elimination series, no less. At the end of the line of this one, one of these two squads will be going home. Heroic versus Vitality going down with Moses and Dinko. Thank you very much, Freya. The world number one vitality must withstand the force of a new heroic. To keep the dream of seeing the best player in the world compete in the Spodek is vitality versus heroic. One's going home, Jason. Let's find out who. Yeah, and that's that's the shocking thing is that we even have Vitality in this situation. They showed the stats as well. Zaiwu and Vitality and Katowice have had a tough time of it, never progressing past the quarterfinals. This would be a disaster. I wouldn't write the team off entirely, obviously. Still the best team in the world, best player in the world. But what an indictment if you come into this and you're not able to compete right as we're building up to the major. Uh, Heroic starting this pistol with forces outside of the B bomb site. Vitality will put two over here of Mezzi and Spinks. And we'll see how this pistol unfolds because Mezzi has sights into the apartments. Apex is pushed up middle, getting some control. It looks like it's going to be a battle of the in-game leaders to kick off this pistol as Kicksound's close to Apex towards top mid. Kicksound will soon have some teammates coming through the underpass to assist him, but Apex has got himself into such a uh -oh. little corner with Kicksound. Is he going to check it? He won't. And Apex is about to kick him to the side of the road. It's a big headshot. And Apex looking for a second, now revealing his position. Yeah, but just his presence is so confusing to this T side as well. Like, where do you go? How do Tessas and Nikodos get involved? They can't attack him towards Khan. They can't sell this fake. And another shot from Sphinx. Good start. Trade it off. Yeah, Nerd hops out the window, jumps into the site, and while well, his teammates are coming with him, but Nurse is in the middle of the bomb site at the moment, taking pressure from multiple different sides as Vitality have drifted those rotations over to the B bomb site. Heroic are yet to get anywhere near the site to put that bomb down, and they're now getting involved in those late round fights. They're starting to go Vitality's way in the final 45 seconds here. Heroic don't look like they're going to stay in this one, but those shots are pulling it back, and that's sick from Tessas. That drags us into a competitive position, and Heroic are now at a 2v2, but here comes the biggest weapon for Vitality. Zaiwu threw short, and Nikuda is left in the 1v2. And Zaiwu's hunting this. Hunting oh, this, he's down. Oh, punished. He's absolutely been eradicated by Nico Dawes, who's now just looking for one more. It's Flames inside of the market, giving away his position. And now Nico Dawes realizes there's limited time left, 15 seconds left. Has to get to the bomb in the middle of the site, so it's about fighting for Nico Dawes. The limited time is making him feel uncomfortable, and he's realized that now. Flames realizes he can swing and try and deny that bomb plan, and now he needs to just run away. Nico Dawes chasing after him, but Flames has found Sanctuary, and he will find the pistol. Well done from Flames, just outplays him, knows the time is an ally, and makes him wait too nervous just that quick little step out to make sure he's uncomfortable planting the bomb and then you just play it wrap around make sure he can never find you at the end of the day but this was a very stressful pistol round for heroic every step they took they were being harassed from so many angles apex did such a great job top mid and then back at the b bomb site to help make sure they can't get comfy inside the site it's a pistol round for vitality Second round by though from Heroic. Tech Nines and Armors picked up. Deagles as well. Plenty of utility. The question is how much of it will be left after the initial salvo to play for the post plant? Yeah, well, they get that bomb down is the question. Flames forced back behind the CT smoke. That should confirm that space, but look at this mental play from Apex. He dives down with a premium rifle into Sandwich and gets absolutely nothing from it. So that's a weapon in the hands of Heroic. Oh, you can blow up in the smoke. Here we go on the plant. Oh, Nikodos has to get off it, but it does go down. Still, Vitality harassing those bomb plants every step of the way. Oh. A good shot from Zaiwu. Yeah, sick shot from Zaiwu. He's got more in him, too. He's looking towards Connector. The rest of his teammates making their way towards the bomb site for this retake. 
Heroic would love this round, but they've got to dig deep and they're not inside of the site. They're There's all no kit. forced towards the side of Connector and Jungle. Sphinx is looking to fight as they try and defuse this, but Vitality aren't on it. Now they've got to stick it. Mezzi holding it down. His teammates are getting kills here, but Zywoo, he's taken out. And now Flames have to step up. They're off the defuse, and there's no more time. There's no more time for this one for Vitality, and Heroic have found their way through. No kit. They had to get the kills and some missed shots. Missed spray with the FAMAS. Missed shot from Zywoo. That sells it. Heroic fighting right back. Yeah, that's absolutely sick for Heroic to get a start like this, but I've yeah. got a question. This play from Apex, maybe lost, he was blinded, maybe fell off the stairs, but yeah, definitely an awkward scenario there for the it, game leader of Vitality. Yeah, it's too much from Apex, as we've seen happen a, a couple times. He sometimes gets into that mood where he goes a little bit too deep, and that might be one of them. Smoke being blown open just a quarter second oh. too late to stop that plant, and yeah, I think Apex, head on head, that's, that's his like admission to the boys. That's my bad. We've seen that force buy back from Vitality already, staying competitive at the start of this one. Let's see if there can be a force by war that continues through into round three. Well, this this is going to be uh, this is going to stall out until the utility over in Palace subsides because Heroic is lining up an A hit and and with no presence anywhere else on the map, falling back and readjusting is 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 a very daunting task. So they're just going to wait for the smoke to fade, hit the A bomb site. Three defenders here though. This is well defended, all things considered. Utility flies on over. And so I was going to see that smoke come out the ticket that severs his information flow, and he'll decide to move forward instead of falling back. Senses his chance is now gone. Tessis takes him out. Flames doubles up from Sandwich. It's a good hold initially from Flames. Nothing done by Zaiwu though. And a 3v3 set up here. It's the same play that Apex made in the last round that we criticized, but Flames gets two kills out of it. Spam from the Famas ain't going to go through the boxes at all. And again, no kit, so this retake has got to be fast. It's going to be very fast. And Mezzi's coming through CT spawn. He's got a smoke in his hands. That's the only piece of utility available here for Vitality. And it's smart from Heroic not to give any fights. They're very disciplined in this post plan. It's just Nikodaz, and he's got plenty of cover. So he can take some of these jewels, hide it behind it, put pressure on Vitality and run that clock down. Picks out and Nurt's taking kills between them. Not that there is a nice shot here for Sphinx. There's not enough time to win this round. And he'll take a couple of Deegs on the way out, but it's 2-1 Heroic. Sure, not, not bad in terms of damage, but obviously it's going to hurt. You're going to have to go back to, to no buy whatsoever in the next round for Vitality. Sphinx is hoping an AK-47 if something gets blown towards him. Maybe he can salvage that FAMAS off to the right, but it's just too far away. 2-1 yeah. for Heroic. And Sphinx was the main talking point on the desk. It felt like we obviously talk about Zywu a lot, but when someone goes missing as much as Sphinx has in the first game of this tournament, we start to get a little bit worried. And we're hoping today that he sort of rectifies any worries and, and comes back in with the Sphinx performances we've seen over recent months. Yeah, I mean, he was a big talking point for Vitality, establishing their dominance last year. His step up in individual performance and how well he was playing was a huge, huge recipe to, to why Vitality was working so well. So obviously, when you see it go the other direction, it's glaringly obvious. Tough day in the office against Entz. We'll see if he can bounce back against Heroic. They're going to have bad games once in a while. You are going to have bad games. And, you know, we did see Zywu have a bad game by his uh, his metric. And yeah, I would say by, by the standards we hold him to. I think yeah. Frey have painted that picture very nicely. We expect uh, incredible things all the time from Zywu because that's what he's delivered us. So yeah. the his, his bad game is a great game for most other people. The first time in 48 matches that he had a below 1.0 rating, that, that statistic is just absolutely unbelievable. But... There we go. That's the USP's gone. That's what we all like to see. And we'll get into the action now with a buyback for Vitality. Now, there is no AWP in sight. It will be rifles for everybody. And we'll get into rifles on rifles. This game truly begins now. Flames and Spinks heading out to middle. Flames hopping down into... Oh, he's jumped over short. He's made it. And Zywoo... Trying to use that top gap in the smoke and window. Yeah, as we see pretty much every team doing nowadays, just to gather some information. If you spot someone there, you can continue the spam, but it does feel a little 50-50. Apex is alone, and once again, they're going to challenge at A. Kixen's already out at top ramp. You've got three players in holes and Palace ready to pounce, and it's coming in right about now. Kicks hands out of Tetris too, so plenty of players here for Heroic. Now they signal pressure that they come out of the ramp, and Sphinx will peek upstairs and into Palace. He will fly to Shushin. Nerds could do nothing about that, and Vitality looking very strong on this in initial A attack. Tessas and Nikodaz, well, there's not much 
left in the round for them. I, it looks silly. I think they were trying to mess with the timing a little bit. I think they were hoping like smokes would fade and then Vitality says, okay, the smokes have faded, no one's up, there's no pressure coming A and they might have a little bit of a pocket to swing on Apex. <laughs> and obviously that didn't work out whatsoever thanks to the kills from Spinks. He ends with a quad kill in the round. Seven and three start for Spinks. That's got to feel much better than what he had the other day. He averaged in that series against Ents less than nine kills per map, which is... Yeah, so you just kind of... With a player of Spinks' caliber and what we've seen over the recent months from him and, and years at this point, you know that that is just a blip on the radar. You know he's going to get back to a better level right away. And look at Apex. He's fired up. That's the first gun round going Vitality's way when they pick it up. And he's feeling good about that. I think in game leaders, when you when you lose a match that you feel like you, you probably shouldn't have, and, and then certainly with the underperformances you had, you feel like the focus and the energy wasn't there. So I think Apex in this series is going to be going above and beyond to make sure energy flowing throughout the team, getting people excited. Potentially a little lucky to be alive, Apex. Yeah, very lucky. Should have been taken out by Nikodaz with that smoke blown open. But Apex will communicate the information that he has seen, pass that on to his teammates, and give up middle. So Heroic have that to play with. And let's see the reaction from Vitality. It's to send Flames close towards ramp. And on the other side, it's Kixan. And this is about to be a duel. Flames, he will hope to win, and he does. It's a brilliant headshot. Swing out through the bottom. Khan hasn't worked out. Zaiwu locks in that kill too. And Heroic are down to three players with not much space gain. Smoke's going to fade, but Apex doesn't want that fight. He's got a teammate boosted up. Spinks committed. Can't win it out. Just a headshot angle. Didn't land a single shot on Tess's. So three on four, still recoverable. And Zywu is in the connector still. And that feels rough if you're Tessus. You've got to deal with that, and you can't. He's out of there. 44 seconds now for Heroic, and their last ditch effort is to try and slink their way out ramp into Flimsy, who's standing at default, now given a couple of warning shots. Just hey. got behind cover in time, and Zywu is there to clean it up. Flamesy does it too, and now it's three to three. As I say, they had nothing to flush him out of that bomb site either. They had no Molotov to throw in there to make him wide swing. They needed a clean kill on that first one if they wanted a chance to spring into the A bomb site. And that's Heroic who's out of funds to fight back. Two in a row for Vitality. Four players survive in each of them. Their economy grows while Heroic's hits rock bottom. 1,900 across four players. And they've got the op out here for Vitality now too. So Zywu has that in play. And that could become very difficult to go up against if you're heroic. And this is a team that's got a huge project ahead of them. I think they completely overperformed my expectations personally, Jason, coming into this event. I don't know about you, but that win versus Astralis, I didn't expect that. And they got the ball rolling to get into to this stage of the competition. Yeah, and I think a lot of it is obviously a new team as well, Heroic, but there's a, there's a few new teams with new lineups, two or three players coming into the, to the roster brand new. So a lot of teams figuring out that we're going to have some inconsistencies, but certainly I did not expect this Heroic team to make it through the plans. Impressive victories to, to waltz through and make it to the group stage. And now battling for their life. And the organization will obviously remember a grand final showing in Katowice last year. What a journey it's been in just 12 months to get to this point with a completely different roster. Actually, of those players. it doesn't even feel like it was a journey. It just, is, it just happened. Yeah, true. <laughs> it was just something that occurred out of nowhere. They went their separate ways. And in this round, Heroic taking the time, just a little classic timeout with the Glocks. This is, uh, this is the life of a B player. You haven't had any attention this entire game, and you're about to get this eco rush headed your direction. Sphinx is going to be able to help out with you on Catwalk because finally Vitality said, we spent enough time stacked up in middle, and now Mezzi has a chance to get on the scoreboard. His first kill. Make it his second as well, and he wants all three. Yeah, nice and easy for Mezzi. Those are the rounds you like to see. And now Vitality take a small lead, but Heroic will return to the bye. They'll have the AK-47s out. They don't have enough resources to get that AWP out for Nikodos, so Zywu will not have a competitor in that respect. And a timeout taken, the first here for Heroic. Have Saw on the mic. Yeah, their, their last two gun rounds really got uh, obliterated. Previous round obviously just Glocks, but before that it was, it was no success. It was the Palace pop. It was mid control into a late A hit just out of desperation. And all of it was denied by Zaiwu, by Flamesy. Interesting dynamic being set up between Kixan and Saw. Wouldn't have drawn that parallel at all if you had given me 
a million chances to predict the in-game leader coach combo of Heroic. He got, Saul got a lot of props working with Snappy over in Heroic and working with Snappy to bring up different star players, different lineups, and bring them all to the top. So he's got quite a nice resume, and this will probably be his most difficult project yet. So it's going to be fun to watch that one over a long period of time. Here he's working with a very small playbook, a very short amount of time to acclimate and get used and adjusted to working with kicks and Miss Window Smoke. Heroic haven't gone around the corner to see it, but it has allowed information for Vitality to be picked up. Spins can stay up in window, have a look up middle. And he's fighting that with Flamesy. So mid is certainly under wraps right now for Vitality. And here comes Nerds out through the underpass. He's smoked out. And that smoking connector is going to give him more cover and time in mid. Mezzi's going to get his first real test here. Not against Glocks, against AK-47. Oh, good jump up. He's been practicing that in the warm-up. And Mezzi now gets into the apartments. Kicks at around the corner. It's a good position here for Mezzi. He's got his teammate down in the bomb site too, if things get messy. Well, if there's any success here, Nertz is over in window room, ready to lurk through murder holes. So Mezzi's got a big job to do, and he passes. Yeah, he does. He swings out for trying to catch the second. And it doesn't work out for him, but the rest of his teammates are so damn solid. And this looks like a vitality that has come to play today. Yeah, they had a conversation about the, uh, I would imagine, mentality and focus after that last game, after they lost against Ents. But now, now the Heroic is going to bear a lot of the brunt of it. This is vitality taking out some anger. And if you had any concerns about Sphinx having two bad games in a row, I think you can start to uh, breathe a little bit easier. 12 and 4, 170 ADR, eight rounds in. Yeah, it's incredible from Sphinx. Great turnaround. And Heroic are starting to struggle already. It was a competitive beginning to the game, which is what they could have asked for. But unfortunately, since the guns have come out, Heroic have not been able to compete against Vitality. But there's a Deagle blistering through the mid player. And that's Sphinx that is gone. Ixan does well. Apex trying to come over to Connector to clean this up for Vitality and get them back on track. But it's a second headshot for Heroic on the D. It's still cleaned up. The rifles come in mid. And that's Vitality. Pushing away those pistols. Yeah, Vitality's been looking for that fight. They've had a number of bodies over in middle of a few rounds in a row, and Heroic haven't challenged into it. This time, I think Heroic's caught off guard by the sheer number of Vitality defenders ready to shut them down. A second timeout is used. It's five rounds in a row for Vitality, and Heroic in these five rounds haven't really got a chance to do anything at all. Haven't really been able to challenge for the round whatsoever. Haven't been able to get bomb plants. Haven't even really been able to consider the bomb sites. It's step one of these rounds that Vitality is destroying them. Hextaz having his 30 seconds on the mic just to talk over things with Vitality. Uh, we talked about Saw as a coach. Uh, Xtaz is a coach coming into this as well because he's obviously, you know, been here before with G2 and, and, and kind of left and departed G2 with a little bit of a tarnished reputation. But Apex specifically has a ton of faith and confidence in him and loves working with him. And he said, uh, you know, when we've spoken to him, he's, he's basically said part of the reason, part of my motivation at the moment to win is because I want Xtaz to get the recognition he deserves as a coach. Like he, he wants Xtaz to be considered one of the stronger coaches in the scene. Yeah, and it became a sort of one of those knock device situations again. But in the coaching world, when Zonic came in to take Xtaz's spot, you can't really argue against it when you have an opportunity to get Zonic. But obviously, Xtaz is a very good coach in his own right and was a welcome back with open arms when the position became available again. And Nerds is down to 52 health after that initial utility barrage. He likes to get himself into this position. He's got under the window many a time. I like this play call from Mezzi as well over in the B-holes. He's, he's pushed up yet again, this time even deeper, because he's just said, well, we just shut you down here. You came here on a Glock round, you came here on a gun round, neither of them got you anything, so I'm going to push up. He can have a fast flank. This is a lot of information, allows Vitality to cheat a fourth defender to the other side of the map. Yeah, and Sphinx and Zaiwu in window and jungle. Apex CT spawn Flamesy in the cubby. Apex got here real quick, and now he's in a really good position, because even if those smokes do come in, he's in front of them. But Heroic looking to try and play contact. <laughs> a lot of noise being made. They've been detected. Kicksand's down low. That nade gets sent in. Kicksand's removed by the rifle of Apex, who gets a second out of his spray. And now shoots from Palace does not get one step closer to that bomb site. Heroic are not playing very well on this T side. They're getting caught at every choke point, and Vitality are playing them. Some of it's some of it's just plain bad luck. Like Nikodaz had scoped up towards towards ticket booth that whole time, and Zaiwu came in just as he unscoped. And Zywood didn't even throw a flashbang to get the angle, wasn't even concerned, just kind of marched into the angle and scoped up. That could have been an easy opening kill for, for Nikodaz, and maybe that's a little bit different. But everything working against him, even the timings. And now Nerds is being hunted. 
He's doing everything he can to hold on to it. They know where he is. They know they've got him pinned outside there. And if they're going to see if it's worthwhile to go and hunt him down, whether or not they'll get around the corner is another question. And they won't. They won't do it. He'll keep his weapon. And pretty cool and collected here for Vitality. They get it done, stop this push out. Contact play does not work for Heroic. And they even had that flank thanks to Mezzi's initial B push she pointed out and, earlier in the round. And if you don't get that push, you don't get Apex so committed to the A bomb site. And Apex isn't able to get that double kill coming up, uh, the players coming up ramp, which means Flamesy is going to go down when he's escaping due to the Molotov. So all those little details prevented Vitality from taking too much damage. But if one of them doesn't happen, all of a sudden you're, you're sitting in a world where maybe Nikodaz gets that pick on Zaiwu. Maybe Flamesy goes down trying to escape the Molotov in Closet. Like, there's, there's just so many factors in that round, but it still ends up dominant for Vitality. Well, Nikodos has a bucket of utility at his feet, and he's looking to do a lineup in towards this B bomb site. They get a couple of players filtering through the underpass, and Zaiwu ops I, over here on B. I imagine this is going to be a fake. I think the bomb is just going to march back. That's no way. A huge good find for Kixon. He's committed. No. And I think with those kills, Nikodos says, nope, I'm coming back with the bomb. So he second guesses the fake, but meanwhile, the rest of his team is working up towards A, and Apex is here, ready and waiting, open arms. Tessis is close up. Yeah, that's the picked up rifle from Nurts that he saved in the last round, getting taken out immediately. And Heroic are down to just three players. Spray him from Sphinx. He's looking for a bit more as he pushes up towards the triple stack. He's got the USP out, knowing that player's low. And Shush has taken out of contention. Nikodaw is making the last ditch effort in this 1v2. He's got the bomb set at B under wraps, and he can put that bomb down. He even has time to get a better position and upgrade his weapon. And he has the weapon of choice, oh, the AWP in his hands. That's a huge find. That is a huge find. He might be able to pull this off. Flames is going to flank. Sphinx is coming in through market. No These utility. two will have to work together on their scaling. There's absolutely no utility to be seen here for Vitality. Flames does have a kit. Nikodos sitting at the back of the bench. He's just waiting for that peek out and their steps being made, trying to draw attention towards one angle. And Sphinx is going to swing it. There's the AWP. Flames, he now knows what he's up against and tries to get close, but Nikodos! There was no doubt when he got that weapon in his hands, Heroic had a round. Yeah, what I give all the credit over to Kixon. Those two entries with the MAC-10 are things of beauty. That was always designed to be a fake, and Nikodos probably had the most frustrating round. He wants to go A after these, or wants to go B after these entries from Kixon, from his in-game leader, and then he tries to fall back to A where they've had some sex and then that gets shut down by Vitality, and he's eventually got to go all the way back to the B bomb site. But once he gets the AWP and he's got this position at Benz, it's so strong. And not enough time for Vitality to be patient about it. That's a big round to win for Heroic for their chances in this half. It reopens the competitive nature of this game, and Apex is trying to shut it as quickly as he can. Good opening kill. Zaiwu's committed into the underpass. Another missed shot from Zaiwu. He's had a bit of a nightmare over the last two rounds here, Zaiwu. He's stuck in the underpass, but he's alive, and that's the big difference here. He's got plenty of teammates in Khan to make sure they can't scale down upon him down the mid-ramp. The only thing he's got to worry about at the moment is, is underpass, and obviously if he decides to escape... They peek Tessus with a good flash flight. Vitality have lost Zaiwu, though. Kixan jumps down into the underpass, and they replace his previous position with Nikodos, who now has the scope up, making sure no one from Vitality pushes through that underpass. And it gives time for Heroic to think about a B play. And Mezzi's going to be under scrutiny once again. Yeah, especially because he's the sole defender at this bomb site. Flames and Apex are over at A, very well committed. So Mezzi's got another job to do. Let's see what he can do. Drops back into jail. It's a strong position. Three players now grouping up for Heroic. And Kixan is leading that entry path yet again. They don't want to make too much noise. They want Nikodos to come with him, but the shadow. Oh, Mezzi, he's got the aware system going, and it's not going to work out. Kixan takes him out somehow, even though all the advantages were with Mezzi on that hold. Yeah, that shadow lured him into a little bit of a bait, but he didn't want to swing too wide to be exposed to hulls, and that gave Kixon everything he needed. Good entries these past couple rounds from Kixon on shot. the B-bomb site. Oh, missed shot. Give Apex a chance. A second crack at the whip, but it doesn't work out. Kixan's just stomping it. And Flamesy goes into what seems like one of the most unlikely clutches we have seen. So you'll exit market making steps heard. And Kixan is looking damn sharp in this half. 7-5, to five, it's a marginal lead here for Vitality. Let's see if they can close Mirage after this.
If the first day of the groups had you worried about Spinks, well, worry no more. What a first half performance it was from Spinks. He leaves this half 15 and seven. Yeah, th this is this is a great bounce back performance from Spinks to start things out for Vitality. He was key to this defense, but if it wasn't for Kicks and Heroic wouldn't have been able to scrape together the last two rounds of the half. He stepped up massively the in game leader of Heroic to put him in a position to respond in kind on their own defensive side of Mirage and Vitality is going to hustle into B holes. T pistol, Apex, Smoke Flash, or excuse me, Nade Flash, but on the other side of the map. And it's that very player you were just talking about, Jason Kicksan, who has to defend this first. He's found himself in the common corner, but he's hoping that Tessa is jumping can distract and pull them away and set these Joel Barrettas up for multiple kills. Yeah, and his smoke. This, this is going to be interesting to see how they're able to kind of get in. Well, this action brought to you by Rushley and MC. Catching the numbers, catching the kills. And it's Vitality shifting their way over to this B-bomb site now. Flashes at the ready, or should I say flash for Apex. The Ikidaz is down middle. It's really on Tessas and Kixin. If these two guys can't accomplish anything, then uh, then Heroic's in trouble. Kixin not going to be cleared. Yes, he will. Spinks goes down first, traded immediately, but Tess is still alive behind the smoke buying time. Yeah, he is, and here comes the flying. Pigeons here for Tessas. It's Apex that goes down, felt like an eagle, soared like a pigeon. And now it's Saiwu and Mezzi left in this 2v2. As he's chilling at the back of the bench, there's still a lot of time for this, and Zaiwu's still in the apartment, so he's hoping he can catch a heroic player making their way across that window, and you would get a free kill to drop back into a 2v1. Yeah, they'd, they'd love a mistake. They would love heroic to give up one kill and just make this a lot easier on them. As it stands, Mezzi is still going to have to cross back into the bomb site to get this plant. Zaiwu's going to drop down to help him do it with the P250. Keep an eye and make sure nobody's running out. Nade could be great. Oh, it's nice. Nerd's down to 59 HP and plant. Faked for the moment to try and draw them out. Ooh, Messi, nice shot. Tries to flick back, but doesn't do it. And now you're up against one of the scariest clutchers in the game. It's Zywu versus Nertz. Zywu being spotted first, but even though you do the initial damage, Zywu's still going to take you out. Zywu's going to take you out, and Apex going to talk the shit. <laughs> We've come used to hearing that, haven't we? Apex. Definitely getting the heads of Heroic here. And uh, Tess says there it is, the flying players flying over it. And uh, still, Zai was able to pull it back. Oh, nasty shots with the P250. <laughs> well, second round of the second half. Scout tag onto Flames. And Nikodaz is going to go for more. He senses the weakened opponent, but doesn't want to swing too wide. That was a missed follow-up smoke. It didn't go into the window, so a little bit scary for Vitality now. They don't have that smoke to play with up in window. Actually, really scary. Apex and Flames want to go in towards Khan, but that smoke doesn't help them in any way. Now Shu's getting close towards Ramp, but Sphinx has taken his teammate out, and Shu feels comfortable swinging for that tray, but he's got to worry about Palace. So he gets eyes on that immediately, focusing on his next target, and it doesn't work out so well for him. Zai was taking him out of this round. Apex making his way up. Khan kicks out at short side. Still a chance to make this scary for Heroic, but with Apex and Connector, he's got the backside covered. If Kixin gets a wide enough angle, he might be able to spot Apex with some of these jiggles, some of these shoulder peaks. Instead, he's going to go for the long flank. I think eventually Heroic's just going to call this off. Nikodaz and Tessas seem parked. They don't look like they want to move. Yeah, and they're not getting any chances. Vitality are not giving them any mistake to play with. If they lose everything in this round, they'll have nothing to play with in the next. If they save what they've got, they at least have something. Dang, okay. And that's a big shot on Apex. And Kixin's still sliding closer. He just wants exits. He doesn't care about winning this round. He's just lining up to try and grab an AK-47 at the end of the day. And Zywu's going to be headed right for him. Same with Flames, most likely. Mezzi will be there as well, falling back from Palace to help secure the escape route. Uh, Kixan's got, he's kind of spoiled for choice, isn't he, for this exit here. Let's see who he takes away. And absolutely no one. Absolutely no one. Flames, he doesn't let him get any free kills. And he stays alive to the bomb blast too. So overall, very good round there for Flamesy. And it's nine to five for Vitality. Flamesy said him and Spinks always want to beat the other Israeli players that they step into the server against, going up against Nerds today. And both of them are kind of delivering on that promise. 15 and eight for Flamesy, 16 and nine for Spinks. So putting on a, a bit of a clinic here to ensure that Vitality is going to have a strong lead going into the gun rounds. Yeah, we've seen a lot of big matchups in the playoffs in, in the likes of Cologne between Nerds and uh, Spinks and Flamesy. So, you know, this is definitely something that they've openly said as a rivalry. And we've seen that.
that many a time already. And it's always exciting when we get that matchup. And I'm sure Nurse would just would just hope he's had a little bit longer with this team to, to really have a true fight. Yeah, it's personal for these guys. Here comes a set piece. All five at A for Vitality. Smoke's in place, Nades and Molotov's in place and gonna attack into the defense. Yeah, Flamesy obliterates who takes him out with that grenade. Zai was moving in too, swiftly taking the site here for Vitality. And they're looking for 10 rounds off the back of this and flying through the smoke. It's Flamesy, you can't stop that. The fire will spread and Tessas and Nikodos alongside Nerds are held out of this bomb site. They're trying their best to stay in this one, but Nurtz is decapitated inside of the connector, and Mezzi makes sure that that is quick. Tessis and Nikodos so far removed. Yeah, that was that was emphatic. They kept fighting that whole time. Nikodos over on Catwalk. I think he's been spotted out. Flamsey has now overtaken Spinks inside of his team, so there's even a rivalry there. And uh, Apex is going to go nip at the heels of Nikodos, take him out of the round, and Tessis sprinting. Into the bomb site, he will be caught, taken out, and now it is double figures for Vitality. Yeah, they're they're very much in the driver's seat here, and I mean they don't even have to buy anything. They didn't lose anyone in that round, so I, this will be kind of a this is almost not a throwaway round, but obviously you have some some weaker weapons. You have the Mac 10 on Flamesy, so you might try and get a little creative and activate that from the T side a little bit more. Ah, Flamesy, he's when he's having a good game and he's confident, he's very fun to watch, especially on Mirage around that area of Ticket. He's done some disgusting things. He flies through with the Mac 10 this time. But the guns are back out for Heroic. And in particular, that AWP from Nikodos. We haven't got to see him with it too often on this map. Probably the most memorable round is the one where he had the clutch. Yeah, where he, where he picked it up. I think he only was able to buy it like two rounds in the first half. They were getting bodied for a certain stretch there. Vitality sensed the mid pressure, so they know what's here. And that kill is going to have to get... Oh, I was going to say it's going to make Nikodos fall back, but he goes back for one more, risks his life to do it, and gets away with one. He just about gets around that corner. Nikodos sticking around, though. Doesn't feel comfortable being in just a 4v4 here. Mid control, though, firmly in the favor of Vitality. Plenty of smokes and Molotovs to make their way up Catwalk. Oh, timing on that connector swing just as Zybu would pull back off the angle. But then he goes back as they move off, and this is the trade of position for a moment. Yeah, I feel like he heard a footstep and went back to it. Either way, oh. going to be blocked off. That's a good kill on Catwalk. Can't track the follow-up. That's Apex trying to bait out a shot. Now he knows he's being encroached upon from connector as well. He's got the attention of two players. Time for everyone else to play. And Kickstand holds down this B-bomb site. It's a good shot. Nikodos with a sick round. As soon as he gets that all out, that's a quad kill. He gets four kills, and he didn't really move. His heat map will just show he's around short. And he was confident. He went for three peaks. He went for multiple peaks in the same position, and Nikodos steps up when Heroic need it most. Yeah, letting the op dictate the action. Really well done from Nikodos, being patient throughout that round, being smoked off, being naded back, losing teammates, biding his time and waiting for his moments. Now Vitality get all rifles. Flash room in from Apex. Nertz uh, jumping back into the connector. He's fully blinded. Feels like an eternity he's being blind. This mid control is quick from Vitality. It is merciless as Tessas takes out Apex. It's the first kill for Heroic in the round despite losing significant map control. Yeah, scaled up very far. They saw one in Window, they saw one in Con. I don't think Apex expected the third on Catwalk, so it goes down for free. Four on five. And even though you have mid control that quick and that aggressive, you forced a lot of counter utility out of this defense. You're still playing a man down, so Shush is passive back towards Ticket. And Flames' lurk is going to have to be something special, something slow played. Here comes Mezzi. Creeping his way out ramp. Good contact play, good space being taken here for Mezzi. Detects Shush, who now has to react by throwing utility of his own down. And he would have hoped that landed on Ticket in the end because the fire comes in, forces him to reposition. And Flames, he's over the top of the stairway already. This is uncomfortable for Heroic, but they're still winning fights. They're still on top of it with players, and it's still going their way. Nikodos is moving in, cutting through this attack. And suddenly it's just Flames, he left in a 1v3 as Mezzi's in the ground. And Flames, he can do nothing about it. Tessis locks in a headshot, and Heroic is surviving rounds despite losing map control. Yeah, damn, really nice, really nice defense from Heroic. That passive setup just worked perfectly. Vitality didn't have enough nades to block off all the choke points and just get lured into crossfires. Shush from Tickets able to grab one. That's the Palace player. Forces Flames to probably pounce a little bit earlier than he might have liked. And Tessis holds the line.
Stuck down to a three round lead and without a plant, even the losing bonus can't help Vitality buy in this one. Interesting conversation about how good Heroic can be in the future. I think this, this roster kind of reminds me of when Ents first went to International, where not a lot of people believed in them, and then suddenly they got results that switched everybody on. May I, I really didn't like this roster when I saw it come together, when I saw it on paper. I'm starting to enjoy what I'm seeing here. Yeah. They're making me feel like I had the wrong read of the situation. Yeah, absolutely. And Zywoo's, though, he's got a pistol upgraded into the Deagle. Zywoo's got a double in this round, and that has a lot of vitality into the site. Swings will go and attempt the bomb plan, but that nade has forced him away, and it has taken Zywoo out. Shush will follow up, and how many grenades they got? They keep coming in, vitality melt away, and despite a couple of nice shots from Zywoo, it doesn't get out of hand. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. This is like a similar question being asked from of two teams and from two different perspectives for vitality. It's how far can they fall? How weak of a showing can it be? They've got a chance to be eliminated here at Katowice in the group stage. And for Heroic, how many more expectations can they manage to beat? First the play-in stage, the way they breeze through. And now here, if they're able to eliminate the world number one, you better believe people are gonna start putting respect on that name. Oh, so it was timing just walking back into the nade. <laughs> Sick double lineup with those grenades. A vitality that wasn't around we expected anything from and now they've got a buy again ak-47 some four players mezzi's given the mac 10 and heroic have got everything they could possibly want including that awp which has been so good to watch in the second half of nikodos vitality's having a big issue establishing their mid control in the rounds like they're, they're gaining control of it but it's very costly they've, they've lost one or two players the last two rounds they've tried to run it and tried to take control of the middle of the map there's been nikodos over on catwalk getting that quad kill there's been what i think it was tess's on catwalk able to take down apex for free in the previous round so they go away from it they say screw mid control let's go right at a and Nikodos has got that big green gun ready to go. He's got his teammates up on top of Wood, and that shoots with a singular kill. Nikodos swings out, gets the trade on Zai Wu, and it's all followed up here for Heroic. They are taking Vitality out of these rounds and making it look easy. It's a 10-9 scoreline. There's not a, there's not as many bodies like actually in the bomb set as I think Vitality expects. They're they're falling prey to the player. Obviously, this time it's Nikodos with an off, a strong position over at Ticket. And Tessa's in the previous round. Now Nerds just hanging out around jungle at Top Con able to just cut them down as they try and move forward. This is starting to look dicey for Vitality. It really is. Messi at least gets his hands on a better weapon here. An AK-47 salvaged off the floor. And there is time to play with. They've just got to hit every shot here. And Spinks will get his first opportunity as Nurse swings out. Here comes the window swing, and he nearly gets back to it. We know Spinks is capable of getting those kind of kills, but not this time. And it's just Mr. Merriman left in the 1v3. I'll throw that flash up to stairs. They know exactly where he is. And with limited time now, Mezzi's chances of getting away with this one are super slim. Hey, he's at least got the bomb now. We're moving in the right direction. It's another step in the right direction for sure. But 20 seconds now. No smoke, no cover. Probably just running down here at this point if he tries to plant that bomb. They are doubled towards Ticket, and then obviously there's an angle for Kicks down to swing out short, so Mezzi's not in a comfortable position to plant this bomb, and instead goes for the fight. Good kill on Tessis, had the flick back and hit that instant shot on short, and now Nikodos can time this swing. He's got the headshot, and he also denies that bomb plant. Yeah, switches out to the AWP after the kill as well. 10-9, to 9, Heroic have closed this gap to just one, and again, without a bomb plant, it's not any kind of a buy for Vitality with rifles. They would have loved to have had that extra 800. Instead, they've got to go down to Tech-9. But just look at these holds. One player inside the bomb site, the follow-up defenders further in the back, the layers of it are the effective part. And Apex having a tough time getting a good read on what's happening. And Team Vitality having a tough time getting a good buy together now as well. Deagle's out again. Tech 9 there. They search for 11 rounds. But it is likely to be tied up as Nikodaz goes for that mid peak. It's not a comfortable position for Nikodaz, and he needs to get out of dodge in case they had grenades that follow up that initial damage. He's moved his position, changed it up. The Vitality have got mid, but we've seen that many a time, Jason. They get mid control, it's just they have nowhere to go after it. Yeah, at least this time they haven't like over progressed anywhere, right? And part of it because they only have the deagles, they're trying to keep some of the range and get one of those one of those fortunate one deegs at a distance with a little jiggle peek. 
But yeah, at this point, yet yeah, there's still the trap set up from, from Heroic, considering Nerds at Topcon and Tess on Catwalk have a crossfire. They're just backing away from it now as Vitality step up. Smoke into the bottom con. Flims and Mazzy make their way through it. They're going to be attacking through top con, and Shush has got such a good position in jungle. If he can time this well, if he has a distraction from his teammates inside of the site, he might just be able to line up multiple opponents. Nurts peeks out, and that's all the information gathered. Vitality contacted past jungle and got themselves deep into the bomb site. But once that information is collected, they can peek together. And Flamesy is still trying to fight this one, but it's not going to go a step closer for Vitality. It's 10 to 10. Heroic have tied this game up on Mirage. Yeah, that was a little scary, though. That round, Heroic kind of lost track of the Scaling of Vitality, just walking up Khan. Nobody peeking from jungle, so didn't see them cross into the A bomb site. Nerds goes down. Could have been a little bit dangerous. Thankfully, Tess's on Catwalk was living in relative safety. Able to spam a few down and alleviate the pressure. Which now shifts over to Vitality, who have lost five in a row. Again without bomb plants. It's been locked down defense. Shush burns and Khan steps further back and Vitality going for a palace pop with three players, one in ramp and one out towards top middle. That's Mezzi tasked with holding mid and apex at ramp. So the trifecta of death, the deathly hollows coming through in towards this A bomb site. And they get a hop on down at Saiwu that first kill. Any more to be seen here for Vitality? There absolutely is. It's Sphinx on the double headshot. Nikodos and Nurt's gone. And Heroic's defense have finally been broken open on this A bomb site. Yeah, this is really nice. Mezzi coming in for a flank as well. Tessis. You've got a time limit on how much longer you have in this world. Sitting at the edge of smoke and Vitality now after all the contact. They know the rotation will be here, so they're going to slow play it. Wait for the smokes to clear. Wait so that they can play the trade game. Tessis just dropping further back. Kick sounds worried about a flank coming in behind him, so he's got eyes on that currently, and Tessis is worried about that too. They don't have information on all the remaining players of Vitality. Too much time has gone by for that, and too many players alive. Vitality take their time, smoke out the connector. Now get closer to that bomb site, but Tessis has caught a good angle, and Kicksand's got another one. Vitality had a 4v2, suddenly it's back to a 2v2, and the bomb is in down. Another kill in, and suddenly it's a clutch for Zaiwu, who so often pulls Vitality out of the deepest of holes and has to do it yet again. We haven't had to say his name a whole lot in this game, Zaiwu. It's been mostly Spinks and Flames. Time. This is where they absolutely need him. It's going to be a fight. Zaiwu looking towards CT, and Kicksand wins it up against the world's best. It's the in-game leader of Heroic with a headshot to put them ahead. And Nurtz has got some words right back to him. Right back to him. And Apex, there's that frustration coming back in. We saw it yesterday. We're getting it again here. Just wondering how you lose this round. At 4v2, what happened to Vitality? Where's the bomb plan? Just passive crossfires. Perfectly played from Heroic. He's got some words from his fellow countrymen on the other side. And that is going to be a tilting round for the likes of Apex and Vitality. Heroic now have the lead. They see the light at the end of the tunnel. The, the, the painful thing is that hit looks so much nicer from Vitality. Like you could just see coming in. This time they get the kill onto Nikodaz with the AWP. And then you can see all the follow-up defenders that have been able to like play passively, hold the line, take down Vitality as they swing into fights. They're the ones forced into the action. They're the ones to push through smokes and try and put a stop to the hit. And it's so much easier. But just when all the smokes fade, Vitality no longer has any safety and get caught in transition. Little tech issue as the headphones from Sphinx have been removed. Admin stepping in. I almost think this is good timing for Vitality to have a tech issue, just kind of cool down after that, because that is a very frustrating round to lose. You can kind of see it on their faces. They, they realize they feel a little silly as to how they let that one go. Those, I mean, the round like that, those are always going to be like, that's, that's the sort of round that just gets criticized or, or praised based off the result of it, right? Like, you can make all the arguments in the world of whether it would have been better to rush or rush faster into the eight bomb site with the utility down in a four on two, or let it clear and hope for a mistake, hope for a peak. Always judged by how it turns out. One round lead for Heroic. And a chance to get 12. Vitality have a last buy here. If they lose this, this game is almost surely over on Mirage. There will be no money left in the bank. Not enough to get a good buy in this next round. So this is the last legs of Team Vitality on map one of this elimination match. Her Heroic hasn't had a lead since round six, and Vitality won both pistols in this game.
smoke in. So what is window? Look how, look how much more cautious it is from Vitality as well. This time, no one's even pressuring mid control. No one's pushing down mid ramp. Oh, they vacated no. it entirely. They've fallen into these A hits. Nika Dawes is here again with the ops. Shush is going to be inside the bomb site. Nerds is going to be close by in window room. And Nika Dawes surely strikes true on the first player around that corner. Nice flick back to Flamesy. He sees the second player. This time it's Zaiwu around that corner. And Nika Dawes is looking to drive them one step closer, but it's Zaiwu. He is inevitable in these kind of rounds. When you need him the most, he gets a double headshot out of ramp. A 4v3, now a 3v3, thanks to that pop-up on the ticket. Punches the ticket of Zaiwu, and Nerds drops back down behind cover. Yeah, but Zaiwu's done great work. That's a stunning second kill on the shush inside the bomb site, and the scaling is slow. Kicks in still being kept honest at the B bomb site. Another frag for Vitality, and this one has to be a win. Kicks in a Tessa sweeping back up, but it's Apex that's gone down. That walk. He just said this needed to be a win. Well, Kicksack could deny that bomb plan, and he doesn't do it. He doesn't get that kill, but Tessa absolutely will. What a cleanup from Tessa. It's map point for Heroic. <laughs> And that is so, that, that is so heartbreaking. And Nurse is fired up. He can't believe it. Heroic, you're on map point and world number one in an elimination game in the group stage of Katowice are about to lose the first map. They just get so distracted. So distracted by kicks and over on Catwalk. And it's a perfect call for Tessas to slide out. And Nurse is calling them bots. Wow. Seven in a row now for Heroic. A second timeout for Vitality. They're playing for overtime now. And it's got to be two rounds in a row. We mentioned the fact that they didn't have a whole lot of cash left over. Kicksan was down close to denying that bomb plan. If he denies the bomb plan, Jason, they don't have that bonus cash. This buy would have looked terrible. Yeah, it could even be uglier. It could have been worse. Well, A hasn't worked. Mid hasn't worked for Vitality. What do you call? And that is the question for Apex. He's had x have his say. They've, they've hit the A-bomb site in a multitude of different ways. They've had varying levels of success. They've had four on twos. They've had three on twos. They've had the bomb site in their control, and they've lost it all. You can't have a whole lot of confidence in your hit right now if you're Vitality. And here comes that mid play. Flames and Zaiwu. Sort of debating what they want to do when Flames, he's actually taking damage from that grenade around the corner. I feel like Kixon hasn't gotten any love this half at the B-bomb site. He's been able to rotate over and be effective, but nothing headed directly at him. Oh, fumbled the run boost. This is not Zaiwu and Flamesy's A game today at all. Cannot get around the corner. Here they go. Second attempt to get this run boost going. Flash this time. Sets them up to get Flamesy behind those top mid boxes. In the meantime, it has been Apex to open up this round with a kill on Shush. Yeah, they needed it. Alleviate some of the pressure in Khan. Nerds is holding down the A bomb site all on his own. This will be an eventual split up towards A yet again. A finishing move at the A bomb site. Tessis and Nerds to defend. And this time the AWP of Nikodaz won't even be involved in the action. And they're walking through connector. A split for Vitality to push 11 rounds. Nerds over towards Ticket had a lot of mean words as he got some mean shots to go along with it. M4A4 hopping up, gathering information, doesn't detect anybody out of ramp just yet. That flash lands in the face of Nurse. it's a good kill on Apex. Now he's burning, now he has to change position, and Messi takes him out of the round. <laughs> Look how worried, Look how worried Vitality is, so cautious, they've lost so many rounds with these kinds of advantages. And because the money's been brought a little bit low for Heroic, they're just going to bail out and call a save. Nurse is going to need a drop in the next round. I think Shush might want a drop if it's able to, which Nikodaz can pass over. They need the funds, they need the money. And Vitality need one more round for overtime. The damage that they've done to Heroic's economy certainly print, you know, paints a pretty good picture going into this next round for Vitality. You feel almost confident that they're going to be able to force overtime here. But we've seen them in a 4v2 that should have been their round, and they let it slip. So it's not Vitality that we're used to seeing today. It's it's completely different. There's been a couple of miscues on this on this T side, obviously, which is funny because in the first half it felt it felt completely different. They were just so on point. Flames and Spinks were running around killing everything.
Yeah, well, Spinks have 15 kills going into the second half. Now he's got 19 as we're heading into the last round of regulation. Yeah, everyone on the Vitality side has cooled off. Good frag from Apex and then plenty of time to handle nerds inside the bomb site. That time there's no reinforcements, no support for the A site. So here we go into the last round of regulation here at Mirage. It's either overtime or a devastating map loss for Vitality. In this elimination, best of three, Heroic will so happy if they can close it here and now. This is their best chance against the world number one. And Nikodos is looking for that early fight. He's locked it in. It's Saibu dead on the other side. And it's a bold peek for Nikodos to go back in for a second dip. And he's punished for his greed. Vitality have two kills back. Yeah, Apex gets another one in middle. Tessis is just going to push. Look at the response. He's just like, screw it. I'm going forward. It's about to be Kicksand under pressure in that B-Bomb zone. You just mentioned it a few moments ago, Jason, that Kicksand hasn't had to do anything on the initial B-Hold. He's been good on rotations, but now has to step up inside of the site. And Apex has dived down to the van. It's a kill from Kicksand. He'll drop away, and Tessis at top middle gets Messi. It's suddenly Vitality down to just two players, and this map might fall out of their fingers. Yeah, but you've got your two strongest performing players in this map still alive in this two-on-three. You've got the Bomb Planet. You've got time to reposition as well. Smoke to cover some of these changes these movements and flames he's looking back at short tessa is taking his time to come in on this retake oh they don't know really want to be perfect here they want to be absolutely perfect and you're right vitality don't seem like they're in great positions here to hold this they're looking for fights and Sphinx is one one but he's worried about getting pushed on two sides and there's just too much to worry about so it has to be flamesy a 1v1 it's time force overtime and flamesy has done it of course he has vitality bring us to the bonus rounds 12 to 12 that's hard fought Sphinx and flamesy looked really uncomfortable at a certain point when those smokes were up they didn't know exactly exactly where to position. Good 1v2 from Flamesy, set up by Sphinx, but all started with these kills in middle. Oh, that's so sick from Flamesy to be able to pull off this clutch inside the site. No! Vitality, sigh a deep breath of relief because that is a huge round to win and it gives life back to them again. Heroic though, this becomes so much more difficult for them. They've got to do it all over again. Oh, nice shot from Zaiwu. Now would be a great time to have him take over the game. Your teammates, Sphinx and Flames, have gotten you even Apex with some impact kills. It's time for Zaiwu to bring it home. I think this is the first time we've seen him with an op on this T side. Been playing with the AK-47 for most of it in regulation. A lot of the time due to limiting factors such as the economy. Zayu getting a second chance through the connector. That's information though, he knows that smoke came from Catwalk, he'll be able to call that out to his team. Apex has got into connector though, good position to take here in Kicksand. Jumping around, making noise, and it's Nert's fight from Ticket, he just unscopes as the opportunity to come into his screen. Shush has pushed a ramp, Zayu's gonna come right back at him. That's, oh, that's oh. a very critical miss, but Shush is still an insurance policy. Will he hear these footsteps? Zaiwu's running, and remember, that's the bomb. Knife is out, oh, Shush has got a freebie, certainly, and now it's a disaster. Bomb is down, and now it's a recovery mission for Vitality. Shush is just locking himself onto that bomb. He's gonna sit on it like a mother bird to egg, and he's just gonna hold that. In 35 seconds remaining, it's not like Vitality have a whole heap of time to go and back and get it. And Nurks this time will not miss with his sniper. He's got that kill oh. as he is down and utility used up. Time is burning away and so are the Vitality members. That's a 13th round for Heroic. The first round of OT goes their way. Oh, the play from Shush to push ramp. He's getting pinched from so many different angles. And Apex having a very intense conversation about how he wants this next round to play out. How he wants the boys to be playing moving forward. Back foot in overtime as well. Opening kill from Zaiwu, a five on four for Vitality, goes to waste. And oh, it's, you can see the frustration, they're getting advantages, huge advantages, and still conceding the rounds. Apex sprints into mid, Nurse is in a fight with him, jumps back into the connector before that fight really ensues. And Apex might get a second chance here. Swinging out is Nertz. It's one kill over the top of that smoke, but Apex makes sure it's a trade. Messi fighting from ramp. Nikodos is being bombarded. He's down to two health, but he will stay alive. He's lucky to be alive. 
Very lucky that Mezzi didn't Look take at him Shush. down. Yeah, Shush again has just been getting a little active on this A bomb site. He's like, oh, all right, I'll push. You guys are going for so much mid control. I'll take some risks here and there. And it's panning out. Oh, connects with one more. Again, two HP though. He's got to tuck in close. Holding his breath the whole time. Mezzi's up a ramp, but Zyru and Apex can't reach him. Fantastic that the utility was able to get Nico Dawes out of the round. This evens the numbers out of the 3v3, but Vitality are stuck in middle. And that swing from Tessus does not work out as Zaiwu impales him with the AWP. And this time they're thinking about the flank, but Mezzi just looks away. And Shush has caught perfect time. It kicks down with a killer jungle. And here comes that stamp that's going to end this round, surely. Shush is out of the ramp, and he's just buying his time. He's letting them get in position. Apex has spotted it now on the turn back, but can't win the duel. And now it's about figuring out where Messi went, and Shush cannot win it, despite seeing him on the top. Shush held his trigger for as long as possible. He wanted Apex to start planting the bomb, but those extra seconds where Sh Shush holds onto the shot is what allowed Apex to turn around and find him. Great round from Apex overall. There are so many elements of danger. And this is, Heroic has done this throughout this entire map, is on the CT side. They just find a kill at the perfect moment to, to make the flank that much more effective. It almost happened again here. Mid tag from Vitality once again. They've been getting this mid control. Nikodos, ooh, catches that one. Nerds is starting to use this AWP to good effect. He's got another kill from Anikodos chiming in the middle. And this time Vitality don't have mid too easily. But they still have Captain Numbers even. And Mezzi's pushed out towards Sandwich, so he's got space on the A-bomb side. Flamesy comes up and uses that distraction to take away the Stairs player. And Nerds is under pressure now and overrun. Overwhelmed by his countrymen as Flamesy comes through and kicks Sam forced into a 1v2. Yeah, but he's he's got time. Spinks is picking up the bomb and T-spawn. Doesn't have a lot of HP, but he's got a chance if he gets aggressive to try and find one of these two kills. Ooh, missed jump. Yeah, that is going to waste a couple of seconds here, and he decides instead of going for it again, he's going to go into the connector. And as you mentioned, time is certainly there, and then eventually there'll be that bomb plant attempt coming out of Spinks. And kicks out spotted out towards stairs. Spinks knows he has to just focus on the fight instead of the bomb planting. Because there's two of them, it's enough, and Vitality take 14. They're now pushing forward into the lead. Yeah, good recovery in this overtime for Vitality after losing that first round. Whatever words Apex had for the team got him fired up for these last two. That was much more aggressive, much more convincing from individual players taking fights, taking swings. And even Mezzi started to take more space now. It's like Vitality have cranked it up a notch here in overtime. And the double up setup that Heroic busts out with fails. So Vitality's gonna try. Zai Wu with an AWP, Sphinx with the other. Using their overtime timeout, Saul will have his say. He's 30 seconds before he sends his troops back into battle against Vitality. And we mentioned it just as we came into overtime, Jason, once you're the underdog team and you don't close it in regulation despite having two opportunities, once you get to overtime, once that reset comes in, it becomes so much more difficult to close again. And that just makes it, that just makes it all the more painful. All the more painful if you do eventually get buried. Heroic's map pick of Mirage trying to eliminate Vitality early from Katowice here in this series. Zai Wu with the AWP on the CT side has Sphinx with the secondary sniper. He'll be positioned up towards B. And this might be the perfect spot for Sphinx to cleave away with a kill. And he looks like he's got that opportunity, but a good fast peek around the corner takes the shot out of his AWP. And it doesn't ring. Yeah, well, the question if you're, if you're heroic is, was that Zai Wu? Yeah, that's the other question, is right? Is the AWP at avoid the B-bomb site? Do we go elsewhere? And yeah, they're, 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 they don't want to mess with the AWP yeah, at all. They might run into Zaiwu. And Zaiwu's creeping closer to A, over in CT spawn, crossing to Ticket. So Vitality might have this set up perfectly. And Flamesy is doing his best shush impression. He's pushing Palace. Yeah, and he's got a lot of control here. What a game Flamesy's having. 27 kills. He's got a lot of attention coming his way. Uh, he has a chance for a 30 bomb here, Jason. I wouldn't put it past him. This young man is on one today, but not this time. Nerds hits the headshot, and they are bowing out of this one. Yeah, it's it's early information. Even even though they win the fight, they know that it's called out. They know that you know Vitality can start shifting and cheat earlier before they're ready to execute. So they want to adjust the position of their attack. Forty-five seconds. Tell you what, Flames has that. He has. He wants that peak back. 
He, he's in his head. He's just saying, I should have just sat on that bench. I should have just taken the off angle and waited. Yep. Could have been a huge advantage here for Vitality, but instead it's going against them as Nurts gets a second. This time Apex pushes Palace to his death. And Mezzi's now in an uncomfortable position because he has to find space inside of the site that he isn't pushed from Palace, so he isn't pushed from Ramp. And he gets under Wood. Nikodos with a kill onto Zaiwu. And Mezzi would have to step up with a miraculous hole from under the wood. He's forced into the open by the fire. And somehow, some way, Vitality, despite having all the early positioning, haven't had a single kill in this round. It's the aggression that they brought out in the round that really betrayed them. Uh, heroic ready for it all. First, first the push in towards Palace from Flames. Oh, knife him. Go for it. Do it to him. Kicks and goes for the double stab. And that'll celebrate. That'll be a celebration, absolutely, with an eye kill. Why do you go for a double stab? What's... I don't think he meant. Yeah, like, yeah why did he? do that. Yeah, why would you just, why would you yeah, go just for the, that? the singular right click. You're giving him like a half second to just whip that mouse around. Extra BM. It's, it's this, it's this aggression. First, this one that goes the wrong direction. Then Apex, that's a nice, that's a nice breaking of the smoke. But then Apex pushing Palace in the follow-up, trying to be a little bit clever, trying Ooh. to catch him off guard. That doesn't pan out. And then there's just not enough players to defend. 14-14. A single player with that B bomb side for Vitality. It is Mezzi. And he can't go down here despite Nikodos pushing. It will not be a kill on the Soul B defender who now has Zywu with him over towards Market. So that scope is ready. It's primed. Vitality don't have to deal with a her an early heroic bust into the B bomb side. That's taken a lot of utility away from Mezzi though. Sphinx does manage the spray. He goes down to about half health, but he finds Tess's flames committed. And fortunate to be alive. Oh, Sphinx. Oh, it's so awkward. He goes down in the underpass. Kicksan takes him out. Sphinx run out of ammo. Did he SWAT team out the window? Did he just jump out and go for the battle? Yeah, he went for the full mental play. And now Messi looking back. Oh, that's the bomb carrier. He's detected it, but he doesn't land the shots. And now Nerds comes in. Nikodos follows up. And once again, Heroic are back, looking to fight for map point. Apex slipping out. He denies the bomb plan. What a huge play from the in-game leader of Vitality. And he might just get another one here. Apex swinging out, but it's the apartment peak from Kicksan that's put Flamesy into the 1v2, looking to grab map point himself. It would be 30, but it's not gonna happen. And once again, Heroic battle back through overtime to get to map point on Mirage. Very, very curious, disorganized mid-round decisions from Vitality. I think they they threw away around here to be able to contend with it. Sphinx jumping out window is, is a head scratcher. And I wonder if there was some kind of a call to be aggressive. Yeah, I think he's trying to get involved in the fight that Flames is taking from Khan. But at the same time, Mezzi here is getting pushed and sucked towards Catwalk to help his teammates in middle. It ends up being out of position and just exposed to one of two angles. Has to commit to the Hulls fight and take it down from Catwalk. And that defense crumbled so fast. You can see frustration on all of the Vitality players' faces. We just see it from Zywu, just wondering how do we lose it's, that round? It's frustration that a team like Heroic doesn't have to face, because if you're Vitality, you're like, wow, we've we've won like three events in a row. We've, we, we are the best team in the world. We've played incredible. We've beat everyone. And, and today, it's just that feeling you get when you know, you know you're not on your A game. In fact, if you ask Vitality, they might even say they're on their C or D game today. But the best teams in the world can win with their C game. That's awkward. You have to put out your Messi. own ball. Oh, he's under pressure now, but Sphinx is going to handle it from short. Will Mezzi do the same? No, he won't. Mezzi doesn't get a single kill, so now the pressure really is on Sphinx. Fortunately, Zywu has made a speedy rotation over to market, and Shush has dropped on the ground. Vitality looking to try and force another overtime, but there was flurry of kills coming through here for Heroic and put them ahead, and Sphinx has gone down. It's just Flames on the other side of the map, and Heroic have absolutely done this. Flames is so far away. Heroic have come in with low expectations to this event. No one knew what this team was going to be capable of. We, we wrote them off in that opening game versus Astralis in the play-in. They picked that up, they made it through to the group stage, and now they're about to take this first map against world number one in the elimination game. Flamesy has to dig deep and find everything within himself to pull off this clutch, and it isn't going to happen. Heroic in elimination have taken Vitality's first map away. It's Heroic winning Mirage, and we are having to see if Vitality can come back into this to stay alive in Katowice for the dreams of seeing Zywu compete in the Spodek.
how you find the philosophy, the identity of a team. Because you've got some connected parts. You guys played together, obviously, on the old heroic roster. You've got uh, Nerds and Saul coming over. There's connection there. But then you've also got like the strong voices in the team, the IGL, you're coming in with a different perspective. The Alper, you're coming in with a different perspective. So that's like three or four schools of thought. How do you even start figuring out what you want this team to look like? Yeah, it's 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 very tough, and it it needs a lot of talking and uh, trying out ideas and trying to see what works for us. But one thing we have in common, and everyone is agreeing on, is that we're not going to create one identity. We're not going to be the old heroic or the old end. So, like for that matter, like we want to create our own stuff and uh, find out what works for us. I think that's one thing we have talked about from the start, and going to try and do that uh, as best as possible and that will take some time and you have to accept that. While Heroic apply the pressure and vitality crumble underneath it. The world number one's down one map in this elimination series and a team that has continued to impress us at every single turn. First and foremost, Matthew, for their ability to keep their heads in this crazy first map. And we have to give props to Heroic. And believe me, when you cue me, I am going to go ape shit on Vitality. It's going to happen. But first, let's give praises to Heroic, right? Brand new roster, kicks in his first tracks here with this roster as well keeping their cool under pressure, like late round situations, clutches, moments to navigate where the communication is going to be tested and where usually a team that doesn't have tenure maybe talks a little bit too much because they don't have the code, they don't have the, the words that they need in order for the comms to be efficient. They stayed cool. They knew how to play these late round situations, the retakes. That that broke my heart, but I have to admit, beautiful from Heroic. 100% agree with, with that sentiment, that Heroic played way better Counter-Strike than I think anyone could have anticipated coming into this tournament. You speak about this synergy between the players, the able ability, uh, dare I say, to retake in order to keep their head cool in the pressure situations. It felt like they were communicating on a much higher level almost. There was constantly a trade fact potential. There was constantly someone lurking somewhere on the map, being proactive. All most like watching the old heroic, the Danish version of that. So I'm curious to how much of a, a say Tessas and Shoes have had in that, because on Miras, the way they were playing, it reminded me a bit of the Danish version of heroic, who were constantly moving around, constantly proactive, and at all times made Apex life a nightmare. And this is heroic sort of coming back into the game as well, that great call early on, the aggression onto Zywon, the B side. Vitality is going to be able to stabilize just a little bit, but the scoreline is 7-3, to three, and this is where Vitality should be fully in control. They should be in flow state as we speak, and yet, Jacob, yet, it's not going to turn out the way Way we think it would. No, it's not, you know, and, and you thought to yourself, Spinks 15 kills at this point, 10 rounds into the game. It's looking great, it's looking easy, it's looking solid, but no, Nico does. The man on the hour right here gets the bomb plant again in a 1v2, plenty of time to get the retake done. Unfortunately for the two Vitality players, he's picking up his favorite weapon, gets into a good position, and he's just single handedly getting this one done. A little bit disjointed by the Vitality players, they're running down the clock, but you gotta give it up for Nico does. Yes, pulling off a massive clutch right here when it looked like Vitality were able to run away. I think that disjointed was a uh, symptom of what was to come for Vitality because then Oof. we come into that second half and there were back-to-back oh, -back yeah. rounds, Machu, where Vitality just, just completely crumbled. Secured you up there now. were absolutely horrible dog poop game, dog poop rounds that we're about to see. And this is purely based off pressure, if you ask me. So let's dive into this. Vitality has been on the back end of a couple of beatings, slap left, slap to the right. They finally put a good buy together and they're going to do this abs pop, which is pretty well executed. You see the first fall, the T's are very much in order. Zywo is going to find two kills off the back of the AK. That's Sphinx Rider on the second one. And this is a four versus two. Like, I basically, at the highest level of Counter-Strike, this round 
round is over. Mm. But this is where Vitality overthink and then lose track of whatever the hell is happening in the game because they had the timing, they had the smokes for a while to put the bomb down, but nobody does nothing. And as the smoke sort of evaporates, they make mistakes that only a team that is completely out of control will do. We're talking about losing track of angles, Flamesy being found from jungles, player being found from CT spawn. This is symptomatic of a team that is in panic mode. And I wish this was the only clip. I wish this was the only one I would show you, but there's another one exactly the same right after. Nikodos finds a kill. We're going to talk about him down the line for sure. And then Vitality is going to do a good job at clearing the sites here. There's a bit of a mistake. Zaiwu finds two kills. Welcome back to the server, by the way. It's been a little bit of a while. But then for that 4v3, again, mistakes. Again, people giving their lives away. Vulnerable. Zaiwu being caught off guard here. Three versus three. Still, Vitality should be in a decent position. The utility for the Molotov pushes him out. Three versus two. And I'm thinking, this is it. This is beautiful. They're about to reset them. Same mistakes being made. Giving your back to the CT spawn once again. Who find the kill post or prior to the bomb plant. And then you lose track of the goddamn timing of the smoke. And you get found again when you plant the bomb. These are back-to-back -back rounds. I'm not making this up. This is heroic. Beating Vitality. Handling the pressure better than the best team in the world. Feel better. You feel you feel like you vented now. Sort of. Yeah, uh, I, I, but I think it's apt <laughs> criticism because even when we come into OT, it just yeah. seems like I don't know. Vitality just looked so disjointed. You brought up a good point mm. about Zaiwu, you know, going silent for a few rounds when he could not afford to be doing that because Heroic were just, I mean, they were just reading him like a book, right? One step ahead of the game. I think it's a symptom. You know, I agree with you. Everything you just went through with these rounds is is not well played by Vitality. No, it, it's just undeniable at that point, right? They seem stressed on the server. They seemed afraid to yes. make a move, and you wouldn't really look at Vitality, look at their team, think of the players they have, that they would be the one afraid of making the move. I can't help to think, though, that the way Heroic were approaching the game, the constant way that Shus was always flanking, the way that they were always moving around, stressed out Vitality to a point where they couldn't handle it. So, yes, for Vitality, it was abysmal, you know, mm. absolutely horrible level of Counter-Strike. Being afraid on a server like that, in a moment like that, in a game, not acceptable at that level, especially not if you claim to be the best team in the world, which they have been. But I also want to give the props to Heroic for applying that pressure and constantly make them feel uncomfortable yeah on the server because I know what it's like as a player to be on a server where you never feel safe that there's not someone flanking you from behind. It does create a, a very uncomfortable scenario to play in and I think that was the symptom we saw for Vitality. And fair play to Nikodos for taking full advantage of that as well. Like he was looking like such a formidable force, super consistent and uh, yeah, always bringing the pain. Completely. And Jacob is right. We're not gonna, just going to stand here and talk smack about Vitality. No, no, no. There are praises to be given and to Nikodos as well. There was a propensity for aggression, for trying not only to get the first kill before the execute comes in, and we've had a couple of examples with Nikodos on the AWP. We mentioned, of course, the clutch, as you said, but it was also sort of a, a mindset that Heroic had in some of these rounds where they were on the back foot to not just give up, not just give up, not, don't, don't play the math, don't play the math, don't just say, let's see, let's peek and pro. Like, are there mistakes being made by Vitality? Is somebody going to give me an easy kill? And this is what Nikodos has been doing this entire game, what Heroic's been doing here. Look at the amount of kills he finds with a little bit of aggression, but the right amount of, and just finding that space to be annoying and disruptive to Vitality, props to Nikodos and to Heroic as a whole. And what a signing he's turned out to be for Heroic. You know, he was a bit of a question mark coming into this lineup. He's been within the Danny scene for quite some time. He took a step down from Fnatic as well, where he also didn't play to his best abilities. We never really seen Nikodos as more of being a, an average AWP player who, at certain moments in a game, certain times could have a pop-off game, but that would be it. Ever since he joined Heroic, he's been the best version of himself. And this game yes. right here, Mirage, you're taking down Vitality at a stage, elimination on defense, and you're the one carrying your theme to the play. That's probably the best Nico does we've seen so far. Well, after such an incredible performance on map number one, let's go ahead to the sidelines to check in with Shox and the heroic coach coming into map number two. All right, sorry, sorry. go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I let you guys pass, just talking to Saw there. Um, yeah, he's saying super, super happy with the boys. Of course, he said especially how we grinded out those CT sides and caught them off guard in that regard, and he's very hopeful for the next one. Let's talk about that next map. It is Vitality's choice. It is right. going to be coming down to Anubis. How do you weigh up both these teams with uh, you know, what evidence, what data we have so far? Uh, so the way I'm going to look at this second map is that it doesn't matter to me what map it is. I don't give a flying duck what map we're playing right now. I think it makes absolutely no Welcome role to, club, yeah. to what's going to happen. I think it's all about Vitality and their ability to address the moment, realize in what situation they're in, and make the best of it. And obviously, it's a little bit about the coaching staff, it's a bit about the leaders, but it's about the players as well. Um, they came in here in Katowice with a whole lot of expectations and demands. It's a famous ground where they've been failing years after years after years. But you can make a comeback of a bit. We've had trophy lifting teams who started poorly in events, phase and senior, whatever, lower bracket, all the way up to there. It's one game at a time. 
they are supposed to be the better team on the two next maps that are coming. But these could be any maps. I, I don't care. It's about, are you ready to play the game? Are you ready to give it everything? And if you lose while giving everything, that's fine. That's okay. But this is far from being everything. So it's for me, it's, it's within them. I don't care what map they're playing right now. I 100% agree. It, it shouldn't matter, you know. But if we do want to get a bit map specific, what we saw in Mirage was a, a team that was afraid to make the play, a team that was afraid to be moving around, making the right call and taking a decision on behalf of the MILF. If you're playing Anubis, you know on the CT side, you'd feel like a fish in a barrel most times. You need to be a bit crafted. You need to be able to make an aggressive move somewhere to take away map control or at least gain information. If Vitality are coming into Anubis and they're going to play scared on their CT side, where they're a little bit, you know, freezing up on the server, not necessarily sure what to do, when to do it, they will be punished by Heroic. Because I assume you, after watching them play Mirage, they'll play the same proactive Counter-Strike that we saw. So, if you're Vitality right now, you better get out there, you get your running shoes on, and you go out there and fight. They've got to come out all guns are blazing. Indeed, as potentially one map separates them from elimination. Potentially the last chance that we see Vitality here in Katowice. It's going to be going down on Anubis. Zaiwu, one one thing I wanted to ask you about because I guess one of like the the few like knocks people could have on on you as as one as one of the best players, well probably the best player in the world, is like a little bit of like a lack of the ego. That's always been like a conversation. But towards the end of the year, you've been given some interviews where you're like, I have, I'm, you're starting to build a little bit of a swagger to it because we see the game, and I was a bit bad at the beginning. So I <laughs> came up a bit. <laughs> like, he was hiding in his my body, and he came up like, I need to show up again, and uh, yeah. But most likely because we switch game and. I see, most likely people come to me and is just saying, did you see on Twitter people saying this, this, this to you? I didn't say it at the beginning, but you know, in my mind, you start to speak about, oh, sure. maybe I will not be the same on CS2 or I will not be, maybe not be the, like at the same level on CS2 and CSGO. So for me, it was like under my ego to came back stronger and just to maybe win the next two tournaments and be like super strong with the team. So that was kind of my ego for, the, for that. But what's fun is that, uh how could you think that uh, Zaiwu has no ego when you're the best player twice? Yeah. I mean, okay. we, all know, we all know the ego is there. We just he, don't ever see it. Who cares? He's showing it. It's good that he's, yeah. he's keeping inside of him or just uh, towards the team at some key moments. Sure. doesn't have to be egoist like 24-7. Yeah. That's the beauty of this guy. Like, he knows when to show his ego. Like, at some point, uh, yeah, I'm going to fuck them up. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's my I'm time. Saying, exactly. I'm saying a lot that. Like, <laughs> when I saw that, it's crazy to, to see like tweets from people like working at events and seeing after four maps, Zaiwu is not good on CS2. Just shut the fuck up. Like, <laughs> no, but for real, just, it's like watching a football game and the guy is not okay for two games and say, yeah, he's, he's bad. Like, come on, everyone does it. And most likely, let's, let's also add the, the circumstances. It's a word, tough word for French to, to say. <laughs> 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 I think William nailed it. Yeah. Nailed it yeah. Yeah. That's William. And <laughs> I, I, think, I think it's really, uh, we had like, just the Zonic departure. Magisk was about to leave the team. Yeah. We came to Sydney. We used to come with nine people. Like manager, assistant coach, coach, and uh, performance coach. We came, six guys. <laughs> oh. uh, actually, the war and it's also in, uh, in uh, uh, Israel happened. happened. Like, everything was shit. Like, yeah. nothing could, could go worse at that moment and of course we didn't perform him of course it was tough for him for us for everyone but judging someone on like four maps yeah one of them i was like okay it's just about like uh likes on twitter uh, that's Once why again. after sydney my ego came up so <laughs> you know who i'm talking to and <laughs> see you uh, soon on uh one v one fight
What do we want for you? Hi. Anything else you want to get off your chest? You feel you've been holding that one no, in. I'm like that now. <laughs> it's uh, I need menace. Uh, uh, I, when I have to say something, I say it. I say it. I don't care. Beautiful. Number one team are fighting for survival. One map down our team vitality and Heroic sits on the other side. The pressure's off Heroic. It's about moving through, sure, with this new project, but Vitality, they have expectations. They have to conquer Katowice, and they've got to start now. Yeah, well, at, I mean, at the moment, they might be thinking, let's, let's not think about conquering Katowice. Let's think about just, you know, not having a complete calamity, a complete collapse in Katowice. This is uh, now down zero to one in maps, a chance for Vitality to be sent home early, which would just be unheard of. But Anubis has been such a comfort for them. You have to be so confident, I would imagine, if you're Vitality. This is exactly a map that you love playing. Apex under pressure behind those doors. Zywoo is with him to try and help him out. And Zywoo, even though he took significant damage at the start, he still steps up. He still gets that headshot. Apex, not so lucky. Does get cleared out by Tessus. And Nikodaz has slipped his way through B. Oh, taking a big risk. And he's got an immediate gush. And all of a sudden, there's a route open. Mezzi's going to step up next. And he's going to be forced back in towards Temple. Nikodaz controlling a lot of oh. space. Now oh. boxed in, but Zywoo's cleaned up. That's so clean from Nikodaz indeed. Two positions, switches back and forth. And now it's Flames. He left alone with a 1v3 ahead of him. He'll come back into this clutch with no kit, no utility, but Kevlar and Joel Barretta's the Tessess drops behind him, and that's Assassin's Creed. And that's going to be the first for Heroic. Man, uh, Heroic going back to Mirage has just worked themselves out of every complication presented to him. This is not a bad pistol around Vitality, holding him off and making him pay the tax in middle, and then eventually just Sneakadaz making a play, creeping in, finding Sphinx. Bang, bang. Bang. And kicks that man. What a first map from him. Not only calling, but also just the sheer individual level. He had some great impact. He was he was instrumental at that beep offside towards the end of the first half, just so that just so that Hero could get up to five rounds. They'd been on a huge losing streak, and he's the one that turned it back in their favor. Right out of the gate, Heroic is challenging the beep offside utility. Smokes Molotovs, and they're gonna enter in. They're gonna love that fast smoke you see right there on the left. Throwing it from spawn. Tessa is brought down low, and the pistols arrive to the party. It's Zywoo's Deagle. And it's getting something done for Vitality, but that's about it until Nezzy chimes in, and it's all cleaned up. Heroic with two, and they dispel the pistol pests of vitality. Now it's going to be the buy as the rifles arrive for the CTs. I'm going to build on that. We'll see We'll see when Heroic is uh, throws it out, but they're going to love that fast smoke towards the B bomb site that, that, like, feel that, that gives the pressure of a B hit coming in on a timing. And sometimes it will be a B hit. Sometimes it will be an A hit. Sometimes it will be a lurk through the smoke. They love throwing that as just a conditioning set of utility to obfuscate what they're doing on the map against vitality, against their opposition. Heroic is starting completely towards B, apart from Tessas, who is making his way through middle. Nurk's trying to go through with that MP7, right into Sphinx, he will run. And Sphinx has got the first kill, kicks and pulling it back, Sai was with him. This is good for Vitality so far. The first test in the B-bomb site was no going looking good, but Shush has switched that completely. It's a 1v2 for Apex. He sends the nade <laughs> over the top, hoping it would deny the plant. It sure does a lot of damage to Shush, but not enough. He's down on 13 as that bomb is planted. Apex has a clutch ahead of him. The in-game leader looking to pull it off, and it's one on Shush. It's ready more for him, and Apex is so close, but can't. Oh. 
He used to smile more, Jason? Is that what I heard? <laughs> I thought I heard that in the first map. I'm not sure what he was throwing out there. But man, the entrance through the smoke. Look at this turn from Shush. Individuals on Heroic are making all the plays. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like it. Yep, absolutely sounds like that. You got to give him calls for smiling. Look, we just saw that little that little podcast clip with Apex. And he's in there. Ooh, through the smoke is Sphinx. One more, trade it off. He's saying there, like the ego is there, and, and Zaiwu know when to bust it out, and he can do it whenever he wants. And he's snapping it. He better be snapping his fingers right now. They need Zaiwu on this map. Didn't have to get involved. I mean, he wasn't really involved a whole lot in Mirage in terms of just round changing plays in terms of his impact that we're used to seeing out of it. It was mostly Sphinx and Flame, so maybe he wasn't needed. But now when you're facing elimination, that's when the best player has to be here. Has to. Oh, six shot from Nikodar. Zaiwu cracks open his skull with a deagle in his hands. He wants a bit more here. A kick stand sweeps up two just like that. That's so sick for the MAC-10 because you believe there was a little bit of an opportunity starting to come a ride there on the B-bomb site, but it's gone just like that and Flames, he's coming around the backside. He get very close without being detected and that is not allowed. So he's spotted, he'll run away and Heroic are up 4-0. What a perfect start to Anubis. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you're really piling it on now. Let's see how much they can run with it. If they can start building on this a lot towards the B-bomb site. Conditioning Vitality a little bit, perhaps to be a little bit afraid. But the groundwork has been laid for Kixon to call a great T-side to build upon this. Three AKs, instant walk. This is a map that Kixan liked to call back when he was at the helm of Apex. We've seen it at the Paris Major. You know, at the Vitality one. <laughs> and uh, definitely very stressed over there right now for Team I'm just, Vitality. I'm just cracking up. Yeah, it's like that deep, deep breath. It's like, don't get angry, don't say anything. Just count to five. How long does that last, Jason? How long will that last? It depends on if they start winning. <laughs> Okay, so this is, again, those smokes thrown out towards the B bomb site. You have the instant walk towards dark. They're just going to march right in. Sphinx will, have, Sphinx will have a challenge. Oh, Apex challenges through the window. Nikodaz is caught unawares. So that's a good start here for the Vitality in-game leader. They're given an opening kill to play with. And Sphinx is about to be put under a lot of pressure in dark. He can't handle it. Kicks and cuts through him. Mezzi comes in to sweep it up, though. And that's good work for Mezzi. Now Flamesy under pressure towards the back of the platform. Great work. And Mezzi will assist. Yeah, nice backup from Mezzi. Good decisive action. Pushing forward. He knows a little bit of damage was done. He knows they won't be ready for it. Goes for the unexpected. And Mezzi saves the day in dark. Easy cleanup as Kixon has utility out and then just combining with Flames on a distracted final player. Vitality's on the board with one. And a pretty clean one, all things considered. It's early utility to block aggression outside of B from both players. But Heroic have eyes completely set upon this B-bomb site. They have no other pathway at the moment. They're not attempting a split. They're attempting three players to walk in, as we heard, with rifles and a back 10 at the front of it. And Kixan's charging through. Good headshot. Sphinx taken out. Menzi at the back of the bomb site can do nothing off the platform. Kixan sweeps them up. And this in-game leader is having a field day today. His calls are working out. He's entering. There's nothing more that you can do if you're an in-game leader and Kixan's loving it. Yeah, he's just calling a battering ram at this B-bomb site. This is just round after round. Sphinx and Mezzi under so much pressure, and the timing could not have been worse for Sphinx. He had just stopped a smoke in dark, turned around to address towards towards B main or a, B main, excuse me, and just catches a flashbang full in the face. When does this half start getting out of hand is the question, because 5-1 already. Zai was under pressure. We'll hit that shot on the flick down. I think it's out of hand right now. Yeah. Well, Vitality don't I mean, have the luxury of a map to fall back on here. They're already one map down in this series, and there's no fallback plan in this competition. Yeah, you lose it, this map, you're out of this tournament. It's not unrecoverable, but it's certainly out of hands. 
Weapons will be dropped over. Vitality's fine in terms of their economy, in terms of buying up for this round, but a timeout is necessary. Very necessary. He's talking to those B players. That B bomb site is certainly a weakness at the moment for Vitality. The problem is, like, at the, you might have, like, one more round where you can go for it and just do kind of a standard defense, maybe. But if you start cheating someone over, like, you know at some point if you're Apex with all your experience, you know at some point the action is going to go elsewhere. So if you try and bring an extra body to the B bomb site, you just weaken where Heroic can, can shift and attack next. And this is going to make everyone a little bit jumpier, right? Your mid player, your A player. You start getting some of those smokes and flashes at the B bomb site, and they'll take a couple steps to start cheating on the rotation because it's been lost so many times. It's going to happen subconsciously. So Vitality's got to be very, very focused to try and plant their feet and stop this from getting further out of control. It's a different look this time from Heroic, perhaps anticipating an adaptation from Vitality, so they're going to send players outside of the A-bomb site with that bomb on their backs. It's going to be Nico Dosk is the carrier of that. I wonder if Apex heard footsteps. He bailed out of mid pretty quick to come join up with Zaiwu, perhaps just getting in some safety so Zaiwu can be in this position. There was a lot of noise in the water being made by those Heroic players, but it's Zaiwu, and he's the first player tested, and he passes with flying colors. Couldn't quite get the second, and now thinking about using Utility to get himself off this fountain because Utility is flying towards him. And oh, Zywoo's in a position where he has to rely on Apex to come and help him. He's and that reloading. rifle is so needed, and there's a gap now for Tessis to leap on through, and it's one single kill for Tessis. Flames has to trade, and he will. Back to the B-bomb site. Let's hustle it up, boys. Get your Nikes on. Let's go. Sphinx has fallen back, playing it passively. Nikodaz and Kixon going to be coming through canals. The reinforcements for Vitality arriving as well, and that's a timely Molotov that slowly Blows everything down. It's great utility usage this late into the round, and now Nurt's coming around. He's got himself a fight, and he will win it on Flames. A follow-up kill for Messi, this time for Vitality, but he can't stand strong enough. He eventually will, and it's his second kill, make it three for Messi. Fantastic hole for Merriman. Yeah, that's huge. That is, uh, that's a brilliant triple kill. Heroic was making a way stronger bid for that than I expected. With all the bodies there from Vitality, the slowdown of the Molotov, I expected them to be well prepared, but Heroic hitting some bangers. And a timeout's called from the T side, from Heroic. We got to see all over the map there. It started towards A, the first attack, and still finished towards this B bomb site. But this time, it's a finish that Vitality will, will be happy with. Yeah, Apex's spam really worried me when he's protecting Zywoo. You could hear him just emptying the mag into the smoke, and I was waiting for that jump through. Thankfully, the defense had arrived in support to be able to trade that kill. But things could have gotten spicy. It's 5-2, to two, the three-round lead for Heroic. Dangerous every round they've been in, everywhere they've gone. Vitality have struggled to handle it. I wonder what changes we're going to see from Heroic then after this timeout. When we see them go back to more B starts or into the default, which looks like what we're seeing at the moment. Nikodaz is allowed to fight B. Smoked out for now. So it can't go to around that corner. And I really like thinking about mid right now, Jason. It looks like a tantalizing prospect. But Messi is not here alone. He's got his teammate with him in Sphinx. And that kill on Kicksat will take Vitality into the advantageous situation, but Heroic are through those mid doors. They smoked out Temple. They've got good control here. Yeah, but look, at, I, look I love this protocol. Flames is pushed up into A main, so Zywoo with the AWP can adjust towards camera. And Vitality can be relatively patient with this, because they know they've lost mid, but pressure's not being applied to either one of the bomb sites quite yet, so they don't need to make a move. And actually, Heroic might choose to turn in towards Temple, where it's a double setup. Good headshot. Mezzi will fall. Tessis somehow gets a double on the Galil. That absolutely should have been Vitality's fight, at least the trade. But it's gone back. It's gone back in favor of Heroic. And now Sphinx is tested inside of this B site. And there's no issue. No issue on the double kill towards Temple. He finds himself in the sanctuary of the platform, but he's being pushed from so many sides. And Nikodos is taken out because the rotation came through. And Vitality with three rounds 
that looked like it was about to be disaster again. I, yeah, that, that, that mid set up towards Temple, Apex and, and the Flames just wanted, wanted the information of what was coming, or excuse me, Mezzi wanted the information there. Good initial hold. I love the protocols of the A defenders. That whole round, Flames and Zaiwu. Swapping positions and then eventually, when the Temple double comes out in the favor of Heroic, they immediately just push A through canals, arrive at the B-bomb site at the perfect moment. It saved the day for Vitality. Glocks, Deagles, and a P250. This flawless start from Heroic has been worn away at. Vitality are getting into this half. It was a close affair, though. They had to work real hard to kind of stabilize Vitality. You don't need too many rounds on the CT side, but Vitality have given themselves a chance to push, obviously, to four here and compete with for even more. But this position from Tessis can often net a kill, but because there was no pressure elsewhere, Apex had all the time in the world to clear it, and it's pretty easy for him in the end. Zaiwu, leg shot. Shoots is taken down low, finished off by the utility because of that, nice and easy. And Vitality do grab that fourth. Now one away from tying up this game. Yeah, suffocating that bomb plan, making sure Heroic can't even get into the site and start the plant whatsoever. Five to four. Heroic nursing this lead and AKs are going to come back out. So who's been positioned mostly at the A bomb site with the AWP? We see him a uh, previous round at least started against that anti-eco at the B bomb site before shifting back. This time going to head to B as well. Him and Spinks, Mezzi there. Nikodaz climbs up on top of his teammate's head. A common boost, and it will allow Kixan the information to push forward. Get nope. deeper mid control on that flash out. So Flames is not going to make it around the corner. Nobody's home in middle. Apex will be first point of contact, peering up camera from the boxes inside the A site. But Zaiwu, Mezzi, and Sphinx are all very far from being in Temple to help out. Molotov being thrown, they're going to come through, and Apex needs to win the first one. He does. The others get stuck fighting in the Flames, and now Flames knows that he's got multiple people from different choke points. While well, standing in the water, it didn't burn bright. He's gone out of there. That's the bomb plant coming in without issue. We look to Vitality. I wonder how long this retake attempt is going to be on for. They're currently paused out by those smokes at camera. They want to go for this, but they've got to wait for Messi until he can come in position so they can attack as a trifecta, but that time is ticking on. As every second moves forward, Vitality's chances of winning this round start to shrink. Zaiwu's committed into this one in heaven. Messi's running in here. Vitality go, trying to get back in in this retake, but all of the fights go against them, apart from that one from Spinks, and that's not going to be enough. Spinks has to retreat, and Heroic are back to winning ways. Now, there it is again, though. That, that might be the adjustment from Vitality that Heroic was looking to take advantage of. They had Zaiwu parked in that B bomb site for the entire round. Three defenders dedicated to that B bomb site. Vitality expecting them to eventually go back to it like they've done to start this half. And Heroic's able to just walk through middle. No contact, no information until they're already attacking the site, so no chance of a stack. <laughs> and they're having a great time. They really are having a great time. On the time. Heroic side. Less on Vitality side. Definitely less on the Vitality side. And for Heroic, it's probably a nice time for Tessis and, and Shu to have come into most events last year with the expectation of winning it. Now they have that pressure somewhat off. Nikodar is blinded. Good peek out from Flamesy, but it doesn't get a kill from it, just some damage. And Shush has actually got beyond the initial utility. He's still here. He's committed to this fight. Can't get back to his teammate, and Flames, he will win the duel. Now the reaction from Vitality is to push out B with that advantage to take more space, but Nertz is holding him off. One of the sharpest rifles we got. Ruki of the year with a headshot on Mezzi. Former endpoint alumni going up against each other, and zaiwu has got the angle of dark, but uh. it's a missed shot, a rare missed shot from Zaiwu. Oh, dear. Yep, that's made this round look quite ugly. Sphinx is so uncomfortable. Oh, he's dead. He's oh dead for God. sure. Just a matter of when. But it's good that he got a kill out of that. <laughs> yeah, but because look at look, because they're winning all these fights, look at the way the defense has shifted and split. 
like Apex at B, he's now kind of walking back to keep it quiet. Flames is just arriving, but Nikodos has a long time with his AWP to find a pick. Yeah, he's got to smoke out Heaven. Now Flames, he knows they're committing in, and that low HP player goes down first. Flames, he stays up in Heaven, now with a smoke for extra cover, and it puts Tessas in a 1v2. That's the bar. Jumping down is Flamesy to try and deny that plant. He gets Tessas off it. He doesn't kill him though, and now it's an awkward fight inside of the smoke. Both players damaging each other, but yet to bring each other down. And finally, the peppering of the USP will remove Tessas. Yeah, close affair. Nice adjustment though. Apex just getting back in time. And I think, unfortunately for Heroic, it's Nikodaz leading the way with very low HP in that AWP. If that was an AK, maybe a little bit more danger to this reposition. Ooh. Flick just a little bit off. And kicks it again, doing good work on this T side of Anubis. Oh. Heroic would like to leave this half with a few more rounds considering the start they had. This war of attrition has got vitality back into play. Hasn't been a bad CT side altogether once they've planted their own oh, oh. nice shot. Once they've once they've actually got settled into it and settled down. It's a four to one run at the moment, a chance to make it five. Just by nature of how dominant the, f the opening stages of the half were for Heroic, it just feels like it's, they've always been in recovery mode. Zywoo with the shot, it's damage. Zywoo will have to drop back to the camera, but he's blinded. Flash on that camera, a little too bright. Oh, everyone plenty from Vitality's here. Yeah, I was going to say plenty of players, but absolutely everybody's here. It's a wild fight to try and close this half as Vitality tries to oh. step up, but Nerds on the D brings them down, and Zywoo suddenly the last player left alive. 1v2 for the Frenchman to clutch this. And has he got the right read? Has he made the right maneuver to try and stop Nerds from having a miraculous moment here on Anubis? Plants is coming in. Zaiwu has a chance because Nerds is separated from his teammate. Zaiwu could take him out and defuse immediately, but Zaiwu hasn't taken the shot, hasn't taken his chance, and now he's got to know. Taps that. Now smokes off dark. Zaiwu is going to apply that pressure and try and figure out where the last remaining player is coming from. And Shush is coming through dark. Zaiwu is starting to consider so many different positions, and now he'll begin to stick. Does Shush try and deny that defuse? He won't. And Zaiwu does it without a kill. He just sticks it for a must win round. Six to six in a must win map if Vitality want to stay alive. The iceberg of success. Above the surface, the sharp, blinding tip. What everyone pictures when they hear your name. The headlines, the accolades, the trophies, the confetti flooding your face. But lying below the surface, plunged into the darkness. Years upon years of trials, tribulations, failure, rejection, heartbreak slapping you round the face. Adversity is one thing when those around you support your dream. But what about when no one ever believes you'd even come up for air? Let alone stand amongst the greatest of all time. change of lens, a new perspective. Because for one man, unadulterated aggression was paramount. In 2015, Apex was basically a wild animal. 
untamable, very aggressive, very emotional as well. He would rather destroy the wall than pick the lock. That's how he loved to play the game. Meanwhile, regional politics reaching boiling point. French players were given way too much power for way too long. It was a big hindrance for the scene. Better lineups arguably could have been put together as people put the victory above everything else and no politics or no issues left and right. And then, deserted. Watching your fellow countrymen leave you drifting in a vast open sea. Heroic lead this series one map to zero, but Vitality claw back a slow start on Anubis to 6-6 six, six at the turn of that first half, Jason. Yeah, and this is the map that they've wanted to take this on. This has been a comfort pick to them, and for them to struggle this much, it's got to just be compounding the frustrations. All tied up, it all comes down to this last half. Does Vitality have what it takes? That champion mentality, can they get it back for this half to bring us to a map number three? Extend this series and keep their hopes alive. Stack in middle. Seven bodies in middle across both the teams, and here we go, it's a brawl. Nurse with the headshot, second in. Kicksand stepping up for the defense here, but Spinks is on the triple. What a pistol he's had so far. Look at Apex. Apex has crept into the B bomb site, wrapping around. Tess is looking for the drop. Yep. Apex needs this. And he's so close to getting it. Oh, he's so close to burst to the chest. And oh my god, how has Apex not won that? He is so unfortunate not to pick that one up. So now it is on Sphinx to ace clutch this one. All five kills needed. And he should have got that one. Tessis is untouchable. Tessis has sanctuary somehow. He's protected by something greater because he should have died many times. Yeah, he's got plot armor. He just can't go down. Uh, Apex probably regretting that switch to burst fire, yep. I would imagine. You always regret the switch to burst fire. Keep it nice and simple. Single shots. And my goodness. I cannot believe Tessa hits the shot. Look at that. And then somehow, Dodges Spinks doesn't get it. All the bullets from the duelies. Yeah, <laughs> that's uh, was very close to a death slam. <laughs> yeah, that little maniacal laugh. He knows what he's done. He knows what he's gotten away with. And Vitality didn't get a bomb plan, so now it's AK-47s. Now it's uh, Tech Nines and Eagles. Yeah, you got to be feeling very stressed right now if you're a Vitality fan. Zaiwu's got the hero AK-47. What can he deliver Vitality in this round? Still been quiet across this first map and a half of play. Still looking for that trademark impact. He's going to lead the way, but there's two players here. Oh, had to readjust his crosshair. Nikodaz off a of fountain, washes them away, and Apex is held behind that smoke. Good initial hold here for Nikodaz. And let's put Vitality in a difficult position here. Apex has to figure out, is there another pathway we can take to get back into round 14? Oh, he's got all the utility as well, and the AK-47, so he's got to set himself up and lead the way. Flashbang just bounces off the pillar in front of Nikodaz, but no aggression while that smoke is up. Heroic, meanwhile, have got a ton of information. They know what's happening. Three players have shifted over towards A. Nurtz has already pushed B. The only pocket, the only gap in this defense is canals to the B bomb site, and ain't nobody heading there. Okay, Zach, close corner. Player swings around him. Rotation from Tessas is absolutely needed, and it's felt. Sphinx cannot get it done. It is another headshot from Tessas, and Heroic start the second half in a strong fashion. And again, without a plan, it's like you, you invested enough in that round to be dangerous for Vitality, but you can't buy up anything here. Nothing positive. Both these halves starting a little bit slow for Vitality. Yeah, and unfortunately for Vitality, they don't have a lot of room to play with. If you have a slow start here and the big no goes against you, you are completely out of IEM Katowice. They have zero room to play with. There's, there's no more. Five deagles, no armor, looking for picks. If you're Vitality, you almost need one of these rounds to go your way. Like, you need some crazy individual moment to just spark something in you. Well, this is the start they needed. 
Again, Tessa's taking damage, but staying alive. He'll use his utility as a corridor of cover. And his teammates rotating in. Flamesy is in the midst of all the chaos. Knife call because he ran out of ammo. And Nikodos and Tessus are winning fights with USPs because they had to switch to their sidearms. Saiwu is live fighting on default. And he is overwhelmed through the smoke <laughs> as well. Vitality getting nowhere. All right, Tessus is just a god right now. What are you supposed to do about this? When's the last time you've seen Tessus take over the server this hard? This is sick from Tessus. Yeah, it is. It's a, I, I feel like it's also individually a very ugly game from Vitality, which is now becomes the question is, can they overcome that? Can they, can they lean on the team enough to overcome individual deficiencies that we've seen in this series so far? I mean, it can't be overstated, the expectations of Vitality. We started this tournament talking about the fact that the rest of the field doesn't seem that strong yet, right? It feels like Vitality in phase at the top. With Spirits opening game, we maybe thought, okay, they're in the mix too now. But they're, Vitality just aren't in the mix at the moment. They're the team, if you ask someone who's going to win Katowice, you're just like, I'll be boring and say Vitality. Absolutely. Like, I won't take a risk. It's like, that they have, they have the highest percentage chance of winning it. And it all made sense leading into the event, but from what we've seen so far, things have changed. They could leave without a map win. That is a reality that we are looking at right now. Vitality have Zywu on the AWP, who has taken damage early on. Nice position here for Flames. He kicks that, goes around to still check it. Flames, he still wins that fight. That's a little too loose from Kixon. For as strong as he's been, that one got away from him. Trying to do a little bit too much, too fast, and really force the issue. Flames now has a very strong lurk in middle. Oh, he's he got does. the angle on Tessas, who still, who still cannot just lose a fight. He's unkillable. Tessas is a brick wall right now. The vitality can't break through. Maniac said Apex likes to break the wall instead of lock picking it. Well, he's got to do that right now. They've got to break through. This heroic defense, who currently still have four players up, and Apex is coming through those mid-double doors. Smoke is up at Temple for the time being, which does give some time for Apex to either decide he wants to go camera or stay in position and cut off that rotation. Defense is still aggressive at A, though. They're paired up as well. They're going to move forward or fall back together, and they're just going to fight right here, right now. Good kill from Mezzi. And now it's Nikodos who has to fight them on two fronts, and Apex has the perfect timing to execute him from the side of the head. It's Nertz and Tessas on the other side of the map, and given that Vitality have four players inside of this site, in the post plant, you don't see them going for this retake. Nah, no business doing it, especially with, uh, yeah, especially because you're going to need the money. Shush has zero dollars. So I'll have to drop one over. So Vitality, seven to nine. Get a little bit closer, trying to build up some momentum. Given a gift of an opening kill from Flames in middle. Yeah, this kicks on going a little bit wild, jumping through those doors. Flames, he couldn't have asked for more. And then this fight. Going against Shush really opens up the round for Vitality and Nurts is on the beach. He's looking to clean them up. They don't have a lot of money left. Vitality. Oh, it's absolutely massive from Nurts to get three kills on that beach. And there's Saiwu gone as well. They fought them on the beaches and they took every weapon away. That's actually massive. That, that's a huge sequence of exit kills to bring the AK-47 forward as well. Oh, Vitality just went around, and now they have to sit on scraps. They've got to spend so much cash. Oh, this is now getting into a scary territory for Team Vitality, and they know Heroic have just been given a gift here, so they're going to call a timeout and talk over what Vitality might be able to get out here. From mostly AK-47s and an op on Zywu to three Galils across the board for Vitality. Oh, That's wow. so painful. Yeah, it really is. And now... The in-game leading chops of Apex, combined with that of Xtaz sitting behind them, or rather standing. Marching, giving his orders. I have to try and figure out how to make the most out of this weakened purchase. Team Morale still there for Vitality. And we get into round 17. What a devastating moment that could turn out to be here. Vitality lose this round. Heroic can start to take control of this second map, and we could be looking at world number one on the brink of elimination. Lean towards A out of spawn. Mezzi, Zywu, and Apex heading in that direction. Sphinx and Flames just playing back far, looking for pushes, keeping the defense honest. Kicks and slowly backs away from mid as there's no utility, no presence. Both teams operating without information at this point.
very passive at A for Heroic. We've seen them battling at Fountain. We've seen them pushed up close to the choke point this time, playing very far back towards camera. Yeah, Shush, a very reliable anchor player. He's stuck up on the bricks. He's got his teammates coming in too, and it is very passive here for Heroic, but they've thrown out a defensive smoke. Molotov missed as well into the site. And this has given Heroic a lot more space to play with than Tessas. Moves on in with that smoke. He takes out Mezzi, he takes out Zaiwu, and now they run back. Vitality with 45 seconds left. Do not break through that A bomb site. They've only got three smokes, one flash, and three players left to do this. It's only allowed, for the, that double kill to Tess is only allowed by the fact that the Molotov misses. If it's there, if it's burning, he's not able to creep into that position at that timing. Another individual miscue from Vitality, this time in terms of utility. They have no time to go back to B. They have to go to this A bomb site, and there's three players close by for Heroic, ready to take them out. And remember, if Vitality lose this round, money's in the bin, and chances become smaller <laughs> of staying alive, and Tessis just mauls them. This is incredible from Heroic today, and eyes are crying at this point for Apex. I feel like this is becoming too much to bear. 21 kills for Tessas in this map. What a time to step up right here. Double kill. Fortunate that Zaiwu's just making his play as he catches sight, but this is all skill. Hold the line. Cut down our flames in Apex. And I think Vitality feel it coming now. Just look how much work they've got to do to get back into this game now off the back of that. Flamesy diving down into dark. Nurse is holding, and he will hold it without issue. Vitality are on pistols. Heroic will soon be on 11. And it's got to be near perfect from Vitality from then on in to keep this dream in Katowice alive. I mean, it might be timeout time. I just you better have a badass speech prepared, but hold the phone. Okay. Double Teagle kills from Spinks and Apex. They commit to the fight. There's the pounce from Canals and Kixens here. He's had a good game as well, but the off in the hands of Apex picks off the rotation and Shush is going to go for this. And they know he's that AI anchor. They know they've got some time before he makes it on that rotation. He's coming through the canal. This is his access point back into this retake. He's got to pull off a 1v2. Apex has the AWP out at B main. There's some utility available here for Shush. He can apply pressure with that the closer he gets, and he decides to sever off Apex from Zaiwu. And Zaiwu only has a Deagle. Zaiwu doesn't have the weapon of choice here. He's saving. And Shush isn't going for it. He's coming back. He's drawing himself back to safety, and Vitality are given the round. Yeah, that's okay. That got, that got diced. Hey, that, those are opening Deagle shots that are absolutely necessary. And look, that's a little bit of a gift. That's that's a little bit of a miracle given over to Vitality in this round. You don't get many more of those, so if you're Vitality, like, this has to be the launching point. This has to be the moment where we all snap back, snap back into our top shape. Oh, same time, sequential from Apex and Sphinx. And it holds Heroic off of 11 and puts their money in a precarious situation. Kixon's got to drop down to the shotgun. That just blew the game wide open again. Yes, it did. And you can see the frustration from those heroic players because they know when you go up against a great team and you drop the ball in one of those rounds, they can come back into it. They can stay in this. The heroic's work becomes harder than it previously was. Taking their time. Placing nades in towards... Ikudal is in middle. Mezzi receives damage too, down to 47. So both teams just tentative in their approach to get involved in fights, just placing utility and slowly taking space towards middle our vitality. And it's Flamesy at the front. He's got himself into the smoke. And it can be a bit of a risk when you're up against this XM 10-14 because it clears the smoke open. And this time Kickstand's got that kill on Flamesy in mid. Yeah, just, just red based off the flashbang. Nuo is likely to come and pre-fires everything blindly into the smoke. Apex, oh, you're in oh trouble. The God. shotgun is doing work. Oh, CS2 on the XM. It's a perfect combo. And now Vitality, we mentioned this round needed to be the spark that ignited the fires of the comeback. And now they're down in a five versus three. Vitality are entering this B bomb site with two players through dark. It's Zaiwu and Mezzi coming through this way, and Spinks is a long way off. But when you've got Zaiwu, you've got the battering ram, and he gets himself into the B bomb site. Back to a 3v3. Yeah, they absolutely needed him to step up there. They absolutely needed that entrance. Now, they yeah, heroic have a decision to make. Do you want to go for this three on three? This is all the money you've got. Bomb has been 
not really in great positions as well. Nikodos would have to drop down into the scope of Zaiwu, but they're starting to creep forward. Kixon's going to see what he can find. Yeah, they're attempting this. They're going for it, and they're taking their time. And they want a, they want a mistake. I think they'll back off if they don't get a peek from anyone from Vitality. Yeah, and no one from Vitality is willing to offer themselves up in this kind of situation. They know how crucial this round is, but Heroic feels so close to it, they're going to throw that flash in. They'll send Kixan to his death. He had extra money thanks to that shotgun, picking up multiple kills, but Heroic will not be finding success in this one. Vitality have used that previous opportunity to get two in a row. Yeah, well, they, they've, I mean, both of these rounds have been really, really tough for them. I mean, obviously, the previous one with the Deagle is a little bit of a gift. This, they're starting at a three on five. Those are tough rounds to get started in, and Heroic still have elements of danger on the map with two saved rifles. Worst timing possible for Nerts. As the utility comes out, good opening found, and good follow-up from Mezzi. Timeout taken, third and final for Heroic. And it just shows when you're up against a team like Vitality, when you do lose a round where you're going up against pistols, it just rips that game back open and allows them back into play. Yeah, that, that's, that, that's the missed opportunity. They'll be thinking of that one. An economy is just shattered. Two saved weapons are nice, but such a small losing bonus that there's not really a whole lot else they can bring into this round. Vitality on the verge of tying things up. Shush and kicks out. About to head out with some A aggression through that smoke. Flamesy catches Nico Dawes, but that blowing of the smoke has allowed one kill from Shush, but the reply is swift from Zaiwu. He now switches his crosshair to dark. It gets ever closer as Vitality set up a B split finish. And there's the peak that will end in death for Tessus. You know, kill Bull is finally felled, and Nertz just diving down that's with a double, that's and the that's the bomb detected. Oh my goodness, Vitality. They've got Kicksand coming back to join Nertz. This becomes so difficult now as you walk into Nertz, and oh, it hurts. Keep your soul out of his reach. Nerds is just hiding on the other side. Flamesy has to clutch this. And there has been easier rounds for Flamesy. He's got to worry about two angles, and he doesn't even know about it. That's four from Nerds as he dives down and delivers the round. Yeah, tough shot for Apex as he's falling. Can't track it well enough. And yeah, there's a definite timeout called from Extaz. He needs to get involved here. He knows this is a low point for the team. Comeback stops short, two rifles brought forward, and Nertz again. This brings them closer to eliminating Vitality. It looks swimmingly for them, it looks perfect. The B split was just moments away from happening, and that would have been the knockout punch. Nertz sensed that timing. He sensed that a hero play was needed. He dives out of the window, down into the water and gets the double to drop the bomb and pull Vitality into an unfavorable fight. Now the world number one really is against the ropes, bloody-nosed and desperately fighting to stay alive. Their issues in Katowice continue. The curse is a weight that they just cannot shake off. 9 to 11. Both teams losing against a low economy round down the stretch of this map. And Zaiwu no longer with the AWP. He's got to descend to the AK. Extremely serviceable as we know. Oh! Nerds is gone. The hero from the previous round for Heroic is out of there. Sphinx is pretty dedicated to B main. This, this feels like at some point Vitality want to join up with him. Apex and Flames taking mid control. Nobody's home. That kill from Apex has taken resources from middle as Kixon had to slide back to B.
No decision made just yet. Spinks feels like there's a gap here. An opening for him to move into B. There is. He's going to get it to Tessis. Tessis looking the wrong way, but somehow Tessis, the unkillable, turns back for that kill. And now we're looking at 11 to 9, 4v4, Heroic pushing forward for map and series point. Yeah, but this is great. They're showing an A hit and heading B. And Vitality have got Apex through that smoke, but Kicks has detected him. He's got that kill. Apex is locked out, and now it's down to this 3v4 post plant. Heroic trying to come back in. They've got no smokes. They've got no Molotovs to block off these choke points. Just a flashbang. Oh, it needs to be a clear. Flames gets the deep player. That's Tessa's default, low HP. He needed that kill, and Flames locks it through. Now Mezzi holding Dark. Shrouded in the cover of darkness, his teammate Zaiwu is fighting elsewhere. Shush takes a headshot on Flamesy, but yet to clear out Mezzi. And Heroic realize they're so far away from winning this round, they're going to bail out. It is going to be 10 rounds for Vitality. And Mezzi is going to try and stop them from getting away to safety. He has to run away himself now, but it's 11-10. Vitality with Stan. They don't go down to map and series point just yet. What a rebuttal. Just enough of a fake. Smoking off Temple. Utility used towards the A bomb site, just enough to keep that B defense as weak as possible for that hit. Absolutely spectacular moving around the map. This Apex will love it. Spam through the smoke. Nerds gets paid back for the previous round. Goes down. When Tessas turns on Spinks at the start of that round, you just think everything is destined to go heroics away. The real, the real key is is that as that peak from Flames, because there was no no nades for Vitality to slow down any kind of a retake. That flashbang was the only piece, the only resource they had, and boy did they put it to good use. Economy again factors in. Both teams. Low on cash, but it's Heroic who will feel the sting worse. The sting of the B. As Vitality flash in towards A. And his Mezzi that clears out Fountain with some spam. And following up in behind it. Vitality running through. It's got to be a big hold here from Shush. And he is not the anchor they need this time. He gets taken out by Mezzi. And thoughts of a save certainly were around Heroic's head at the moment, but yep. they've got so many players nearby, they're going to have to retreat because of that money situation. If they go into this in a 5v4, the money would fall away. Yeah, especially the missed shots from Nikodaz as well. Not able to connect any of the two players streaming in first from Vitality. Nice and simple. Vitality didn't throw any trickery into this round. That was telegraphed the whole way. They didn't. They weren't. They weren't shy about showing what they were going to do. A full execute at the A bomb site, and Mezzi nets them the instrumental kill. We just did get information on the elimination of Cloud9 in this competition at the hands of Monty. Kicks in up on that platform, desperately trying to hold on to this weapon. He does. Apex cannot take him out. And Flamesy comes around the back, so Kicks in is traded. The majority of these weapons will stay in the hands of the heroic players. And it looks a little more chill over there for Vitality. They were perfect being thrown around. 11 to 11. This would sting a lot for Heroic to lose this map. This is your best opportunity to 2-0 this series, stay alive in Katowice, yeah, and I'll knock out the world number one. Yeah, I'll say though, I mean, the desk kind of highlighted it. We'll get into it later if we get there, but Vertigo, not exactly a comfort map for Vitality. That, that doesn't have, you know, that map has its issues for them as well. So might be more chances for Heroic, but certainly Close it out when you've got the chance in front of you. Do they want to use this Lurk Smoke? Apex, I think Tessas might have spotted a little bit over the edge of the smoke. Fortunate to get away without taking too much damage. Kick sounds forced down with the shotgun. We've seen what he did with that earlier. This time, it's pressure upon this B-bomb site from two sides from Vitality. They've got the players in position for a split. They've got three defenders here, though. This is going to be so hotly contested if Vitality commit. It's hard to tell where this round will go. But it's the most important yet. And it comes down to a brawl on B. 
Zaiwu's the only, like, X-Factor in, in Dark. He's gonna have to wait. Apex, Sphinx, and Flames will try and take the attention. Meze's still lurking outside of the A-bomb site. Zaiwu, oh. they step into him. Oh, and Apex builds upon it. Those entries are absolutely massive. It gives Vitality all of the advantages they need to push in. And go for this round win. Shush dives off. One kill found, but the rest of his teammates are falling, and so will he. It's now just Nurts and Nikodos trying to cleave this one back, and it's a decent kill here for Nurts, but he needs another one if it was to be realistic. And they need it quickly. Think of the money as well, though. I don't know if they commit to this. Nurts is going to swing and see what he can find, but they have no cash in the bank. It's all on this. If they had some utility, they can make this a little more doable, but it's not comfortable in its current form. Sphinx has the angle, looking away is Nurt, and now the AWP of Nikodos misses a shot, and they are sentenced to death. 12 to 11, Vitality have map point, and Heroic have no money. And as much of a struggle it's been in for Vitality, give them credit, because they have felt like they've been collapsing under the weight. They're in the midst of a 5-1 to one run at the moment, four of those being bomb explosions. This has been a great recovery on the T-half overall, because Heroic is out of funds entirely. They woke up just at the right time, the I last second. I don't even know if they've woken up. They Every every round still seems tense and close. Uh, this isn't. They're not dominating in any fashion, but... They're just getting the job done. And I think for them at this point, that's exactly all they can hope for. Just get the job done and reset between the maps. Beautiful nades. Oh, those nades are going to land perfectly. Test sets and nerds eat them up for lunch. And that is not the start to the last round of regulation you'd be hoping for if you're heroic. Two players almost canceled out immediately. Shush playing solo at the A bomb site, holding onto what nades he has. He's got a full kit, but he's holding onto him as long as possible. Just forced to use a Molotov. Mid control for Heroic. There's no presence there from Vitality. Means they can ship between the bomb sites pretty quickly. And Zaiwu has been such a threat when he goes into dark. When he's gone into that position, he's been able to entry, he's been able to come in second just finding impact so consistently. This, this but it's round, not a play towards the B bomb side this time. This round feels very similar to the previous round, which is why you can see on the minimap, Heroic has shifted over here. They've sent everyone in this direction. And now, again, just poor Shush. He's got an MP9 and a nade. That's it. And now he's only got 41 HP. He has to wait for people to arrive. Oh, he goes for one more. That's massive. Zaiwu no found elsewhere. A chance, a hope. How have they found their way back into this? But Sphinx from the window cuts off that rotation. It's just one kill. Yes, he would have hoped for a second. And yes, it is the untouchable. Tessa stays alive inside of Canal. Apex finally brings him to his feet. And now we're looking to two versus three. Heroic still attempting this retake. There's no kid alive on any of these three players, so time certainly becomes an issue. And Flamesy even more than that. Apex with him, Shush left alone. A great fight from Heroic on this second map, but it looks like they will not survive. The sting of the bee. Second map goes Vitality's way. This series goes to three, and the hope, the dream of Vitality and Spodak remains. With Apex, I think his, the individual performance is skyrocketed. It's really nice to see him play so well. Kind of reminds me of watching him play in uh, the old games when he was just an entry fragger and running around. I think his biggest change was uh, his individual level. And I think it got uh, really good, actually. Because usually you think when the older they are, it's harder to adapt and this kind of stuff. But I think his adapt were really, really good.
I think uh, when comparing Apex and Carrigan, uh, you kind of have this team around them where you have four strong players and then a very dedicated leader, person who's, you know, always capable to take the wheel and when times are tough, you know, bring the boys up or when you need any sort of call, they're gonna do it. The amount of work he puts in gives him the confidence that he is the smartest on the server and the best on the server and it always reflects in his play style. Like even if he's like 210 or like 010, he's still gonna go for the play because he believes in him and he also believes in, in his team. I think everything about him is unique, the way he plays since he was a player before he kind of, I think he calls differently than other IGLs in some way. I mean, he's definitely top three IGL in the world today, so. The only weakness of Apex I could maybe point out is his mental, but it's also his strength. Whenever he's winning, he's hyping up the team, but when he's losing, I, I believe it could affect his teammates of how he acts, but with enough time, I don't think it shouldn't affect you because it's just his emotions, just who he is, and he doesn't mean it as a harmful way. It's a weakness, but also his strength. The Curse of Katowice are almost inflicting its full wrath upon Vitality, but in the 11th hour, they make this one count. We are going to a third and final decider. We are witnessing, Jacob, the first map win for Vitality here, and goddamn, did they need it. And oh my, do they have to fight for it right now, Vitality. How we came into the game thinking, yeah, had a rough start to the tournament, ended up losing two ends, but against Heroic, a newly formed team, you should be able to go this one. You know, 2-0, having a good time, farming some confidence, getting started on your lower Bracket one, not the case at all. Vitality is pressured to the brink right now. They came very close to losing Anubis as well. I think again, Hero played a great game of Counter Strike, played their chance, and were able to pressure to Vitality to a point where I, at certain points in that game match, was worried that we were going to see Vitality leave the tournament, finishing last. And and you would not be wrong. I at some point was convinced that this was the end of the Vitality tale here in Katowice because I think they would have deserved it. I think at some point they deserved to be eliminated, yeah. and I have to admit that for the first time in this series, we witnessed Heroic have a little bit of pressure. You know, this moment where you're on the brink of accomplishing something great, you're on mm -hmm. the brink of eliminating, eliminating the best team in the world, and then you do the extra move, you overcompensate a little bit, you force a duel here and there, and, and Vitality saw an opportunity, seized it, but holy hell, I can barely believe it. That's the example right there, of course. Uh, you see it's an eco round coming in from Vitality, 10 to 7 for Heroic. You are in control, 5v4, and this is where the perfect is the enemy of the good. Heroic is trying to assert dominance in that 5v4 against Pistol confirmed. And what do they do? They're going to pop flash their way out of the B main to try and clear that out. In, pra in principle, in theory, that's all good. The problem is this is the way back for Vitality, punching their ticket into a survival mode that was absolutely not needed. This round kickstarted what was finally some life, some life in the Vit Vitality camp. And I think if you're a Heroic, you hate yourself for that round. You profoundly despise that decision. It's one of those rounds you're going to look back at if you were to lose the third map because the game, as you said, was pretty much over at this point. Totally. 11 to 7, Vitality in the binks. They couldn't do anything about it. And for Heroic to be that proactive to wanting to flash out in a situation like that, it's inexperienced. It's wanting it too much at a wrong time. I think it's fair enough that they got punished for it. And that was Vitality's way back into this game. Yeah. And I think for, you know, to add on the extra heartbreak for Heroic, we see some individuals really shining bright throughout the entirety of this series, which, in all fairness, we, we, we weren't expecting to show up versus Vitality. No, I mean, when you see how Tess has been playing in that very map, you, you have to command him. And he's a player that we in the past would refer as to crumbling in some of these moments. Sure, he absolutely sure. didn't here. Um, he was a thorn in, in the nail of Vitality or a thorn in the side of Vitality, always multi-killing, sometimes surviving on that A side for longer than needed. He played well with the smokes. Vitality at some point tried this sort of wall of smoke to have Zywu sneak into side, but it was a gap. Tessis gets the multi-kill. He even adds two on that one as well. So individually very present from Heroic and also just Tactically speaking, before the moment that we showed people, I feel like Kixen was doing a checkmate to Apex. That whenever they're trying to take middle, he would, what was that, what, what, how they call it, alligator, the shotgun, whatever the term is, like double shotgun kill. He would always punish them when they were trying to take that space over here. It felt like Vitality were out of options, out of steam, and I think this eco round gave them a new lease on life. Even just in the head heads, I feel like Kixen had Apex's number basically Probably. every single time. Um, was it just a mental game for you then, Jacob, the reason why Vitality were able to? 
to narrowly, albeit, edge this one out. I think Heroic showed a bit of an experience. You know, the round we showed just before with, with that push, that is unforgivable uh, to some extent. It cost them the game most likely as well. I'd argue as well the Vitality, again, they, they're so tense right now. We spoke about it in the green room yes. as well. It, it feels like they're so tensed up right now. You can even see it in the body language as well on, on some of the players that whenever they can make a, a wrong decision or whenever there's a clear pathway on how you win the round or what you're supposed to do, they hesitate. They always hesitate one or two seconds. The players are not feeling comfortable. They don't do the right play or make the right play. Mm -hmm. that we used to, and it, it's fun to talk about that, right? Because we saw them last year, ending of the year, winning trophies, winning trophies on big stages, big arena games. On the stage, there was no such a thing of hesitation whenever they're facing face clans. Right. So what is it that in this environment right here, in this Hall of Heroes, adds so much tension, adds so much pressure that Vitality can't seem to get over it? Absolutely. It's a, it's a beautiful case or a case study for what stress does to performance. And, and in science, there is this sort of inverted U-shape where if you have zero stress, that you have a low performance, a little bit of stress, you're going to peak in performance and then too much stress, you're going to go down once again. And this is where Vitality have been for the 95% of what we've witnessed at all. Every time there was a decision, and it would feel to us from the outside that there was an obvious way to go about it, an obvious way to save your guns, an ob obvious way to close around, just because they have their head so deep in the wheel and they can't see the elephant standing in front of them. It's, it's actually a fact. Like, I know how it is. And players out there, I think fans out there can also empathize to an extent. When you're playing a game and you're having a shit game, you feel like you cannot access any logic in your mind. You cannot have just a heuristic that helps you figure out what the hell to do. This is Vitality right now. They're on, they're on oxygen supply. That's but what's they're happening. they're going to need to take a deep breath as we do come into that third and final decider. But before we do that, let's go ahead and check in with Shox and the Vitality camp. Okay. All right, just got to talking to Coach x and um, he's saying, well, the main problem is that we are not making the right decisions now when it counts. We don't have the confidence in those moments when it absolutely counts, and that is, of course, a big problem. And if I can be completely frank with you, he did not sound too confident at all. He just said it's going to have to be better, but I don't know if it will be. Such valuable insight because that epitomizes exactly what you were just saying, Matthew. Yes, and as a coach, I think it is infuriating and he must feel helpless because in the moment, you might have done all of the work prior to the event. You might have helped them in the boot camp or whatever this is, but in the very moment, if your players aren't able to calm themselves down and make sure that they have that support net in communication to make the right decisions, you are going to have trouble. And the same way uh, momentum can go, you know, it can turn into a snowball negatively. You can have a virtual cycle where you start finding rounds, you start start finding multi-kills, and then just gravity feels a little bit lighter round after round. We saw that towards the end. A couple of multi-kills that really matter. I think Vitality need, at the very least, two, three, or four of these moments where it gets it going, gets the blood going, and then you can start playing a little bit more intuitively. And I really hope the ghost of Vertigo has gone by mm. aren't going to be haunting Vitality today, because of what happened when they faced up against Ents, Jacob? Well, it wasn't looking great. Glaive happened, you know, on them, and he was uh, all over the place. And obviously, there's a lot to learn from that if you're heroic. Most likely they would have seen that game, but the same goes on for Vitality. They learned a lot from that game against Ennis as well. I can't help to stand with a feeling right here, Matthew, that Vitality have, have gotten away with it. They've gotten away with playing probably the worst possible Counter-Strike they could, yet they still find themselves in a position where they can claim the map and progress into the lower bracket tournament. I do feel that we're going to see a different version of Vitality now. I think the pressure has released a little bit or will be released for them. One or two rounds where they play well, one or two rounds where Saibu gets going, mm. where Spinks get going, I think that's enough for them to feel like, okay, we got away with being piss poor. Now that we're playing just normal Counter-Strike, we should be able to take out Heroic. And I'll also make the case that Heroic should be running out of steam. We can't really continue to expect them to play yeah. as well as they have. For my money, I have Vitality winning this one and convincing this well. I wish I shared his optimism. I do think they need some of these rounds that you're talking about. I was uh, watching Apex. I was listening to what they were saying at the end of map two. There was no elation. There was no happiness. There was no relief. It's, if anything, it's a, a bit of self-hatred about how bad the level is. I yeah. think they're not out of the fuck quite yet. I really think they need a couple of these moments to kickstart the engine, then I'll start to relax. But from now on, uh, my blood pressure is way too high, it I'm sweating, too high. <laughs> the time in the green room is not great, and I'm not out of it at all. This this is going to still be a really complicated big enough third map. Well, Matthew, one last map, one last lifeline for the two teams that do lay in front of us. That is Vitality, that is Heroic, and that is a man on our screen who's only made it through to the playoffs of IM Katowice once. That was a quarterfinal, and my lord, has he got a long road ahead of him. Welcome, my friends, to the Cathedral of Counter-Strike! Elevated, never low, wait to the top, hit it to the peak. All them boys want to talk, hit them out of love, but don't got receipts. I ain't gonna lose it, lose it now. Gotta keep it moving, lose it now. 
smokes. You see a double smokes in the same place there. Simple just jumping casually into the side. Wait, wait, wait. What, 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 what was that? Never miss a play again. This is a major. Finally. With Face It Watch, you're in control. Switch between player POVs live and see the game through the eyes of any pro. Never miss a moment with replays. Relive each highlight on demand from all angles. Watch it, control it, face it. All right then, roster roulette with the boys. You got six chips in front of you and you're gonna place the amount of chips is the number of roster changes that team will make by the end of the year. Team Vitality in 2024, best team in the world. Is anyone gonna go out on a limb and predict roster changes? Three, two, one, go. Everyone stands pat. <laughs> oh, Jay down. Tizzle's wow. thrown, in, thrown a chip into the ring. Yeah. <laughs> Instantly, no thoughts, just instant. <laughs> they always make changes, so I think. Woo! Well, <laughs> as the resident expert, coming back. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I think we can skip. Nobody will put you in chip. You don't think anyone anyone got a chip in their hand? No, 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 no. The next six months is gonna be very critical for them because Cyber and Spinks are not gonna be sitting and not winning anything. I mean, they just made once. I think they're gonna probably stick it out for oh, no. the whole year. In the way he is as a person, but also his roles, I think Messi is a good fit. But I still think they're needing a little bit more from him, to be honest. They don't make your some moves that often. Like they stuck out with like Nivera and them for a long time, Misuta. They need more consistency from the rest as well. I mean, let's be honest, if they do no results, it could also be epics. All right, so who's not going anywhere. Good to know. This is a game that has so much tension. Intel Extreme Masters, Katowice 2024 group stage, and Vitality and Heroic have taken it to map three in this elimination game. A lot of back and forth will all get settled here on Vertigo. Yeah, a lot of back and forth between these two teams. They're making sure each and every one of them on the other side knows it when they win the round, when they're in the advantage. And I mean, this has been as close as you could like. Overtime on the first map, 13 to 11, including a, a fantastic recovery from Team Vitality on the second map of Anubis. And now we've got Vertigo. It all comes down to this. It's gonna be Heroic starting on the T side, Vitality starting on the defensive side, trying, both teams trying to stay alive here at Katowice. Vitality to keep proving that they're the best team in the world. 
Heroic proving that they can keep beating expectations. The pistol round begins on the deciding map. Zaiwu gets boosted up in middle, and Heroic commit heavy resources to the bottom of the ramp. Shush is charging up, and it's quick from Heroic, oh. but it's blasted by that grenade. That is a beefy Orknade. Well done from Apex. Nerd's gonna clear out the corner so his teammates can scale up. Oh, oh no. Nerd's calls, he's missed the smoke. This doesn't give them cover on the left side of that bomb site, so there's gonna be a big gap there. They don't have the full execute, and Zaiwu doesn't care. He's gonna run right into it. He's gonna go down to Tessas, and this is becoming an absolute massacre, and it's Vitality's bodies that litter the floor. It's Heroic coming out on top of this pistol round, and they do it in style without losing a player. Maybe they should just run that strat without throwing the left side smoke from now on, because that, that worked just about perfectly. That pulled everyone from Vitality to swing into that fight, and they just got obliterated. It fully pulled Zaiwu into that gap too, right? Because the smoke doesn't come up, so Zaiwu goes to try and fight short, and they're ready for it. They're ready for that swing, and Zaiwu goes down on the pistol without finding anything. And he's one of the best pistol round players on the entire planet, and they don't get him involved in it. Heroic goes straight to rifles on the majority of players. Mac 10s on two, and Vitality come back with a force buy. There's a chance to settle into this one if you're Vitality, if you win this force buy, but it's got to take a fairy tale here from Mezzi. He's the only one here. His teammate Spinks has just shifted off as well, very far away, and needed to be an instant headshot, and it's not going to be. It's going to be absolutely nothing. Spinks hustling over, but theres I don't think there's any recovering this bomb site. You don't have any of the weaponry to actually fight back with. One kill, but brought down to three, and now it would have to be something from Zaiwu. Yeah, he's jumping up over construction. A little closer to the bomb site, but he's lost his in-game leader. Apex is gone, and Zywell hits the headshot. No one can be out of this world. He needs another one, and he's taking damage on that second fight. And Zywell's filtering away, realizing he has Kevlar, and a picked up SMG. Flames is with him, so if they can get away, that would be a big save. Problem is, Tessus is pretty close by, but it looks like they're going to dodge him. What a map two Tessus had as well in a loss. It's oh, yeah. Stunning performance. He was unkillable. He won a number of rounds. Like, we're just trying to distract. Set flames up for one kill at the end, and it's not going to happen. The Deagle, not on point. So 2-0, and all that Vitality have to work with is this Deagle and the SMG in the hands of Zaiwu. We've chanted Zaiwu's names in many arenas around the world over the years, but not often have we been given the luxury to say it in the Spodak. Just once. One match he's had in the Spodak, and it was a 2-1 loss to Team Liquid in, in the quarterfinals last year. Team Liquid, uh, not exactly in the strongest form then either. No, not at all. That was, a, that was a shocking, disappointing loss last year for Team Vitality. As would this this be if they end up losing? Well, vertical. this will be worse. At yeah. least they made it to the quarterfinals last year. They wouldn't have. If they go out here, they've only won one map. Crazy to think about as teams are gearing up for the major. This being one of the most coveted trophies in Counter-Strike. Yeah, I mean, the RMR is just around the corner. Well, at least you would have some time to prepare for that, I guess. <laughs> Eyes on the prize here in Katowice. Ooh, Vitality shifting away. They haven't heard any information. Heroic yeah. is being very quiet. Maybe a chance with that stack at the bomb site with the SMGs, with the MAC-10, with the MP9, with the Deagles to create something. But now that they're out of position, again, Heroic's going to have an easy waltz into the B bomb site. And Vitality just now hearing the telltale signals that they're in the wrong place at the wrong time. Nice clearance on the B-bomb side, still with utility. They go through the motions here, Heroic, but they're losing Damage. players. Nurse is down, and Shush has lost a lot of health. He's down to 25, and remember this flank from Apex. Well, he's behind them now, and he finds Shush low on health. Saiwu flies in with an MP9 he saved, and that is a miracle round out of nowhere for Vitality. And Apex giving it all, getting the boys hyped up, making sure Heroic can hear him across the barrier. First round snatched away and four upgraded weapons for Vitality. They come into this with barely anything and scrape together a victory. Let's go! He's the fucking kid! You miss! Let's go, boys! He's taking time to wipe spit off the monitor as he goes. Yeah. Uh, appreciate that. The next player that puts that headset on, I would recommend taking a wipe. <laughs>
Oh, here we go. Calling them newbies, just the worst insult in esports. Newbies. I like, uh, I like it, it's not just noobs, newbies. And Shush has got that headshot on Mezzi. What a swift response into the next round for Heroic. A blistering opening towards B. Yeah, Mezzi's been taking a lot of liberties, a couple liberties in the early going. Previously with just, you know, 5-7, lesser weaponry. Now he loses a big one, and that causes Spinks to have to fall back because he knows mid is wide open. Before Apex shifts over to get eyes on it, Spinks has a responsibility of like two-thirds of the map. Yeah, Spinks. He's just peeking between two different angles. He knows there's timings as to which he can miss his opponents and they can slip on by and take a lot of control. Apex is uncomfortable. He's calling back for Apex and the timing doesn't work out for the Frenchman. He's brought down. Now Spinks sees the shadow, knows where his next fight's coming from, but can't dodge the flashby and therefore cannot dodge Nikodos. Uh, it's just look how, how nice and easy and good looking it is when Heroic gets that opening kill, just works the map perfectly. Apex comes back and Spinks didn't have deep enough information to let, to let Apex know they can be all the way pushed up. Just sidelined from emphatic celebration to just getting absolutely deleted. I'm just gonna wipe the tears off his face. I mean, Vitality has to be careful. This this could be another slow start if Heroic's able to build on this victory. And the, the biggest thing, couple kills perhaps for the SMG. They line up, Flames and Shush each get one. The team kill is mixed in there, but uh, it's just, uh, you, starting all these maps off so slow is so detrimental. The nice thing for Vitality is the fact that in the previous round, they were able to get four rifles for free. They've got plenty of money to buy up in this next one. But you don't want to get buried in another 5-1 hole, 6-1 hole. Especially when you're winning rounds, you shouldn't, right? If you take a round like that, where you've got a saved SMG, you get in with pistols, you feel like that's just sort of lifeline, an opportunity to build the second, uh, this first half start up. But... It hasn't been the case here for Vitality, and we've seen that a few times in the series where they really are struggling to get consistency going. It looked like a mistimed flashbang there but it's between Spinks and Mezzi. Spinks flashing so we can get the peak down the stairs, and he just jumps a little bit too early for when it pops. Yeah, that is frustration for Apex. You can see him talking through that with his team, and oh my god, you can't get a worse start to a round than that for Flamesy. You can't get a worse start in back-to-back -back rounds when you consider Mezzi was taken out in the first 10 seconds of last round. Now Flames is taken out in the first 10 seconds of this round. Vitality's playing back-to-back -back rounds with the man disadvantage. This time, at the very least, they haven't had they, they 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 don't have a gap in the defense. They just have a weaker defense at this A ramp. And they have Zywu in his prime position, but that's not what this first fight's coming. It's Spinks once again oh, in middle under scrutiny. And nearly gets taken out there. He's very fortunate to have dived down at just the right time. Plenty of utility now coming in for Heroic, but yet to show commitment, and yeah. Spinks actually gets that information. Well, that's a limp wristed smoke that came out because Apex had the peak. Here comes a peak over the top of this boost. Mezzi has moved forward closer to the wood, and oh, that's a heavy dismount. That's going to snap his ankles and give all the information left and more liberties from Mezzi. He's frozen like a statue. 45 seconds, three players left for Vitality, and Spinks has been spotted, knows he can't stay there, goes around for the peak and brings out Shush. But there's plenty more where that came from, and Vitality desperately needed. They have to take care of middle before they can worry about the beep off site. Oh, Apex can't convert the second. And that's round done. Yeah. Zaiwu shouldn't even come close to going for this with the AWP. They're avoiding Zaiwu so well at this point. Like he's not getting involved in these rounds. Don't yeah. do that, Nika does. Don't, don't, don't do that, because now he's going for it. Oh, God, they've offered him a chance. Hydra soul from his grasp, but Zaiwu comes back with the AK, but is taken out in the end. Yeah, you usually don't want to give him any kind of opportunity, though. No, that, that's a bit too much from Nika does, and he knew it probably as soon as he was taken down. Thankfully, they still hold on, and it's Vitality still on the back foot. Foot. Here's the opening. Double nade and some spam. This flash peak has not worked at all of the two times it's been ram. And from there, it's just a trade game for Heroic. Nice and easy. They're up four to one. You mentioned uh, the desk talking about the vertigo struggles of Vitality. So far, they're up struggle street. M4 for Mezzi. MP9s and Deagles. This could be another tough round of stomach. Lost this map to Entz. To put him in this elimination match, lost it 6-13. to 13. Two new rosters they're going up against in this competition. Entz first, Heroic. 
now in front of them. And Zaiwu, they're coming towards him. Big okay. shot on the deek. Is there any more for Zaiwu? As he stands on default. Giving him a couple of chances here, but he's not finding the follow-up, and they give him respect. They drop back, but look at Spinks's positioning. He's behind. He's cutting off this rotation, and they want to rotate because they've got space made by Tessas on the other side of the map. So the issue is Spinks is going to be cleared, and they predict it. They read it. They get the headshot, avoid that problem, and now we transition on board with Tessas, who's ready for his kill on Apex. It's labored, but it's effective, and it's a headshot through. Zaiwu and Mezzi are here, though, at the A bomb site. Deagles in the M4. Mezzi needs a connect. He does. Wow. Zaiwu adds one more. Double peek. Kicks and gets away somehow. And Nertz. Oh, he hasn't. He was just coming to join up with them, so they have no standing to rotate off. But Flames and Mezzi have to split. Yeah, they know that they can't stay committed to one bomb site unless they want to go for the gamble. And both players are now leaving the A bomb site. And this the is getting the gonna chance pull back. here for Heroic. Limited time. There's no nade for Heroic to really get away with this. Just one smoke they can place. If Vitality had some nades, it could make this retake easier, but they have zero. Zilch. And Kicksand's going to drop back using that one piece that they had to give them a safe corridor to set up for a post plant. Mezzi gets boosted. Looking for a head towards Sandbags. He's got the right read, but Nertz is showing nothing. There's nothing to show just yet. They're waiting for Vitality to make the move and tap that defuse. There's no kit. It's limited time for Vitality to make this one happen. There's the first tap. Nertz peeks on contact with his teammate, and Mezzi has to clutch. He's looking for it down close, but Nertz will secure it. Heroic went all across the map, but eventually come out with a round win. Yeah, it was dicey, though. Vitality made a real bid for it with those deagles. Timeout taken from the CT side. Vitality under so much pressure. And Nurt still gesturing over, still being in their face every chance he gets. It's so impressive how Heroic were able to stay composed across the whole round here and seesaw between both sides of the map given their circumstances, given the information they were finding as they moved. Yeah, it really was. And I, I think, I mean, even that, that Sphinx push, uh, you know, with the SMG, they, they'd seen that just previously, a couple of rounds before, they'd seen that same exact push, so this time prepared for it. Oh, Mezzi having a, a tough game over there on that B bomb site. Any sort of activation play is going against them. The flashes aren't connecting the way they should, and Mezzi just isn't stopping them at the door. Still fragging as well as he could. I, I think I, do, I think he'll be okay when he settles it down. This is two times he's tried to be aggressive. Two times it's gone away from him. I can't imagine he wants to go back to it at this point. So maybe playing a little bit more of a standard round deep in the B bomb site might help him out a little bit. Yeah, it feels like Spinks is kind of being pulled limb from limb in the position he's in. Like he's looking at so many different angles so often. I, two of the limited full gun rounds we've had in this game have started out with a heroic kill within the first 10 seconds. So like Vitality on some level probably feel like they haven't even had a chance to play the game quite yet. Only out of chances. And this is the last chance. There it goes deep. It's Spinks that takes significant damage from it. He's down 55 health, and Nikodos receives a little off the top too. But no one's dead yet, and that's the first sort of round here in Vertigo where we've been able to settle into things. Let's see a 5v5 for a minute. Zaiwu and Flamesy trying to get a little bit more proactive, and they're going to be walking towards Tessas, who's had a fantastic game today. He heard the scope as well. Oh, he's underneath him. Oh, it's Tessas with the double. Ravaging through Vitality. And he might even get more here, too. Tessas is just standing in the same position. His teammate kicks and is gone. And now they move their way through middle. Mezzi's in such a tough spot, having to think about two positions again. And it's Nerds that takes him out this time. Vitality crumble at the hands of Heroic once again. And Tessas is their nightmare at the moment. Sphinx is looking to get him. But Tessas is untouchable once more. Finally brought down. But the round's already done. They're so far away from getting into a retake scenario. 6-1, Jason. Heroic are dominating Vitality at the moment. And I got to give him credit. Like, at a certain level in this series, it's like Vitality is just off. And now at this point that it's happening so consistently that Heroic is working this map so effectively, they're just straight up beating Vitality. I mean, this, this is every time they've got a pick, they're splitting this B bomb site. It's been their kind of go-to when they have an advantage. And it's been so hard to stop for Vitality. A lot of it, obviously, when you get two kills coming up scaffolding, you just don't have the resources. But... Just a miss clear. I mean, we've heard. But it's also, Tessas hears that scope. He, he, he hears them scope up 
just above him. So that allows him to position himself. And he's just ready and waiting patiently for yeah, it. Yeah, like this. Eh? Really well done. They were so confused as to where he was. I mean, when you peek his flames, you've, you've actually got some deep angles that you have to worry about. Deep in the corner along the wall. You have to worry about deep, you know, down A ramp at the base of A ramp against the boxes peeking up at you. That, that position that Tessa's in is like the third priority clear. When I spoke to Tessa after the loss versus G2, he said, man, Monacy just had a super game. Yeah. And, and he was the player that beat them. Vitality have Zai Wu, the, the number one player in the world, but he's not playing like that today. He's not taking over the server. He's not individually breaking apart Heroic. And Heroic is staying in that because of this. Tessa's gonna follow up these footsteps as you wanna make a dynamic play. Here's the Deagle spam, here's the oh, weapon. Oh, he knows, he senses the timing. Oh, he unleashes himself through that smoke and Zaiwu and Flames have no standing on the A side. Oh. Ted says, that is incredible. They flick back to Apex as well. And Vitality stand with just two players. And Mezzi's trying to be mighty. He switches to the AK-47, but he is gone. And Vitality yeah. are crumbling in the map that decides everything, that decides their fate in Katowice. It looks like this curse is still alive. Bro, Tess is just working the these kids. That is so unreal. I mean, it's so well calculated as well. You hear the spamming from the Deagle out of ammunition. He's supposed to be the safety net for Zaiwu for that eventuality. And Tessis just destroys everyone. What a transfer onto Apex. This is where you're like, yeah, Modesty wrecked you yesterday, but how would you like to have one of those games now? How would you like it if it's your turn? Back-to-back -back maps, Tessis is putting Vitality in their place. And Tessas is the player that when Heroic was seeing a downturn in results last year when they had Katie, when they had Stown and Yabby, Tessas was the player everybody was putting on the chopping block. We thought if Katie and stay, if Stown stayed and Yabby was there, then Tessas would be the player that would be getting cut. But he is stepping up in this new roster. He's the player that remained back in Heroic. And it looks like he's finding his feet under Kixan. Here we go, Vitality, a bias back. Sure, the last few have had a few weaknesses here and there, but no excuses this time. You've got it. M4s across every player and a decent amount of utility. I, and once again, it's like Vitality just playing it in like a recovery mindset. Like, we had to get something in this half. They've been able to do it at points, you know, particularly on Anubis. They were able to come back into it. Tessis, this time, is slapped away. This time, given the slap on the wrist. He's damaged and scared off and will not continue his push on the A bomb site. So instead, Heroic will transition their gaze to this B bomb site instead. And Mezzi, well, he's had a tough time. He's here again alone. His teammates are starting to drift over on that rotation. And they're coming quite quickly, actually. So he will have some help. I think this is going to end up being a fake, though. The question is, can Nerds create anything? This is how Heroic have built this lead as well, as find an opening pick somewhere, work the map. Oh, Mezzi has to get out of there, crosses into the smoke he just threw down. And because Nertz was elevated over the wood, it's an easy kill for Nertz in the end. And Flames pulls his grenade, and oh my god, they're pushing him. Fortunately enough, they get back around the corner, and Flames, he is allowed to stay alive, but they come back for seconds. Kingsand loves an aggressive push, and this time punished by Flames. But Nikodos moves forward in behind those sandbikes, and this bomb is looking to finish on that B site. Spinks had a chance to end it there and now, but here he is inside. Woo, denies that bomb plant, and there's no time for Nikodos to get back. Zaiwu has saved him. I, there's time. Unless on Lowy, there is. He's coming back, and Zaiwu has actually got a good position still. Okay, Nikodos, he was faster than I thought. He was closer than I thought. And with this AWP, he might just pull Heroic back into this round. Zaiwu has to win it, and eventually he does. Stone Cold, nice round from Zaiwu. Being patient at that B bomb site the whole time. That's Heroic challenging multiple parts on the map at the same exact time. It's basically isolated 2v5, 2v2s at the B bomb site and at the A bomb site. Mezzi gives one up, strays a little bit out of the smoke. Nerds with a good angle to look for the escape. Smoke gives away the indication someone is there. Thankfully, Spinks and Zaiwu can just barely hold on. So their first tactical timeout for Heroic as Vitality see their second round. And that very easily could have gone a horrifying direction because I actually think Kixen played that so well. It was so sick. Over towards scaffolding, finding flames, faking the reload when, when he's out of money, coming right back through the smoke. If he just one had a few more bullets yeah, in Yeah, one there. or two more bullets or just one that hits the head, it might be different. Five round lead for Heroic coming out of the timeout.
And for them, it's just business as usual. Keep doing what we're doing. Everything's working. We're finding picks at B, finding picks at A, exploiting mid when we have a man advantage. Keep going. You guys are doing this perfectly. For Vitality, it's just like, man, we, we're still not hitting the peak. We're still not in the flow state. We're still not playing well together. They're just trying to carve out enough rounds to work with in the second half. Plenty of presence towards ramp again for Heroic. Tessis has been so good at getting that control, getting up and causing a lot of pressure to the Vitality defense. And this time it's kicks out again through short. Feels almost identical to the last round. But this is all, oh, this is, this is Tessis. Yeah, Tessis gets another opening. That's a good find. Apex is forced out into the open, taken down by Kixon. Now, the bomb is still dropped way, way far back at the base of the ramp. It's back on the bridge. Nerds has got to go pick that up. There's time for Vitality to recover the still. Yeah, but Kixon's taking so much space. Look at this. He's pushed all the way up into the site. So even if they come through elevator, if they're distracted by the players actually inside of the site, this might set up Kixon with that MAC-10 to do some devastating damage. And Vitality still a long way off. Off. They're coming back now, and Zaiwu is considering the position that Kixan is standing in, and Zaiwu reads it. Zaiwu gets that kill. I don't think it's enough for them to go forward. I don't. They yeah. don't. Have, they don't have any money. They have to preserve these weapons. So unless they get another another mistake like that, which they don't look like they're going to get, because Heroic have sat back passive. They sunk their teeth into this post plant and yeah vitality just holding on the extremity now even though zaiwu gets that kill it's not enough to open up the retake opportunity this is the danger of of, of losing so many opening duels throughout this entire half the fact that Hero heroic has just worked you wherever they wanted is you never know if it's just like one or two people challenging you to take map control or if it's like this where it's a five person explosion on contact yeah and that's because like kicks and tesses have been so impactful alone getting those entries right they haven't been traded and because you can't stop them anywhere Anywhere, you have to respect everything still. It's causing slow rotations and vitality's in a oh. very tough position. And they're looking like they're going home, and deservedly so, with the way they played here in Katowice. They've had chances to get into the game multiple times. I mean, they even had that force win earlier on in this half, and didn't still didn't build on it. This has been so unconvincing on Vertigo. You got a force win and then a clutch where Zaiwu has to win a 1v1. They easily could have gone the other way. But this is a little better. More pressure applied to ramp and Apex uses that smoke that's nuked open to take a headshot on Tessas and stop him from just destroying their ramp control. It's the third opening kill for Vitality in this half. Haven't had many to speak of. Let's see if they can convert this 5v4. They should be able to, playing passive. Two players on heaven. Mezzi behind the generator. Get your one kill on their entrance and play for the retake. You have utility. Plenty of Molotovs, plenty of HE grenades. But Heroic have plenty of time. Got space now on this B bomb site, clearing out quad. All of the positions that Messi once stood in. Spinks with a big headshot, but look at Kixan behind enemy lines again. There's a player inside of that smoke, and it's Messi. The elusive Messi is taken down. Kixan clears the smoke, knowing the player could be close. And that shadow betrays Kixan in the end. Flames are able to pull it back, but I cannot believe Heroic have found themselves in a 2v2 with a bomb down. And Vitality have to retake. Nikodal's kind of stuck out in the open. This is a little dangerous when that smoke fades, but he knows he's got a little bit of time while the Molotov burns. No more utility for Heroic. Oh, this could break Vitality. This could be one of the final blows. Nikodal tops up on top of the double stack. It's one headshot. They're not on that defuse. It's Zywo in this clutch, and now he's going to stick it. Now he's going to hold it. The Frenchman can't get it done. Slashed up in the smoke, and Heroic finding ninth round. They are punishing Vitality on this third and final map. Yeah, so, mu so much chaos, and I think Vitality might wish that they had moved and shifted some positions at some point. They chucked out a lot of utility, so I thought one would at least slide into the bomb site. But they had three players essentially around this generator. Not a lot of room to maneuver on this defense, and eventually all of them are found. Heroic is burying Team Vitality. Let's go! The energy is high in the Heroic camp, and for Vitality, it is completely flat. There's nothing to scream about, nothing to be happy about. 
And they are now in a position where they have to scrap just three in their CT side is the best case scenario. I don't even know if they're going to get that chance because Tessus, who has been lights out all half long, is back to his old tricks. And this time, Apex takes him out. Traded, though, by Nerds. Yeah, one for one. I think Heroic's going to be just happy with that as well. They have the control. Look at the now, rotation. Yeah, everyone's here from Vitality. The follow-up execute is going to have to be perfect. They almost have to bite down on something, but because the reaction didn't follow up for Heroic, they're now sending those players back to B. Yeah, because they've seen it so many times. They're so concerned. They don't know where this next hit is going to come from. And everywhere has been successful, so Apex is going to have to back off. Call back the teammates that just rotated away. Because Heroic's coming in hot. Heroic are toying with Vitality at the moment. Apex, nades fly towards it. Vitality yet to get a kill. They don't have the utility to stop that plant. Sure, a kill comes in from Zywoo, but the bomb is now down. And Apex moves through like a predator, lining them up. Nearly a chance to end it on his own. But that's Mezzi's job. And it will be three rounds right at the end for Vitality. Heroic looking so solid. One step away from knocking out the world's best. When you ask a player about which events they want to do well at, they'll say Katowice, Cologne, the Majors, and currently Vitality as world number one, sit in that hall of heroes, facing elimination in groups. Yeah, it looms way too close than they'd like, way closer than they'd appreciate. Three to nine is the scoreline from Vitality's perspective heading into this second half pissed around. It could all come crumbling down oh so quick, and why wouldn't it? Heroics had their number. 
This whole series, Heroic has felt like the better team and Vitality has just barely been able to hang on. That switch better flip right now. They're moving out middle as a pack here of Vitality. They're not going to be detected because the push from Heroic is coming down the ramp. They're trading position. Heroic might find themselves in a really good spot if they continue this walk. Yeah, I mean, they're gonna be busting up the stairs on a flank before anyone really expects it. Mezzi is about to, oh, he just checks the flank. Good find. He knows there's one more. Now two, calling it out to his team, and they're gonna bail out to the eight palm site. This Pisteron got real weird, and Vitality's found the escape route. Yeah, Mezzi's positioning there gives them all that early information they need to change their idea right at the end. But Tessis is coming back up that ramp. This fight is still on, but it is now gone. It is quelled as Spinks and Flames find all three right at the end. That's the pistol that Vitality needed. Yeah, it really is. And let's see what they can build upon with it. This is where you want to see the championship experience of Vitality come through in this half. No quit. Don't play like you're down three to nine. Don't play with that nervousness we've seen throughout this game so far, right? They, they have been very cagey. Maniac was saying on the desk, they, they have that sort of personality about them right now that they're, they're playing a little bit timidly. I, I think I think a lot of that comes from the fact that they can feel they're not playing their best game, both individually and as a team, and that's where the, the kind of tib in nature, that's where the miscues are coming from. But at a certain point, you got to accept that that's the vitality you're getting today and see what you can do with it, because historically, the best teams in the world can, can overcome that. Well, Jason, they've better overcome this stack they're about to walk into. USPs, the P2000s, it can't go wrong for vitality. So far, it hasn't, and it won't. Tessus stuck on default. Last player here for Heroic between Vitality and their fifth round. And he will not part them from that. It is five now for Vitality, if, as they withstand the full eco. Yeah, this next gun round is going to be critical. Uh, the interesting thing is, is like how, how much of a run does Vitality have to go on before they can allow Heroic to win another round? Because every, every round hurts so much with Heroic already at nine. They're just four rounds away. And they were really, knocking Vitality out. And they really struggled to find any sort of consistent success in that first half at all. They weren't able to string rounds together. They weren't able to find anything in that first half of play. So they've got to hope that it's a completely different Vitality on this T side. Not a single round in that first half in a row. Early flashbangs and spam, and Apex with his MAC-10 doesn't want to deal with it. He'll use that to create some space, but this isn't the moment. So I always got the AWP out immediately. As soon as it's available, it's in his hands. Flames has that sort of test S roll we've seen in the first half. He didn't spot anything, though. And Nikodaz is now with it, hearing them fall back. They want to go for the follow-up peak and might be right into Zaiwu. Might be exactly what Vitality's hoping for. Oh, there's the swing. It's actually kicksand that will fall to the hands of Flames. And they still have the AWP here that's been undetected, yet to ring out a shot. And there it is. Zaiwu's AWP has found some presence here in the round. It's Vitality up a player, and they are now moving off. They're leaving A and going back to this B-bomb site instead. Yeah, clever, clever little play from Vitality to lower that defense back into a deep peak, back into the AWP. And now they got to hustle to get into the site because Nurse is on the rotation. Shush, you got to deliver something that makes your teammates think it's possible, and they almost lined up for you. From here, should end up being a save, but Nurse is going to stick around just in case. Yeah, Vitality lost a 4v2 on Mirage in this kind of scenario in the post plant. I think that one stings a little bit too much that they'll let it happen again. So Heroic, you're going to slip away. They're going to go for that save call. And this is much better from Vitality already. Bit of attitude, bit of punch. And 9-6, and that gap in MR12 really does shrink very quickly. If you get a very good start, you win the pistol, convert it, and get that first gun round. Nice kill from Flames, and Zaiwu making sure he can hunt down for the trade frag. Little stutter step from Mezzi, and Shush gets knocked off the building. Now within three is Vitality. Terrorists win. Two weapons. Two weapons. Careful for all the... Little bit of insight. Not much. Into the mind of Apex there. Careful what Heroic can do, even with these weapons. And a timeout called from Heroic coming up with a plan with which to use these two weapons that they saved. Second timeout. Uh, quite common. You'll see the, the timeout used for the coach to have a say across this. Just give them some extra time. 
to put something together. I remember, and this is what makes this 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 kind of little bit of a this contest out of heroic so interesting and exciting. Is this is a brand new team? They have not had a lot of time together. They don't have all the plans and all the protocols and the deep playbook yet because they haven't had time to develop it. And it was one of the things that, that Vitality talked about in the interview before this even began. The time that we've had together, they're a new team, we're not. That's a huge advantage for us to lean on, but it hasn't felt that way today. It hasn't actually manifested itself inside the server. I think the experience and the expectations of this team from Vitality are coming back to backfire them. Well, perhaps that will change now in this half. This second T side for Vitality we got to see how they show us that championship mentality, if it does exist in this moment. And quiet on the ramp. There's nothing there. Not usual to see this kind of slow start to the round. We've experienced quick ramp bursts over the last few. Yeah, set up at the B bomb site for Shush to take contra contact far back with the USP and Nerds to pounce up and take advantage of it with an M4. Nikodos as well hovering in middle with the M4, but those rifles will be mobile. Any success from these pistols, and the rifles are going to hustle to get involved in the action. There goes Nades towards Tessas. He jumps back to dodge them. Tickled by the flames. Not so much the damage it does to him, but more the fact that now he's stuck between two of them, and they know exactly where he is. He somehow came out of the better of that exchange. I don't know how he did. <laughs> that, that's we'll, incredible. We'll give it to him. Mikadaz being boosted up to peer over the smokes towards ramp, towards anyone headed towards sandbags. Good nade damage. Softening him up for the pistols and the M4s. Couple of bullets spamming through those smokes in the middle of the bomb site. 35 seconds here for Vitality. And when you get this lit into the round, chaos can start to ensue, but that bomb does go down. And now it's on to Heroic to retake this. Great shot from Zaiwu. Over the top of the smoke, Nikodos does not get a step closer to attempting this. Peace. And there just isn't enough resources for Heroic to really make this one work. Geek's not hanging around though. He's only got P250 and some Kevlar, so. Maybe he can bring a player down if they were close, but even then, he's starting to drop back. Yeah, that M4 in Nikodaz's hands is recovered and passed away. They've gotten uh, gotten away with it, so two weapons brought forward into the next round. This stack that they had that they tried to position in the right place kind of fizzles out. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right, then. Yeah, that's a, way to, that's a way to do it. Bomb goes off, and Vitality now within two. You didn't think they were going to go away that easy, did you? Now you see him loosening bit. up, a few smiles creeping out. They're listening to Nerds. A few more smiles on the faces of Vitality as they come back in this. Yeah, and this gap is being closed extremely quickly, it feels like, too, right? It's start off the second half. They've come out with a new attitude. All right, we're up against the ropes. We've got to come out swinging, and that's exactly what they've done. But we're back into the gun rounds, and Heroic have an AWP out for Nikodaz, all the utility they can want among the rifles. Get all as a CT off. Let's see if that can start to make an impact. Oh, great nade on the Mezian Flames over by Shush. Oh, and Shush, if he goes around that corner, there's three players for Vitality. It doesn't look like he's going to be in a good position to deal with this boost coming over the top, but he puts back just in time. Gets that second player, rips apart the foundations, and Nurks is there to seal the deal. Two players left alive just like that for Vitality. And Heroic are in touching distance of that 10th round, but it's Sphinx and Zaiwu, the two players you want in this clutch situation. Zaiwu goes down though, and just Sphinx left in a 1v4, and he is not going to get close. 10 rounds as Shush shuts down the rounds and silences Vitality at B. Man, how's he get two? These legacy Heroic players are just inflicting pain on Vitality in this map. First one, a little peekaboo. Second one transfers down to get flames, softened up by the nade from earlier, so he goes down quick through the flooring. Stopped cold in their tracks. Yeah, these two legacy heroic players are getting some revenge back from some of those finals they lost to Team Vitality. Some of those big matchups throughout last year when Katie was still on the team. And they are stepping up what needed most here with this new look heroic roster, with this refreshed team. And there's Zaiwu. Perfect shot on Nikodaz. How dare you stand in his position? Okay, well, we saw Heroic able to work the five on fours from the T side just day after day, round after round. Looks like they're going to do it again. Flames gets aggressive, jumping up on the sandbags. Tess is blinded. No chance. And now the map controlled by Vitality. Not a piece of damage taken yet. 
overwhelming odds, and they're just going to group up and stick together. Keep it simple. On a day when they have had miscue after miscue, not wanting to overcomplicate this final play. Well, they can't afford to have another miscue here. And it's Shush looking to delight him and line them up. Did have that opportunity, but it is just one for Shush. That is not going to be enough to make this look realistic. And good spam from Apex through that smoke. Kixan's gone, and Nurtz has to save. Yeah, Kixan's just trying to get lucky. He does that a lot, doesn't he? <laughs> the thing about Kixan, though, it is an interesting talking point. The fact that he did have that great run back in Paris. There was a lot of underdog runs at that event. So sometimes you miss out on the storyline. You don't cover it as much. You know, Shuei made it to Gamer Legion. Now he's in Maus. But Kixan stayed with his team. He stayed with Apex for a decent amount of time after that major. And maybe a, a lot of people put it down to just a fluke and overperformance. We've seen JL get ripped out of that team. But you got to say, the fact that Kixan's come into Heroic and it's looking this good already, I, I'm excited about his in-game leadership for the future. Yeah, I think it's more more how uh, how he kept them competitive after the major than the major run that probably made him more valuable to teams. Just took a while for that call to come in. Especially when the coach was gone, too. Yeah, but Saw obviously saw something oh, in no. him. Nertz is going to find that kill on Apex and keep the AWP in the hands of Heroic. So a little, or a big toy, I should say, gets brought forward to the next round. So two rounds to tie this up for Vitality. Last time I used in regulation here by Heroic. Yeah, they're going to fully invest here. Smoke blown opens. Iwu gets it. Tess is blinded. He eats it. A good round from Vitality. And Heroic now just nursing this lead. They've got money built up after this buy as well. A decent bank for Heroic, all things considered, with this two-round lead. They can sustain a loss and still fight back. But we're getting down to it. And while in the previous maps we've seen the pressure of losing a map fall squarely on the shoulders of Vitality, you have to imagine, now that it's the third one, now that it's elimination, Heroic's going to be feeling that too. Nikodaz got blasted away when he was playing towards short side last round, so he's changed up his position and will start this round at Sandbags instead. No one from Heroic committing round corners, letting Vitality have that space to work with up the ramp, but delaying them with their own utility. They've got that waterfall smoke coming down. Tessas don't walk around that corner. He drops on back. So some control given Vitality. Apex is going to work with that and just be patient. Yeah, even abdicating the position over at Sandbags as well as the rest of the defense goes passive. This time no opening kills provided or no opportunity for opening kills even given to Vitality. Options for an A split if Sphinx and Mezzi can be successful through this mid front. Tessus is the player tasked with holding it though. He's transitioned into the Sandbag silently, actually rotating his forces over towards this A-bomb site instead. And that has given a chance for Sphinx to move forward because he heard the steps. He knows that there has been a transition of the watch in middle, and this is giving space to Sphinx, and he might just devastate them with it. Creeping in behind, 30 seconds. This could be the move. It looks like it will be. Sphinx takes them out. It's one kill on Nikodaz, and now it's panic stations for Heroic. They've got to worry about that elevator split. Well worked for Vitality, and they're into the bomb site, but kicks down undetected. He's still at short, and that bomb goes down. Vitality have to realize they haven't fully cleared short side, and now with that flank coming up the ramp, they look towards it. It's now just Nurt's life to 1v3 in front of him. He's got Apex. He needs a little bit more. No utility here, but he switches to the AK-47 for that instantaneous headshot, and he's hoping he can get a few of them. But that Molotov picked up in the last second for Mezzi has locked him out of this, and he will fall to the hand of Sphinx. What a sick mid play coming in. Yeah, and it's all the information. It's all the information of that sprint from the mid player over to from Tess's. Those footsteps given up let Sphinx know he had the perfect timing to just wrap around that A bomb site. And because the execution at A is happening at the same exact time, it's occupying all of the defenders' attention. Nobody's considering middle. No one from the B bomb site shifted. You even got a follow up lurk in middle as well. That's effective from Mezzi. Perfectly played round from Vitality, but they're not out of it just yet. Another buy, another off for Nika does. Vitality fighting tooth and nail at this point, but Heroic not 
dead just yet. Perhaps enough life to close this and knock Vitality out. Spinks in mid just moved away as Nerds took up an angle to watch it. Six to one run for Vitality right now. They came out of the halftime break ready and prepared to get off to the races. This T side has been so effective. And it's been a team effort across the board. It hasn't been the hero story of Zaiwu getting them through it. Everybody doing their job. Spinks forces Nerds to change up his spot, and Spinks will not commit to middle. Instead, he is going to drop down that ladder and join the rest of the Vitality players because they have their eyes set on this A bomb site. Nikodaz at the corner, that's been Molotoved out frequently. In fact, Vitality have so much utility. They've done this so economically speaking in terms of their utility. So they're just going to be forcing these heroic players further and further back into the bomb site, giving Vitality the space they need. But there's that shot from the AWP. It sticks around. It's consistent. It's persistent. And the shot from Nikodaz is only one. Zywo able to reply, and Vitality up a player now. Yeah, but your final boss is still here. Tesses. does he have another play in him coming through the smoke? Oh, missed opportunity as Zywo backs off. Yeah, 4v2 now for Vitality. 20 seconds yet to plant the bomb. No utility to deny that. If Heroic had nades, they could stack that planter, but they just don't have it. They just don't have the resources, and the plant is going to come through with enough time. Sphinx's headshot has put Nerds in an unwinnable situation here, unless they feed him, which they should not. And there's the peak. Zywu locks it in, and we're all tied up. Vitality staying in it, and now Apex is getting fired up. Now he knows his team's in this game. Yeah, and now he gets to run with a little bit of momentum. Now he gets to run knowing that he's buried Heroic. You want to talk about your attitude and your mentality shifting. Heroic have won a single round in this second half. Vitality's offense is looking like a well-oiled machine for the first time in this series, and thank God it's finally showed up. They broke it heroic down, just bits and pieces here. Nerds with a rifle, everybody else on an upgraded pistol. Vitality have not seen a ticket more golden to go ahead into the lead. And that's Zywu's shot bringing it out. Tessus on the receiving end. We've got to hope that this rifle of nerds does way more than it should in this round. And the dismount is quite loud, but no one from Vitality committed up the ramp. Vitality's been so slow and patient and just playing a really strong fundamental game. It hasn't been any like ultra aggressive entries. No fast rushes, catching people off guard, not really a whole lot of cheese going on, just a solid game of Counter-Strike from the T side of Vertigo. Both teams shifting over to the A bomb site. We'll get a clash. Oh, it's a free kill there for Nerds. Apex crosses too far in the open with no help. Vitality stay committed. The bomb among the pack. And it's Mezzi that carries it forward. Zywu, oh, timing, unscopes. That's the swing from Kickstand. That's the kill. And this could now be disaster, but Spinks and Flames pulling it back. And they absolutely needed to. Here's Shush up top, and he is caught. Started to get a little worrying there, Jason, just for a moment, but Flamesy and Spinks come out on top. Yeah, a little dicey. That was still going to be tough for Kixon to kind of build upon that, that sort of a kill onto Zywu. Good follow-up from Spinks, good kills from Flames. It all started with this pick, and Vitality can breathe, e breathe easy after a little bit of a scare. And you're right, just the chaos, the utility, the smokes that are down everywhere, that can get confusing. Heroic. This is their fight. This is it. The last legs they stand on with a buy here. There's not a lot of money left over in the bank. If they lose this round, Vitality should be taking this and staying alive in Katowice. If not, Heroic once again have a chance. Zywu is the player that takes early damage. The Vitality comes through middle, Spinks at the front of the attack. Clears close positions. Molotov helps him to limit the spots he can focus on. Oh. Kingsan, double swing, double kill. And now it's 11-10 with Vitality, a player down, make it two. Saiwu finally arriving with a big shot there through the wood on Shush. And maybe a bit more for Zaiwu as he has eyes on Nerds around that corner, waiting for an overextension, predicting the position of Nerds, and the swing is out, but it's with a flash. <laughs> and that gets Zaiwu off the angle and keeps Heroic a player up. But it's not over yet. Nerd still has work ahead of him, but he's changed his position. 
And this position could be so strong. It could be so effective in bringing Heroic to 11 rounds and bringing Vitality to the brink. It's Nurks with the headshot and Mezzi took damage too. A 1v3 for the British player to keep Vitality in a comfortable position, but it just looks so difficult at this point for Mezzi. Sends the Molotov in behind. Nurts is staying behind cover, baiting him in. Closer and closer, that flank comes through. It's Nurts with a massive round, a massive moment in this game. And Vitality, they have to stomach the game being tied up again. They didn't expect him to get aggressive there. They didn't expect him to step forward and you have Zaiwu's op trained on your position. They expected him to back away, play it safe inside the bomb site. I just mentioned Vitality's been playing this slow. This is a change of pace meant to perhaps catch them off guard. And boy, does it not work. Shut down by a beautiful spray transfer from Crixen. Kicks in, excuse me. We'll soon kick in as we head into round 23. It's Flames sprinting up through the ramp. A little bit of speed this time from Vitality. Attitude as they go for the knockout punch, but it hasn't worked. They've missed that opportunity. And Nurtz has pushed down the Vista as he's taking that whole avenue of approach away from Vitality instantly. For the moment, they're not addressing it. They're not even concerned about it. They want to take control of this A ramp, and they have it for the moment. Re-aggression, though, from Heroic. Oh, it all lies on this. Oh, Flamesy close. Money on the brink for both teams. This round will likely decide this. But look at the stalemate. Look at how they don't want to actually commit to that fight. Such a tough fight to lose when the round has so many implications. Tessas being put in position. This time boosted, but drops on down immediately, deciding they want to play a little bit more aggressive, using a boost again this late in the round. But look at Apex. He's looking for it. Apex has the read on it, and he doesn't get the kill. Apex is brought down to one single health point. And Sphinx can activate now through middle. He's been an absolute predator when given the timing. We, won. we watched him win a round from this position earlier on in this half. He's looking to do it again in the round that matters most as Flames, Messi, and Apex come in with a trio of beautiful kills. And it's just the cherry on top with that lit lurk through middle from Sphinx. Nurts, no hero play this time. Vitality, find 12 first. Vitality is more than happy. If you're going to give them that much ramp control for that long, they are more than happy as they've shown throughout this half to just walk up and execute. Look at the little glance down from Apex. I think he's looking for utility. I think he's looking to see what everyone has, and he just like barely looks away. If he holds his crosser there, he's likely got it, but he does come back, as we could see, and get it through the boards anyway. 12 to 11. Vitality. One chance. One chance to win in regulation and let loose that deep sigh of relief. Nurse grabs one on the way out, but it doesn't matter at this point. He's about to swing that's coming his way, and Nurse has lost everything, and that is a sound of celebration, a squeal you could, from Apex. Yeah, you could hear that muted scream. <laughs> you could feel it. Yep. All right. Heroic's able to scrape together some rifles. Decent utility as well. It's not bad, actually. It's pretty good here for Heroic. The biggest problem is the nades, because that's what you want to have to fight for ramp control if you ever want to. I wonder if we see Heroic actually step up and challenge so that Vitality can't just sit with ramp control, or ramp control for most of the round. It means putting yourself in harm's way with Cyrus up on the other side. Kicksan hops on down through short. It's Tessis with that first kill. Oh my god, Kicksan walks right into Apex. And just like that, Heroic have the first two kills of this round. They don't need utility, they just need bullets. And they're moving forward through that ramp. They've got full control and Vitality put down to just two players. And Sphinx is barely alive. I think Vitality caught off guard. They've been able to have that ramp control almost for free round after round. And they're so shocked, I think, to meet resistance. Shush peering straight down. Sphinx has no HP for a trade. Mezzi's gonna be easy. This one's overtime. Heroic stand tall when they needed it most. A rough half, but the final round of Z is theirs. Vitality were coming back into this. They did so much to get to 12 rounds, but a hero moment for Nurts in regulation and the comeback to overtime. This new look heroic are still dancing with the greatest. Okay, here we go. First map overtime, third map overtime. These teams neck and neck. Second map, 13 to 11 victory for Vitality. 
neither one of them relinquishing for long. And everyone's got money now. No more economic issues, although still a little bit of frustration. Vitality just want to be done with this matchup, man. Yeah. They just want to get through it. They're ready to just chill. Vitality pushed to the verge of collapse. But we reset this game again. Vitality focusing up towards the bottom of the ramp. Heroic given control for the early portions of this first round of overtime. This time it's not in your face control and defensive A ramp. It's a little bit of a trap setup that will start getting busted by Molotovs. Scaffolding player had to back away, which means so does the sandbags and so does the crane player. Counter nades raining in for heroic can do a damage. But Nikodaz is starting to activate and it's a missed shot and he can't fall back because the flames at his feet keep him in position. And Apex will make quick work of him. Nice shot from Mezzi whizzing through that smoke and through the box into the brain of Tessas. Plant coming through. Saibu, he's gone. He's knocked out by Nerds. And that bomb is not planted. And this round is not over because Nerds is their reckoning as he comes through that smoke. Nerds delivers death right to their feet. And Sphinx has left in a 1v3. He's come back up through short. Everything to do still. And he does bring down Nerds. With 30 seconds left, this round is still doable for Sphinx. Molotov out, gonna peek into that bomb site, but he just mollied himself off. So he he's has gonna... just cost himself the round with that Molotov. He's cost himself at least five seconds, and yeah, it's gonna have to be a mad dash. Pick up the bomb, sprint to the site, and Heroic know with his limited time, he has to commit to it. They think he's likely on default, but it's an intelligent play to plant on the offside, but they still clear him out once they realize it's not on that default spot. There's nowhere he could have got to, and what a step up from Nerds. Yeah, that's you, and I, like, I think, I feel the frustration. Like, you remember, he's he's been over at that B bomb site a number of times during these A executes with nothing to do, because Vitality just kills everyone, and by the time he arrives, or by the time the, the dust settles, it's time to save, and this time he's like, Hell no. I'm getting involved. Drop the nade. Push through. Great flash from kicks in to set him up. Can't believe this. What a massive sequence to save the day and gives Heroic the lead again. That's why they call him Rookie of the Year. One of the most talented prospects we've had. Snappy sung his praises many a time when he wanted to pick him up for his team and outside issues outside of the game couldn't get him into the roster in time. He had other obligations, and once the time was right, he came back to professional Counter-Strike, and my god, what a revelation Nerds has been. 22 and 11 in this third map for Nerds. I think people were disappointed about him finding this spot here in Heroic. We were hoping maybe he went to a bigger team, but damn, it's working out at the moment. This is, it doesn't get much bigger than this. You're going against the number one team in the world. It doesn't get bigger than this. It's a big test for a young player who just got Rookie of the Year to, to switch into a new lineup and have to be the star player of a lineup that's trying to figure out how they want to play together. But early returns are fantastic, as we can tell. Vitality forced away from ramp control early. And that nade, well, it goes deep enough, but not a lot of damage. So the drift back from Vitality, letting the wind take them to be. Perhaps that wind will be taken out of their sails once again by Shush. He swings out, flashlight doesn't work out. Nerds now instead has to step up. And it's one from Nerds. Could he get a second? He absolutely will. Nerds is just so good right now. Heading into overtime, he's just up the gear. He's, he's unplayable to a certain extent. Vitality's missing a little bit of utility, though. That flashbang went up and didn't go deep enough to blind his position. That's why he's able to get the second kill. That'll be something they see in review. Well, Kixan has moved in in the cover of the smoke, but Zaiwu's on the other side of it. It isn't the Zaiwu today that strikes fear into his opponents. It's a human version of Zaiwu rather than the alien we're used to seeing. And he's around the back of Tetris. In the final 30 seconds, Tessus has even drifted back over here to help. Sphinx is being so passive in this mid lurk. Oh, oh my god, Zywu's down and Sphinx, yeah, he's just nowhere to be seen. So it's all on Flames, he alone with that bomb. 20 seconds left. He needs Sphinx to go right now. He almost needs Sphinx to just sprint around that corner. If there's any hope in the world, and that bomb's down. Sphinx also falls as soon as he rounds that corner. And it's 14-12. Heroic are playing with Vitality in overtime. Yeah, man, I want to see Sphinx involved in that. Why, like, pressure middle while they're kind of, they're 
they're in this posture at the top of the B stairs, but those defenders, so much comfort to just keep looking forward. No pressure coming in anywhere, and Spinks just not involved in that round. Here's the flashbang, you'll see it coming up over. It didn't quite get there, and Nerds is able to rattle off a second one. So sick that Nerds is able to get two there, just retreating, staying focused. Quite often you'll see a player get one and then try to get back behind the cover, but Nerds too tall. Heroic, two away now from knocking out Vitality, yet again, find themselves in that position. An incredible comeback for Vitality and Regulation, down three to nine to bring it back with the chance to win. Heroic might just take everything from them in overtime. And that comeback was on the T side, crucially, Jason. They're not winning T rounds in overtime. They've got to do it on the CT side. And it is just dominant from Heroic right now. There is nothing Vitality are saying in these rounds. There's no show of competitive nature. Heroic dominate the ramp fights. They are now five versus two, and the round has virtually just begun. This Vitality are not making it through currently unless something magic absolutely fills them up going into this next round. They've got to be flawless just to force another overtime. Well, Mezzi, Molotov deep, swings out open, but Utility's there. Heroic's just so on point. The communication is flowing. They're working together so well. I don't see a world for this two on five. And they're going to keep pressing the issue. Shush harassing them every step of the way. And now the rest of Heroic is just going to show up and clamp down this bomb site. That smoke, I think, is the last signal that lets Vitality know they just can't win. We'll throw everything they've got at it, but 20 seconds. not getting any closer. Nerds just sends the bullet through. They can't even get off the stairs. They're just stuck, stuck in one position. Spinks is taken out. It is heroic up to map point, elimination point for Vitality. This is looking incredible from the new look heroic. Just one step closer, they take out the world number one. They take out the best player in the world, all in one foul swoop. And this is I, this is a big difference as well. Look, look at it now, peering down ramp, taking those fights. While in regulation, Vitality could march up and have their way with any kind of a set piece. Towards the end of regulation, Heroic just said, no more. Let's make this easier on ourselves. Let's not let them sit at the base or at the top of ramp and eat the sandbags for 20 seconds, setting up utility. Let's make sure they have to pay to get ramp control. Raz up the top of the ramp, gets into the midst of battle, but retreats and sets up elsewhere. Heroic have eyes on this B-bomb site. It is a site that was so weak for Vitality in that first half. We did not see Mezzi have a great time over that. This will be a crushing blow to the campaign of Vitality at the start of 2024 to go out of Katowice here. And Shush is running forward, attacking at the front of the pack. It goes around the corner, and it's Zaiwu with that first one. Needs a kill here, Mezzi, and he gets it. It's not over just yet. Vitality are stepping up on this hold. And Heroic have not been able to find their way through, but that shot from Kicksan, he won't be able to get away with it. And Nikodaz, he is not finding anything. Vitality, stay alive at least for another round. Yeah, that's a dominant hold of that B bomb site. And that's, uh, I mean, importantly, that's an area where they struggled. Mezzi had a tough time being aggressive at, at B stairs, had a tough time holding them back. Remember, the Heroic's T side was really powered by getting some opening kills and then working the middle of the map for B splits in the mid round and the late round. This time, just all the bodies towards the site out of the gate in Vitality handle business. But every round they go into, they face elimination. Every round, it has to be perfect just to get more overtime. It's not a comfortable position for any team. Nikodaz stopped by Utility, held at bay, and now Apex has to take him out. He will do exactly that, but the trade from Nerds through the smoke. His target has been found. Flame stepping up for just a single kill. Even trading, Heroic will take that. Yeah, but yeah, they absolutely will, because now this lets them play the map a little bit more. This knows, now they know the defense is going to have to make decisions, is going to have to move a little bit, and can they find the seam? Mezzi in quad, a position he held in out throughout regulation that was cleared multiple times, and they've so many Molotovs re ready to go here. They've got three of them this time around. He does have a smoke to put it out, but he'll be stuck in that position. 
Messi is mollied. Smoke goes down. He just has to stand in this position. And they know exactly where he is. So they send the nades in after him. And Messi can do nothing. He cannot fight. And Vitality, they've only got two players left. It has to be a step up now from the man himself. Zaiwu trying to stay alive. And he can't do it. The world number one are out in groups. No more Vitality. No more Zaiwu. And the curse in Katowice still stands. Yeah, it's a massive blemish on an otherwise spotless resume for the best player in the world for Zaiwu, but unable to have success in Katowice year after year. And this is such a disappointing, painful exit for Vitality. Things look so good at the start of CS2 as this roster came together, still winning tournaments. Now they can't even compete for the trophy and for Heroic, for the winners of this series. Boy, do they keep exceeding expectations. How much higher can they go? That is the question. Heroic taking down the world number one team in Vitality. We don't know what to expect from them. It's a similar story with Ents. These are two teams coming into this event, packing a punch that no one expected. And this one is a knockout blow. It sure is. I'm waiting for some of the victorious heroic members to come over. Nerds, come over here. Uh, what an insane match. You said a bit earlier, maybe I'm delusional, but I think we can make it to Spodek. You're not there yet, but you just beat the number one in the world. It's, I would say Vitality is a really good team. Every time I'm playing against them, it's overtime. It's insane game. And they showed how good they are, like the mentality that they have. Congrats to them, to them also. But I want to talk a little bit about your performance. It looked like you were flying at some points and not only on the server because I was watching from here every time you won around, you stood up, you yelled, you made sure that you got in their head. Was that all part of the kind of comprehensive approach today? I think it's, for me, it's more personal game. Uh, we're playing, playing against Pink's Flames. For me, it's important that I want to be better than them right now. They are number one in the world, and, right, and I feel like for us, we are improving from game to game, and I'm happy about it. Uh, I was going to say improving from game to game. It's like a different team from what we saw from Blast. What do you think it is that is making it that you are improving so fast, specifically uh, looking at maybe the Spodak not being a dream at all, but perhaps a reality soon? It will be a reality, I believe so. Um, everyone is sacrificing uh, and we, every time we are talking about mistake and everyone like open-minded about it and that's what's important. Let's keep it up. Let's keep it up indeed, thank you. Thank you very much. Extraordinary form coming out of Rurk to keep their tournament life here at the Intel Extreme Masters Katowice 2024, but two sides to every story because on one hand, we have Heroic taking down the world number ones, on the other, Jacob, take nothing away from that form, but Vitality, last place in terms of where they could finish here at I am Katowice. No more of Vitality here in Poland. Uh, it's a bit of a shocker, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I'm, I'm a bit shell shocked, and so were Vitality on the server. They could never really get it going. You and I, Matthew, were sitting in the green room, we discussed it. That second half on Vertigo, it felt like that was the first time Vitality came to play Counter-Strike at this tournament. It looked good for six, seven rounds. It looked like they were in flow state, couldn't really close out Vertigo, going into over time, I thought to myself, okay, we have the real vitality. I was standing behind them even. They looked and sounded very confident. Let's go in there, let's mess them up, let's win the game. And then everything went to S again. I don't know what it is with vitality, but they simply did not perform at this tournament and they deserved to be knocked out. They were not good enough in order to make it. And I think that's the sentiment I want to say. It wasn't unlucky, it was deserved. I agree. Uh, obviously, disappointment, uh, extreme disappointment on the side of vitality coming in Katowice as favorites and eliminated last. But I think that Heroic being able to turn things around in overtime speaks volume to what this team was capable of doing mentally. Because in context, you have to imagine they have a good start to the game. And it's mostly thanks to some individuals like Tezes who have a, an incredible capacity to entry the A side time and time again. They basically have vitality in the ropes. And then suddenly you see Vitality starting to play Counter-Strike again, going through the motions of these mid-rounds, abusing the defense of Heroic, being a little too passive on the A-side, Zaiwu is finding opening kills. All of these elements are coming back to back, and the logical ending of that is Heroic crumbling, because they're the new squad on the block, they're the, the guys with the least experience, they should completely buckle. And that's not what happens. They win this round 24, and then they completely reset. They find solutions. They are a bit more proactive on the A-ramp. They send people down with the MP9s. They send people flirting with the smokes out there. They find opening kills, and that in itself 
I think is a huge achievement for a team like that and for the leader that we have on our shot kicks in. Yeah, I think it's so apt that, you know, we not only give our flowers to the likes of Nerds showing up big time on mm. that third map, Tez as well being such a consistent force to be reckoned with, but Kixon, man, you, you yes. put it perfectly. The fact that he has the building blocks to put things together, crack the code and ultimately end Vitality. Listen, we're still learning when it comes to the play style of Heroic, but I think we saw some tendencies in this game, especially on Mirage. Again, very reactive, very motive, constantly proactive on the server as well. It, it seems like it's, as I said, you know, it, it almost feels like the old version of Heroic, the Danish one, where they're constantly trying to apply pressure to their opponents. It's a high risk, high reward way of playing Counter Strike, because if your individuals are not showing up and you're constantly out there seeking for duels mm. and you lose those, you're going to look silly on the server. But Heroic, they stepped up to that occasion today. The individuals stepped up, they played good Counter Strike, and I think Cookson actually won that AWP, sorry, not the AWP, the in game leader duel versus Apex in this one. Right, and, and we would be remiss to forget that the first half was an absolute masterclass from Heroic as well. And, and it's not only individuals, I mentioned Tessis, but it's the ability for Kixan to find a weakness, find a weak spot, and to apply pressure on it different ways, different timings. How many times did we see Heroic split the B side? Either a first intention, finding Mezzi, who was having, once again, a fragile game, there's no way around it, or then just applying pressure to B and then making sure that you catch Spinks off guard, which is, he's kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place because he feels like his B anchor is not exactly up to par, so he's trying to help, but then he's got a responsibility to hold the timing middle. He got caught a couple of times here, and that I give credit to Kixon, because there, it is a, a vista in the game to understand this is our this is our point of attack. We're not going to try to fight Zaiwu straight on. It worked once with Tezis as well. But no, 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 we're going to focus on the B side. This is where we're going to find our kills over there. And once the defense over rotates, then we're going to find easy runs on the A side. Perfect construction. Praise to Kixon. Well, unfortunately for Vitality, two best of threes is all we will be seeing of them here in Katowice. So let's get a few departing thoughts courtesy of Apex. Apex, um, so close, yet so far at the end of that game, what happened? I don't know, uh, 2024 is not there yet. We're not showing up, even though in Blast Group it wasn't pretty. As I said in a few interviews, it's never easy when you come back from being the best team in the world and, uh, and uh, for New Year. We're trying to grind, we're trying our best, but it's not, uh, it's not working. Individually, we, we, we're lacking a lot. Not in play, a lot of things. I don't even know how it's closer. I mean, we don't play good at all, but uh, yeah, it's the way it is. It needs to bounce back, and it's, uh, I guess it's a good slap in the face for, for the future. Yeah, I was going to say uh, a slap in the face, knowing that the RMR and Major, a lot of big tournaments are coming up as well. Do you have faith in yourself as the IGL, but also the team around you, that you'll be able to turn it around? Of course, of course. Um, when you, you already did it, I think uh, you know uh, you, you have uh, all the pieces uh, to, to do it again, but... Yeah, we need to, right now we need to look at ourselves and see what, what went wrong. As I said, a lot of things, but um, it's uh, yeah, it was pretty chaotic in a lot of situation. Not making decision, being scared a bit, not playing for each other, and yeah, not being calm in tough moments. It's never easy, but um, yeah, hopefully uh, it's gonna we're gonna bounce back soon soon enough. I hope so too. Thank you. Thank you. Props to Apex for giving us some eloquent words despite the loss. And uh, we're going to be upfront about this heroic. First of all, they deserve to win that series. But secondly, you look at the wider context of Vitality in Katowice. Mm. Jacob, it's always been a ghost that has just loomed over this organization. Yeah, I, I must be honest. I didn't really buy into that whole you know, storyline coming into the tournament because I think the context of the different versions of Vitality coming into Katowice were very different. However, this one around, there's no excuse. They were the number one team in the world coming into the tournament. They have the number one player in the world coming into the tournament and yeah maybe they were a little bit shaky a week ago in Copenhagen but it wasn't that bad after all they got the job done they qualified so for me to stand right here now and realize they exited the group stage finishing last place that is a bit of a bummer it is a big surprise and maybe there's something to that whole you know story yeah. around Sai Wu and not being able to deliver at this specific tournament I mean you have to imagine they lost to Enz and Heroic brand new teams, mm. and these are the two projects that send them home. It is a deserved early exit. Hopefully this is going to be a very strong uh, warning sign for the Major to come. And all my efforts, all the efforts, the resources should be devoted to the mental side of things, just to make sure you approach the Major in a different way, because here they were not able to withstand the pressure. Clear. 
it has to be. I mean, we just saw the bracket there as well. Uh, Heroic, it's going to be a long road for them. Uh, two best of threes potentially tomorrow if they have any hope of making it. To the yeah, game. but listen, Nerds even said it, right? He believes that it's possible to go into the Spodic. They've taken down Big, they've taken down Astralis, now they're taking down Vitality here in Katowice. If you can take down those three teams, who says you can't make it for the Spodic? It's some pretty big scouts for Heroic to be taken. We're going to have to wait till tomorrow to find out exactly how that one goes down. But uh, I think we need to up the atmosphere a little bit. It's got a bit somber here, so why not move on to a qualification series, no less. First of all, we have Ents impressed us from start to finish, and we're going to see if they're able to make it to the Spodek. But G2, champions defending, lay and wait. We're going to see how it goes down after this. That's, uh, <laughs> that's an old one. That's my best friend from childhood. Um, his name is Nicola, same like Nico's name. He's actually the, the first friend who got me into playing video games. So we would run away from school and go to an internet cafe and we would play like CS 1.6 together. So that's from my Renegades time. I'm not sure which event exactly it was, but we were living in some suburbs. So we would need like 15, 20 minute drive to get to the city. So I remember every day we were all jumping into the car and driving 20 minutes just to get some Chipotle because we all love Chipotle. If I remember, this is what like um, some of my Serbian friends and we played uh, some ESL um, like Adria or something like uh, basically tied to Balkan, some, some tournament. And I think we lost to some team from Greece, if I remember correctly. But yeah, it was just like we made a team as like friends and we just went there to, to, to play. This is uh, where we won uh, our first Adrialan. I think Hunter, Hunter was playing with me there. He's just not in the picture. Guy on the right, my right, is Impulse. Um, he was our upper back then, and uh, I'm not sure if he still plays. The guy on the left is Letney. Um, he used to play with us also in, in Crazy um, when we made the switch. And the uh, last guy in the picture is Petsa, which is uh, he's our manager in G2 right now. It was fun because it kind of solidified us as like the best team in, in the region. Yeah, I think this is one of my fondest memories. I'm not sure if it's quite this picture, but this is where we qualified for our first major in, in Berlin. I know we were really happy and we finally made it. Like we, we tried to qualify so many times before and we always felt like one step short and, and at this one we finally did it. Counter and me, we've been, um, or like we met like seven years ago, I think. And we, when we played together, it just like clicked somehow. Like we understood each other even without speaking so much. So. We kept playing throughout like numerous different teams and lineups together. I think um, we just understand each other really well and we know kind of what we can expect from each other and we can rely on each other. So and I'm actually really happy to be back playing with him. <laughs> this, one's, this one's funny because it brings, it brings up some really nice memories, but it brings up some also not so great ones. Um, this was in Malta, but we came to this tournament. It was the last tournament of the year, but before that we were in Los Angeles and we were playing CS Summit and um, we lost the grand finals to a stand-in and a coach, which was not nice, but at least we managed to, to like rebound, like bounce back and win the last tournament of the year. The guy in the picture, that's Ryan. He was our um, psychologist back in OG and he was basically just giving me a pep talk right, right before the game. That's pretty much it. Uh, this was at the uh, HLTV Awards. Um, that's my beautiful fiance, um, Donna. Um, I'm sure a lot of people know her. She works uh, with, uh, with Tone and she does like broadcasts and, and interviews for, for a lot of events. Well, we were on vacation in Italy and then we went um, to Sardinia and we were like 
not really hiking, but we climbed like a really big mountain and then we had like the whole view and she was on her phone like taking pictures of like the view and everything and then like I was behind her on like one knee for like five minutes waiting for her to stop taking photos and then when she finally turned I, I asked her and that's it. So Entz is playing G2 for a chance at the Spodek, and I've got two incredibly special guests for that occasion. Now let me start with you, uh, Taz. A chance to get to the Spodek, you're going to get pa have to get past him first, and Entz has been playing really, really well. Well, for me, it's like, you no, know, uh, it's exciting, and I'm happy that we are playing uh, against Entz, because it means that no matter what, we have uh, more Polish uh, representatives uh, in Spodek, and I'm just happy for all the Polish fans. And uh, hey, I'm a, I'm a fan uh, of the guys. I'm happy that Cuban uh, is uh, getting an, another shot after uh, being a player. I always thought that he has a great mind for tactics. So I'm just happy that we will face each other. And Cuban? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I can say the same. Uh, Taz was always a great player, great captain. That's probably what G2 was missing the most. And yes, they are a team which are playing for quite long together and I have a bit different challenge, uh, you know, building team from the scratch. And one thing is sure that none of us will have more of grey hair on our heads after the game. <laughs> Maybe it's a grey beard then, who knows. Um, anyway, it's already, it's already happening, it's so fine, it's fine. Yeah, silver fox and everything. Um, so, um, when it comes to your relationship, you actually coached him a little bit as well, I think, uh, back in VP. But I wanted to ask about your styles and the mission that you have here in Katowice, because I feel like for Enskuben, it is about elevating, because it is a roster that is still um, trying to find their synergy with each other, and that's kind of doing incredibly well already, but you need to elevate what you can get out of these players. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, that's true, of course. Uh, I didn't have super high expectations coming here. Uh, our main focus is about RMR, upcoming event. And it would have been harder if we lost two games, but, you know, appetite grows uh, when you eat. And when we won this free best of three, we haven't lost best of three this year yet, so we are aiming for the win another time. And thankfully, we can see Polish team in Spodek once again after eight years. Yes, but I'm going to grill you a little bit because a lot of teams say, yes, well, but it's about the RMR and the major. But come on, we're talking about the Spodek here in Katowice and you're doing so well already. I mean, time will show, like, we just need to, I mean, the better team will win and we want to do it today for okay. sure. Okay. Um, when it's about elevating for Ents, perhaps it is about maximizing for G2, such a star studded lineup. We saw Manasi absolutely popping off and I think we want to see all five being on the same page. Is that the, the main goal for today that we can see all of those superstars putting in the work? I mean, overall, like my main goal is to activate uh, them even more. I think that they have great potential that they are not using yet. Uh, they have potential to become, uh, to create a legacy uh, with their team, uh, comparable to the teams like Navi, Astralis. And uh, I I'm here to do my best to make them realize that even more and become uh, a better team. Thank you. A handshake, maybe a fist bump, something fist bump. which you well, used to do. My hand always. Okay. No, not to fist, not to high five me ever. It's not to high five hands. ever. Yeah. Only fist bumps. Okay. Yeah. There we go. It will be raining. So if those two dudes are standing outside the club, guess who ain't getting in? You. That's for damn sure. <laughs> but also, one of these teams looks to uh, to put a door stopper there on getting into the playoffs. So welcome you back to the Intel Extreme Masters group stage, sort of culminating, coming to a close. Yanko in the middle, Maniac on the end. My name is Trace for Stunna. Uh, now, guys, what we have on our hands here is exactly where you want to be if you're a team that has stayed alive in the upper bracket, Maniac. Absolutely, because the way to spot it is way easier through the lower bracket. You're only a best of three away, and we know how hard the road can be in the lower bracket. Hell, we just witnessed an absolute heartbreak happening. So for these two teams, great opportunity. Punch your ticket straight to Spodek. Yeah, and then you look at, you know, G let's start with it this way. Let's go with G2 and perhaps what they've shown us here on the ground so far. Well, G2, right, up and down story, in inconsistent as usual, but they got it done. I mean, their opening game was versus Heroic, and yes. we saw just how good Heroic is eliminating Vitality, the number one grand team in the world, who got to the lower bracket by losing two ends. So, uh, two very good teams here. Uh, it was definitely 
Monesi on day one. I mean, that was an incredible series for him. That was the most kills in a best of three in MR2, in CS2 online that we've had so far. And that just speaks volumes of what it took for G2 to be able to overcome Heroic. Yes, Monesi was an absolute monster. You have the numbers over here. And I wanted to deep dive a little bit in the G2 stats in that specific series. After all, that's the most recent info we have. So there's not a whole lot of information out of it, but still, T-side versus Heroic, you see Monesi having a great rating. But Nico is right behind. Uh, it's definitely a, a side of the game that he's got under control. But what I wanted to focus on a little bit, if I use this beautiful piece of utility that is our Telestrator, yeah. is the CT side of G2. And overall, there are tendencies that we find in this heroic game that are applicable to their entire CS2 stint. Monesi, 2.05 rating on the CT side of this entire series, best of three. Ridiculous. But here is where the story actually begins and where it ends as well. If Nico is struggling with CS2, it is entirely due to his defense. If you dive into the numbers and you have a little bit of an um, analysis, you will see here the difference between T side and CT side. And this is where he struggles the most. Now, you can make a sort of a gameplay analysis, and I really think it's down to his playstyle overall, because Nico's always been an incredible crosser placement and an ability to immediately one tap you when he is when you are facing him. When he goes for the duel, when he's on the aggression on the T side, that works. On the CT side, he hasn't figured it out quite yet, and that's a problem for G2. It will continue to be. So what you're saying is it's not his fault, it's the game's fault. Yeah. Uh, anything yeah, we can find, advantage. so it's not Nico's fault, right? I mean, if I do that for Zaiu, we should do it for Nico too. It's only fair. <laughs> yeah. It is only fair. Look, we're going to see him get into the huddle now. But yeah, you're, you're right. Nico has been one of those pieces. And it, yeah, for this lineup, might need to be Hunters, another one we could probably look at and talk about in terms of like what they're bringing to the table. Undeniable what they're capable of. Yeah, absolutely. And I think G2 in this iteration, it's always going to be a team that's going to be a little bit more loose. They're, they're never going to be, you know, super pristine with their gameplay. It's going to be messy, but it's the individuals that are going to take them over the finish line, right? That's what makes their ceiling one of the highest in all of Counter-Strike. Yeah, and that finish line, well, it's not necessarily Ince anymore, but uh, obviously. Polish line? Yeah, it's like a, a Polish sort of Dane line. Uh, Hades, what, we, what does he pack in as a punch on the other side? I think he's also found himself a little bit rejuvenated in this lineup. I think Kuben and Glaive have done a great job of creating a good atmosphere, good synergy within this team and in that Vitality series, especially when it comes to the new Decider game, he was lights out, really leading the yes. way for Enz. Well, he had a couple of absolute stinger in that game, really uh, round defining moments where he enters into mini, finds kills that are on, on a knife edge, basically. Is, we're going to see a couple of high rates from him. And it's kind of an apt story as well, because if you go back in time, just a little bit, Hades in that Enz jersey, but I'm talking about the international Enz, was under a lot of scrutiny. Players were calling for him whenever they were struggling. And now he's once again back in Enz, just a different profile, different result. Just a little bit of a, a different look. It's like the same homework, but a little bit different, right, Yanko? Yeah, definitely. We see some shades of nine right mm -hmm. in this new lineup, but it's a lot more than that. And on the contrast to G2, which is a lot more about individuals, what we see in this Ants lineup is already some cool things when it comes to team play. And when it comes to the Vitality series, one of the main things is they played to win. They didn't play mm -hmm. to lose. So early on, on the T side of Nuke, this is utility from Hades, a bit of a different smoke outside of door. The supporting utility from Glaive, the Molotovs, Dika is going to be outside, but the main player in this round is going to be Kyla, right? This is so you can see where the utility drops. This smoke is a little bit different, right? Usually people throw it here so you can go down vents, which is something that Kyla will do later on in this game. But in this particular round, it's just from spawn, aggressive play. You can see him lurking around the smoke. Goofy follows, and he's just sneaking, trying to find an opening. He finds Spinks here, immediately finds Zaiwu too. And despite Flamesy getting two quick refrags, right, it's that attention from Kyla that enables Diha now on the lurk to find one more kill, 3v2. They're going to just continue sort of slowly working that a bomb site. Diha on the fade finds Flamesy as well. And Mezzi in this 1v2, again, he's dealt with by the end's players. So aggression, you know, being proactive, mm. not being scared early on in that game against uh, Vitality. And that's why they were able to take them down. So, you know, yeah, obviously Vitality out. Sorry, Maniac, I just wanted to say it out loud. Thanks, just, <laughs> just a little bit of a, you know, stray right there. Let's talk about maps. 
right? Is that cool with you? I'm, I'm cool. I mean, you're the boss. You're kind of the captain of the ship, you <laughs> okay. know, if you, if you stir to the yeah, left but the what right. kind of leader doesn't ask? Listen, I'm the, just kidding. The big talking point about the V2 is, does G2 ban Vertigo or not? Yeah. Right? Like, it's been going good for them, actually, lately, and they've implemented overpass in their map pool. They almost have a seven, they pretty much have a seven map map pool at this point in time, but Mirage hasn't been going great. So what is the call here? Yeah. Is it get rid of Vertigo, which has been going great for Ants, or Try your luck and just remove Mirage. Well, we're going to have to see here. And then you have it. That's the, the Vertigo ban that you were talking about. Um, that opens up an avenue for Mirage if Ents were wanting to go on that. It's a bit complicated. Here you have the pick. Now for G2, I think Anubis is kind of no-brainer. They've been mm. pretty good on it. Uh, it's a map they've shown great promises. Boom, immediate Anubis pick. And we're going to have to see for the third map. I just wanted to quickly say as well on, on Yanko's uh, Telestrator segment here, the creativity that we're seeing from Ants is something I appreciate too. Like some of these teams, up-and-coming teams, have new utilities, new way to attack, and we're going to have to see if that plays a role in this best of three and, as well. And G2 is yet to win Mirage with this lineup, right? And the last time they played against Navi, it was horrible. Nick on the CT side only gets one kill as the Connectal player, just mm. abysmal performance. I still think, though, like they almost started convincing me in their Vertigo. But I think against this particular team, against Ants, which has the core of nine, and they won Vertigo both times, they looked super strong on it. I think this is the correct call. Because, you know, with guys like Nico, Monesi, and Hunter, you're playing CT side Mirage. There's no unknowns there, and I feel like they can still, with a good start, gain some momentum. They can steal that map away from Ants. I wish I wish I would agree there's no unknown. The, the <laughs> only known things is Monesi right now, and that is kind of the situation True. we're in. And this is why we're opening that door, right? I look at Ants, I look at this matchup, and I see a very similar pattern to Vitality, which is a huge name against them, every odds against them, but a perfect way to create an upset and just throw a wrench down there, boom, like a grenade. A grenade! And maybe they're just going to destroy us once again. That was pretty good. Honestly, if I would have known any better, I wouldn't have said you even said that yourself at all. But you almost you definitely jumped for did. cover. Almost. I thought about it, but almost does only count in horseshoes and hand grenades. Thank you very much, gentlemen. We do need to go ahead and get into this game itself. It is G2 taking on Ants, and we're looking at putting a team in the Spodic itself. That's just down the street, and perhaps it is that time to get the game started. Moses and Dinko on the call, and we are ready to go. G2 versus Ants for a spot in the Spoda. G2, the defending champions, the incumbent Katowice winners. And we've got Ants, the Polish team, trying to make it back through 10 years ago. We got to see those two coaches win it inside of the arena together, now going up against each other, Jason. Yeah, and how great would it be just right out of the gate just to have a Polish, a majority Polish lineup yeah. confirmed for the Spoda. So uh, we've already seen one upset today. Ants, Ants and Heroic both just surprising everyone with how good they've been in the early lifespan of these lineups and how quickly they been there. So let's see if Ents has another surprise in force because G2 is susceptible to upsets. In fact, it might have been upsetted by Heroic in the first day of the group stage if it wasn't for just a mind-blowing performance out of Monacy. And I think that's the big question that G2 has to answer for us is, what is this team if Monacy has a pedestrian game? It's just average, isn't it? it, it well, it feels like we haven't we haven't gotten like Nico arriving to see us oh. two quite yet. So yeah, question marks if Monacy isn't hitting shots. I hope he does arrive to see us two, and maybe here in Katowice we'll get to see that Monacy and Nexa, the first two kills of this round. But Goofy is fighting back, and he's got himself two of his own. So no bomb plant yet, but Ants certainly will lock those digits in now. Kylo punches them through, and we'll see a CT fight going down against the rejuvenated Hades. Swing around, couple of CTs coming their way, and Hades. Oh. Double dash right through two. It's just Nico left alone. And he's coming back in from jungle. So plenty of work here for Nico to do. No kit on his back and no hope in hell at the moment. He's got to worry about CT. That's the last spotted player, but he's also got to worry about a plethora of angles. And now he knows where Goofy is. Nico runs out, does take him down, and seven health left for Nico in this one. Taps to try and draw Hades into it, but that time is taking too far. Gone now, and Nico, when he does go for that fight, loses it. And a celebration for Rens as they just look to bring the energy early. Yeah, some big boy shots from Hades over at CT Stairs, but you gotta give some credit to Kyler, because Hades is fully blinded. Kyler's the one being enough of a distraction, enough of a nuisance to allow Hades to come unblind and hit two, yeah. I'm yeah. loving Proven Cam, I'm loving it. <laughs> this tournament, he has had some great facial expressions. Just, it's been a wild ride between him and God B. He's had like the positive train. Yeah. If you go with God B, you just kind of get sad. Yeah, Coopin's just like, I haven't hit shots like that since I was a young man. <laughs> Oh my goodness. It's great to see Taz standing behind this G2 team as well. It'd be fantastic if he turned into a mainstay coach in Counter-Strike. 
missed his presence at big events. Listen, if you can fix G2, you pretty much carve your out a spot as a coach. <laughs> nice kill from Hooksy. The peak with the 5-7 being aggressive, a little bit of chip damage onto Kyler, and gonna back away. In a round like this where you invest in pistols, scout on Monacy, that one kill, that five on four is quite nice to have because the scout hasn't even been put in play yet. And Hooksy's had a couple of rounds, hasn't he, at this event where he's maybe exceeded our expectations on his individual level. But Monacy, well, he just keeps pushing our expectations further. He's in the apartments, he'll hop on out and decides he's going to change his position up at the one minute mark. So G2 will maintain that player advantage. It's true a lot of time off the clock though, and he didn't see numbers more than just one. So you can't really do anything with it if you're G2, except make educated guesses. And they're gonna keep three players parked at this B bomb site. 47 seconds left on the clock. And this looks like where Entz is gonna end up. Coming up Catwalk as well as Goofy. And he'll have a job to do if his teammates encounter issues. Smokes on over into his B-bomb site. And the trio look to hold it. Hunter is the first. And it's not worked out too well for Hooksy. d -Hot cuts through them and a second in for d -Hot as well. So they've got the B-bomb site overwhelmed. Next, uh, Nico on the extremities. They only have pistols and no chance. So they'll just sit back, maybe an exit or two, or maybe they can get this first and run in. I'm not gonna lie, that felt like there should have been more resistance from G2. Yeah, definitely I thought, should. I thought that would have been a harder battle for, for Ents to get into the bomb site. At least now, though, they are blocked in. So now the plan changes. You're not gonna win this if you're G2. Go for some exit kills. Kill some on the escape. Here's Nico's Deagle. And we know how famous that boys can be. But he's taken out after one swift upgrade for Deha. He's done his work on the MAC-10 and absolutely deserves that upgrade. And there's that fire short watching through the monitors. Yes. Of the G2 players. That is the back of Nexus head. Yeah. Fresh fade, looking good. Hoping to show that in the SPO deck. Deha, here he is, hopping on out. That MAC-10 doing good work. Yanko was talking about this sort of environment that they've been able to bring to this Ents team and sort of rejuvenating Hades and getting him back on board. It's It's been great to see his step up in this tournament. He's among the top rated players at this event, a 1.4 rating across three maps play in the group stage. Obviously, they've had the play in. Honestly, I really like Hades' game. I think he's a lot of fun to watch. Uh, I, I'm, I, that's one of the more exciting, like, individual matchups, I guess you could call it. In this in this series for me is like the Monacy versus Hades toe to toe. Whose op is, is going to have the most impact? Whose op can be the most crucial factor for their teams? Yeah, and Hades has a bit of a chip on his shoulder about you know he got removed from ends because he couldn't really find too much consistency with his game, and they were bringing in some pious. Some pious obviously proved to be a very good move. Individually, he was great in nine. That that team just couldn't figure out how to how to win games as as a team. As they weren't on vertigo. Yeah, just a, in a general simplistic uh, way of looking at it. Like that that team, I thought I always thought did so much cool stuff and just could not find ways to close out maps and win games. Unfortunate, but they have found themselves in Ents. And so far, Ents find themselves two players up against Pistols, and G2 are just waiting desperately to get the gun round out. And that's what they want. Ooh. Last year, the storyline that dominated the headlines in Katowice was the fact that Nico had never won, despite so many finals here in Katowice, finally got his... <laughs> his <laughs> here, that's I, such I saw a smile bust out on Nico's face when that happened, because you know it's just like, what the hell even yep, is this? Yep, yep. <laughs> Hopefully he can smile again this year, but uh, here we go. Gun rounds out, Monacy on the AW. Well, that's that's also what's so concerning about like feeling like there's been like a like a little bit of a loss of step for Nico into CS2, where we haven't seen him here uh, the way we would like and the way we're used to seeing him in CSGO. Is when when G2 is at their best, when they won Katowice last year, when they won Cologne last year, it was the one-two punch of Monacy and Nico, Hunter being in there at times, but mostly Monacy and Nico just going beast mode together. Yeah, two of the very top players in the world inside of one team. So hoping to see Nico gain that step back in CS2. He's top, top middle. 
He's taking a few steps in this round, and he's going to stand around here alone. Yeah, but look at the mini-map and, uh, and focus your eyes over towards Palace that's just being smoked off. Diha's here with a MAC-10 and the bomb in the back of Hades. This feels like it's always going to end at the A bomb site just because they're so committed in through Palace. So regardless of what everyone else on the map does, they're going to try and find a way to meet up at that A bomb site. Now, the real issue for Ets at this round is Monacy and Nico have complete control of middle. They've heard nothing. They've seen nothing. This utility is not going to scare anyone because they're in these positions feeling no pressure so at some point they're just going to say guys mid's clear like ignore this catwalk smoke ignore ignore what's happening here it's going elsewhere ants look to pop nexus hat well it's kyler who just deletes nico from con that's a nice shot from Kyler, and even the spam, the return spam through the smoke by the MAC-10. Gushes up Hunter. Defense is forced to go passive. The Nexus slipping closer into the bomb site around the back of that smoke. It's d that is the first victim of the rifle, but Nexa couldn't quite control the Garden Hose for the second kill. And oh, Monacy, you don't see him miss those often, even on the second chance. Kyler takes him out, and G2 are out of this one. That's not what you like to see. That's not what you like to see at all. Just battered and bruised, and Ents have a nice easy round. Hades will fall, but that's going to be the last kill, and G2 going to save a couple of M4s. I was saying in the previous series, I bumped into Tessas when they had that opening game versus G2 in the groups, and he was just saying, damn, we got we got right by Monacy. Just Monacy. Imagine if he didn't have a great game. And then we look back at the context of that performance. It was just astounding, really. Like, G2 didn't look that good. And, and Monacy just dragged them through, kicking and screaming, and got them that W. Yeah, such is the prowess of Monacy. I mean, they've spoken about it many times, in particular, even on, on your podcast, Jason. Nico was saying these 16-year-olds, these 18-year-olds, they can all grind a lot more than the yeah, players. They sure can. And that's certainly going to help when a new game comes out, when you've got to figure, figure out CS2 and the little quirks that it has. There's always a 16-year-old gamer with more time than you. <laughs> that's one thing I've learned in life. And if, and if there isn't, uh, well, maybe adjust your lifestyle. <laughs> Well, it was Katowice, where Monty started, Monacy started making his name into a household. Oh yeah, back in 2022. That yep. was one hell of a Katowice incredible showing. Incredible performance, incredible clutches. It's always Katowice, man. It's always that like event that's the breakout for these prodigy players. Dolph yeah. this year, into the playoffs already. Let's see if he can get up to that same level that Monacy showed us in 2022. Yeah. Dolph might even be living up to the expectations even more than Monacy did at the time. His appearance in Katowice under these lights here is, is absolutely incredible. Yeah, it's just about when that playoffs kicks off and Seeing how they handle the pressure. It's a different beast. It definitely is. And uh, his screams won't be heard by the other team. He'll still be doing them, though. Oh, he'll definitely be doing them. Maybe he'll get away <laughs> with the words he's been banned from saying because no one's sure. going to hear them. Oh, oh, banged out. Nice shot from Diha. No hesitation on the swing. He's the only player at the A bomb site. And he's just like, I'm going to steamroll through this place. Yeah. Next is up in Palace. I don't even think he's going to hit the timing. Maybe as they come up con, he can wreak some havoc, but there's just way too many bodies and only one defender. And that defender is the lone Power Ranger of Nexa, who stays inside of Palace. Which color Power Ranger would he be? Uh, G2's jersey's black, so i got to go with that one. Black Ranger? Yep. Okay. And Deha right now, I don't know. What, don't... what dinosaur would be his Megazord? You know what, Jason? I'm not going to lie. There's two things I skipped out on watching as a child. Pokemon and Power Rangers. Okay, sure. So, you know, I watched a couple of episodes of it, and you're probably more familiar with uh, Megasaur dinosaurs than me, unfortunately. All right. But I do know they made a lot of uh, new movies about it. That, that kind of sucks. It's a lot franchise. <laughs> well, this is a quite a franchise before. It's from Ants right now. Five and zero. Where's G2? Yeah, both of the favorites today, G2 and Vitality, just uh, just getting buried early on and playing these recovery games. Neither of them has been able to get out. And I, I mean, I think there's only been what, like one gun round to really speak of. So in some, in some ways, it's kind of like par for the course. But Ents is looking sharp. Look at these shots we're seeing come out. Even with rifles, it's not like there's a whole lot of a chance for a rebuttal for these G2 players when the engagements do come in. So Taz, for the first time, gets in the ear of his players, tells them to wake the hell up. 
and as much experience as him and Cuban have in player, as, as players, and Taz obviously continuing his playing career for much, much longer than Cuban, it's Cuban who now has the advantage between the two of them in terms of coaching experience. Yeah, one of the kind of the first early adopters of coaching uh, was Cuban, and man, he was a coach when I was 14 years old. So <laughs> he's been here for a while. Yeah, he's been around the block. It was one of the it was one of the first things Taz said to us as well when we when we saw him here in Katowice. He came up to us in the hotel and I was like, "Hey man, how's how's coaching going?" He's like, "It's a lot. I gotta I gotta I gotta figure out the teams we're going up against, and uh, more importantly, I gotta I gotta figure out my own team too." <laughs> that's the, and it, it is a, the more difficult it challenge. It is a daunting, overwhelming task stepping into this coaching role. Yeah, you got to deal with uh, with a bunch of different personalities and see how they all gel in your first time. As a coach, it'll be, be an interesting time for Taz, certainly. And we've got a lot of reunions coming up here in Katowice. And that is Monacy dead. One kill so far from Monacy. Hasn't arrived at this game at all. And that's going to be frustrating for him, just getting caught through that smoke. Can't do anything. There's, there's no fight to be had for Monacy here. Yeah, what a nice counterplay from Kyler. Nico's going to roll over, but because there's such a stack at the A bomb site, they're going to leave that in place. They're going to just trust Nico, and if they go B, round's done. Here, they have a phenomenal chance. Hooksy at the back of the site. Next on Hunter, aggressive towards A ramp. The split at the ready. Hunter and Nexus still moving forward. That old crazy push, and Goofy comes back in to clear out Hunter, but they haven't protected Nexa. Now that second player ramp is going to give away his position, and that plant is coming in around the other side of default. So bomb is down, Nexa taken out, and six rounds in a row here for Ents. Absolutely flawless so far. Yeah, Kyler even finds Nico at the B bomb slate on a little bit of a lurk through all that hits going on. Jam, Ents is looking good. There's 12 kills so far total for G2. So uh, we're not looking too hot at the moment, watching this G2 roster. And you asked the question before this game began, what happens if Monacy doesn't have a good game? What does this team become? They haven't had a round yet. Still waking up. Still shaking off that dust. They've been waiting around, watching that Vitality exit. And now it's their time. They pushed a palace here, G2. That's some control for Nico, and he's still moving very slowly. I do love the fact that Glaive just had like his best performance ever, and then returns to normal form after he just oh, after, after beating Astralis. <laughs> like, yeah, that was I'm just great. Just gonna step up with the best performance I've ever shown as a professional player. Yeah, I even really like that Astralis team, but there there is still something satisfying of just seeing someone just a game that obviously is going to mean so much to them. Ooh, Hunter somehow finding Sanctuary at the top of the fire. Those flames not tickling his toes. Got a crossfire as well on a five on four. Ooh, there's the Deagle peak and the SMG does work. Hades close up with the off. What are you gonna do? No scope and escapes as well. He's even hunting him down. That's why we like Hades. Gets a little bit of a highlight reel in action. That's sick from Hades. Mechanical skill on display. Now Monacy looking to show us what he's got with that Deagle. Missed shot on that first. And a shot of that AWP whizzes on by his head. He wishes he had one in his hands, but he does not. And Ents are into the bomb site. Bomb is down, and an AK-47 now in the hands of Nexa. Nico boosting him over the top of short, seeing if Nexa can get eyes on Hades, and he will. So the underworld closes, and we've got a 2v3. Is G2 still peppering the remaining defenders in this post plan? Kyler at the back of the bench is spamming down as much as he can, and it's Monacy on three health. Oh, Kylar peeks up, and those kills come in for G2. It's the most unexpected round win for them to find. Yeah, it really was. That, that felt like it, it should have been Ents. After, after Hades gets that double kill, they get into the bomb site. Even in a three on two, it feels like they should be able to hold that off and just shots not landing. Look at Hades, though. This seems so crazy. That's one of those plays that never enters my brain in that situation, because I'm like, I got red HP. I'm not jumping through that smoke with an off, but he handles it well. Hey, you couldn't even see it coming. Next, uh, Nico cleaning things up inside the B bomb site. G2's on the board in a timeout immediately. Taz trying to get the boys fired up to continue building on that victory. Build a little bit of momentum and claw this half back into their control. Taking a lot of time pondering over the purchase here, G2. Hooksy yet to buy. Most players still with pistols in hand. We'll see those 
picked up weapons off the floor into the hands of Hunter and Nico. Terrifying players with AK-47s. And Monacy, of course, has his weapon of choice lying on the floor. We'll pick up his special tool and we'll head into round eight. Hunter. Charles tossing out that disruptive utility towards top middle and Monacy is starting to be a little bit more active. He's going towards short, searching for this opening fight and he's not alone. He has got Nico who is now making his way up top mid. Monacy blinded for a moment, then peeks out, secures a kill on Goofy. And now Nico worried about possibly being pushed on the underpass, but Utility's going to keep that player at bay. He's got to make a decision if he wants to bail out or stick for the fight. And yeah, after that, when that Molotov's coming to its close, he doesn't want anything to do with it. Everyone backs away. Monacy's off catwalk as well. As this round enters the mid-round timing of things, we'll start seeing the defense shift. Op is going to reposition as well. Ants is still very spread out on the map, so they haven't made any decisions of where they want to end up. Everyone kind of probing, everyone seeing what kind of information they can gather. A little bit of utility to see if it forces anyone into the open. Yeah, and that lack of bomb is certainly going to indicate... Well, it's going to end at the A-bomb site. Hades has fallen back from B, so he'll pick up the bomb on the way. Oof. They've lost another player. It's not going to be much of an attack here for Ents. So they picked up the bomb. They're trying to get through window, and Nico... Crosshair placement, just waiting for that player to come through the window. But Kylar has I think decided he doesn't want to go in that. I think this round just ends in a, in a stalemate. They yeah. just call a save at this point. 20 seconds for them to make a move. Diaz close up to the B bomb site, but Hades backing away to T spawn with the bomb. So yeah, this round's done. Second round for G2. They survive with all five players. Flawless victory as well. No one's taken any damage. They get to build up some money, and they'll close the gap just a little bit further. And that's just two kills from Monacy when he gets the AWP out to secure this round two. It makes it uncomfortable for Ents. They never find the positioning that they desire to go for an execute to go for the final move. And they just have to call it off. So Taz has uh, fist bumps and high fives all around. And we get to see Monacy here in mid. That's uh, a good shot and then a nice reposition for the flick up short. Still seeming good spirits for G2. Yeah, they're probably used to being down two to six. Yeah. Gotta always come back. That's one of my favorite additions to the Counter-Strike scene is those frosted glass windows that like go up and down in between it. We've seen some great energy across the teams in this competition. And this is great energy from Ents out middle. Okay, sick headshots. That's G2 <laughs> just crushed instantly. Yeah, what a rebuttal from Ents. They're just like, okay, play middle. We'll throw out extra flashbangs that you won't expect. Ooh, Glaive getting uncomfortable. But uh, Hooksy is just put down with utility. So Diha's got the angle. Hooksy flicks back and smashes him in the face. Yep, but what can you do? Molotov down, down in place. Ents has infested this entire A bomb site. There's nowhere next on Hooksy can go. They're closing the gap as if they're going to challenge for this. And Hooksy's actually put in a doable situation. Next is going to keep coming. One more kill towards CT spawn. And it's on. And Hades oh, just wait. a little too overeager. It's time to rain it back in, boys. Oh, they do not rain it back in. They rain down on Hooksy. And he gives them a headshot in return. It's suddenly only goofy. And what a goofy round this is being from Ents. They've let this slip after opening up middle with three kills. They walk into Hooksy thinking the job is over. And Hooksy, on the rare occasion, steps up with a really impactful round here. Tap on that defuse, not committing to it. And Hooksy with the 4K. More of that, please, Mr. Hooksy. No business winning that. And that is composure that Enz has not yet developed in this lineup's young lifespan together. That is them being way too loose with things. They felt they had the advantage, and they were right. They pressed that advantage, and they got a bomb plant. But at some point after that, you need to calm things down. Someone on the team needs to tell everyone to chill. That's too much from Hades. That's a long time that you don't have information in CT spawn. You don't know someone's shifting in that position. And boy, do you get punished. And again, those are the rounds as the underdog team looking for an upset. You simply cannot let slip away. Well, they have let it slip away. Now time to try and pull those socks back up. It got the purchase yet again. So all bow for Hades, AKs around it. So you've got everything you want to have a swift response. That's got to fuel Hooksy with some confidence. We've seen, we've seen both TT, I mean, twice now today, 
in the earlier matchup as well, Vitality for Heroic. Now, now Ents on G2. Uh, Ents and, and Vitality both letting four on two slip away for no good reason. Just bad Counter-Strike. Aggression A ramp to take control with Nexa and Nico. But it looks like a B split is coming into effect. Yeah, they got Connector into A. Monas is waiting for them. And it's, a, it's a long time with his vision open for Monasi. Thankfully, yeah. he hasn't slid out. Yeah, definitely risky. Losing that chance open. Oh my god, get hard cleared, Hunter. Oh my goodness. Could not stop that, but Hooksy, what has he had for breakfast? Another double kill. And he's done enough to keep G2 ahead on the player count here. Yeah, but keep an eye on the health of Monacy. Only 10 HP. He's going to be a really late play in towards market, especially with an AWP. So if Nico and Nexa can't create anything, can't find a kill, Monacy's just bailing out. Deha and Glaive. 2v3 post plank. Deha has to change position. Fortunately, didn't take damage from that Molotov, so they don't know where he is. But now that he's up against three, they will surely find him in just a moment. And what a clear from Monacy. He didn't even give the right floor a second to hit the shot. No, that's fast. That is real fast from Monacy. Double kill for him and a solid retake. And G2 is right back in business. Oh my god. Yeah, this round's a, a great example of how he earned the nickname The Flash. Yo, Kyler's Kyler's been sick Ooh. in these B halls. Yeah, he's been great. He's been he's been actually amazing. And I and I think if you're if you're Ents and you're Glaive. You're happy to keep letting him play with freedom over there, and that might be something you want to follow up with, because I think he's gotten about three rounds, three openings at that B bomb site that you can kind of rely on at this point. First time out for Ents. Two have been used by G2 so far in this opening half, just to make sure they can rebound from this hole. Nico towards window, not seeing any presence, not seeing utility dump upon him, but eventually that smoke will land. Monacy looking to compete through the underpass. Kylar, we just sung his praises while well, his timing is impeccable. The step back around the corner and that timing to take a step back has actually allowed him to stay alive because Monacy would have certainly hit that shot. And now he's looking back towards ramp instead. Oh, Monacy's going back this time, but Kylo close. Oh, oh Monacy's dead to rights. Doesn't even get one out of it. Yeah, I, again, like very aggressive, running into it, scoping into it. Plenty of information for Kyler and Goofy to be to be gathering Ooh. and ready for those engagements. That's a banger shot, and this defense is is gutted. Absolutely gutted. Nexa at least gets that headshot. Needs another one. Just wants to draw this back to even numbers on that player count. So the ball plant is coming through. Hades will secure that and ends now with a 4v3. Now they lost a 4v2 previously. I think that's been a slap on the wrist to focus up in these situations. Yeah, also this one is really contested even as the plant goes down. So nobody's gonna be too crazy. Goofy's still waiting an underpass, but no indication the retake is happening means he doesn't have to make a move. Yeah, and Hooksy's coming through connector. So once he does that, it'll be Goofy's timing to peek out for the underpass and take out Hooksy. And next up, trying to battle his way back in from Ticket, but it has not really got that far. Nico, the time is too far gone for him to have any real effect on this round. He is going to drop back in towards the connector and die. It was always going to be a really unlikely retake, and I think in a different time of the half, G2 probably just saves that, but they got so much money. They have no problem just throwing those rifles away, going for a miracle retake because they have a full buy in the next round. Good kills from Goofy. Bang, Hunter goes down. What a round from Goofy. Puts together a triple kill. And a three round lead, heading into the final round of the first half. So Glaive gets the mid control without any resistance. He's got to worry about other positions such as short and ladder room and he's going to see the trajectory of those grenades and know there are players currently positioning themselves at short so he'll send that Molotov up and he's out of there so they 
apply pressure mid early, and then they drop back. Yeah, show some presence, and we'll see how how long it takes for them to readjust on the map. Kyler looks like he's still going to be coming in through the underpass to lurk eventually. He can challenge the B bomb set again. As I mentioned, they might let him just keep having freedom because he's been so successful on that part of the map. Deep Molotov to keep back Kylor. It's pretty good. Kylor is confident. And he's going around that corner, seeing if he can spot Hooksy jumping. You can hear those steps, so you know you're going to get a time. You're at least going to get a chance. It was such a tough shot to hit. And Hooksy drops off after the warning shots whiz by. But Monacy, another unorthodox missed shot from him. And he's knocked out by Glaive. So blistering through this A-bomb site with a headshot. Now creates space for Ants. And you've got another superstar on this team. And Nico trying to step up. But he's distracted. Transitions back well enough to get one. But the rest of the kills are all here for Ants. 29 seconds left. Hooksy on the rotation over. But his teammates haven't given him a very easy round. He'll have to do it all on his own. Hooksy's been balling, bro. Like 11 so kills. Crazy. That's a sick shot. He beat Hooksy. He absolutely do be hooks him, but not this round. Deha spams him down. What a strong showing from Ents as they want to take a step closer to qualifying themselves to the Spodak. Cheeky angle for snacks, but everyone else removed. <laughs> 2 and 0. Oh. I'm not talking about the series, not yet at least, but Mao's are trying to get there. Game of Legion's first full buy. Orp will be delayed as a result of taking that full eco round two. Hopefully we can see Acor come off to a stronger start in this game, being on the favoured half for an AWP. Less necessity for Torshi to have it if they're going to be running fast executes. Mid take for Mal's delayed. Expecting more utility than maybe Gamer Legion do throw. It's just Isaac rooting donuts. Triple B, the first gun round. And I really love how just independent Brolin is, how much faith they have in him. To put pressure on as a one-man unit. He's faking very hard right now, keeping three players here. That leaves just two in defense of this A-site. Vault backing off into Donut. Does have a man alongside him. It's him and Isaac. Sure, he's coming through on this Lurk as well. Check him out in middle. He's about to cause a problem. Cause commotion at the back of the Donut. Vault jammed in. Does get a kill. There's a second Lurk in mid, but Brolin dies to the red swing, and now they're in trouble. Torshi needed to live after that kill, but he simply couldn't afford to. Vault, same story, tucked back, deals with his kill very well, leaving Jimpat in a clutch. Quick reload, going to top up the M4. He's going to need all the bullets if he wants to withstand this one. Smoking through, but they're oh, on that bomb. It's the 10-second stick. Kios trying to hold it. His teammate watching on. It's a little awkward, and the defuse just oh. comes in in time. Right before Yumpa can make it through that fatal funnel of smokes. Gamer Legion steal that one from under Mouse's nose. So they're going to get their first on the board early. Yeah, that was that was pretty desperate for Mouse because they have all the control, but they still don't plant for Donut. They still don't give uh, a setup there because they don't have Donut yet. Shui was late on that lurk. They smoke it off and they just go for a safe plant, but that's where they choose to take in the post.
Another super T side called by Glaive here on Mirage. It could have been, been better, Jason, if they didn't lose that five versus two, but it's still at four and still in the lead and feeling good about their chances of taking down G2 today. Exactly, but that's the thing. If G2 mounts a comeback here, if this gets down to the wire, if this ends up going to overtime, we're going to be looking back at that, that five on two round and just being like, come on, boys, what are you doing? How Why does it have to be happen? like this? Let's see what their defense has in store for us. Kylo and Hades to be at the A-bomb site. Diha and Glaive manning down middle. And Goofy's going to be over at the B-bomb site. Glaive and Diha. They're the mid-players here for Rents, and they're looking for this fight. Good man. Oh, my God. That's one of the best nades I've ever seen. And Diha's going to step up with a triple off the back of it. He didn't <laughs> even need the grenade because he just hit all headshots. And Kylo flicks up to Palace. That's the pistol just like that. Yeah, when the kills come out in mid like that, three kills for Diha, it forces Nico to make a play before he wants to. He's got to try and catch somebody off guard, wants to hit a timing where someone's attention is shifted away, and there's just no joy in that fight. Goofy's pushed up as well, so Monacy's got the bomb, but there's so much danger in this route, he has to walk. It's time for Maneshi to sign. And he's going to go around that corner. Goofy's waiting for him, and Monacy, oh my god, did get an opportunity to flick back, but Kuvin's very happy about I, how that pistol went. I guarantee you he's pointing at him and chuckling about them because they had a conversation, and Glaive said, I know exactly what pistol round we're going to run, I know exactly what to do, I know exactly what they like to do. And it worked perfectly, and Cuban thinks that's funny. Yep. Taz probably less so. He loves it. He loves it. D. Howe, obviously, the destroyer in mid. But you know what's great about uh, this team as well for Glaive? The fact that there's probably a new respect found for him. You know, he's probably not had as much respect from the teammates that he spent a lot of time with. His time went on, but just with the sheer achievements and how little some of these players and ends have achieved, going into a team with Glaive, you have no other option. You've got to respect the, the tenure of him, and it's probably a really well, nice thing to have. Especially when you spend the last year as nine, you know, being competitive and looking dangerous and being an interesting team, but never being able to, like, break over the hump into consistent Tier 1 events and to, in terms of breaking into being able to actually challenge for series victories. So now, yeah, you add an in-game leader like this with the pedigree that Glaive has, and I think all these players are just going to be happy to have that experience and that voice behind them. I'm all here for this Next Glaive comeback. I'm all here for the Glaive comeback. Yeah, it's looking good, isn't it? We're, we can't quite sell it just yet, but our early returns are, are quite nice that this end's team is, uh, is interesting, is intriguing can be competitive full investment in this round for g2 which is netting them absolutely nothing without any kind of a bomb plan next round is going to be an even weaker buy it ends is uh Ooh. is getting closer and closer to just taking this map straight up Diha? oh my goodness kylo is with him and it's 10 rounds now for N, certainly taking steps closer. It seems actually they're sprinting to the finish line at the moment. Seems like you're going to have a little tech issue here for G2 and hopefully get that one fixed as quickly as possible to return to this action. But to be honest, it hasn't been that competitive, has it? It feels like it feels like G2 haven't shown up to this game at all. No, it's, it's given me very similar vibes to the first map between Vitality and Heroic as well, where it's just like, this isn't the Vitality that, that we want to see here. This isn't the Vitality we're used to. At least Vitality came back into yeah. here, the map, at least. They made it competitive. We just haven't seen that sign from G2 yet. And again, it's another quiet map here in Katowice for, for Nico. It's 6 and 11. And no, obviously, Monacy there with him, 6 and 11. It's just not enough fragging output at the moment from G2. And that's going to change soon. It won't in this round in all most certainty. It's just next up. On a Tech-9, a Deagle for Nico. So the pistol should be cast aside. And Ents are staring down the barrel of an 11th round. And Dio's got so much confidence right now. Yeah, you can't stop him. He's feeling confident. All right, Goofy, chance to stab pad. Three players headed your direction. Ooh. First one's down, that's Monacy. Second one, you see firing off from the windows. They might get forced back off this. That's a superficial damage from the Glock. Yeah, it's like the dink sound makes you feel like you've done a lot more. And look at how long they're letting, they're, they're giving this round time to breathe and let someone peek into Nico with the Deagle and just like no one's doing it, not without a flashbang at the very least. No one's even giving the opportunity for this Deagle to get into action and pick anyone off. 
ever ever since that round, that five on two, they've seen they've seemed a little bit more locked in in terms of playing smart, playing intelligently, valuing your life a little bit more, not giving easy kills away. We started Katowice in the plane with Enz having zero expectations. Zero matches under and the now belt. It's actually, it's actually not all that surprising to see them lead it against G2. It's surprising to see the fashion, but they've got it in them to beat this kind of team. But right now, this badly, it's, it's incredible. And there's a shot finally for Nico. He's been looking for that for quite some time, but here he's running over to plug the gap. He'll do what he can, and Glaive will come to close. And there he is up in the Hall of Heroes, looking a little younger. And he's uh, more mature in a different banner and a... Different jersey. A whole lot has happened since then. All right, let's see. Let's see what we've got. This is this is the last gasp of G2. It's just so calm on the inside of things. They've they're not they're not stressed. They're not worried about anything. G2 is buried in a seven round deficit. Up in the hands of Monacy. That's at a ramp. Nico and Nexa joined up with them. It feels like G2 needs some sort of spark to just fire them up, like a big play, a big clutch, a big round, something for G2 to just shake out of this. Feels too pedestrian at the moment. Here goes Glaive throwing that grenade down into ramp. It's perfectly placed to land on the head of Mexa. No one's actually in the A bomb site though, so if they actually start streaming up a ramp, obviously G2 can't know that at the moment, but it's gonna end up being a retake scenario because Kyler's gonna stay passive behind behind the utility. And just now, Nico's starting to jiggle and starting to make his move up the ramp. Coming through connector, G2 attempting an A split. And the defense isn't really set up to deal with this too well. You have hope that Goofy can get back towards CT in time, but it doesn't look great right now for the defense. And Goofy has actually got towards CT. G2 taking the yeah, time. But they've slowed it. Okay, good Molotov. Kyler's going to be forced into the open. He's just. Oh, we got oh, one. He wins one. He wins one. And there's the burn. Goofy goes down as well and spawned it. And that, even all that time, had not bought a whole lot for G for Ence's defense to shift over to this bomb site. Oh, uh, Deha, he can disrupt this, though. He's close in jungle. Not ready for Hunter to be around the corner. And the Bloodhound smells blood. It is now Glaive left alone coming through Palace. And this is better from G2. Yet to plant that bomb, and Monacy's considering the flank from Glaive. He's looking towards Palace intermittently, but his timing has worked in favor of the Danish in-game leader. He comes out, Monacy's down, but is Glaive going to detect the second player? Close towards ramp, and that's next up, and he absolutely won't. So, smashes the back of his head in, and five rounds now for G2, so I must win that. Yeah, that's a good round. That's a good round, I think, helped out a lot by the defense that Enz called. Out positioned right out of the gate and given a lot of freedom to walk up ramp, a lot of space to get comfortable up ramp, up connector before there's any kind of resistance. I don't know how many more rounds you'll get that are that free to get that kind of map control. But they do cut the lead down to six and they force a timeout out of events. And they break the money events, really. Only Kyler and Glaive have any kind of cash to speak with, so I imagine we're gonna see a weaker buy from Ents. Yeah, it's crazy how little money they have. And what a story would be if Hans do make it through to the Spodak as the team currently leading the way. It's oh, unlikely, but damn. we've got uh, we've got Diha, local Katowice boy. Let's see if uh, he can make it all the way, but they've gone for the buy. They've gone all in. Yeah, I didn't expect that, but Glaive had money for an off, and he's obviously got a lot of faith in Hades. Uh, for good reason. Hades has been sick in this competition. And Kylar, it's an interesting position it's, against Monacy, and it's not that. going to work. That's the rifle. Yeah, and that can't be recovered. There's there's no chance at recovering that whatsoever. Glaive's going to walk it. They're already up ramp as well. Glaive uh, likely to go. Oh, no, no. He found Nexa, and Nico never peeks off the ramp. Yeah, that shot is chef's kiss from Glaive. Now towards ramp, he now has a rifle that he recovers off the corpse of Kylar. And that push from Deha has given it right back over into the hands of G2 and Nico. But now they know there's an AWP on the field. As Hades making that work against Hooksy, and Nico decides to strike out Glaive. So 3v2, G2 have the advantage, but for how long can they hold it? 
this fight in mid goes the way of Hunter, and that should confirm it now. Hades should absolutely save this weapon. Yeah. I, I don't think he's going to be allowed. Well, actually, maybe Hunter doesn't look too ready for it. And a good shot from Hades. I'm not a huge fan of how that round ended up playing out, but not, uh, you know, cool ideas in there for Ents, I guess, to try and recover things. So I'll hit some nice shots. The term I always use in this scenario, Jason, is interesting. <laughs> yeah. And Hades at least has a chance to save it. We get to watch that early P from Monacy's POV. And you do just get a free kill. And then the push of Deha after Glaive worked so hard to get that Deagle headshot. It's, it's, the reason I don't like the, that, that, especially that follow-up push from Glaive, is I, I feel like there wasn't a lot going on in the map. It's not like you had some information that two or three players were taking control of middle, that, that a couple players were in B halls. It was very quiet on the map. He just takes the risks and eats the wrong end of it. Five round lead for Ents. And this time it's just the AWP. This time there's no investment around it. So Hades will try and get a couple things done, but if push comes to shove, he's going to save that weapon as much as possible. So this is the pathway for G2. This is the opening back into Mirage. Simultaneous streams running all the way through the group stage. Over on that other stream, Mouse versus Gamer Legion is underway. How's that going, Jason? Well, it was an overtime victory on map one for Mouse. Map two is underway. No need for spoilers. If you want to watch it, pull up a new tab. Head on over there. USPs, P250, and the big green. Hasn't really worked out for Ents just yet. G2 taking their time, and the only player on this bomb site is Glaive. That timing was a little awkward for Monacy. Fortunately, Glaive didn't have a weapon worth talking about. And Nico comes out of Palace, punctures his brain, and this will now be a seventh round for G2. That save, as you mentioned, Hades. He's got that over in the apartments. Yeah, but this now becomes like a new... Uh, the, the nature of this game is gonna is gonna change. There's still a little bit of a lead, so Ents is feeling, is feeling just fine, but there's a difference between playing with such a big lead and a little bit of momentum to when, to when someone, a team like G2 takes that away from you. Ooh, took a while for Hunter to spot that body. Goofy gets a dink off, and that's it. But, you know, when, when G2 start coming back into this, then then it, it changes a little bit. If they win the next round, all of a sudden, I think Ensa is going to be under quite a bit of pressure and quite a bit of stress to figure out a CT defense that can actually be effective and work. Yeah, next, uh, big kill on Kylo. And Hades is the main one they want to get rid of. And they do it. They take the AWP out of his hands. That's unfortunate. Yeah, that is a little painful, uh, especially because they can't uh, afford one in this round. So Hades will be dropping down to the M4 instead. Swans have given G2 a lifeline to stay in this game and second chance to wake up and warm up. But it's Deha straight away with that opening kill. It's Hooksy that's gone down. And this will give Ents the player advantage for how long? Because Monacy always under pressure because there's a second player there. You confirm that trade kill and there's no rifle support for Monacy. He was there alone. Yeah, well, and Ents ain't going to figure this out, but the bomb is actually in B-Halls. It just gets smoked off just now. So G2 should have an avenue to pick that up and run away. Next is like, oh, thank God. Oh, wow. Okay, they're given a huge luxury, actually. That, that, that's very fortunate for G2 that they're able to get away with that bomb without it being detected by the Ents players. If they had seen that, they could have got right on it and Nexa would have had to deal with a lot more utility, a lot more pressure, but they're given a chance here, G2, and they'll pick it up and move away. Yeah, this settles back into a pretty standard round. Nico's going to head to Palace. Hunter and Nexa likely to just head straight to ramp, and they'll see what they can get against Hades and Deha. Keep your mind on that AWP that Monacy dropped on the underpass stairs. You imagine Kyler or Goofy in a victory is going to make a mad dash to pick that up for Hades in the next round, but first they got to win this. And that's Hunter just clearing close corners, making sure no one is close enough to unravel the plans of G2. He has a smoke to use if he gets into a little bit of danger, and there it is. That's a smoke to help create some space so he can be activated a little bit later on. He is certainly in danger. He's running away, and his teammates are all rotating over. So Hades has got that headshot. He's got more. Hades just rips them apart and puts Nico into this clutch. 
Once Nico caught, and it's a headshot to the brain. So There's... that's all falling apart, and it's now Ents on map point versus G2, 12 to 7. This isn't even going to be a competitive first map. No, it's, it's going to look like that little three-round streak from G2 was just a little bit of a gasp of life, and that's about it. Diha opens things up. He's been a menace this map, hasn't he? 18 kills for Diha so far in Mirage. Leading the server, but not far behind is Hades with 17. Just one more round for Ents, and they take their map pick in this series. Well, let's see. With utility ready to toss out to middle. The Nico juggling between them. And this is the last stand for G2. They've gone over their timeouts. They've had their opportunities. They've got every weapon they want. Maybe bar that AK on Nexa, but they've got the all for Monacy. They've got to be perfect from this point onwards to stop Ants taking Mirage. Yeah, and the G2 we've seen so far is far from perfect. Punctured all over. Hunter. Enter short, and we have under a minute left on this clock, and here comes Hades around that corner. Oh, he's got them, lining them up. The double kill is swift, and a 3v3 established thanks to Nico's kill back. And Goofy now inside of this B bomb site. He's the players we set eyes on, and he's got rotations coming to help him here, looking to try and close G2 out here on Mirage and end this chapter of map one. Goofy peeks, there's the kill on Hoaxy, and a second in his awkward engagement in the apartments. Goofy's taking multiple headshots, but because that brick wall is protecting him against that Galil, he'll stay standing for a second longer, but they've both fallen in that B site, and at least Glaive in a 1v2. They're damaged goods, and Glaive could clutch this. Poor Nexa had hit five headshots to get that kill. Glaive's gonna shift over, there's no kit. And we haven't seen the Glaive performance we've seen prior against Astralis. It's been much quieter individually. But he has an opportunity now to close this one out. But there's so many angles he's got to worry about. And he doesn't have the utility. He doesn't have the kit. So this becomes an almost impossible clutch. But what a shot. Glaive gets it down into the 1v1. And now it's against Nico, the second best player in the world last year. And Nico is not going to let this one slip. No scope to the chest. Yeah, Glaive had to just make a decision there. There was a kit right in front of him if he was to win that fight. Had plenty of time to pick it up and get the defuse. But he had to make a decision, a guess of where that follow-up peak was going to come through. And Nico's just stoic the whole time. Couple nice shots with the AWP from Nico. This one just turning the corner into a no-scope. That's eight for G2. And they've taken once again the economy away from Ents, so it's just pistols. So another opportunity for G2 to get back into this game then. Four to tie it up. Four rounds in a row to get us overtime. We've had a fair few of those today. Glaive goes forward with that 5-7. Flash play to set him up around the corner, and damn, Hunter was ready for that. Yeah, oh, my did. God. His feet didn't even touch the ground. Picked right out of the sky, and uh, that even denies him from seeing any more information. They didn't catch any information on how many players were actually there. It might as well have just been all Hunter. Good rebuttal. Good response from Kyler, but need a couple more of those. Ooh, Hades nearly provides you what you want, and he does eventually on the more difficult shot. And now the pistols come to play. Oh no, G2, not like this. Not in this round, up against the weaker guns. This first map is about to slip away. Hades dives down into the sandwich. Monacy going for the clutch, but he can't stop them. <laughs> the Enceladus rages on. Map one is taken, G2 fall away. And this romantic story of Polish potential is still here. then roster roulette with the boys you got six chips in front of you and you're going to place the amount of chips is the number of roster changes that team will make by the end of the year it's going to be g2 
Yo, one, three. Yeah, we've got one on Halzerk, <laughs> two on Grim, one from Flop, and three out of Jay Tizzle. One, two, two, one. The last choice of chance they made from the outside didn't make sense, I mean. Okay. I'm not sure uh, which the yeah. players they will change, probably one between Nex and Hooksy. Mm. I see a world where Nex and Hooksy is gone. Ooh. Yeah. I think too. <laughs> <laughs> I think they looked a little bit more comfortable with JKS, in my opinion. Yeah, I'm thinking too. You know, some things, sometimes it just doesn't work out, and you know, one's not enough. Change is good. I do think that there is a chance that if they don't do well at the major, Monesi will go to Cloud9. I could see, for example, like Cloud9 looking for an opera. And this will make like a, probably Nico want to leave also, or some weird things happen. I'm not sure about uh, <laughs> this lineup at the moment. Madden's over here throwing one chip in. He's just it's like, we're gonna get Hooksy out of there. I'm gonna create that Serbian super team. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we will see. <laughs> Balkan super ah. team. All right, well, that's Ross Roulette. Thank you. Peace. Well, you know, there's a little bit of finesse in Counter-Strike. There was a little bit of finesse last night when it came down to Playboy Cardi and Aiden Ross. But my goodness, the map of Mirage. Yeah, you, Just that was a much, a much larger finesse, trust me. Either way, first map going the way of Ents, and, uh, well, the finesse speaks in the score. Welcome back to the Intel Extreme Masters. Yanko, let's do a vibe check. How are we feeling? Feeling great, thank you. <laughs> feeling thank you and great. But I think who's not feeling great right now has to be G2, right? Uh, okay, it was... Ence's map pick, but they just didn't really come ready to play, you know, for the first six, six rounds, was it of the first half, they just couldn't get anything going, they couldn't even find any frags. Yeah, it was very one-sided, and I think what really threw G2 for a loop is that whenever they decided to find, because we talked about the individuals, we talked about fight-oriented sort of philosophy, when they tried, Ents just literally smacked them, like they mopped the floor with them. Any sort of high skirmish, high intensity skirmish towards middle, where you have three engagements from connector to window to uh, short, always in the favor of Ents. Like literal cleanup on I-5, uh, and then G2 just played a little bit more passive, gave Glaive the keys to the castle. Easy peasy. Yeah, I, you know, there's a level and element of control right there from Ince. And I don't know if that's speaking more for what Ince has brought in here to Katowice, or if it's a matter of like, hey, are you guys awake in G2? I mean, it's a combination of both, really. There, there was good play from Ence, right? A good game plan. Um, I think they got some good reads on G2 as well. But on the other side of things, it's, it's not the G2 that you want to see, right? I mean, in some of those early gun rounds, we see maybe Nico in a forward position on mid, right? While Ence is maneuvering around the map and instead of maybe just going for a flank play, like trying to, to do something, you end up falling back, giving a lot of space to answer. There wasn't really a lot of disruption mm. from the side of G2. And then on top of that, you know, Monesi misses one shot in one of those early rounds, uh, gets killed. Owned by Glaive. One, second one, he gets spammed through the smoke and it felt like they didn't even get to do much and they were already 6-0 down. Yeah, and you know what? Maybe we just start back at the base. Let's run, run to some pistols. Maybe the second pistol, Yanko. I think second pistol was great and you could tell from like the way Cuban and Glaive interacted after the round was over, this was probably, you know, an anti-strat, at least to some extent. You can see it with G2, there's a smoke connector, Molly to try to clear mid immediately, an HE comes in and a flash from Glaive. Dika is just playing around the smoke, finds three great headshots, and I mean, that's it. Nico tries to react out of A-apps, doesn't find anything in the route, is pretty much done and dusted. And G2, we were talking about it in the green room, in the first half, okay, they win that, uh, half by really that yes. was the first round they win at 6-0 then they also win a 2v5 right where ends just completely throws the round away but every round win was against guns that's because of such a strong start from ends in the first absolutely round. and before i give props to these two gentlemen we have on camera quickly touch on this 2v5 that you mentioned right it was an alert sign for ends you're 5v2 you get a little rowdy a little excited you get punished 
but where a, a very inexperienced team could just completely dissolve after that, I thought they just picked up the pace and they got a little bit more discipline when they had an advantage. So cheers to them. Now I wanted to give props to Dihai and Kyla, uh, mainly for opening duels. I think this is the stat that I wanted to mention. Uh, we talked about some of these skirmishes towards middle, the ability to find opening kills whenever G2 was getting a bit adventurous. And this was mainly off the back of these over here. So a huge amount of praises. Don't really do that with the MAC-10. I'm not really interested, but this is more of a situation I'm talking about. See, these kinds of duel oriented towards top mid into connector or middle. This is where G2, I think, try to take the fight to ends. Uh, but Kyla and Diha said, yet. You know, it, it is very much uh, harder to play this game when, you know, the enemy team has a man advantage. And that's seemingly it what happens harder. when you lose opening picks and opening duels here in. Uh, so, yeah, obviously the first map kind of going handedly in the way they're uh, events. And I kind of want to build some positivity with the G2 side. But first, let's get a coach check-in. So I was just able to catch up with Taz and he gave me some information on, obviously we're looking at their Mirage and the ability and what they've had at the moment is not to the level he expected, but he's not worried because you look at the next two maps, he says they're very good when it comes to what G2 have to offer here. But there is some worrying signs if you're thinking the individual level's not there, because even if the maps are good for you, if the individuals can't step up and do what they do best, it can't just be money, it needs to be the whole team. Let's see what happens when we get to Anubis. Now, Maniac, I, I saw you slipping back there backstage. You made it up here miraculously fast. What'd you hear back there? What'd you think? Uh, I wasn't really paying attention, honestly. I thought really out of place. I thought I wasn't really supposed to be here, so I just gave them a good, like, and I just moment. kept walking, you know? <laughs> like, oh, I'm on camera, apparently. Don't mind me. Yeah, so. and speaking of the cameras, they're not just going to stop after map one, right? It's yeah, they have, we have on Anubis too, actually. Yep. <laughs> you yep. know? But I think for G2, if anything, at least they started to get something going in the second half, right? Like Nico hitting a couple of shots, you prolong the game. I mean, again... It and then you lose to pistols. Yeah, and then you lose to pistols, so it ends miserable <sighs> in a miserable way yet again. But we've seen G2 being a, sort of a different beast on Anubis, uh, especially compared to a map like Mirage. But, you know, if you go back to that uh, game against Heroic, I mean, that was still Monesi, two gun rounds, yes. they win off of his back, just sort of jumping in, finding the opening kill and, you know, a couple of A rushes too. So they're going to need more than that against Ants here. And I don't want to sound like a, a one chord violin, which really would work, would be very boring in terms okay. of music. But if we talk about CT side of Anubis, where G2 most likely is going to start, it still is the Monesi show. Like, it still is wherever he is starting, when he's got the A3P, that bomb side is going to be strong. Sure, Nexa maybe has a little bit more more breathing room and on the A side he's been helped a couple times but flashes into A main. I personally hate to see Nico towards middle. I mean I wish he had way more movement. He could do more than just holding these smokes and all. But that the D side where G2 is very strong. So you, I feel like they need to have at least four to five rounds on their CT side because I still believe in the T side. I like how they play the map. Well, another thing is G2 needs to start winning some pistols. That'd like be great. it's, it's constantly, it helps. constantly having to play from behind. You go back to that heroic game, you know, they lose the pistol as CT. First gun round they win, then in the recent round they try that a main, a main play, you know, the aggressive play, it doesn't work out, you're back to pistols. Like, that's the problem. You don't, you don't have the economy backing you where even if that play doesn't work out, you know, you can still rebuy. So, and it's crazy that a team that has Monesi, Hunter, and Nico on it, right, who are not just great yeah. players, great pistol players, doesn't win more pistol rounds. Well, that's what I was going to say. Like, if you look at that core of three right there, you just take those three, that, that's your firepower element, right? And then you it see... used to be. Well, yeah, you would think so. And now you, you're looking at the stats and like, oh, Hooksy and X at the very tops, you know? So that's not going to help them to do any better if no. they don't wake up and activate. Yeah, I, I, it's, it's such a blanket statement. When we stand yeah. here and say, oh, you know what, Hunter and Nico should be better. But there is some truth to it as well. Like there is a degree, a minimum degree of input that you need to have. But I also think that you can create your own luck, right? And some of the protocols and the little tactic, little nade peaks, break smoke that ends have, I think G2 are lacking a little bit with that. Just a couple of help to get your player to get easy kills, a couple of multi kills just to get the machine, so the machine going and the engine flowing. They don't really have that. So it's all on their shoulders. And for now, it hasn't been delivered. And I know, I mean, well, you've been talking about flowing all day. He's been, been in a lot of flow out there. He's been in a flow state. Uh, Everything's been flowing. Yeah. So uh, we flow into to map two here. And I know it would pain you, but tell me, does it end here? I don't think so. You have to hope that G2 is able to get something going, win some pistols, players to start waking up, right? But Ants has been playing amazing, so anything is possible. Yeah, anything is possible. The little ints that could. They just continue down here in Katowice. We're going to be right back after this with more of the Intel Extreme Masters. That's right. It is G2 faltering the first map of the series to Ants. Now, remember, the winner goes on into those playoffs. We'll be right back after this.
Colt's gonna jump across. Oh my god! People are right now underrating him a lot. I think we still have to remember that he won four majors. You cannot win four majors by doing absolutely nothing. So he had to do something right. He has a chance to, you know, go back at, at the top again and prove that he, he's one of the best. I feel like Glaive's comeback gave me motivation in a sense. Just a legendary player, he took a break and now he's coming back and he wants to crush people on the server. I even spoke to him outside the server and he's a nice guy, he's super mot motivated to win. <laughs> I've been in ants and I think no, no one expected it. I think it was a good move actually with everything that happened, but no, I think no one expected Glaive to join ants. I think even, even if you ask him, Probably a couple of months ago, he would be like, what the fuck? <laughs> so now he has a Polish core. He's gonna have to adapt his way of thinking into Polish CS, so he'll have to mix. I think it's a tough one, but I think I can make it happen. One of the greatest in-game leaders with so much accolades. There's nothing that can stop him. He's done a good decision in my eyes to step back and go for like a brand new page in his, in his career. If we can make it work now and bring up a team with, with the Polish guys he has now, is he's gonna do wonders for him and maybe bring new life uh, to his career. Yeah. We were laughing about it in the room. I basically just arrived uh, from uh, the airport and we were just looking at it and my coach goes, Grave is 18 and 3 and I'm like, what are you talking about? What? And then we just start watching it and you look at the highlights, it was just incredible. He's just getting multi-kills like everywhere on the map. So I was obviously a bit surprised. I think Astralis lineup is very strong. I'm not sure what is not going right there. Maybe they just need more time, but I think that uh, it was an amazing showing by Glaive and obviously he's a legendary IGL. So I'm happy to see him back uh, performing and in tier one. If G2 want a chance at making through to the Spodak right away, they've got to pull up their socks and get back into this matchup. Anubis is up next. Yanka was saying just before we got into this one, you know, if they win a few pistol rounds, if they get their feet wet and get into the game, it could be a different story for G2. Sure. If, if, if. That's all I heard out of that. If G2 are here, because I feel like they haven't even started this series yet. Like, yeah, those are all great things. But first and foremost, let's see the G2 players enter the server and play like they actually want to win this, because that was such a quiet map. That didn't feel competitive. Like, even 13-8 felt closer 
than it than it actually was. Yeah, they just kind of went out with with a whimper, right? There was no real rallying cry, comeback, even if it was a cosmetic comeback. There was none of that from G2. It was just lie over and die, and the energy looked pretty flat. So they need to fire themselves up if they want to qualify in here and now. Obviously not facing facing elimination, but you want to go through and you want to beat a team like Ents, who, who are just sure playing a really good event here, playing very well, but they're still a new team, right? This is a team that's just been put together, and you've got the likes of Nico and Monacy on your team. You're the previous Katowice winners, the reigning champions, and you want to get through this team to get to the Spodak, the easiest pathway, instead of going down and having to play a bunch of other matches. Well, that's I think that's got to be like the number one goal for any champion coming back into an event is get yourself in the playoffs to a point where you can actually defend your crown. Like, don't don't go like you know get, give yourself a chance to fight back and make sure that you can actually defend the fact that you lifted this trophy in the last year. And we got we still haven't seen that yet. So uh, it's going to be a tough task. This this ends team looked great. And as you kind of touched on during that first map, it looks like they've got full and complete faith and comfort in Glaive as an in-game leader. The way they're moving around the map, the way they're being patient, the way they're waiting for moments when their teammates are ready to go. Everything's looking good for Ents. And Deho was a monster. Hades had some good rounds. If it, if it wasn't for like the silly hiccup of, of losing a five on two, going a little bit crazy like they Jens might have just blown that first map open like 13 to 4. Yeah, they absolutely could have and definitely should have. But here we go. Tech issues sorted and Ents looking to try and qualify to the Spodek. Four Polish players, one Polish coach and their newly adopted in-game leader in Glaive. And G2 looking to try and stop them from doing it into. They've got Anubis ahead of us and they're starting on the CT side G2. Let's see what they can do with it. Utility, two smokes, two flashes, two Molotovs on Hades and Glaive, and eight on in the hands of Goofy. And all five players, friends, headed towards the eight bomb site. It's only Nexa. It's only Nexa, but it's going to be a mid push. Yeah, it's only Nexa, like you said, but here's the resources coming through middle. Let's see if they can get in behind them, but let's see what Nexa can do on that first test. If he can stall them out, if he can delay them, he can allow his teammates to come around the backside, and Nexa does so well. A double kill on the entrance of A, and it's an absolute massacre on that flank. It's just d -Hot left, and one of those ifs, well, it's been answered because here's the pistol for G2. Deha looking for a bomb plant. That's fantastic. That's extra cash. He's allowed his teammates a good force buy. And Monacy would have loved that knife kill for the extra cash to get the AWP out early, but Hooksy needs all the kills he can get. Yeah, well, we need, we said they needed like a little energy injection during the first map. Maybe the knife would have done it. Maybe it would have fired everybody up, gotten out of their seats. A win is very nice, though. Double kill from Hooksy, who is maybe the, the, the best player for G2. The yeah. most positive thing you could say about G2 on the first map was Hooksy. That's crazy to say as well. That's almost negative but it's uh, it's a good start here but the problem is they did allow that bomb plant so you know ants are going to come back in and they've got a tech issue here they've got a tech issue but it did look like just before that tech issue was called Deha was going over some notes and Glaive was communicating so let's see if they've got an idea for this force buy yeah but Kylo, let's see if we can get the, uh, the headset issue fixed first. Yeah, that'd be good he had one just leading into the game as well so obviously didn't didn't stay fixed was the problem yeah, and uh, uh, duct tape sells everything. It's true. Like you can That's hammer beautiful. and duct tape anything, and generally it's gonna work. What's your favorite tool, Jason? <sighs> Strike me as a man that has a lot of tools. I have a decent amount. Yeah. Um. Sure. I don't know. Chainsaws are fun. Chainsaws. Oh yeah, that's a pretty good one. Those are cool. Yeah, but th the best tool has got to be the hammer. It's just <laughs> useful. <laughs> Why the hammer? I don't know. You can do loads of things with a hammer. What, can, like put a nail in wood and take you, a nail out you of can wood. Take, yeah, exactly. You can uh, you can dent a car and undent a car and all kinds of things like that. And you can use it as a weapon. You can use it as a <laughs> a weight. I don't know. You can do all kinds of things with it. All right. I Every, wouldn't wouldn't nope. advise that, of course. Nobody listen to Dinko. <laughs> yup, that's probably a good idea. Screwdrivers are cool too. Well, we're just a bunch of tools up here on the cast as we wait for this one to keep going there is another stream let's we'll check in with that one see uh i'm gonna have a look okay and if you if you guys don't want to hear any spoilers well 
cover your ears. Get it's it. over. It's over. That other <laughs> is over. Oh, you built it all the way up. And uh, now I don't even get the V-Stream update. I'm not, I'm not gonna spoil that. Uh, but there will be another match coming up later tonight. That's Complexity and Falcons. And that one's spicy. Yeah. Navi versus Eternal Fire. So Complexity Falcons for elimination. Which one tickles you more there, Jason? Uh, I mean, that Navi Eternal Fire one's pretty sweet. Yeah. I mean, the North American angle's easy, but I like this Eternal Fire. I like watching Always them play. Always going against the Americans, Jason. Yeah. This, this feels like, you know, this, this feels like this is a tournament like where, you know, like at the major in Paris, like everyone was like really like just like annoyed by all the upsets and all the underdogs that were making deep runs. This one's like, give me all the underdogs because they all look underdog. They all look cool for their own reasons. They all look like they're actually dangerous squads. Like bring them all in. Give me Eternal Fire. Give me Ants. Give me Heroic. I like it. The big shake up at the start of the year. Yeah. And Ants could shake up this start for G2 as they won the pistol round. But Ants are coming back with a solid force by courtesy of D has plant and they're going to be making their way through mid. It's not the most dangerous force, but normally there's a few more rifles. Oh, Hooksy, if you rotate too fast, Glade gets a pre-fire off. Good headshot. Heard some footsteps on the buildup, but two players at this A site, including Nico. Including Nico. Let's see if that's the big factor here. Nico towards the back of the cape, looking to do more than one. And well, he will not do that. This force buy is very scary in the end. It's very effective. It's forced G2 away into the safe call. And that's a brilliant bounce back from Entz and frustrating for G2. Yeah, that pre-fire from Glaive is nasty with the MAC-10. He hears Hooksy's footsteps tracking over towards the temple exit and just swings already firing bullets. So one-to-one, -one, we're all tied up. Entz with an immediate response. And G2's going to save a couple of M4s. We'll see what they bring forward in the next round. And you know, you talk about the winning of a pistol round as, as if that's a grid option for G2, and of course it is, but you really need to follow it up if you're a CT to make the best use out of it and actually get into the game. Unfortunately, if you can see the bomb plant, you do have to go up against a force buy. It's usually very scary. This one, as you point out, wasn't the usual. Usually you see more rifles in there, but the MAC-10 still got the job done. And it is going to be so frustrating for these G2 players who so desperately want a good start on the map, warm up in map two here. And you've got to go back to this kind of purchase. So M4 out for Monacy and Hunter, and everybody else on upgraded pistols. Good chance here for Reds to take the lead and take away any leftover money for G2. Force them down to that full eco and get this T-side going. And we've seen so far in this tournament, when Glaive gets going, when he gets momentum on the T-side, his team have just been able to run away with it. Yeah, he's he's got some game as an IGL, as we all know. Yeah, one of a few of those, those majors. Yeah, a couple of them. Molotov in towards door, showing mid control. It's going to be interesting to watch G2 kind of manage how they want to position these M4s and how, how shifting and how mobile this defense can be to make sure they have their resources in the right place. Take a peek with a flashbang in middle. Saw absolutely nothing scaling up. And rotate quickly to the B-bomb site. And that seems to be a great call. Yeah, it looks like a great call here for G2. Their best chance to step up with the round win here in Hooksy. He goes out early. Hunter's in behind him. It goes the way they would have wanted it. Hunter taking kills. Eventually brought down, but his impact is certainly felt on this round as 35 seconds remain in it. Goofy rounds that corner with a MAC-10 and somehow beats Monacy out in that fight. Yeah, he gave a little a couple bullets, did some damage, got back into cover, and then just swung wide, and Monacy wasn't ready for it. However, two more players here. Unfortunately, all the rifles have been taken away, and Glaive saying, nah, 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 nah. Let's not commit there. Likely they rotated at least another person over. There's a chance it's stacked. Let's bail out. And G2 have to make a decision again here. Do these two players want to go for it, or do you just go pick up some guns and save those again? Beep boop, beep boop. Glaive locks that in. And I think you just save at this point, G2. Nice and comfy on the other side of the map. Enjoy the sunshine, save the AK. And it is 2-1 for Entz. Well, not the start G2 were hoping for. Probably not the start they needed. And this round even went pretty well for them. Hoaxy goes out, acts as a distraction, offsets the crosshairs. Hunter comes in, gets two kills out of it. And still they're out cold, out positioned, out placed. Entirely.
but have some things to work with moving forward, get to save some money in the next round. Once upon a time, uh -huh. in Katowice, the, the year Glaive won his major here in Katowice in 2019. 2019, and had a team that no one expected to do anything, and they had a historic run, Jason, all the way to the final, and who stopped them? Glaive. So it's quite quite strange how it's all come full Quite circle. fitting, he's in the in the jersey now. And he's making that sort of Cinderella run into the Spodek if he wins this. That event was massive for Ents because that's what really made, the, as an organization, turn them into kind of a household name. Yeah, uh, they who, came out to the easy for Ents song onto the stage. Yeah, it was, it was wild times, different times back then. Nico's gonna be forced back from middle and Dia's gonna start challenging towards dark very, very early on. Nate in, Molotov in, forcing Hunter out. And they're going to challenge from B-Main as well. It's Monacy and Hunter. Oh. Neither of them have the rifles, but one is shifting over towards Temple as we speak. And Glaive's mowing them down. He's loving this Mac 10 Look at all the money he's making. And Hades assists him. And once again, there's a weapon in the hands of Nexa that you would likely try to save with that Kevlar. And then Hooksy, just send him in. See what he can do. He's squishy. He's like a pawn in chess. You can send him in and... I don't really care all that much about him. Yeah, I wonder if we're going to get any kind of a hunt. Goofy's already lined up outside of the A bomb site to make sure nobody can push through. And if they decide to start pushing forward to take this M4 away from Nexa, he's obviously got an early jump from that side of the map. Might just be content, though, considering there's no presence and no action. And Ents have a three-round lead. Now, what was it on Mirage? It was 5-6-1, something along those lines. 5 nothing before before G2 was able to respond. Man, and, and we saw Vitality struggle with slow starts early on. G2, they absolutely cannot live in a world where they get uh, they get buried again in the first five, six rounds of this game. And the tough thing is with MR12, right, you don't get that same sort of luxury of having space to come back, and you can have a really slow start and still have the opportunity in MR15. But here in MR12, it's, it's almost a death sentence to have a, a Slow start in back-to-back -back maps. Our time, Taz is saying. Easier said than done. Yeah, definitely easier said than done. But Odyssey's got his op though now. That's that's at least a little bit of a benefit. And for the first time in a few rounds, we get M4s across the board. Odyssey didn't have the greatest performance in that first map, but I was remembering some mental plays on Anubis in that game versus Heroic from Monacy. So if he can start to find that form, if he can dig deep and get that performance out, oh, it could turn around. Hades has his sniper positioned towards Dark, where Hunter will protect himself behind the wall. And he'll send out a smoke with it too. Here's that first fight, and it's Monacy grabbing it. Yeah, that's gonna be a place where Monacy looks for a lot of opening picks, deep peering in towards A main. And if Ents isn't careful, they might just be losing players to that peak time and time again. Counter Molotov put out by Nico to make sure nobody can scale up. He's looking to see if anyone investigates the double doors. Five on four advantage for G2. Bomb has dropped way, way back towards T spawn. Someone's going to have to go grab that pretty soon because it's looking like Glaive is... Starting to work out in his head how he wants to pull this defense around the map. Yeah, it's a tough situation here for Ents being a player down, and it's a good test to see what Glaive's going to be able to call in the man deficit for this amount of time. So they send some utility out into this B bomb site. Kylar's just selling out more presence than is really there. This won't cause a shift, though. There's three defenders here, and not a single body from Ents is even committed. So Kylo has to really try and sell it. He just dies instantly. So Nexa picks that up, says there's no one else. And now readies this A defense to be steady. It's Nico. With that smoke up in his face, it blows open. And Nico and Monacy, the two scariest players in G2 to go up against. And they cut through this Ents attack. Yeah, that was always going to be a very low percentage round. Hades comes back for one more as Hooksy spots him crossing canals. He just rips his head clean off. It shouldn't be any more chase from G2. They didn't have money to take more losses, so... Stalemate from here. They'll allow everyone to survive safely. But now they have a second round on the board, and they don't let that lead extend too far. Yeah, Ents have a lot of money, though. They can buy up again. They can get a good buy. In particular, saving the AWP helps that economy out. But that's a dry peek into Monacy. The hard way to find out that you're going into the sniper there. And then a good wombo combo between Nico and Monacy to shut down that final A play. So purchases for both sides. Taz said it's their time. Let's see if it truly is for G2. Struggled to string rounds together on Mirage, despite winning sporadic ones here and there. 
And Hooksy down in towards Dark. It's quite a commitment for Hooksy early on. He's held back by Flash. In fact, it's a bit awkward here for Hooksy. I can't believe he manages one out of that. Ants had to trade it, and they did. Now things slow down again. Glaive flirting with his smoke on bridge. And gonna step through as it fades. Nico's already conceded the ground and shifted to the A bomb site. Him and Nexo working in tandem. Looking like a split towards that A bomb site. So Nico better look back at some point. But Glaive can still investigate Temple and call his oh, team back. Not only that, but Monacy's starting to move into the Temple too. Glaive better pray that Monacy doesn't check to his left and he does start to think about it, but Glaive knocks him out before he can have impact. And now where do they go with this one? There's still a lot of time left. Yeah, but Glaive's just straight up disappearing. Ninja vanish. Kyler and Hades rotating all the way back around. Goofy can go canals. Hunter has shifted back to try and find him in middle because Nico and Nexa are blocked off. Yeah, but in doing so, has left that B bomb site open. So yep. they can go over there for ends and it's completely free. Completely free. Glaive has just worked his team. I was going to say a free bomb plant, but now Nico's here. He mullied himself off. Was actually delayed them and allowed Hunter to get in behind them. And oh my goodness, this could just absolutely fall apart at the hands of Ents. Good shot from Hades. Needed to remove Nico, but remember, Hunter's still coming through the darkness and Kylar eradicates him. Now Nexa has to clutch and he's sweeping through this bomb site. Just one player left in Glaive and Nexa saves the day. They needed that move, they needed that clutch, and Nexa provides. Yeah, wow, I think you're right. That Molotov in towards dark, that, that ruined the timing far more than Glaive thought it would. He's He's trying to cross the T's and dot the I's and make sure nothing goes unchecked. That's like a special 1G move, kind of like a like a t something that's inspired by it. He's just mullied himself off and, and held down and allows Hunter to come in the back. Yeah, they it took way too long to pull that off because they had the A play sold. They had the defense out of position and just too much time elapses before they pull the trigger. He was so good until it wasn't. It was actually beautiful to watch. How they outmaneuvered them, how Glaive in particular did it. And uh, it's crushing to lose that kind of round because now look at the money. Now look at the score. And you can see on the end's faces how that has fallen apart. Oof. AK for Deha. Galil's out there going for it. They're throwing everything into it. I think they feel like they can, I mean, they probably, that, that round they definitely know slipped away from them. So they're just saying, we, we can get the advantages, we can trade the kills, we can gain the space. Let's challenge again. Very slow and cautious opening again. Plenty of utility for Ents, despite the fact they've had to drop down to pistols. He has to change position, and he'll nail that one. Hades had no opportunity to react in time. Monacy gets out of the fire, and Nico now on fire in mid. It's a good kill on Glaive, and Ants have lost two. Yeah, Monacy made that look so fluid. That switch around with the Molotov into the peak, and then him and Nico have great protocols. Monacy falls back to flash for Nico's follow-up peak, draws one more Ents player out into the open, and this is perfect control of mid. Nico could just back away. Job's kind of done at this point. Oh, trying to get a little boost going there, but a fumble. And they're worried because it made a lot of noise that G2 would be primed on the other side. So they're going to go elsewhere. They're going to dive down into the canal and now accelerate over towards B, where d currently is with that bomb. Hunter plays from Ivy, looking to be poisonous. He spots the back of Kylo, who is encroaching upon his position, and Hunter is forced away. Oh, Goofy no. actually got a double. I can't believe Ensign found a way back into this again. This is the little lens that could... And now the retake for Nico is attempted through the temple and nothing going his way just yet. Deha swings him, looking to bring his rifle into the play. And he's got two players inside a temple pin as Nico and Nexa make their way back in. It's all on Goofy with three players left. And oh my God, Goofy, he's got another one. A 1v2, but overwhelmed by Monacy. 
I think Entz might have thrown that away in the post plant just as much as G2 threw that away on the initial the initial contact. Good entries coming up. A very passive defense which gave room to work with. And Entz is able to wrap around the bomb site. Unfortunately, Dia missing all those shots. Nico with a good entrance coming out on the retake right here over towards Glyph. And Dia just couldn't keep him pinned down well enough. G2 pull off a great retake. And they're up by one. Another round where ends come close. So they keep investing a little. Tech nines and Mac tens. And for G2, an opportunity to perhaps breathe. Hoxie going out with Hunter. We've seen this move from them before. They love a bit of the aggression together. One kill for Hoxie. Hunter, can he make anything of it? I cannot believe he's still alive. Get rid of him, finally. <laughs> They've got Hunter, but it set up Nico with all the distraction he needed to get in behind them. And now he's just waiting for his time to strike and Nico will absolutely strike true. Hades head popped open. And now a 3v2 with Nexa waiting in the wings. Yeah, we're starting to look at a sharper Nico here on, a, on Anubis. Not the sharpest we've ever seen him, but definitely a little bit more impact than Mirage. Modesty doing good as well with the AWP. And G2 has recovered. Taz has certainly got the coaching fist bumps on lock. He's learned that skill real fast. Yeah, we knew that one was going to be there quick. Four in a row for G2's defense. It's been labored at times, but it's getting the job done. Yeah, it's a good defensive side already, but Ants have been waiting for the moment when they finally get all the AKs back. And this all spawns of that round where Glyv Molotovs himself off in dark. But they've just got to let it slip. They've just got to put that out of their minds and try and focus for the rest of this half and get as much of it as they can because they have been getting themselves into good position pretty much every round. No matter what the weapons they bring to the table. And that's a positive sign. And it's just spread out in their normal default that we've seen round after round. Looking for pushes. Making sure G2 knows they have a player in mid. Bomb now shifting towards B. Three defenders here as Nico's entrusted with mid all by his lonesome. And Hunter's so good at locking Dark down that he's just got some utility. He's waiting until he spots someone before he pulls that pin. And they trade fire. Follow-up nade for a Hunter lands in the perfect position. Identical utility, different results. And a deeper molly this time. Ants are kept out and Hunter feels confident to go for a peek off the back of this. And it might work out well for him or it could end in misery, which is exactly what happens. So Monacy's oh. turn, just a single kill. Wallbang headshot from Kylar comes in. Monacy's put in the ground and that's the plant in for Ants. Monacy got stuck trying to get back into cover, just ran into the corner and couldn't get away from Kyler. Yeah, we've all been there in CS2, and now Nico, Hooksy, and Nexo, the trio. I don't think you go for it. At the left in this one, and yeah, it's it doesn't look too realistic. And Man so, down, no nades. It's a walk away from them. Their chances will come in the later round. Oh, that's painful. Hunter as well, looking over the Molotov, had Goofy just hanging out right behind the flames, his little head poking up and just couldn't find it. Well, that will be four for Ents, and I gotta say, as soon as they get the full buyout, Jason, back to winning ways. Oh, Hooksy could take a few of these weapons away, and they don't have a whole lot of cash left over. That's an instant double. And that does actually screw over their economy. Yeah, that's a, amount. that's a really nice piece of damage right at the end, uh, end of the day, end of the round. One round back is Ents. Yeah. Great Hunter utility just... from Hunter. I, I can't but he played it so well up until that final point where he just gets... Yeah, he got, he got curious, you know? Mm. He just wanted to see what was happening. And he might have taken that fight with Goofy. Curiosity there. killed the hunter. Killed the hunter. Yeah, I think he might have he might have actually just stuck around and taken that fight to the death. I don't think he realized Goofy was that wide. He thought he was going to be able to get away from the spam the deeper he went. Either way, punished. And Ents take a timeout. Cuban wants to have a chat with the boys, give Glaive some time to think. Yeah, going through that first one, burning through it. If you are tuning in for the first time and wondering what this matchup means, this is an advancement match into the playoffs. And answer a team that came into this event with questions surrounding them, wondering what level will they be at? We j the only thing we've really seen from them wasn't all that positive. And 
They got some big results under their belt. I think early on they give them the confidence to believe they've got what it takes. And now they're taking on titans of the game in G2. His Nex are getting a bit aggressive through that dark smoke. We've seen Hooksy attempt this earlier in the half. Didn't work too well. Nex is trying it this time. He's got a good position. And with Monacy, it works out well. Hunter's applying pressure outside. A, D, Hot, and Goofy withstand all of the pressure. And in fact, win all the fights. I feel like Diaz Galil just had 60 bullets in it. He's just holding down mouse one. And it never ended. Spamming as well. Now they've already crossed bridge. Nico and Hooksy past the vision. Oh, this flank could be devastating. It's going to take so long for Enz to scale up canals. Monacy can just go passive. Stay alive. Is anybody thinking about the flank? Yeah, Goofy's having a little look every now and then, but more towards A. Not expecting it to come from the T-Sar side, and here's Monacy. No! No, that's so heartbreaking for him. Monacy had a chance to line up multiple opponents and didn't get a single one, so now it has to be Hooksy in his stead. It's two coming in for Hooksy. Nico forced into the fight and actually works out for him. He gets that bomb plant denied, but still will fall and end celebrate another round victory as it ties up the scoreline five to five. That's so close. The margins on that round are razor thin. That flank, the wraparound through bridge, it was brilliant. And Entz just picked up the pace at the perfect moment to get around the cover. But man, G2's gonna look back at this one and say, how close was this crunch, this aggression from Canals and A-Main at the same time? It was so close to working. It was so close to just winning the round out of the gate. And the fight's going the wrong direction. Diaz celebrates and we're all tied up. Probably won't be tied for long, considering G2's purchase. Ooh, what is Hooksy doing these days? Holy, nice shot on Hades. Don't expect it to go anywhere, but if they walk into a B stack, you know, 5v4. Maybe, just maybe, we got a full USP on our hands here, Jason. Nah. He's gonna line them up. I forgot this isn't Cloud. <laughs> <laughs> well, hold the phone. There's a little bit of a chance here. Yeah, there definitely is a chance because those are two deadly pistols in the hands of two deadly players. Now an AK-47 for Monacy. And Goofy and Kylar are making their way to A, but they're separated. And this gives Hunter a chance for a 1v1 fight. Oh, Goofy has to ready and steady himself, and he absolutely will. It's now Monacy sprinting back over, and that camera is smoked out. Monacy has some cover to make his way forward. Does he take the risk? He does, and Goofy's ready for it. Gets scary, but it is Ents regardless to move forward. Yeah, Goofy taking no liberties, watching everything. I was curious, because Monacy could have just bailed out of that fight and gone to pick up an AWP. He's not going to have it in this final round. M4 is across the board for G2. This is a shot and a half. Two HP. Peace. Boop. Yeah. You, you feel it if you're Hades. Yep, that just that happened. Move on. And that's exactly what G2 have to do here because they do not have an AWP. Just M4s across the board. You would say they'd still be able to compete with obviously five rounds in the half, but they would love a sixth to tie things up. Hades searching above the top of the mist. And Monacy's Whisper will split it. Good shot right through the head of Hades out in back-to-back -back rounds. Yeah, that's a pair of really crappy rounds for Hades. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, cool. He's like, sure, I guess this is the game we're playing now. His T-side ended like five minutes ago. Now double flash to push out. Kyler's ready and waiting. G2 give over the equalizer with a bit of aggression. Hunter still wants to stick around. He's got a frisky idea. Yeah, Nex has had a decent half here. We need to be even better than decent, though. He's got a headshot on Deha. That stopped them at the door of A. The way that smoke faded couldn't have been worse for Deha. Yeah. It, like, faded around his chest first, like, just his gun. Yep. Nex has seen all he needed to start shooting. So how to end to recover this one, or do they? Goofy is coming out to make sure that his teammate can drop down safely, but there's a booby trap set up in dark. And I think the player's there. I wonder if Kyler heard some footsteps, but this is the only way back in. Throw utility, start making it look like it's going to be an A hit. Give Kyler room to work with. He's wrapping into that A bomb site right now. Nexa and Nico both focused on A main. Plenty of time for Kyler to have impact. Well, Kylo is being watched from heaven. He's going to win this fight, and he won't against Nico. Tough to win a fight against one of the best riflers in the world, and he's showing us exactly that in this round. Nico with the double leaves Glaive alone in a 1v3. This half has been much better from G2. They finally arrived to the game. You'd say it's still a B game from them. 
Well, taking six at the turn of the half ties things right up, and this series now has dreams of a third map. G2 trying to secure it. Join us after the break. versus Ents is 6-6 six six here on Anubis. Second map of the series for qualification to the Spodek. Ents had a couple of opportunities to leave that half with even more rounds, but they let a few slip, and that's what happens when you're an inexperienced roster. Yeah, it really is, and then now they're kind of showing as this tournament goes on, as they get more and more of these matches under their belt, that, that inexperience starts to shift away. Maybe the playbook's not deep enough, but you get that experience in high-pressure matches, and let's see what they can do with it. Four players across bridge. Oh, this looks like my matchmaking strategy. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely one you've ran before, Jason. And, uh, well, not like that. You don't hit shots like that. Great foot, the triple. Goofy coming in. And, oh, my goodness, G2. Good night. Sleep well. I win my pistols, though. Well, uh, not really much to say. They don't fool the defense. Nobody moves. Nobody shifts due to the footsteps and just entirely shut down. Glaive, clotheslines Modesty, add Hooksy on top. He gets so many, and then the duelies get involved in the action. Just a complete dismantling of that tactic. <laughs> Hooksy's face. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that's, that's a tough one to have to swallow because... G2 don't get the ball plant, which means they don't get the force by, and Ants get the idyllic start. It's so incredible that we're 10 years on from the first ever 
CSGO event in that Spodak arena. And that was Taz winning it with the VP guys. And now first CS2 event 10 years later and he has a chance to make it through. It's, it's cool we've got that history. And it will be fantastic to see obviously everyone here moving forward. Yeah, Neo's there as well from FaZe. Chance for some former champions to get on the stage still. Kyler, oh, they're, they're so much closer than he expects. Yeah, he's, he's going to get overrun, but he will get back in time. And now he has a chance to make a lot of money. Great opportunity if he can mow them down. And D-Hus with it. Glaive has come in in that rotation. And there was a chance there with Kyler getting caught, not seeing them creep up, but he recovers it. Yeah, that's really good that he got the information when he did. The smoke didn't do anything, but it at least prepared him for the fight that was definitely coming. No plants. G2 is going to get AKs in this third round regardless. All across the board, utility smokes and flashes as well. A first look of the G2 T side here on Anubis. Their map pick as well to try and extend this series down zero maps to one. So it's Hoopsie's calling against that of Glaive. Well, Ancient would be the decider if G2 can take us there. You know what they're saying about Ancient these days in CS2? The new Inferno? That's what they're saying. All good, best of threes, and on Ancient. I'm I'm really curious to watch how Goofy plays this, because he's he's on his own. And Glaive is kind of sticking around, but at a certain point, it's like, bro, good luck. If you like if you stick around and try and defend him, you, you risk so much. Now Hades at the end of A main as well. But this setup is like it's strong, but it's tough to hold. It's, I don't know, it's like brittle. Like, yeah. you know, like if, if it all works, it's gonna be great. But if one player goes down, the whole thing's gonna collapse. A house of cards, you Jenga. may call it. Well, there's multiple things I suppose you can call it then, but if you take one piece out of a Jenga tower, it will stand and there's Goofy. Let's we'll see if it is Jenga or a house of cards indeed. It seems to have collapsed completely. And so now we're looking at G2 with 40 seconds left in this round and they've got the player advantage and the maneuver towards B is being set up. Yeah, really hard to pull off that setup when, when you don't get that initial contact. You get the, don't get those initial fights with the aggression, at least one or two players. Now they got to sink back into the B bombs. Idea's going to drop. Oh, Nexus is waiting, but it don't matter. Yeah, he just drops on down into the water, gets his feet wet and gets a kill. Glyph does even better than that. He doubles his kill count and now it's Hunter running away. Oh, that is a tough one to swallow for G2, isn't it? Yeah, he's got no time to go elsewhere either. This is just going to be a save. 22 HP, 1v3, and far away from the bomb site. So even despite the kills going in the direction early of G2, ends to recover. Good positioning on defense and Glaive through smoke. 15 and 9 for Glaive. Oh, it's just so rough here for, for G2. This happens to them. d dives down. We've seen it earlier in the series versus Vitality. Nerds did a similar play, so maybe it's like a former ends thing, you know? It's an incredible move. I, honestly, it's, it's, I think it's mostly born out of a little bit of desperation of realizing oh, no, it definitely if is. they're going to hold that bomb site, like Dia needs to be involved in the action with how close he is. And Nexa even seemed prepared for it, but maybe just like the unlikeliness of the play caused his focus to shift at the worst moment. Yeah, and it was the, it was the same situation with that Nerds play I was mentioning earlier, desperation. Gives you a big moment. And it was the same thing there. Apex even had the read, but hold the phone. Here comes the execute. d gets a kill. So does Glaive to slow things down. Glaive, or Goofy, excuse me, using the pillar for cover, but not for long. It's Hooksy and Modesty. Two on four. Yeah, got two AKs. Two out of this. So let's see what they've got in them. Smoke goes down towards CT. That at least cuts off some of the support network here for Ents. And through that smoke to Temple, d has been cut through by Modesty. So looking to plant the bomb. Receives damage on top. But Hooksy's in a really powerful position, but it's short-lived, so it's on Monacy, and he can't do it. Ants come back in for the retake, even though G2 battled their way through the bomb plant. Glaive got some swagger to him. He's swinging into fights right now. He is taking the lead, taking the charge for his team. It's crazy what a bit of confidence can do for your mindset, right? You're willing to go for these fights. Maybe we wouldn't have seen it not so long ago, but he said he's been working on his individual form on the CT side in particular, and we've definitely seen him live up to that. Yeah, well, I mean, remember, one of the great strengths of the legendary Astralis roster was the fact that Glaive was just a fragging in-game leader. He was not a liability. There's always an, those smoke kills too, Jason. Yeah, on an individual level whatsoever. So if he gets back to that, all of a sudden we're cooking with gas. Yeah, we definitely are at this point. Oh, 
Hades shadow. He shot a little early because of the shadow. Uh, Hooksy took a weird maneuver, a weird movement down the stairway that allowed him to get that kill on the AK-47. Monacy getting bullets whizzing past him. He's allowing Hunter to move on in. One kill to at the back of the platform, and Monacy needed to nail that one, and he absolutely finds it. It's Kylo left in a 1v4. This one's not winnable, of course. Cool so idea. G2 got seven. Cool idea for Mans. Goofy just couldn't track Monacy. Maybe it's a little bit different if he's able to get that kill and then perhaps push B main and get into some cover, but that follow-up flashbang looked like it would have been real nice. Yeah, seventh round. Good on G2 for cracking it open. Hunter getting a little bit of a relaxing, calming Polish massage. Now, would you call Taz's hands meat claws as well? Or Not to his face. Yeah, no, we'll leave that to Maui. We'll leave that to Maui. But Kylo, it's a bit of a boring situation for him, but at least he's got a nice view. I'll hang on to that AK. They've got money built up as well, so it's not it's not any kind of red flag situation quite yet for Ents in terms of their economy. Next round will be. Next round will be a little bit of an issue if, they, if they're to lose that one, because they're going to have to probably invest everything. Hades will want that all back, will want that shot back that he missed down window. But G2 pull themselves within three. Remember, this series uh, is for a spot in the playoffs. No one going home, no one being eliminated on a loss. It's just a guarantee that you'll be in the playoffs, you'll be inside the Spodek, and we'll figure out if it's a semi-final spot or a quarter-final spot later. It is funny to hear four Polish players and a Polish coach communicating in English for the sake of Glaive, and of course, what a piece it is to have in the roster. So, it seems to be worth it. And this, as you mentioned, is the round where Enza's economy is now brutal. It can break apart with just one round loss, and G2 will be right back in the play. Hooksy making his way through the water and towards this A-bomb site, and oh no, it's Hades waiting around that corner, and Hooksy couldn't deal with a god of the underworld. Yeah, good on him for hitting that shot, though. He missed the one previously. This one was a nice sitter that he's able to nail. But middle is wide open and exposed. Dia's going to slide over to keep an eye on camera. Oh, Nico going to turn the corner. Sees a shoulder. Spam gets him down, oh. and the follow-up. The cousins are gone. It's Dia on top. Yeah, don't invite Diha to any family occasions. He has just absolutely ripped them up. Nexa and Monacy in a 2v5 as they encroach upon this A site. They know that Hades was last detected towards this A site. Is likely playing around cake. And they would be right in assuming that as Monacy locks in a shot. Nexa needs to be careful. He doesn't walk in front of the sniper. And Nexa's walked too far. So Monacy can't win this one, even with his great talents. And he's held outside at the 35 second mark. Yeah, this will really test your nerve now, too, if you're Ants. Yeah, it's a four-on-one, but you got to be careful. You don't get overconfident with peeking and trying to keep track of where Monacy is. One pickoff, and he's got more space to work with, and time makes this a possibility. Perhaps the calm before the storm. Monacy blinded. 16 seconds. Shot lands towards D. And he's another. He was close. He was very, very close. Yep. Yeah. Insane round to Diha, he says. Four round lead, Ents is just two rounds away from booking a spot on the Spodek stage at IEM Katowice. G2 been very underwhelming today. Very underwhelming, in particular Mirage. But Anubis has been slightly better still nowhere near the level we expect from this G2 team, just with the players they've got inside of this roster. No! Round 19, freeze time coming to a close. And it's crazy to think about, this Ents team started the competition, they started the playing with a loss to Big. And bigger long gone. Yeah, remember though, it's like it's the trap of these new rosters because every game is, is is worth its weight in gold as they're still trying to figure each other out and they're doing it, they're learning in these officials as well. So even those losses have plenty of things you can learn. Sometimes it's better to lose then. And Monacy has lost 40 of his health. That's about the piece of note at the start of this round. G2 
to getting outside of the A bomb site. Currently, there's no ends players there. You can change that very quickly, obviously, but G2 might have a chance here to get onto the A bomb site without issue. Yeah, the question is the timing of like what exactly is Ents doing in middle. They're clearing it out now. Diha just went for a peek, so you'd imagine somebody would fall back and rotate Especially over. Especially without utility coming in. Well, they can at least block off Hunter down window. Kyler's got that, but K can't do anything about the A bomb site itself. Hades is going to risk it all and come right through. He's going to run into oh. flames and disappear back into the smoke. Yeah. He said, nah, that's a bad idea. I got nothing. Yeah, get out of there. And I'm glad he made it out. But with that kill they got initially and the delay tactic used by Hades with that utility, they do have a really good chance at retaking this one and pushing themselves to series point. Monacy's got eyes on the retake attempt through A main. You need a flashbang from Goofy. That could actually change this. If that flashbang comes in and they take out Monacy, miss shot. Oh, uh, Missed shot definitely helps too, and Hades has removed Nico from the equation. And Monacy, what well, he's gone to, Hades is just ripping apart this G2 team. Jesus. And so will the rest of Ents. It's series point for Ents. Qualification to the playoffs for Ents. G2 just hasn't shown Ooh. up whatsoever. That's, that's way too easy of a retake. Way too clean of a retake. Not enough fight back. Five chances for Ents. When you take G2 down like this to get into the playoffs as well, like not letting it get close, winning retakes, no! out matching them with T-side performances, you get very excited about this team making their way through. Yeah, there's a lot of reasons to be excited about Ents right now. It's not just the fact that they're Polish, it's the fact that they're playing some sick Counter-Strike. And it's, it's just the fact, again, another team like Heroic, where you see this lineup come together and you're like, can this actually, can this be a good team? Was you almost write like, it off. Was this like a desperation pickup? The circumstances around their acquisition by Ents were weird, unusual, but they're rising to the challenge. Deha and Hades stop the first two players and now just three away. Ents have done it and they've done it in style. The playoffs wait in front of them and the kills are all coming through. This is a throwaway round. Yep, it's Th done. This. Yeah, this is all over. Ents, they qualify for the playoffs. They qualify for the Spodek. A small smile at his former teammate as Taz is going to lose the first head-to-head -head matchup with his mate Cuban. And cause for celebration, the first Polish squad inside the Spodek in eight years since 2016. The Virtus Plow, Ents is going to carry on the legacy. And this is a romantic story. Taz still has a chance to make it through too, but a glimpse over at his former coach getting through into the Spodek. We had moments of Polish potential, but that is ever evolving. It is turning into absolute, unbridled Polish power. G2, they need to wake up. Rough day against Heroic as well, bailed out by some her from an incredible performance from Monacy today. Had none of that. Not an individual could step up to stave off this loss. And this one's got to hurt, but G2, in the back of their minds, they have to know we didn't come to play today. We didn't deserve this. We didn't deserve it for even to be close. And we better see a new G2 moving forward. Who knows? Quarterfinals confirmed, but with this performance and the way Ants are playing, taking down teams like Astralis, Vitality, now G2. They could make it all the way. I've got Hades with me here, and it has been achieved. You've made it to the Spodek, and in style. Now for you, right, you come into this ENDS roster, you don't even know what's going to happen, you all mix together. Did you ever expect to be in this position today? Mm, not really. Like We knew we can play good, but we also knew we can play really bad. We've seen both versions of ENDS. But yeah, so far everything's clicking really well, so I'm really happy. And what does this mean to you? It'll be your first time going to the Spode? Day. I don't even know. It's going to be insane, man. Like, it's going to be crazy. I can feel it already. Now, talk to me about this game, though, because it looked like the preparation, the setup, how ready you were for G2 was, was coming in. We were seeing just the, the teamwork and the synergy. How did this all come together in such a quick way? I don't know. It's like Kuban and Glaive, big brains, you know, prepared as well. Even though we expected a completely different veto, we were still okay. prepared really well for it. And yeah, everything just clicked, as I said. And when we talk about clicking, though, it's like you four of you are used to playing together right a little bit. You've got the lies that came over from nine, then Dihar's just been mixed in. But is it easy for you to communicate all in English, everything to go well together? Yeah, I think we mainly speak English. Like everyone fits in, Goofy and Killer, 
they're like having no issues at all. And also if Glaive is there, then we can quickly switch to make the comps even more clear. Okay. So that's like a huge advantage for us also, especially in clutches. Like it happened today so many times. Nice. So you mix it up with both? Yeah, we, we try, but only when it's like really clutchy yeah. situation, yeah. you know. Well, that makes perfect sense. Congratulations, my man. Thank you, Let's get ourselves back to the desk. Rut row. Is that a fair assessment of how this turned out? Because that is not what G2 was looking for. However, on the other side, you do have to kind of call a spade a spade and say, answer damn sure doing the thing right now. I mean, we are witnessing the birth of heroes. That's what's happening here with ends going to Spodek, with the core of nine that were notorious for being one map player, then bringing into this ends project with Diha kind of left in the middle. Glaive now turned Lukas, the Polish leader, of course. <laughs> this is an incredible story that's coming together and what a deserved pass to a direct birth to Spodek. Polska Gurom, that's what they say. Nice. Absolutely incredible performance from Ants, right? Like, it started off being as a tournament, okay, we just want to figure out where we're at, the things that we've added, are they working? Then they make it uh, into the group stages, and now you see Diha, tears in his eyes, right, Beautiful. as he secures yeah. a spot in the Spodek. And you, you have to take that for exactly what it is. Yes. This is a man that has probably wanted this for so long that now he can actually get a taste of it. You know, it, it's right there. So now they're going to find themselves in the Spodek. They're going into the playoffs for Ents. This is a happy time. And I think also, most importantly, they didn't fluke their way That's right. into the groups. They didn't True. fluke their way into the Spodek either. I mean, their opening game was against the bloody best team in the world in Vitality. And they managed to grind out the series against them. Then comes G2 in some of the biggest names we have in Counter-Strike. Nico, the second best player in the world. Monesi, one of the hottest hoppers at the moment. And they sweep them. 2-0 without even making it close. And they play to win. They never play not to lose. They had this aggression in their play style. We watched the first gun round. We see them just take water control with three players just diving straight in. We see them having beautifully executed retake where everything is under control, where they wait for each other. This is such a good counter-strike. And I struggle to explain how the hell is that happening? How the hell is a project like that just already clicking, finding this flow state, having that synergy, the reads, the kills, the multi-kills on top of that. Glaive is having an incredible map. He was supposed to be washed. Glaive was supposed to be done. Yeah. And I mean, it, surely there's some testament here about buying into the system, right? Like, surely that's an Who's example system? of it. Who's system? Exactly. Even? Cuban and Glaive. We just heard him say right. the big brains of the project have, all, I guess, ultimately come up with this idea. I mean, regardless, uh, this is sort of the fruits of your labor. You're seeing that payoff now, even if they haven't been growing for so long. I think also they're ticking all the boxes when it comes to their specific win conditions, right? Like for Ants at the moment, their playbook obviously isn't going to be super deep. They're a new team. They didn't have that much time to practice. So it does have to come down to sometimes having good starts, winning of pistol course. or winning the early force, right? And for some of those first couple of gun rounds, to work in your favor because if that doesn't happen then you're really you know scratching the bottom of the barrel you have to start improvising and that's where things don't look as polished yeah and the realities are this yesterday kyler middle of the pack sort of player statistically speaking but here today totally different story and that's why he's gonna be our u.s air force aim high player of the match a 2-0 here from ints and then we see kyler elevated to this uh these numbers rather is opening, kills? So, uh, opening kills i think that's a topic that's a hot topic we already mentioned that on map one we brought him up with diha and he kept on going on this of Anubis. And honestly, I think there were plenty of candidates for that aim high right there, but that's because that was a team effort. Kylar surely had some great moments. We're gonna have a, a couple of these highlights right there. But I really wanna just pounce on the, the team play and the synergy and how people sort of alternatively were stepping up to the plate and having some of these moments we see here. Some of these late round clutches are about a few millimeters, milliseconds, call it whatever you want, a bullet that hits or doesn't hit. And it was most often than not going in favor of Enz, also courtesy of Kylar. Which is, which is wild. It's wild Pretty to watch. Cool. It's wild to watch the sort of control that it looked like, you know, Ents has, has kind of garnered and they're actually harnessing it. It's such a, when you have a team that is on the brink of accomplishing what they just did here, you're supposed to have jitters. You're supposed to have moment where you overthink, you try and force the play. You're thinking, oh my God, we're about to make it this spell day. I can't believe it. We're going to, we're going to beat G2. Let me just cross that small. They did none of that. Like mm -hmm. it, it felt like they just knew whatever path was going to lead them to the victory and didn't diverge from that. They just stayed on it. And that's supposed to be for, for senior teams, for very veteran teams, not for the core of nine with Glaive and Diha. And still, they play with maximum composure. 
exposure with the highest stake and the highest reward at the end of the path. So so let's do this. We're going to talk a little bit about G2 on the back side of this, but I think painting a picture with the brackets is kind of update everybody, just because obviously G2 are not eliminated. That was an elimination match for them. Uh, but please, uh, you know, Yanko, would you like to do the honors? Yeah, they go down into the lower bracket, face up against Mon Monty, who eliminated Cloud9 earlier today. And you see on the other side of that lower bracket is Gamer Legion and Heroic. So no slouches in the lower bracket. And I mean, listen, for G2, it's all about, I feel like even with this bracket, is how are they going to perform? Because if, if they perform up to their level, then they should make this lower bracket run and still make it into the spot, spot deck. But if they play like they did today, they might not even make it past Monty. Mm. I agree, I agree. I just, I have questions about what is their level right now. I mean, is it a far cry of what we know and what they could do in Q3 last year or Q2 or 3 last year? Or is it the G2 that we have now? I mean, good stars would be a great way to begin. It's crazy for me that in a series, right, again, with the players that they have to lose three out of the four pistols and then the fourth, the one that you win, you immediately lose the second round and still have a bad start. So especially in MR12, it's going to be tough, but that can't be the excuse over the course of a best of three, right? For, for a team of G2's stature, you need to sometimes find a way to claw back. And I think there were multiple of issues uh, individually also not on point. I mean, when we're calling Hooksy's name more than some of the other guys, we when did. it comes to finding True. kills and finding impact, I mean, that's a, you know, red light if we ever saw one. Yeah, well, I mean, we kind of even said that after the first map, right? We said this is not going to be how G2 goes about winning this series in a, in a long way short. Uh, yeah, I think we put a pin in that one. Honestly, G2 have to go back to the drawing board a little bit uh, and perhaps even Ince just keep doing the doodling that they're doing. It's kind of working out out here for them. And in which case, it does set us up for something nice going forward. We will have another matchup coming your way, but let me just tell you how much this has got to mean. Again, this was the core of that nine team. And now to see themselves sitting in the Spodic, that's got to feel good. I man. mean, when you were looking at nine, did that never cross your mind that, hey, if they had someone a little bit more experienced out there, if they had someone to just kind of show them the path and channel all that skill that is visibly in it, players like Goofy, players like Kylar we have on stage here, well, that experience comes in the form of Diha, Glaive, Kuman. They come in here and then this whole project comes together and now punches a ticket to the goddamn Spodek. Yeah, my god. I think we should take a deep breath after that one. It did get a little tense, but not for Ents. In fact, we're going to go to a break. We're going to come back. We're going to get Eternal Fire versus Na'Vi right here at the Intel Extreme Masters Katowice 2024. Welcome to Callouts Confirmed. This is a good one. We got the Twitch chat basically polled yesterday. We were asking them different names for the spots and it seemed to divide opinion. It raised some eyebrows. I'll be honest, there are some weirdos out there. Yeah, there are some weirdos <laughs> out there. Don't know where they're making these calls up themselves or something, but uh, I'm gonna pick your brains. And I know Americans tend to have some, uh, well, some mini differences, if you know, if you catch my drift. Uh, up next, what do you call the underground pathway connecting second mid to mid on Inferno? We've got Mexi, Vietnam, Rat or underpass? Call it Mexi. Yeah, we say Mexi. Yeah. Yeah. Europeans probably say Vietnam. I, I say both. Mm. It depends. They're what probably both for the same reason. It depends on mood you're in. Yeah. <laughs> it depends on the call. I think it's either way uh, Vietnam or uh, Mexico, but uh, I used up to say Mexico. Yeah. yeah. I used to say Vietnam more often. Vietnam? Yeah. yeah. Or, or Vietnam or Mexico. Yeah. I mean, those, I don't the, know why those were the old call outs. Like, uh, I was the Mexican. Gamer call outs. Yeah. yeah. I had Vietnam. Vietnam. You know? oh, oh, oh. I would 50, 50. vote from Mexico. In our perspective, it's 50-50. I mean, I call it three of these bets. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and everyone gets all three of them, I'm sure. I think it's Vietnam. No, I think it's Mexico. No, I think it's 
I would say I would. Say, I, I would go with Rat. I would go Rat as well. What? This one was uh, pretty self-explanatory. What do you reckon they voted for? I oh, have to go Mexi. Mexi, honestly. yeah. I don't, I don't think. So. Yeah. I don't know. Mexi probably. Yeah, fifty-six percent. That's the majority saying Mexi. But Rat apparently is popular in Central Europe. Twenty-one percent saying Rat. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, makes sense, I guess. Yeah, Probably I mean, might find some rats, rats down there. there. Yeah. Yeah. Might as well be. Oh, yeah. Easy. 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 What do you call the room that connects a site with outside on Nuke? Annex, main, or mini? What did Twitch chat pick? Mm. Okay, but this is like. Is main. So in NA, you would call it mini. Yeah. Yes. yeah. But then uh, it's all about how many Twitch chatters are from NA. Yeah. So I don't know who voted. <laughs> well, or maybe main. they're just trolling and they go Annex here. I would go main. I have a sneaking <laughs> suspicion that. Uh, you guys calling it mini? Yeah, yeah we, we call it mini. mini. Yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I think Euros call it main. Yeah, yeah. Hong Kong says main sometimes. I do say main sometimes. Yeah. Main. Yeah. But it slips out. Yeah, I try my best to call it mini, but main just sounds so much better. Yeah. And it actually <laughs> says mini on the sign. It does? Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does say yeah. garage, that's right. Yeah. Which really blows my mind. It's like aluminium, aluminum. Maybe you guys are right this whole time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we called it mouth in South Africa. Mouth? Mouth. Because there was like a little face you can make out of like the lights and the doorway. Oh, wow. That was a that long time that ago. Like that. That. Yeah. But, uh, it's mouth, mouth, mouth. <laughs> mouth. <laughs> yeah. uh, but what do you reckon Twitch chat said? I think mini. I think main is the main one. Main is 77% uh, from Twitch chat. Okay. But we do call it mini in, in North America. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure we get a little main mixed in there, but I've, I've called it mini for 20 years. <laughs> we ain't changing shit. European Twitch yeah. chat. Oh, come yeah, on, I mean, man. You guys, the, the Americans showed up 17% mini and 6% saying annex. 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 Navi are now heading into a game where they will have to show probably the best form we've seen from you so far this event, mate. I want to start by looking at the game against Apex. You guys starting behind on the halves. You guys almost having to dig deep and bail yourself out of so many situations. Why do you think this is? Uh, I don't know, honestly. I think maybe just the start of the year for us uh, went a bit too well. <laughs> you needed to go worse. And after we lost the, the opening match mm. going into the Apex game, even though we made mistakes on Ancient, the first map, yeah. like we knew that we kind of like threw some rounds only because we forgot uh, some of the things on the game plan or we forgot uh, utility or positioning in some of our strats. Okay. I think it's frustrated some people and we won the map, but it felt like we didn't quite win, if, if you get what I'm saying. Like it, it, it felt like uh, we weren't that happy about the way we won, kind of. Yeah. Even though I think we should be enjoying it way more. Then we went to the second map, kind of choked on Anubis. But I'm just glad that we again showed the resilience we, we have, that uh, we went to the decider and played a good Mirage. But obviously right now, it uh, we can't afford to play the same way. Like we're playing a decent team now with uh, like with, with really good form. Yeah. And we're just going to show up individually. And as a team, we need to be happy about it. You've touched on some of the things. I think you've answered most of my questions in one go, which is what I do love to interview you, Alexi. But I will touch on this. I saw you guys win, and I saw the mood was still looking not so great. Is this something which can be a concern for you guys? How do you get everyone? Because there's like moments of glory, but then you win. And I was like, well, this doesn't look like a happy team. Yeah, for sure. It's, um, it's something that is concerning because we need to wake uh, each other up. I need to wake up. We need to wake up as a team. Like, we need to just enjoy if we win. We need to go with a good mood outside if we lose like we just got we got only one live left in this tournament and we've already seen so many big names dropping out of the tournament already so everyone can lose pretty much or at least that's how it feels like and yeah i mean just happy we came out on top yesterday had a good discussion after feeling much better today well let's hope that feeling is going good into the server as well for navi as they'll be going into this game with a fight on their hands one life, one night. That is exactly what we have here. One opportunity. 
Yeah, I was thinking, I think there was Mr. West song. Anyway, regardless, that's neither here nor there. It's Eternal Fire taking on Nata Spencer in an elimination matchup. That is one singular best of three, separating one team from going home and continuing on their march towards that Spodic. I'm going to welcome you back to the Intel Extreme Masters. Maniac, YNK, Stunna, a lot to digest right here in our last match of the day, gentlemen. Yes. Where do you want to start? I will give you the honor. You can you can set us up on the course. Uh, I'm thinking something like Eternal Fire. Ooh, Eternal Fire. They're right there sitting behind you. A team for whom we maybe didn't have the highest expectation at the beginning of the tournament, but very wrongly so. I, I always think of Eternal Fire as a team who can go under the radar and then at some given point on an event, it was Pro League last year as well, can just pop off massively. I'm a huge fan of Wikadia. I love Major. He's a friend. I think he's a great leader. Zentara is on top of that. I'm just creating this sort of do-it-yourself wrap and I just just working, you know, full wheat tortilla, put some vegetables on that one, some chicken in it, bam! You I've, heard, it yo, I've heard the tortilla stories up here from the desk and like, honestly... <laughs> oh, that's the Bubsky one, right? I was hoping not to ever have to think about that again. <laughs> <laughs> but of, of course I have to. So, uh, yeah, there's a little bit to unpack there. My, maybe not a tortilla. Yeah, I think for Eternal Fire, right, it's been a great start to the year for them. Went through the close qualifiers without too many issues here. Opened with a win against Falcons. And they've been trending upwards uh, from the end mm. of last year, really. Ricadia found his own groove within this team full of veterans, right? Major got the team up to, like, a really good level. And here you can see Xantara is the big name. Yeah. Still delivering after all this time. Th that packs a punch. Like, this duo absolutely pack a punch. And they, I think... The issue, or what could be an issue for Eternal Fire here, is dealing with the energy over the course of a best of three. Because we've seen them, and I'm not going to use the flaming out because that's too easy of a wordplay, but we've seen them against space on that third map where it's kind of like, you know, the oxygen is running out. I think on energy they're going a little low. And this is the only thing that worries me. It's the stamina to be able to sustain a long game because Navi could be just being dragged out, kicking and screaming. That's what I want to keep an eye on for Eternal Fire. So, so you don't mean like Wakadia forever? <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> oh my God! Get that crowbar out right, of his uh, hands. All right, I'll get out of here. ASAP. Out. <laughs> no, but there, there's certainly something to say about them making it this far. Is that right? Absolutely. There's, there's talent. There's firepower, and there's a good enough structure. Uh, in this team to be able to win, to be able to beat teams like Falcons, BB Team and whatnot, to have a close series against FaZe. But now it's about for Eternal Fire sort of proving that they can keep doing it, right? Not just do it one time and sort of fade away, but they can keep doing it. And especially against the Natus Winsair team that's playing incredibly well, actually. They're only in the lower bracket because they had to play against Spirit in the opening round. Oh. Who isn't losing, by the way. I don't know why. I mean, I don't know. I, I watched the game against Apex, and I kind of had to say I was wincing a couple times looking at Navi, <laughs> like, really. Gave you, you that know, Listerine face. It was not too great, you know. <laughs> that's it, like, it, right I there. I that lemon, like, ooh, that's exactly how I felt. Look, we heard from Alexi B. Joke aside on the interview, and he, he's talking about people missing utilities and forgetting what they have to do. Like, when you're playing, I mean, I know pros obviously have a lot on their plates and all of that. But then, when, once you get the Katowice, please just have your strats ready. And how, as a leader, are you supposed to keep your calm when you know this is happening around you? And we felt that as a viewer, I think, and that's why I'm doing the lemon phase just a little bit. I'll tell you how, Maniac, and, and why, because Alexi B is a tactical genius. Nice. And I'll show you why. I think Anubis will be one of the map in the series, ah. either their pick or, or it will be a decider. So this is the game against Spirit. They're 1-0 down, down on the T side. This is just the standard opening. Connector smoke is going to come down bit, throws a flash towards B. He's going to tuck in uh, towards A. He's going to tuck in into this corner, right? Ima also throws some utility towards B. Now you look at the time, right? There's 1-11 left on the time. So a little bit of time has passed here for them. Alexi B is throwing the mid utility. You have JL now putting pressure in connector as well. So they're starting to take some map control. They're starting to group, starting to figure out what it is that the CTs are going to do. And what they do is they decide to turtle up towards that B bomb site. Now Ima throws just a small fake, right, to keep these players occupied. As you see, the brunt of the force is grouping towards A. JL adds a couple of flashes connector. This enables Alexi B to now start his lurk towards mid. Is that his signature move? Going B, but then going A? Alexi B with his signature tactic. You're seeing wow. it live right here. Now the flash comes in for a bit. Now Alexi comes in to play with all the utility, right? They pinch the bomb site. They're going to find this kill on Shiro. And that's going to be the round pretty much done and dusted now when they find all the trade kills, right? So move over real quick to the next gun round that happened just two rounds later. 
in round 20. And what you're going to see here is same utility at the start. Con Smoke falls in. Bit is again in that copy towards A. Ima is throwing his nades towards B early, right? But what's going to happen behind these opening nades is that they're going to group up towards that B bomb site much more quickly. Oh my god, so it's now it's A, but then going B? Exactly. What? Guys, slow it's down. Pulling out please. all the stops, right? And you will see how that impacts the team spirit players. First of all, they're playing 2 1 2 this time around, but the pace is just Dong gets caught out in the middle of nowhere. Magus is going to get peaked from two sides. And at 1 15 in the round, team spirit has to save. And this is why. You know, we've been praising Na'Vi for their T-side. They're one of the high, they're the second highest rated T-side team at this tournament behind Spirit. And they were number one at Blast Groups just a couple of weeks ago. So it's, either, genius. it's either A or B. Yes. So but the joke is, is you, they never know. Wow. Exactly. It's one and then it's the other. But then it could be the other Same, one. Same, but different. You know I mean? Like give or take. T-side win rates look like this, though. Um, and then, yeah, it's, it's and there. Just ignore spirit, because that's the... <laughs> it's like, it's that's not even fair. That's it's an anomaly. It's insane. It is an anomaly, right? The best you can hope for in a tournament is like 57, 8%, like close to 60%. So Navi has been playing yeah. incredibly well. and the. Jokes aside, the point of that is the openings are the same. So it's hard to get a read on Na'Vi just based on how they opened the round, what it is that they're going to do. And I'll, I'll give that up as well. He's been able to have such good t sign, and by he I mean the Lexi B, even though his rifle aren't exactly delivering what they're supposed to do. Yeah, and I mean, this just speaks for Why itself. Why did they give away the script? Like, this, this is what we wrote. Like, <laughs> yeah. we just wrote it. It was pure improvisation. It's never been said Trace before. came up with this. And then, just, quote, just so you know. going B, but then going A, quote, end quote, uh, something like that. Yeah, let's, I mean, the one thing we do need to kind of think about and maybe even put into our wheelhouse here, what maps we're going to play. I think this is the problem. Uh, Internal Fire is unlucky at this tournament. They're facing teams whose permaban is Vertigo, right? Phase first, now uh, Navi as well, and that's Eternal Fire's best map. So they'll have to take it somewhere else. Mm. Um, they decide to go for new. Yes. Okay. CT start for Navi. That leaves what? A Mirage? Oh, look at that. Mirage or Anubis. Those were the two options. We'll see. Uh, I would Eternal love to see Anubis' last map. Yeah, I think it's positive. Eternal Fire decides to veto yes. out Inferno, and we do there get we Anubis. Their win rate isn't great, but I think you know they've been putting some work on the map, and uh, especially that performance against FaZe has sort of emboldened them uh, to leave it in here against Navi, and probably because Navi plays it a lot, so there's a lot of information yeah. for Eternal Fire to come up with a game plan. Yeah, I wonder. I think uh, Major has uh, historically been a leader that, know, that loves to know a lot about his opponents and going into like anti-strat, as we call. We know it can be a little bit of a, a double-edged sword depending on how you position it, but. We we're gonna have to keep an eye on him. I'm excited. That's the first time I get to do an actual Eternal Fire game. I've been following them uh, from my bedroom mostly because I wasn't really working. On That's him. where you watch Eternal Fire play yeah. exclusively. Yeah. Eternal That's where Fire, people take control way. of my Chromecast. That's your cup of tea. Weird stuff happens, you know. <laughs> oh, you're talking about here in the hotel. I thought <laughs> oh, you meant like at home or something. Oh like, no, it's like uh, big Space Soldiers fan over here. Yeah, uh, the games have been flowing. Yeah, they. God Almighty, <laughs> help us, uh, help us all, really. Yeah. So Eternal Fire, Navi, Nuke, Mirage, Anubis. Who's winning here, Maniac? Um, I am going to call the upset. I'm going to call Eternal Fire taking this one. Uh, Navi hasn't exactly convinced me, and I believe in uh, Major's lead. I believe in the tactical genius Trace, but I think it's going to come in a 2-1 fashion. Navi grinds them out. Really? Okay, okay. Well, I guess, uh, I mean, I do kind of like what you guys are thinking. I also like the idea of getting us into game. So perhaps we do almost that. No, we're going to do just that. Y'all thought we were going to go to break or something? Nah, you're dead wrong. We're ready to jump into this game. What is an elimination match? Eternal Fire and Navi ready to push each other around in the server, and we're ready to get that live on three. So, without any further ado, I present to you Chad and Alex. Thank you very much, fellas. Yeah, we've got a big one ahead of us. Navi taking on Eternal Fire. The desk have given us their thoughts. What about you, Chad? Yeah, I think with current form, I wouldn't even call Navi the favorites. They're not shooting straight. Hopefully, they've been able to deal with some of these mental woes. Got their utility... Ah, well, landing correctly. That's going to be important. And as <laughs> yeah. we saw just before Trace threw to us, Wakadia had his headset off, was talking with the admins. So maybe just a slight technical issue before we can get things underway. But JL already looks like he's in a good mood to start the day. Yeah, well, I'd hope so. Uh, I mean, Na'Vi, they definitely have not been the most polished of squadrons over the course of the games we witnessed, especially, of course, just the one to secure it over against Apex. And Eternal Fire, on the other hand, it felt like they did, they had it in the palm of their hands uh, in terms of the game most recently. Nuke was where it kind of fell off the face of the earth. But other than that, the Counter-Strike they were playing was admirable, impressive. Centares and, of course, Wicardia uh, delivering in a capacity that we've grown to expect. Yeah, yeah. Alexi, in that interview, saying that Apex uh, match up the, the game on Ancient, that they were able to... Uh 
get across the line just 13 to 11. So it didn't really feel like a win because the basics weren't falling in their favor. And you can have games like that. And you could definitely see yesterday they were plagued by the mental. And, uh, well, we got to cover off both of these teams yesterday in their matchups. FaZe uh, were pushed. I think that's probably a, a good way to look at it. Uh, once we got to Nuke, which is where was going to be the opening territory for this best of three series, Eternal Fire just started very, very slow. It took them way too long to get out of the gates. I think FaZe, towards the end of that first half, let them back in with a round or two from some aggressive maneuvers and opening picks going against them. And uh, then Eternal Fire in the second half, you know, the classic force by victories, away they go. It, it, it could have been a closer match and was a bit of a shame that it fizzled out. Yeah, fizzled for sure. Um, it's going to be interesting to see whether or not they kind of uh, can, can fix their nuke. Because at the start of that nuke, it looked like they had a really firm understanding. Like they were kind of playing with Vaze's rotation. So it's like... Yes, in the first like, three or four rounds, it did look okay. It kind of switched on yeah. and then it kind of petered out into nothing. I, I think for me, the Eternal Fire uh, team in this matchup, there's a large portion of this that I want to contribute to, to the mental. Like this is an elimination game now. I think that they have played better Counter-Strike so far. Obviously the play in stage, blowing Team BB out of the water, remember? Uh, we've spoken about that a bunch. Uh, where it was Nuke and, well, they started on the T side and uh, Team BB were only able to get one round on their CT side and losing that best of one, 13 to one. Uh, but I think Eternal Fire playing Counter-Strike not only with individuals firing, with Cardi and Zantara's highlighted by the desk. Uh, I think the, the tagline was when generations collide, which is quite nice because we've had Zantara's on our screen for an awfully long time and Wakadia only recently and both of them pack a hefty punch. So there's some nice tools for Magic to work with. And for Na'Vi, well, they started the year well over a blast and now it's about keeping that form together. But I, I think if I look at yesterday, they were, they were going through the basics, right? They, they were just defaulting a lot. I want to see them with a bit more tenacity in their approach, unless this is just another event with like, okay, well, let's get everything in order for the RMR and the major, but I'd love to see them come out and try and set the tone a bit more. Right? You have players who can really get stuck in. Wonderful's had some great highlights on the ADVP and the rifle. Need to get Immer in his groove sooner rather than later. Yeah, and for me, uh, Bit. Bit is this player who, who, when he obviously blew up on our screens, his rookie year being in incredible. One of the most record-breaking rookie years we've seen in terms of trophies lifted, statistics. He was looking like the real headhunter and a real prodigy coming out from Ukraine. Uh, and it does seem like he's kind of set the bar so high, it's not easy to replicate. Yeah, well, that's the thing. He's uh, the remnant of Na'Vi alongside of Blade left in this team now that they've gone international. So it's a whole new walk of life for Na'Vi, which uh, is still quite odd, this team that was essentially representing Ukraine. We know why the split had happened and everything fell apart. And obviously, Simple no longer competing, well, at this current juncture. Yeah. Uh, that's definitely changed the identity of this team. And you're reading, you know, Blade's interviews and when you hear him talk about this new project, it is a new challenge for him as a coach. It's like a lot of the teams are, doesn't it, right? We're still seeing like we're in the fledging stages of a lot of these teams coming together. Uh, so, uh, look, we talk about time with Counter-Strike teams, but when everybody's in flux and right. lost vitality already. Right. Yeah, right? Uh, G2 uh, looking wobbly. Uh, does, does that really mean that Spirit of the Favorites for I mean, the I'm, trophy? I'm like, is that what we're really talking about here in Katowice? I'm glad the Ents have been able to make that uh, playoff showing. I think it's the first time a Polish core has made it since, what, 2016, I believe it was. You saw was how much it meant to Diha. You know, I didn't realize he's actually from Katowice. Uh, that, yeah, that blew my mind. I think it was Dinko or Jason that told me that one. Holy moly. So no wonder he's excited to be able to play on that stage uh, in front of a truly home crowd. Well, we should have been asking him for some food recommendations. We should have been struggling on the Uber Eats to find a restaurant or two. Maybe Diha could have been the man to solve those problems. And problems, we just had a uh, bit of a PC crash every Everybody. We're still working on getting that one rectified, and once we are good to go, we will get things live and having a jive. But in terms of international rosters, one of them... Too many of them, if you ask me. I mean, precisely. I think Blade would probably agree with you, considering this is, the, you know, an opportunity for him to experience what it's like when you're trying to blend so many cultures. You know, we've got an idea to look at Falcons now, another opportunity. But when you've got such a mixed bag of, of players with a mixed bag of expectations for social dynamics all the way to in-game communication, it does become a different kettle of fish. Uh, and a Blade, you know, it doesn't become strong 
It doesn't become tempered until it's been through the fire, Chad. And so this is his fl Blaze. Blade has to manage a, a wide spectrum of players with, from different uh, parts of the world well, and I combine think, them into a unified force. I think his system works well. I think it was the individuals that were letting them down in their last couple of games, not performing very well, in, in, in my opinion. I just don't think uh, they're hitting the necessary shots where oh, the fights mistakes. were coming their ways. Yeah. Uh, and, and look, a lot can play into that, but those frustrations can build. If your teammate is throwing utility that's meant to set you up and then you're the player going aggressive and you die because a simple piece of utility was missed, you know, then you're going to breed resentment. Then you won't have yeah. faith to go for those type of plays. You think, oh, is he going to miss this stupid molly again? Am I, you know, and then you're unable to get away with the standard moves. Uh, Eternal Fire not really missing too much in... F oh, okay. Hold up a second. Uh, making hay while the sun shines <laughs> is uh, Matthew and Trace Stundog Saranthas. So getting in a bit of the, the pang and the pong or the yeah. whim wham, the whiff waff. Uh and what's incredible is Tristan Sarenthus is actually getting the ball over the net consistently. Now, well, from our initial ventures in the ping pong realms of Malta. Look at his stats. Yeah, I, this is this is the best I've seen Trace play. That's three consecutive shots. Th uh, these two consecutive shots that have gone over the net. Now, what do you think about the attire that has been brought into this matchup here? You have uh, Matthew in some suit trousers uh, with what type of shoes would you call those? I'd say it looks like two dudes go into two different nightclubs, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Trace is probably not going to a nightclub. I think he's going down to like the Friday night drinks <laughs> at the pub. No, in my mind, actually, he's going to the university library to finish his studies. You know, he's just had a couple of lectures and he's going to go and do a bit of studying before he hits the, hits the local. Or is he the, the lecturer? Uh, that he could be the core cool lecturer as well. Uh, I've heard reports that the uh, tech issue is going to be a little longer than we anticipated. Could be a couple more minutes uh, before we do get this one underway. So it's your opportunity now uh, to go ahead and, and tell your friends. Navi at Eternal Fire. I thought you were going to say they could go to the bathroom. I was going to gonna suggest that as They're well. They're done, then they'll leave us. That's true too. But if yeah. they need a new computer, go to the hotel. You can take mine. It's been working fine. Oh my gosh. I've been playing a lot of counter throughout the days. I would rather we have the tech issue now than in the middle of the game. Oh, 100%. So let's get that, you know, get all the, the kinks out of the system now. We don't need another crash in a crucial round, do we? Oh, God. Oh, Tommy's yeah. there from IT. That's okay. when you know you have a drive. Tommy, what, what's going on? Well, while he's working on that, we are going to be taking a very quick break. When we do come back, we'll have all 10 PCs running, and we'll be running straight into this best of three. Things are heating up and lighting up here for Eternal Fire. And yesterday's game against FaZe, mate, I want to see what you felt about that performance because it was so close, but also one of the best teams you've ever faced. Yeah, true. Like, I was uh, too emotional in the, in the night because, like, I was also sad because we lost and there's two more games to win for us. But in, in terms of... Uh, 
we played so good against one of the best team in the world. So I was happy, like emotional confusion, you know, like, so um, we did everything like uh, it was a bit unlucky. We just couldn't close on Inferno. And that's why I went to second map. Like we could have closed this game at 2-0. <laughs> yeah, you definitely had a chance for that. But I want to talk about Nuke because it was the point where I went, this is a good map for you guys. I expected the same and then it fell short. Uh, I mean, yeah, we after this after we won the second map, I was like pretty sure we, it was gonna be close game in the third one as well. But it didn't go on that way because it, they were like kind of did a good anti strat against our uh, some couple of strats. So that's why like we had like bad bad economy and we couldn't uh, do the comeback on T side. So that's why like also we had like one or two gun rounds on CT. I, I only played out on one time, so like, not fun. yeah, it wasn't fun. It was not uh, the game we supposed to play, but uh, it happens sometimes. Sometimes because they are also one of the best team in the world. So, does that feel you have extra confidence facing Navi today, though? Like with how you're playing? Uh, yeah, like we have been practicing against them as well, Ooh. like way before. It's okay, like okay. it can be like a great matchup. It can be close game as well. It can be dominating game as well. So mm -hmm. we will see. We believe ourselves. Like the previous days, mm -hmm. that was a bit choke in phase game. But if we just do the previous things like we did the previous games, uh, I think we can win again. And do you still consider Na'Vi to be maybe a, a scary team at all or without Simple being there and these new players, it's not so much? Uh, they are still scary. It's, yeah, I mean, they are still good. Uh, of, of course, there is a fact of Simple, uh, he's not playing anymore. Uh, but anyway, they are Na'Vi and they are on good shape now. Okay. Well, let's see how it goes. I'm looking forward to see how this game will go down to of Fire versus Na'Vi next. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to try this one again as we continue at IEM Katowice 2024. Lower bracket, Na'Vi and Eternal Fire. It's do or die. Three maps locked in and we start where Eternal Fire's previous campaign as discussed in that interview with James Banks and Woxic. Nuke, the first map of this series. It's Eternal Fire's pick. So they're looking to take us back to this to terrain and domain and uh, do what they couldn't just yesterday. Yeah, and in case you missed the veto and the death segment, we have Mirage and Anubis as the third and deciding map if we need to get there. Let's get this one underway now that Wakandia's PC issues have been sorted. And maybe Eternal Fire might come out the gates slightly quicker than they did yesterday against FaZe. It was a slow, pensive start on Nuke in their third map of a very competitive series. And that was for a spot in the Spodak. This one, as you mentioned, is survival in the lower bracket. Contact towards ramp looking likely. Emma on the boost with the dual Berettas. They should be lethal. This setup's perfect. This, if, if, if Bit can just keep the attention drawn, and he's done more than just to draw the attention, he's actually drawn blood twice. And with the help of Alexi thrice, three bodies already down for eternal fire. And this looks like it's already a, a done and dusted pistol. Just as easy as that. They managed the ramp aggression. JL was the housekeeper of this top site, and now he might get a bit of action. Well, he does, but it's a quick one from Calix. Punishes JL on top of the hut. A bit dropped. It. Oh, well, never mind. Uh, Alexi will finish him off. I was going to say, a bit dropped down towards B in case he went down the vent for the plants. So they had all the contingencies covered. And now V pick up a very, very clean pistol round. The perfect setup. Three towards ramp. And the fact that the dual brothers of Emma really didn't need to do anything at all. You can see how horny he was to get started, just shooting as they're eking out. But Bit and Alexi stalled them at the door. And between the two of them, do a whole lot of damage. We know that Centaurus loves a little bit of tilt. I put a tweet out asking for like the top five power ranking of uh, tilting teams at the moment. I think complexity has to be up there for me. I think big as well. So oh, could you just other be names. my social media manager, Chad? I just make dumb tweets and get people. I know, opinions. but when you find a dumb tweet that's too dumb for you, can you just give it to me? Sure, all right. I can't. I can't tweet anymore. The leftovers. It. Just see what the people at home think. I don't want to do it, man. They just Need want to help. have a conversation. Well. This round, it is a force bite. As you can see here, they're just waiting out this standard block utility. See a couple of smokes plumed on that radar on your top left. And now as it starts to Ooh. fade, a ton of fire are great at these rounds. Yeah, this could look great, especially considering JL's been flat. It's a bit of a fake into bit though, and a double combined with Wonderful. Again, they test ramp, and again, it looks like Na'Vi come up trump. Yeah, this is actually great from Na'Vi. The fact that with that top util coming in, they didn't over-rotate. Stuck two towards ramp and nice. damage done again. So two kills. Kalix would love to get his hands into that M4. Has been able to grab it. Has 54 seconds. The bomb on his back. 
A reload would help. 12 bullets. If he can get another kill, get that bomb down. Sure, it's not a successful round off the force, but has made it somewhat costly. He's not shying away from an investigation. Na'Vi, well aware that the clock and the numbers favor them. And it's, yeah, a little spot there from Alexi. He's not going to overcook it. Doesn't need to do too much more. Yeah, in this situation, if you're Na'Vi, you just want to play for information. You don't want to commit to any hard jewels. So get the information, and once you know where he is, then you can start to clamp down with your CT setup, restrict the movements that are available, prepare for where he could be going, and wow. out dinking with an MP9 at range. There you have it, Alexi B. Finishes him off from secret. And thank you. Put the score up to 2-0. It should be 3-0. Eternal Fire not managing a plant off of that force by Fake. Slight silver lining is that he made sure that M4 was uh, irretrievable at the top of heaven. They will at least have to reinvest for that. Eternal Fire, though, just going to be having to stomach a 0-3 star on your map pick. And it is T-side nuke as well, but those pistols can really kind of help with that early momentum. Oh, for sure. Right? It can be the difference maker in a match. I say you only get you know one or two gun rounds if you get the pistol with the conversions. But suddenly, it's, fine. it's a half, yeah. Well, uh, they've invested in a few deagles. We'll make it three. Imagine with the P250 and Woxic, he's going to be more conservative so that AWP can come into the mix. And Navi should be aware that the round is likely just headhunters. So sitting back, not over committing, again, playing for info. Yeah, I'm here to learn as well. Trying to understand the anti-eco setup. This one makes a lot of sense. Be as far away from the Deagles as possible. There's a lot of rules that uh, teams have in place or they use different codes uh, to be able to make sure that the team responds accordingly. Damage done. It's a little scary now. Just going to keep his head down. You've got all the info you need. Cheeky flash. Maybe Alexi does have a glance and yeah, confirms. Body still towards that red container. Wonderful. Has the cross. No need to over extend. And Emma also in main, so can let them continue to progress for now. Wonderful, he is going to continue to try and find a little bit of a sight line. Alexi on a tiny gap. And now the fights do come their way. Wonderful, good for the first and second. And just piece by piece. And, and I will say, wonderful having a nice early start like this, albeit, you know, it's first three rounds. These are just the Ecos. But this is going to definitely help in terms of keeping him feeling confident. And we know that in CS2 in particular, confidence in taking these duels, not shying away from an engagement, it can be the difference maker. And, and I think the confidence overall for Na'Vi is something that we saw lacking yesterday yes. with the individuals, right? I think they went into that Apex game thinking, hey, we, we should win this. And I think everybody thought, yeah, they should win this. But uh, you need to make sure that your individuals are firing because as an international team that is still trying to piece their progress together, uh, you need to hit your shots, right? And I know that seems like very reductive, but that was some of the issues. We get into the guns. No Woxic AWP just yet. AKs are plenty. You tilt the same. Deep yard molly to slow the early progress of the yard crawl, but Zantaros will be past it now. Pepper the step looking for a fight. Posting up behind red. Oh, he could get this going. He knows he can wait for the queue of the second. Now throws it out. And it will perhaps make the timings a bit awkward. That first smoke, they'll have to move quickly. Worrying about secret. Alexi tries to destabilize with that one. And a nade for the clear. Oh, wonderful. Oh, Does too shy. Just narrowly miss out on the full disperse. Forces Alexi down. The vent's quick to smoke. Blocked again. So stalled and now stopped. And just still reside in secret. Can always pop their head back up, but then they have one player over towards lobby, and that's the in game leader, Madger. They want to try and brute force down towards B. It is just Alexi here with a flash to his name. Top hut molly. Emma forced off the roof. Alexi might get some info on the next jump spot. They are setting up the boost. Mm, he gets the info and gets away, Alexi. Big rotation coming to help him. You would assume. You'd assume. They've got some space now. Taking down Alexi. Rotations through. Bit already towards the clock position. And wonderful supporting as well. This is by no means a guarantee for Eternal Fire. It's about this next engagement. It's wonderful. Brings the fight to Zantaris. Takes him down on control. Bit activates as well. The Molly through the flames. Wonderful finds another. It makes the best of a bad situation. And Kalix, he's nading those doors. He's trying to find an equalizing frag. It's Bit that denies a great headshot and no time for the rest. Madja. They know someone had to have thrown that top util. I just love that decision from Wonderful, knowing that they're going to get zoned out by the util. So he pushes himself in, so does Bit, and they take down Magus. So they remove everything. But knowing that they don't, they don't want to lose the site, so they take the fight 
to Eternal Fire and they pick up the fourth consecutive round. That was great decision making after Alexi B gets flatlined. Thought he had the information, still gets pipped at the post, but this is it. The Smokes and Mollies are behind him, pushing forward, bit dropping down, causing absolute chaos between the two young Ukrainians. Around secure. It's round four, Zintare. Yeah, but he's a, he's a highly strung gentleman. I know, but at round four, I'd, I'd, personally, I'd prefer like a... It's round four, lads. They're going to do this. We're going to do that. It's all good. Best of three. Oh, did Magic go down after time? He did. 150 bucks. Didn't catch that one. Oh, you're right. That, well, that is a huge blow. Maybe the tilt might be justified. I take it all back. Well, if anyone's going to stomach it, you hope it is the season vet manager. I remember watching him back with uh, everyone's favorite member on the oh. HLTV.org forums. Yeah, there it is. So just as well, that one is going to sour the mood. But Magic used to play with Sixer. Oh, that's a name I haven't heard in some time. Sixer used to be, right, I think he appeared in like HLTV's top 20 back in 1.6 in like 2010 or 2011. Like yeah. Top 20. A nice resurgence yet at one point, like uh, into 2015. I love the threads they all make. It's like, oh my God, Sixer. Sixer, what was that? And then like, it's, the people on the forums can get some funny content out there, can't they? They can also be horribly mean people, but... Um, Sometimes. I like to think it's, it's different people, you know? <laughs> I, think, I think there's two different types of people on the internet. I try to operate with most of them being comedians. Yeah, They're right. Out there just uh, giving it a crack, trying to make people laugh. So Tara's invested into the AK. So not wanting to allow this CT economy to build too early, and that might be too late. Bit already has 7.7. Oh! Um, that's ramp open, and they are going to take that gap. It's wonderful to try and address it. It's another AK. And it's an orb that they've managed to get past by baiting that shot. Concedes ramp completely for Na'Vi, but what is the reaction? You're going to hold on to it, park Calyx there, and returning to lobby. It's forced a rotation, a heavy one. JL and Emet down towards the low site. They've given up A. Who does that put the burden of yeah, A they've on? they've completely given up A. If you look at the radar, you wow. can see just Alexi over towards Warehouse. Wonderful, we saw his position towards Hell. He's even had to play passive in case they try and fight him. If he smokes, squeak. Come through. Yeah, they're ahead of... <laughs> wow. Was that a Wakadia Tech 9? It was. Of it's Wakadia. It Wakadia Tech 9. His Tech 9 is, is becoming quite notorious for that kind of maneuver. It just... might just be a save, Alex. I mean, this is Eternal Fire beautifully manipulating Na'Vi's rotations. One frag, and it leads to a, a clean round. Oh, he saw his bottom. Wonderful's going to lose his AWP as well. That boost completely catching them off guard. And yeah, you better save if you can. Ahead of the flash. Knows Alexi's going to be towards CT. This is a Jules and Taris could nail if he chooses to. But mission accomplished with, with a very minor investment. Using that one rifle on Zantares to great effect. He might even try and run, run down Alexi. Doesn't have too much cash with Cardia, though. No worries, he's got 2k. Runs at him with his sidearm. They're trying to take that AWP away. Alexi's 36 HP. This should be no way. He's dead. You're a dead man leg shot, surely, cooks him. And that's one hell of a round from Eternal Fire. Yeah, the fact that there's the AK investment on Zentaris and he hits the necessary shot to get the space. Then they had to rotate heavily down to it. Here it is. Bang. Oh, gross. Yeah, a great shot from Zentaris. And that really is the round opener and round winner because of the rotations that it forced Na'Vi into. So beautiful work, Zentaris and Woxic with some great shots in this one. You see the Deagle. You almost saw the Deagle, but you definitely saw the AK. As uh, Na'Vi, they did have that residual cash, so they can get out the buy, but that's just a... Bit of a miserable round to lose, especially considering we just highlighted the fact you killed Madger after time. So now they've got a free AWP. It's gonna do wonders for Eternal Fire's finances and confidence. It's a really nice round to win. Oh wow, JL's handled that very well. Two nades towards his position. Avoids the majority of the damage and still catches that first extension of Zantares. So where they want to force the issue with the Molly to top heart and Wakadia in heart. But they know JL's not playing towards the hut position after finding one towards the back site. Testing ramp again. Wonderful's here earlier this time. Moxix there as well. Calix, that's a free frag. Straight into the scope of Wonderful. Two-man advantage for Na'Vi to return immediately to their victorious ways. Cardia spotted out. If you could find another way in, they return to lobby. No ground. Barely a leg to stand on here. They all need to reload, and with him at gone, this suddenly becomes possible. Lexi B does catch Woxic on the exit. Same with JL Topper. Did take the round. Narvi, quick return. Back to form.
All right. Well, uh, they like the way that one felt. And I think there, bit making steps on the ramp, right? He was audible. I think that caused Kalix to swing. This fight, uh, definitely Zantara is looking to see if he can find that one-on-one -on -one with JL. But it was this here that was interesting, right? Because uh, the fact that both top side players, Emma and JL, were shooting towards Squeaky Door. Both attenders were drawn. Ricardia tried to find the gap. It wasn't enough. Fortunately, Alexi B able to spam one through the smoke. But Eternal Fire, through their light buy victory, have another purchase. Can they get back into the winning ways? A suppressive utility deep ramp. Walks it PvP up on the silo. Flashed. Very lobby centric, isn't it? You know, not using the smoke walls outside, not forcing the standard uh, blubber, rotations. Mutations? What's a. Am I thinking mutation? Could be. Maj has actually mutated into a utility bot. All he's been doing is. Throwing nades. Just throwing in the nades life of an in game leader. A lobby just hanging out. I mean, it does feel like Navi are going to be able to set themselves up however they see fit at the opening stages of every round right now. And he's still throwing more. He's just throwing the first of the three. And he's going up the roof. Got to throw a Molly as well. Did no one else learn any nades? He'd love to get a kill, wouldn't he? Zero and six right now. Four ADR. The guy hasn't had a chance. Well, it's kept the attention of the AWP, which is posted from Wonderful, but it's suspicious. There's no noise outside. Nobody could have crossed secret, I don't believe. Feels like it, it has to be A. Na Navi should have a great idea. This needs to be through lobby. Yeah, Emma's going to be repositioned, and down goes JL. They build into the site. Huge one from Kalix. He wins his jewel and builds upon it onto Alexi. The site is lost. And they've got 20 seconds to spare. Where's that bomb? Actually looking to get it down. Plans for heaven. Held by the AWPA. Wonderful. Still towards garage. It would need to be offered something to try and go for this retake now. Bit well and truly out of position. We saw he was just highlighted still over towards ramp, so a long way in. And that somehow works for Eternal Fire. I think it's the dink into the hut player, which was Calix. That kill, if it went the other okay. way, right? It, that would have completely stalled the progression because Alexi underarmed his own flash, pushed through the main smoke. He was able to grab one of his own, but it was that duel towards Hart that I think was the difference maker for Eternal Fire to put their second on the board. Oh, yeah. I also just feel like that top side duel with Gun on Squeaky. I think it might have been Imeh. He was top hot, wasn't he? He got mollied so, yeah, off. That, okay, so maybe JL. But yeah, it was bizarre just seeing that uh, go so easily in favor of Eternal Fire. Good round to pick up. Doing it the hard way in the absence of that pistol. And not finding anything consecutive. Well, win one more of those and you're broken Na'Vi. Assuming no saves. See, Madja. Still no kills, but two rounds. And I think that's what an in-game leader's kill tally should look like. 13 is the magic number. Which map has the most absurd bomb radius now, Ancient or Nuke? Which one's more ridiculous? And I know you've been, you're a large proponent for larger bomb radiuses. Radii. Radii. Uh... Some of the post plants, it does just feel like you're condemned to losing two, three players if you're at, if you're in an intense retake. Yeah, I don't know, but I guess maybe probably ancient. I feel that like ancient feels it can feel pretty obnoxious, but I I am just I'm just glad we can't have people <laughs> the, sitting in a decom window no, under sure. while while the bomb it blows up. It's like that's that just makes no sense. It doesn't doesn't stimulate you at the end of the round at all. Well, you've I'm got in the side, I just have to sit here. Players dying on B as the bomb explodes on A. That's the ancient special. It does too as well. You could sit car. Yeah. You could watch the bomb blow up in front of your very eyes and be like, ha ha. It's crouch. Big round ahead of us. It's going to be very indicative of just how competitive Nuke's going to be here for Eternal Fire. See, it's their map pick. Made it work on a low buy. Now they've made it work on the rifles with Cardia. He's a bit of a heavy price to get across. 29. It's all he has to work with. Alexi's spam did connect. Who's going to address the lower league? It will be Alexi again. Or oh, not. Looks like it was going to be. Waterfall smoke onto main. So this is telling them they want to fight towards heaven. Tatar is audible. Oh, he's past bit. Yeah. He's found a gap. Oh, and bit eats that flashbang. Beautiful from Wicardi. A bit of team play there. Well, like bit got baited into that. From the steps of Zantara, yeah. Alexi's communicating it, and then the flash comes through. You're right, it was almost like a sequence. Alexi, though, composes himself, catches Calix. Are they con gonna consider this from Zantara? They are, but he's too quick on the draw. So much pressure now being applied across the board. 
He's worried about both sides of ramp. Yeah, maybe he has to just get out of there. Well, if Bomb goes B, oh, the timing oh, on this. Oh, if he, he could still be in trouble. He's, he has no answers about low sight either. He's not turning around. No, man. Got him. Beautiful. Wow, this is one of those rounds where Eternal Fire, they've just got their finger on the pulse and one, if not two steps ahead of Na'Vi. And I wanted to say that's what it looks like Alexi has right now, but he it only looks like he has the understanding of exactly what's going on across the map because you're seeing with his reactions, the way that he's putting himself in certain scenarios is not a bad shot there from Jao at all. We'll remove the life of Zantara's. But Alexi feels like he has a very good idea of the fun and games that Eternal Fire are up to in a lot of these plays. He seems one step ahead, doesn't feel like the information's against him, but it's quite difficult to make sure that's flowing to your teammates to make those split-second reactions as it's happening. Yeah, and I, I think it also is a really big component in any skill level of Counter-Strike in the sense that, you know, it's it can't be... It can't just be Alexi that has that level of awareness. Well, yeah, but this you know, is so odd from bit, right? So we're talking about the fact that a player is able to jump off main and go around, and obviously that seems like it's bit's responsibility because sure. he's playing back warehouse to make sure that they can't cross that line of sight or head into main. But if a player jumps over your line of sight, then you can just stay warehouse, hope that you catch him if he goes wide, and say, hey, listen, guys, whoever the hell player is, exactly. that's now your job. This exactly. is a possibility. Do we push lobby? Do we give it up? Do we take space elsewhere? Bit can't just be running wide in warehouse to take a fight to God knows what. No, and never never mind doing so uh, without the answers of what's what's waiting for you on yard. And precisely, and you, you had a pretty good idea that was precious secret in the round as well, so you, you could have been running into anything, and he was. They've got two safe rifles, Chad, so it's not necessarily a free one, but with Wakadia running around corners with his Mac 10, it does look like this early map space has been taken. They're already descending the low site, and uh, okay, well, should we just get ready for the next one? The fact that they're all making their way down the fireman's pole, they might be able to try and contest smoke and they need to push this. Or yeah, maybe that, not. That smoke makes it weird. They're next to each other. They're right behind them. That's a CT smoke. It's slowed down, Macardia. Oh my god, the barrel is right next to his temple. Now they flash. macardia has got nades out. He's been run down by Bit. Now Alexi's rifle comes alive and right. Eternal Fire have disintegrated. Alex, can you be the hero? Him and Woxic have a crossfire. He has to control his bullets. Does get two, and it's up to... Whoa, no, Woxic down. Na'Vi with just two rifles, a speedy rotate, and a very unusual smoke. Uh, you, look, that's smoke. So the, the, the T's going to throw in the stairwell molly, right? That's very classic to help you get that uh, double door side control. So the fact that they throw that down, that stunts the amount of space that the T's are actually able to grab. This one happened off action, but it was just chaos. That is what the smoke caused. They couldn't take the space that they wanted. They were condemned. It was very awkward. And we see the Zantara's frustration following through. Now, look, you won your Zantara's. They've won theirs. Both teams with a lighter buy victory so far in this first half. And you got to keep it together. Whoa. That was just chaotic, right? Absolute mess made of that. But great from Na'Vi to thrive. I'm very impressed, yeah. I mean, it was just that reaction. Admittedly, it really helps when you've managed to get yourself that uh, free kill we saw in lobby onto Magia. The Lurker could have made it a whole lot more potent. But we are right back into the rifles. And they've done the hard work to break now. Really? Well, so that, you know, you can understand why you're frustrated. Cycling through their smokes, kept squeaky door locked off. Interesting position from Wonderful this round. So they've actually got Imet, JL, and Wonderful invested towards this hold. Well, considering how much they're trying to fight through lobby in a fair few of these rounds, maybe understandably so. Yeah, I guess, you know, Alexi's saying, I, I've got I've got Yard, I can spot he, it. And he doesn't feel under threat a lot. So what, is it that Eternal Fire don't want to try and challenge Wonderful's orb? Or they keep throwing they one. They find one, the weaknesses? one of the smokes like this, this smoke the magic keeps throwing, it's spotable. Nice from Akadi to level it out. Now they know where Wonderful is. Another smoke grenade to hold them at bay. It's very lobby-centric. Oh, spam. Sp spread. Madge's Molly does find a, a huge opening kill towards that top site. With the AWPA down, Bit starts to tuck into the site. He's going to give them ramp. It's not in his interest to give them that 2v4 should he go down. It looks like it's going to be A and there's nobody yeah, in Yeah, JL just dropped as well. Wakadi may have heard that. Stampeding through those vents. Alexis just blocked Squeaky. Oh. They know where everyone is, though. He's trying to catch JL up the vent and beautiful. Wakadi has won them the round. They're toying with Na'Vi, aren't they? Alexi gives it a good go. Bit shouldn't be long for this world. Zantara is more than ready for this. The AK strikes. Bit goes down. And back and forth we go again. Keep it as simple. Yeah, I, 
Navi are having a tough time dealing with this onslaught and, and not just having to play standard nuke rotations through losing yard space. And yeah, it's uh, definitely setting in for a bit of a loop right now. Navi, are they going to invest? Bacardi's awareness there was, I mean, he knew where everyone was. Not sure what JL is frustrated there either. Like, you're coming back up the vent into topside, mate. I mean, he's, he's probably frustrated he went down in the first place. Well, uh, it's only 1,900 into the next. Alexi actually invested quite a bit. He only has 1,900 left in the bank balance. He's bought an MP9. Yeah, and he's gambled lower early. With the wall of smokes up, it seems like it's a informed decision. Oh, that was an opportunity for Wonderful. He did have a tip of the dome on his screen, top silo. Alexi... He's going to be jiggling around these vents, looking to catch Centaurus on his progression. And he forces, actually, a, a failed Molotov. So, with the smoke on top, that will buy time. Magic once again, doing what Magic does best here. Every time we cut to his POV, there's a nade landing somewhere. This time, lockers. The utility dispenser. Well, Centaurus and Magic do have room towards outside. The bomb currently in lobby. These upgraded pistols, plenty of them. Gravitating towards Hart. So three players in top at the moment for Na'Vi. Bit close ramp. And Alexi B is going to join him. So trying to crunch in now. 45 seconds. Yeah, it's going to be very hard for him to get anything done. A little bit of a bait. A little bit of a dink. He has done some damage. Wonderful crap behind the site. And cut down. JL only had a USP. And it's by oh! seven. Oh! Gets a lot of work done. A few more casualties than they may have uh, uh, hoped for, but Eternal Fire, they find the round, and with only one more to go, it is no harm, no foul. Yeah, well, they're clearing on the top side, and then bang, Bit and Alexi both appear for three quick kills. But we might be heading into this halftime break with a tied scoreline, unless Na'Vi have something to say. Started off with what felt like a flawless pistol round, only taking one casualty. Managed to go four rounds on the trot to start on Eternal Fire's map choice. But in the gun rounds, well, which was kicked off, really, by that hero AK of Zantara's over towards ramp. It's been looking quite tidy for Eternal Fire. Finally, a, it looks a bit more like a standard complexion of a round. Alexi might be behind a few, Alex. This could be huge. Forward position. He's gone uncleared. Playing the fade is Zantara's. That's good awareness for his eighth and for an opening to tie this half up. It did look a bit bleak, conceding what was a 4-0 start. Look at this, they're just creeping back after that kill. So they don't want anything to do with outside, immediately calling the cancel. A regroup towards lobby. And look at all the nades remaining. It's not magic this time. Walk six the one lining it up. So yeah, after that, heading back to spawn to sell it further. It's very believable after that kill. Trying to force these early rotations. Now he goes for the double molly. The sight laden with flame flashes on top of that. And then you go ramp. You're really messing oh, with yeah. them. I mean, wonderful. He's ready. He does manage to take down Macardia, and he's worried about a repeat. Understandably so. He's found the equalizing fragment with 30 seconds left. They can pivot down the vents. No one's holding it. You can see an SMG scurrying down, up, down, left, right. 25, and now it's top sight. Is that correctly? These mind games have not worked out well. Madja expecting someone to have moved, but JM instead is in the prime position with the MP9, gets two and a half, and there is a seventh. They will leave, leave the half with a lead. Seven, two, five, Na'Vi holding on to that defense. We swap sides, we'll be right back.
lower bracket semi-final. Na'Vi and Eternal Fire got a whole lot to do and just the first half under our belt so far so you're right on time to witness this battle and bout between this international roster Na'Vi that haven't necessarily been firing on all cylinders. They survived the night but coming into this one it's Eternal Fire that are putting up a fight. They recover after a 4-0 deficit to start. They make a T-side work. Five rounds, they'll be happy with that. Yeah, definitely. And they've been playing mind games with Na'Vi. Maybe trying to take advantage of this uh, team having to communicate in English on a complicated map like Nuke. But Na'Vi, the bookmaker's favorite, Zantares. Ooh, mm. Multiple fronts and fights heading his way. Smoked off with Cardi. You can play in front of it. It wasn't a smoke to excuse me. Still, Zantares is just going to take that duel. And now they've got all this space to stretch their legs. Ricardia has to turn tail. Three HP on him. Yeah, well, Kzik, I'm not sure about this duel either. Wonderful. Has found Madger in the meantime, and it looks like everyone's just having individual duels. Yeah, one back from Woxic. Bomb delivered to his front door, but Image is going to be running at him. And the audacity to pick up a USP when the Glock is as strong as it is. They knew he was main. Oh, now they know he's in the sight. Three HP. That's down the ladder. That's where we want to go. Joe, uh, just bullet, fight him, boys. Let's just take him on together, shall we? That's all right. As they look like they want to get that bomb down for some extra cash money, but JL, he'll get it done first. Okay, Alexi, they like to buy. They do like to buy. That was, uh, well, it's been some of the notes. We've covered off a couple of Eternal Fire games now, and they have been very, very proficient on the second round buys. Wonderful, great shooting from him. So to be said for Emma. A couple of quick clicks, as uh, Eternal Fire have done exactly what Alexi had prophesied. Scout, MP9s, Deagle and a 5-7. Uh, they seem to have uh, quite a good way of getting themselves into these type of rounds to Eternal Fire. See if they can do it again. Quick smokes off the rip. Gap, you can see there's one of those smokes that's landed credit card. So they've had to throw one out on the fly, but the time delay of this, the initial two are already fading. So Eternal Fire might want to call the bluff on that and think nobody's crossed. That's a lot of resources that's had to be done from Na'Vi because of more missed utility. Wish we know the desk was harping on for a good reason. One of the things the uh, analysts wanted to see tightened up between and days. Maybe the reason Magic throws it all. You know, maybe Alexi should do that, guys. If you can't throw the nades, I'll just do it all. Not what you, not what you wanted a professional. No, not at all. <laughs> Same, but yeah. For real. Good. The nice one, Wigardia has gone down. They anticipated this buy and have handled it so far. Another one knocking towards trophy. A tag with the scout's close quarters. Two for one almost. Did he hit jail as well? I mean, look at their health. It does still have a little bit of a problem with Emma's health now. And Tatares, ooh, nearly got caught quick switching. This is not the safest of rounds. You maybe want to throw a rifle onto Alexi. He's just got the Mackie, but it doesn't look like Zantares is even looking. Yeah, I guess that unconfirmed damage, they're not certain exactly how low two of these three members are. So, Kalex might hang around and see if he can either do more damage or find himself an upgrade. So, Taras likes to look at that into the next. Or he has a kit. Oh, he does too. Yeah, maybe he's going to... Would he really? He's going to... Yeah, they're low HP. They would have to start moving now, Chad. That's true. Alexi doesn't, though. In fact, Alexi's too smart. Alexi. He's only on 60. Oh. Oh, well, it's damage. It's significant damage. Good kill from Kalex. <laughs> <laughs> he only had 16 points of health. <laughs> the swan dive into his demise. Goodbye, cruel world. From a mad genius into a mad man. He does his own stunts, Kalex. See you. Straight on to the crater. But uh, they removed an awful lot there to the eternal fire. Does uh, Magic want to call out a force buy again? It doesn't look like it. Kalex will reinvest. There's still some potency. Yeah, uh, definitely a scary round again. And Na'Vi, this time, well, they might want to be a little bit more careful. Oh, this early util is, applies a lot of pressure. You can see Zantara's immediate knee-jerk reaction is just to turn tail, get himself... Oh, is that a miss utility? <laughs> 
Thank you for catching that, guys. I appreciate it. <laughs> it's a part of the story, Chad. It is a part of the story. So Ancient and Nuke, we yep. uh, can't throw our nades. The problem is we're not seeing who's missing them, so we can't uh, start putting that wanted poster up. Yeah, but it's not like... It's not like by joining a different team with a different constellation of players, you suddenly s stop knowing your lineups. But that's, uh, you know, th this is the thing. I want to know who it is first. I can tell you it was either Bit or Immer who was missing the deep molly that allowed Donk to get picks over on Ancient because those were the mid defenders. Right. There was elbow smokes that were missing, which I'm not sure who that was, but most teams have the Orpa do it, so it could be wonderful. Anyway, we'll come back matter. to it. Yeah, because they are going to be testing Calyx and, and that reinvestment. And it's still a very deadly mix when the 5-7 hits the first headshot and Woxic, he pairs it up on the second onto Alexi. It's brilliant work with only a 5-7 and MP9. They could lose this. That low sight, don't forget Centaurus, he rotated so long ago. Bit doesn't have the health for this. Na'Vi tripping over their own shoelaces. 25. Trying to be cautious, trying to... Oh, worry about Zantaris. Wonderful, needed that frag, and Bit does not have the health for a 1v3. Sure, you've got the first. You can't be faking it out. You no time for this. can't be faking it out. He's Oh, oh my god. But they can just chase, because he has to plan. No time. Time? No time. Time? No time. Oh, that's a round of Counter-Strike, folks. I mean, time, do you take a timeout after that one? Do you just have to run around thinking about how, how that went wrong? How what? are they so good at the, I, we, they, they get a lot out of these type of buys, I don't mean, they, Eternal Fire? Obviously, this is a bait set up in this specific scenario, but we were impressed yesterday. They were doing this to phase as well. This isn't just something that has come out of the box. We're going, wow, Eternal Fire, look how good they are. You can see. Just a moment. Oh, that's a bit of a tilter for Na'Vi. Stressful rounds, once again to the AWP. Incredible work from Eternal Fire on these, li these little guns. Missed again. And yeah, oh my. But Alex, how are you going to operate on the T side of Nuke if you can't throw a smoke wall? I, I know that Eternal Fire did very lobby-centric stuff and Fury have in the past as well, but for Alexi B, again, this is where it gets so difficult. So I can't even call standard rounds because we can't land standard utility. Like right now, that whatever was said, as the plan is, cannot be the plan. Yeah, and, and that's a problem because if they're like, oh, no, no, I know why I missed it. It's all right, I'll throw it next time and you do it again next time and then it misses again. Mate, hey, Nard out here has a YouTube channel that you can go and watch for hours on end. You'll never run out of content. And Ever. No, and, and one of my new favorite pastimes is to have Nard on one screen and be in an offline server on the other and maybe 20% of it sticks, but you've, that's an extra 20%. As you long as you learn something. You wouldn't have otherwise had. Take away per video. Yeah. This is uh, oh, abysmal, really. Not going to be fun for the uh, remaining 47 seconds. They've got to think about what they've done. And they invested into this. So, you know, it's it's peanuts in the bank account. $100 on the high end. I'm keeping the camera in spawn. I'm looking at who's throwing these. Yeah, guys. start the investigation. Oh, he's not cleared his corner. That's a nasty death. Ricardia, profits. And with five alive, SMGs getting frags. They're going to get extra cash for that. JL's gone too. Wall banged out by Zantares. That threw a smoke and a wall into her head. Eternal fire. They're closing that gap. And if Na'Vi can't be uh, can't be making these same mistakes now yet. Yeah, and Alexi, you can see from his... Uh... Hey, guys. So the smoke wall that we practiced to do basic strategies on Nuke. Is there any chance that we can throw this in any of the upcoming rounds that we're going to play for the remainder of this second half so that I can call some strategies? This is a million-dollar championship-level tournament, lads. We are representing one of the most... Uh, no known names in competitive Counter-Strike, maybe even all of eSports. Oh, is he charging his mouse? Did he just plug his mouse in? Well, it looked a little bit like that. Did he just plug his mouse in? Did he forget to charge it? Imagine you use the Eco so he can charge his mouse. <laughs> <laughs> How's it feeling, JL? Yeah, it's, it's moving. And people aren't bringing bungees anymore. No. So... Have you ever tried playing with your wireless mouse while charging? Oh, yeah. Horrible. It ain't fun. Horrible experience. <laughs> It's fun mini They're games. having a timeout now. Yeah. It's, uh, you've been put in the dunce corner. All right, gentlemen, you need to sit and think about what you've done. Here, Matt, I want you to stay on that vent, think about what you've done, and come back with some, uh, with some frags and some smokes. Now, wonderful. You've been a good boy, but we have to punish everybody at once. So you'll also need to hang around next to JL. Can't leave his side. As, uh, this is...
a mental break yeah. of one or two varieties. One of the snapped in half, the other taking a breath. I'd be so interested just to hear the, the, the team comes of this moment. Oh, he and is. There we go. Yeah. Bang. He's in. All right. Well, He's we did charging see a red light. The eco. We weren't even trolling. <laughs> we weren't. It's not even a joke. We don't make jokes, Alex. Serious business. Elimination game. Goodness. That's Waxic. Lights up, Alexi. With the AWP. The United Matcher. Oh, it's sharp. Two huge kills. And he gets away with his the life. Brow goes mild. Heading ramp. It's the Org of Calyx. It's been waiting for this moment. He's finished oh, them geez. off. And eight for Eternal Fire. It is getting scary. It is. Where are we at now? That's two perfect rounds back to back. Right, I'm gonna make. I'm making a list. All right, get your camera. Is your camera in spawn? I'm writing four blade. Okay, just so I can when I see it. Four blade. That's it. Off to him. Yeah. Four blade. Okay, we'll take a look. There's a second tactical timeout has been called from Navi. That music is blade. The coach his opportunity to start talking. It says here, guys, that you uh, throw smokes. I would. I actually would love to read his notes. Oh man. I would love to just sit there and just read his pages of notes and I'm, see what's going on. I imagine you get really efficient as well at kind of, you know, uh, having Shorthand? just... Shorthand? Yeah, just having the, the most succinct way of summarizing the information so you can have, kind of process it at a glance in the heat of the moment. Is JL's mouse... No, it's not. It's back on the dongle. Oh, really? Yeah, he's back on the dongle. He's had really? like 20 seconds of juice. That's all you need. Oh, that could be an advert right there. <laughs> Let's get ready to rumble. All right, well, I'm checking it out. I'm seeing who's throwing the smokes. Oh, is, it, is Alexi just going to... Ale I think Alexi's just going to do it. So, Alexi... Is he doing Twist Smoke? We're watching. It's Twist Smoke. We're watching Alexi. Bit's going to oh, do the Bit's going to do one as well. Bit is yours, correct. I'm following Bits. Okay. Twist Smoke landed. Alexi nails it. Ten points two, to Gryffindor. Two of the three. And the third. There it is. Wall of Smoke's erected, and now it forces reactions out of the CTs. You can see Zantares throwing out the incendiary. There is a window of opportunity for Ime to get across. Oh, no, there isn't. The power of the HE cancels his plans, foiled, and sprayed on down. Na'Vi have lost Ime. Bit with a Molly 4 top heart. Wicardia swings on out, catches Alexi just before the smoke does bloom. One back from Wonderful. Bomb is on JL, and they only really have... Lobby control. You, you don't want to go ramp late if Woxic's holding it like this. You're really struggling to get past that. Madge is worried about Yard, understandably. He's doing... Squeaky Lurk smoke. Squeaky Lurk. Just trying to give them an option, or at least he was thinking about it. It could have been something they could have worked with, but I think that would just allow the smoke to fade over at the door, which I believe it has, and now they can just try and A-map out. So this is the best option that they have available. Steps are heard. They have to play ahead of this. It's a meaty nade. Yeah, JL should be dead. And there's double spray from Centaurus. Has won them that round. Not far off on the wall bank. Wonderful. It's going to get run down. Madge has got the perfect weapon for the job. And even closing that gap from behind is Woxic. 9 HP. And I've heard the ascent. Woxic might catch him. Seven seconds. We've already had Magic go down after time for zero bucks. Well, oh, dear. Wonderful. Might not be long for this world. Woxic's the only one that can get close. Obviously risking the AWP just around the corner. And Woxic <laughs> removes oh. Wonderful's AK. That's $700 left over for poor young gun Wonderful. Oh, the, ah, that's so well played. The fact that he had to walk, right? You don't want to be running, giving him the sound cue for the pre-aim. No bomb to mask your steps, and he just catches it. And this is on a timer, obviously, right? Emma trying to get across, but now this disbursement of smokes. Maybe that's one of the reasons that you don't see too many deep smokes anymore, and this is it. Blink. I think he just thought he got away with it. Oh. And you lose everything. Whoa, that's a frame, isn't it? Well, down to a save, a Na'Vi. Eternal Fire should be able to take the lead. This standard and most old-school smoke wall seems like it would make the most sense now. It's the shortest distance. Yep. With the disbursement, maybe get you across a little bit quicker. Double incendiary. Yeah, you shall not pass. HE, bullets, and flame. I just think the key for this is Eternal Fire's proficiently, oh. proficiency sorry, with the lower buy rounds and pulling those off. Again, we returned to the phase game yesterday where we saw a, a bunch of times as well, and that's what kept them in a lot of scenarios. And that's started the fire of this second half. They lost the pistol. They had lost both pistols in this series. 
They then lost the Force Buy, but saved it Galil. Kallax did an awful lot of damage. He upgraded again. They had a 5 7. Uh, they had the save Galil, and then now since they're going to be looking at five consecutive rounds after these final two kills. Wonderful would love a plant, wouldn't he? Just I should be all right with the max loss. Yeah, but next rate hundred bucks, not to be snuffed at. How would a round feel? Uh, impossible, I would suggest. As oh look at their health. Wow, if Ima just hits like a drive-by spam onto two of them, you would have a round in front of you. Zantares has saved eternal fire there. Yeah, FM only knows how close he was. Oh, wow, that really, really could have spiraled. It was just Kallax left, didn't have a smoke. Could have been very difficult in order to get that diffused through if Emir was playing his cards right. But, uh, yeah, we, we are going to get back into the guns. Wonderful's going to be able to buy himself one. You just keep going with this standard approach that from Na'Vi, obviously, you flubbed a few. The previous, a little bit more unlucky and well handled from Eternal Fire. Well, Once again, we'll be on from them, though. Smoker Vision. Yeah, it really is, isn't it? Like this sequence from Eternal Fire, how many has it been now? Five? Yeah, five on the drop. All right, Bid's throwing a smoke. I didn't catch you through the second. Yeah. Oh, it's landed. Like face it's landed, it's perfect. Hey, Matt, is he anticipating this angle from Zantares? He does clear it. Great awareness and a good headshot. An opening kill for Na'Vi. At the business end of Nuke here, this Eternal Fire's pick. Now they're operating at a disadvantage. Down the vents is Wicardia, acknowledging the necessity for a rotation to the low site. That does just leave Madra on the top side because at the moment there's rotations. Kallax has dropped down towards B to help as well. Woxic has now taken the AWP over towards Ramp. Madra trying to puff up his chest and seem bigger than he is as you two teams in towards the top side. Rotation, remember, very far away. But you know Zantaris is dead. You know that him is across. This pop on to top, JL just has to find Madger. Needs at least two, you'd think. And with How's the help with that? of Wicardia, somehow it looks great for Eternal Fire. This is awkward, but bit dead as well to Madger. Holds on, there's his three in his solo defense of the top site. Now they're in lobby. What's Emma supposed to do? He's got a rock and a hard play situation, and Woxic will close. Eternal Fire touching distance now. Oh, the coach loves that, and, and I think that uh, heads-up play from Wakadia just to go dry, that's insane. He just comes up the vent absolutely dry as they're entering it towards the top side and causes the chaos that alleviates a little bit of pressure off the in-game leader. So this is Alexi throwing nades. Wakadia catches him at the perfect timing. Madra from the back of the site able to deliver some absolute bangers. I said he needed at least two, and Zatares loves what he's seeing. Something we've seen repeatedly from Wakadia's gameplay is his affinity for that instinctual push where he catches these timings. Another example for us right there in round 20. And he's willing to put his body on the line. Right, he's not going to bait. He knows when he needs to take that type of a risk. It, and it is a risk going oh. up the vent dry. That's a big one. Yeah, man just thought he could get away with just throwing out the HE, trying to set up his boys outside. And instead, it's resulted in another early casualty for Eternal Fire. Didn't have an effect in the last one. They converted thanks to Madger and Wicardia. This time there's two across. Well, he's willing to take that fight. Wicardia's holding him. Confirms Alexi B's presence. The problem is how do you get the bomb across? Wonderful is at the back of this, the tail of the outside pack. We've only got flashes to do so. Literally no mollies, all smokes available. Fortunately, Zantares has dropped back because this lower pressure is a possibility. Zantara is very late to this. He needs to be cautious of everything. Hey, man. He's really warming into things now. This is high impact double. From here, Matt. And for Na'Vi. Well, that's how you get across. Force the rotation. Completely take their eyes off of outside. But if they return to A, Wakadia, he's in main. Kallax is on heart. Are they really doing? 38. Are you overthinking? Uh -oh. Walking into Wakadia. He's held firm. He holds fast. Great shot out of Wonderful. Spray gets away from Wakadia. Top sight is theirs. And it's just Wok 6 AWP. That could have really gotten out of control, couldn't yeah. it? So it's unfortunate shooting. Good stuff to right the ship, and it was just Woxic to try and retain this AWP. But these are the kind of rounds we expected from Na'Vi in the sense that, oh, it hasn't gone perfectly, but their individuals have bailed them out. You know, Ime has, has found two incredibly high impact solo frags, and then this one there where Wonderful hits a, a cracking deagle shot to, to get them into that top site. But you just highlighted it, right? So it's two rounds in a row where they've been able to find the opening picks. This time around, they capitalize on it. So yeah, Madger 
taking a risk to try and throw that nade out, gets caught, and this is great from Emma, right? He's down there with a lot of space. He has a very big job to do to try and relay information and win that type of a fight. And the rest of them can explode as a unit. I'll take the round to reach double digits. Scoreline now 11 to 10. And there's enough money for a buy on the Eternal Fire side indeed because of that streak of rounds. It was six in total before they've been stopped. So Na'Vi put up a bit of a dam. And how long can they keep Eternal Fire at bay? It's going to be the second tactical timeout. Paper on the mic. Cardia has received a drop. The purchases are coming through. And as mentioned, it will be Great guns for everybody. Oh, we might even see a double AWP setup. I've just seen Woxing toss his across to Madger and invest it to one of his own. So this is one way to chop and change on the CT side. And even at this level, Chad, I imagine it's not it's not something that you're thinking about in the sense of, hey, lads, just be aware. They've got a load of cash. They could be double orping. Is that something that's coming out of anyone's mouth? Not yeah, really. I think it's going to be the immediate response to a round that you've won in that fashion. And I wonder, because we saw Magic anchoring down towards the top side in the previous with the rifle. We just saw him die over towards heaven. So where are they going to use it? I imagine Woxic will still be the yard orper. Will Magic now post up towards ramp? Yes. Hey. Yes, he will. 22. All to play for. EMS starting a campaign once again towards the yard position. Molly's that deep potential push from Zantar is on yard. Dark Smoke has Ricardi's defenses up and it's time for Madge's Orp to perhaps draw an opening kill. He's going to have a chance. Multiple bodies just on the other side. Does wonderful wide swing it or do they set it up with bit first? Flash and go. Madger, nice, avoids the, oh, avoids the flash, but they avoid his bullets. Now it's really not comfortable for Madger. Trying to retreat, throws out a bait, throws out a nade, bit gets low. Centaurus is there in support. Lexi hears this rotation, faking sound cues, Centaurus hoping to find an open and kill all the same. Boxy, the open hut, I'm not sure they'll be ready for this. Yeah, returning after your trophy campaign, it could ooh, end badly. That's a very good flash onto JL, but no push on it. 45. Uncomfortable now for Na'Vi with five CTs still standing. Wonderful just trying to contain the lobby push. Here they come. Into the oh, What a shot from Wonderful. Woxic doesn't even have a chance to react. It's JL wide, and they trade off nicely into the top site, and it looks like Na'Vi have done enough for 11. Yeah, beautiful clear. Wonderful. That is massive work from him. Removes the head and removes the threat. JL also swinging in towards Squeaky, so aware of the response from Eternal Fire. We tie things up, 11-11. Now it's about the hunt. That was a costly investment to go for double orbs. So they're already starting to investigate over towards main. Bit up in the heavens. Or was. So he might be able to get the jump on this in CT spawn if he continues to creep and crawl forward. Zantaris is already tucked in deep. It looks like he's searching elsewhere. I know that Madra over towards ramp dropped down towards the lower side, so maybe he's gotten off to secret. That's not the case at all. So they're looking in all the wrong places in RV. But late in this one, another close affair. It's important they save that AWP. Of course, such a heavy investment into this one for Eternal Fire. Magic brings it through. Oh, look at that. The double Molly's landing in sync. And this is the shot from Wonderful. I mean, he really... You're probably expecting someone there, but not an AWP. The fact that Woxie was just caught so unawares by the speed and the precision of that frag. Wonderful has done a lot for Na'Vi. And it's forced a timeout. Yeah, but, uh, that discussion they want to have, right? So Magic carries the orb through. Woxie could buy another if they want to go double orbs again, or he could just throw the orb back to Woxie. Woxie can give him an M4, and they can just go with a bit more of a standard round. Having a look right now, it does look like that might exactly be the case. Madger, is he going to ask for an M4? Or is he going to buy an SMG? Save money for Woxie to get to the next. It looks like he'll be asking for that M4. Alexi B has got himself a Mac 10, and he has more than enough money for a buy. Just having a look at his spawn right now in the pack and towards the front. So is he going to try and cause a little bit of chaos here as a knockout blow to secure 12 for Na'Vi? We're about to find out. Do they want to do a quick smoke wall? He goes quickly across to Secret. Do they want to blow up and squeaky, or does he want to run out hot? Well, those are the questions that need to be answered as we head into a very important round. Lost bonus for both teams, 2,400 going into the next and last. I'm very intrigued to see what this MAG-10's got in store yeah, for he's us. going yard, so does he want to try and cross secret quickly? Ah, nothing fast. They've just been stalled out towards the yard position. 
Quite aggressive volley. The smoke wall missed. Oh. Is, I mean, just as you highlight, this is a very important round and a missed smoke ball might limit your options or at least give your info away early. Woxix investigating towards the yard position, going secret off spawn. Cardio attack CT vent. Madge is actually on top of the silos on site. Well, Woxix knows nobody's cross secret. It's good information, but he's kind of out of the play. The timing of this. They're ahead of it though, JL charges through, he has slipped the net, not gonna just Madja. They're not clearing that, a double kill on top of the bot site. Him and needs to reload, and Tara swings and takes down his wonderful, and it's not looking good for Na'Vi, as Eternal Fire set to convert in the last round of regulation. Okay, well uh, look, if you're not going to be able to force any of those rotations, then the top side is going to stay extremely fortified. And if you're going to keep missing the smoke walls, then that's one way that the information will continue to flow for the CTs. And they didn't actually press anybody outside to see if it landed properly or not. Blade, seems like he's having a one-on-one -on -one with Immer here. So definitely a message that he needs to get across and quickly because that timeout coming to its conclusion. And they need to take this to overtime if Na'Vi want to try and snatch away the map. Not going to be done easy, but they were just shut down. No dramas for the Turkish side. Eternal Fire. One step ahead and everybody lighting up the scoreboard. That one feels good. <laughs> it's contagious. They're having a good time. Can Narvi force overtime? Big round ahead of us, JL. Early util, pressure the fly towards Main and Centaurus. He's just bringing the fight straight to them. JL deleted, and he's not stopping there. Charging in with Madge's help. They've taken full lobby. They're heading T-Roof. This is to throw a knockout blow. Na'Vi on oh, Eternal Fire's map. Big getting shot from the T-Roof at 1 minute 30. That's one hell of a call. One hell of a play. Look where Kalix is right now. He is a CT. He's on the screen, mate. Oh, dear. Alexi clears him out. I couldn't quite believe the aggression they just threw into the mix. Uh, I think Navi are very lucky that Bit went for an all-in play as well. He dropped straight on towards main and jumped around towards the heaven position. He actually got a one-on-one -on -one against Woxic. Woxic wasn't ready for that at all. So Bit's actually bought them a lot of space and caused issues for Eternal Fire. Because if Navi were just very heavy in lobby and didn't take any space in yard at all, they'd be screwed right now. So I, I like the tenacity of Eternal Fire to go for such a play to get themselves to 13. It set them up in a three-on-three, three and they're apparently rerouting bit at range, chip down. Oh, he'd have loved that kill. Makes it awkward now. Brought low, and they have that info. They're essentially all over towards this hell and heaven position. So if the bomb starts to... Oh, just doubting for a moment is Zantara's. Yeah, I mean, you can definitely get a lot of info from this heaven position. If they try and just cross, he's been spotted out. And next he gets across, they're going to try and take this bomb down lower. Bacardi is already on B. Fast responder. Can get to clock in time. Single door. I guess they're going to throw out a smoke and try and go backside. He should know the pathing here. This is Wakadi's chance to secure the map for Eternal Fire. And it's a perfect headshot. Takes down Imit. Just bitten Alexi. Trying to get that bomb down now. If they could just spam him. Alexi at least gets away with that. Bomb is planted. Flames burning him down to a crisp, to a cinder. There's nothing left for Na'Vi here. Helpless bit in the clutch. He's fortunate they haven't held the defuse. He's going to be flustered though. Comes on in. The first is all he finds. And Eternal Fire will take Nuke. Is there map pick? Every round of regulation, you can see that that's flustered. Blade on the verge of elimination now.
Hey future pros, A site on Nuke has some pesky angles to deal with. Let's look at a couple of mollies you can throw to deal with them. First two steps are to shoot out the windows on the way out of spawn and get a teammate to drop your molly onto this vent. Then hop up onto it and line yourself up with this connection point. Aim along the right side of this beam right up to the top of where it connects to the window. Then throw the molly. Immediately after, aim along this grey band above this line. Run forward and throw the molly before you fall off the vent. Just like that, the back of side and hut will be mollied off. This hut molly even spreads to the boxes below. I hope this helps. Oh boy. Well, I think the term down bad is exactly what we're feeling right now if you're in the Navi camp, if you if you want to see him go forward, of course, because obviously this isn't what they had in mind. Very close, though. You have to give it credit for that. And I also have to remind you that you're watching the Intel Extreme Masters in Katowice 2024. Maniac, what the heck? Well, I'm just sort of waking up, Trace. I'm going to be real. The last okay. one of this game kind of got me awake because I feel like Navi did the best job they could to have me put to sleep. This was a very <laughs> slow offense, a very tedious, trying to find opening kills, not that inspired, missing utils at all. But what the heck, let's talk about EF. And let's talk about let's some of the it. good plays that they've put through, because there was some good counter-strike in there that got me a bit more excited than the first half. Were you excited, Dianco, when you, when you watch this game? You know me, Trace, I'm always excited. Yeah. Right? And I'm excited to watch Eternal Fire right now, because they're one of those teams that seem to be on the rise. They provide us with some exciting counter-strike as well. And yeah, it had to be a grind mm, in this absolutely. one, right? Slow starts, losing both pistols for Eternal Fire and still managing to close it out in regulation. I think that's pretty impressive. And you talk about close it out, this round 20 24, that's that's Major's IGL style right there. 23 is a bit of a cluster duck, you know, missed utility. Navi definitely a little bit frustrated. Why do you do 24? Just rush them. Just go ramp immediately up send the it. ladder. Just send it. Calyx is on the silo. He's on the goddamn silo when he's playing that round. Very, very complicated to handle, but still they did exactly what they needed. And, you know, we were talking about the tactical genius, Alexi B. Well, there's two ways that we saw here to counter, and one is his teammates missed the utility, so he doesn't even get to actually call the round and has to improvise in the middle. And the second one is just get in their face before they can do anything. Disrupt them, make them adapt on the fly, and we, see, we saw both uh, of those things happen. Yeah, I mean, we saw a lot of different glimpses, and there was nice season Terra's running around doing what he had to do because, you know, this is what they kind of need over an Eternal Fire, right? It's kind of built almost around him, but not at the same time. I don't think it's built only around him, but they had a couple of very interesting setups, and also the preparation comes through here. You'll see the perfect pop from Wuxik into Bit, who's being baited into a fight. Oof. That's immediately, absolutely back to the lobby. And then at the same time, 4v4, a little uncomfortable. Ime gets curious. I personally think it's a mistake, it's a bit naive, but Zentaris is here to punish him. And from that moment on, you have Wonderful, who used to be in a good position ramp, now has to leave his position because he's getting pincered, and this is the timing that Major decides to strike with that glittering zero ADR at this point in time, but doesn't matter, finds the kill. This is a round that relies not only on preparation, because I'm sure some of it goes into it, but also just gradually taking map control away, setting trap for your opponent. This is what we didn't see from Navi. This was EF putting together good rounds on the T side. Meanwhile, things were wonderful and not. You know what I mean? Like, wonderful was in the server, don't get me wrong, but Navi, where did they find that their, their shortfalls were? Where was it that Navi would fall apart and lose rounds? I think the problem was the, the frustration comes in from missing utility. I mean, we heard it in the interview with Alexi before the game, you know, people forgetting, you know, what they're doing in a certain strat or yeah. throwing the wrong utility or not throwing the utility or miss buying and mm. all that sort of a thing. And it's, I think it's too far down this Navi iteration of the roster for that to still be happening. I, know. I mean, Wonderful is the only new addition, and you think by this point he'd be up to speed as well. So I think just too many mistakes from this Navi lineup on Nuke. Examples, perhaps? Maybe a few. <laughs> yeah, perhaps. Let's yes. find I out. Think, I, I think if you go you know, into this round, you can see like this is an eco with a couple of saved guns, pistols from the force by from Eternal Fire, and you can see it's just a gamble, sort of a bait setup towards ramp. They get a lot of kills, close range fights, it suits them, and for Navi, this is where everything starts going wrong. This is where Eternal Fire goes on a streak, I think, 
it goes to 11 9 yes. from here, and then uh, Navi wins a couple of rounds. Yeah, it is pretty rough because, on one hand, you can obviously applaud some of the read from EF because you have that double setup RAM that is set up perfectly for Waxy with the 5 7. But hey, man, just sprinkle on top a couple of flashes maybe when you're about to burst into RAM like that. Like, yeah. I know there's a the gamble slack. I know you're on the losing end of that deal, but still, a little utility just to uh, smoothen the transition in there would have helped. Yeah, and you know, for, for taking both pistols and to, to wind up like that, that's got to be a little bit of a wrenching feeling, right? Yeah, but I'll. Along the way of winning those pistols, they're losing to pistols too. Yo. We just saw one round and it happened in the first half too, you know, with Eternal Fire winning the round with a sort of a hodgepodge buy mixed all over the place, right? And Navi that combined with uh, some of the missed utility and whatnot. And in the end, just Eternal Fire fi finally coming online and individuals stepping up. They just couldn't uh, close out Nuke. So, Nuke, we can put that aside. Do we? We kind of, I mean, do you want to? You down? We do. Uh, wait, wait a second. That's Nuke. It's a side now. Nice. Close the silo. Outstanding. I love that. Honestly, next time we should fold it up and make it a very eloquent paper plane. I'm just kidding. We're not practicing origami here in Katowice, but we are looking at the next map of the series, which does take us into Mirage. The pick of Navi and Eternal Fire start on CT. Uh, well, let's look at the bright side. I suspect there won't be any missed utility on Mirage. I think it's it should be down to a T map pick. Hey, Navi. never underestimate. <laughs> never <laughs> underestimate you. you. Never <laughs> underestimate the player's ability to mess things up. But on, in all seriousness, I mean, I, I think EF will always be clients on Mirage. I mean, it's a notorious, very good map for Zentaris. Zentaris Peak, in fact, originated from that very map in that connector position. If you look on the wall, when you go to the left side of connector, his name is on the wall. That's not true. That could have been, though. It could Wait, be, though. get in there and get us a screenshot using hashtag IEM. No, kidding. Hey, the way they've been playing, he might turn a graffiti soon enough. But <laughs> yeah, I think for Mirage, obviously a really good map for Navi. That's a map where Ima also maybe has that extra gear, but it's always dangerous picking Mirage, right? Because it's a map that so many teams and just players are familiar with, right? And in MR12, with a good start, just a couple of good rounds, if you can string them together, you can get a lot of work done. And I really hope that on their map pick, Navi are going to be more comfortable changing the pace of the round. That's like something that really bummed me out on this map of new that's one thing to be sort of a technical and very conventional in how you take the beginning of the map control but then there's a point where you need to accelerate and on nuke if it wasn't email with the opening outside nobody was doing it so i think on mirage you need to have a couple of these rounds where you unleash a little bit you play a little faster and you have you allow your players like email as you mentioned to have moments allow bit to be in trading position as well and i think the problem for navi maybe sometimes is they can only do that playing from ahead. They don't feel comfort there. comfortable doing it when they're losing, and that can make you a little bit one-dimensional and easier to read. Yeah, which makes it very much scarier. Each and every single round that the game starts I'm to petrified, petrified. Petrified. And, you know, even, uh, I guess in this moment, just kind of understanding that this is where you face elimination. You know, so if you're Navi, right. and if you're Eternal Fire, Eternal Fire, you know, you take that sigh of relief, a uh, breath, but then obviously you get back to the server. You don't want to make it to the third map. You want to shut it down here, and can they do it, Maniac? You should, and I think they can, because we tie it back to the stamina conversation we were having at the beginning of this segment, uh, beginning of the map, rather. You don't want to see Navi bounce back, win that second map, but then push Eternal Fire again. I think, emotionally speaking, when you're on the cusp of just win getting that W, having just taken away from you the second map, having two, three, we saw that against FaZe, and that was a little complicated. So I'm looking at EF now, they're getting set up, but it was a little bit of a shoulder massage on Calyx. What, you know what? Whatever is needed. Whatever is needed. Nothing wrong with that. Absolutely not. Yeah, not I love all. a good shoulder massage. How about you, Trace? You love massages? Uh, I mean, I check All's my well that tends well. I check my DMs sometimes, bro, like I guess. Anyway, we're going to go to a break. We're going to come back. We're going to find out how this one shakes down with Navi and Eternal Fire. Somebody is going home. You're watching the Intel Extreme Masters, everybody. It's Katowice. Welcome, my friends, to the Cathedral of Counter-Strike. Same place there, simple, just jumping casually into the site. Wait, 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 what, 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 what was that? Never miss a play again. That's not allowed. This is not FPL. This is a major. Finally. With Face It Watch, you're in control. 
Switch between player POVs live and see the game through the eyes of any pro. Never miss a moment with replays. Relive each highlight on demand from all angles. Watch it, control it, face it. Don't know how it's come to this I don't know how I could resist I took a vow to never sin But I saw the darkness from is in contract jail in the Fury Tower. Well, firstly, congratulations, everyone. You are the lucky few who have made it through the auditions. What auditions? Now, it's time for some dry runs. Now, I'm sure you've all memorized your lines. You guys never send me the script. But the script is here if you need it. Now, Hugo, please, go on. Interior, night, a troop patrols an underground bunker. We follow a tunnel leading to an impenetrable metal door. Inside, a meeting takes place. Look around, gentlemen. I was tasked to assemble the greatest minds Counter-Strike has to offer. But none of them could make it. You read the brief? Kesarato is in contract jail in the Fury Tower. I ask for your best trust to get him out. Well, what do we have here? Take it by force. Impressive as ever, Victor. Kirill? But you always made the plan the best. Alexei? I may have something. But it's complex. Try me. We hit the north entrance and we hit it hard. We send an alpha for a full force breach. With the Furia forces occupied north, Beta Squad sneaks in through the southern entrance. Alexis, sorry, please, just for me. Can you simplify it? Okay, concentrate. Let's take the north entrance labeled A. The south, B. We send one squad north to hit A, but what we're actually doing is hitting B. A diversion. It's so crazy, it just might work. Of all the IGLs I've worked with, you are the only one who gets it. It's genius. Call in Alpha and Beta. Let's go get our men. What? You really don't know. It's fake. He's a fucking idiot. Welcome back then, ladies and gentlemen. We find ourselves in map two and eternal fire. Once again, within touching distance of glory. They're looking to, once again, continue to impress us day after day. Their Counter-Strike has got both myself and Chad Sponge Birchall impressed. They ran out of juice in the third map just yesterday, but with a one-map advantage, the pressure's on Na'Vi. Yeah, definitely so. And Na'Vi, this was where the third map against Apex went down, and they were actually able to stretch their legs and show some good individual form. Apparently, Reddit said something we missed, Alex, during that card yesterday. Yeah. Uh, Emma changed knife. Oh, so he that's did. why he started performing on Mirage. Now, to what knife, of what wear, uh, of what style, I don't know. Sure. But apparently, the knife changed for Emma. Well, like the Roy approach, where you just, you, you take it away. You're not allowed to have a nice knife if you have a bad game. You're punishing yourself. The aesthetics, they don't exist. So we have a total fire for defense. Na'Vi on the attack, and, well, the util count. Let's have a look. Na'Vi, two smokes, a bunch of flashes, a P250 for Emma. And this one quite direct over towards the B bomb site. Wakadi attacking in, playing anti. 
Moxie to take contact and Magic to release that grenade any moment. Moxie. Scrutiny early, and just like that, three frags are on the plate. They take all three. Na'Vi have opened up this pistol round incredibly convincingly. Yeah, that seemed too easy, didn't it? Just a smoke over towards short, one towards the market window, a couple of flashes, and in you go, even with that three-man stack from Eternal Fire. Zantara is still going to have a look. No shame in having a look. However, everything is covered off. And just getting away with your Kevlar intact is something, especially considering, as we know and learn from yourself and Alexi, they all do like a second round bite. He gets himself an extra 300 bucks. Well, for Navi, this might seem like the toughest round, right? That was uh, their undoing over there on Nuke. The fact that Eternal Fire with a saved Galil, a repurchased MP9, and a couple of light pistol upgrades. Rebel to 8 magic happen. Terrorists win. We're going to start, we're gonna start default now. Use it. You need to check A2. Oh, I was interested. Oh, every time. I just, you know? Like I, we, it's funny because we just both shut up as soon as we're allowed to listen. I wanna, all I want to do is listen to the players. Yeah. Any insight we get to the comms, and also like the smack talk with nerds before going up against Vitality, that was great. And I'd love to hear these little tidbits. As long as it's just it's not nice, as long as we get, you know, a little, little bit more of than nice. else, but we're going to start default. And Zantaras is going to get himself a fan mask by virtue of the safe cap. So window smoke, top cat smoke. Flashes over mid. They're going to get wonderful out from the top mid box. As Alexi with a boatload of utilis. Madja mounts up and takes some B space. Bit Audible. tough moving. He's getting pushed. That is a free frag delivered to him. He takes down Madja's forward position and he can also report back that he had a buy. MP9 taken out of the equation early. All right. Well, starting with this default, Hello. the gap has been created as. Alexis called them back into what is looking like a B finish. The timing is everything, as that's also allowed a turn of fire to rotate over as well. They'll have three players over towards B to defend. They'll have the flank of Woxic, and he might even catch Alexi. You've smoked them off. Perfectly delayed. It allows you to play a forward position. Do they reroute? You've Coming got time. Short. Woxic's even flanking this, this mid player. They're going to wait out the smoke. And, oh, wait, if Emma searches A... But then Woxic can still cause chaos. Yeah, if you try and pivot back. Woxic's chance now. He needs to strike. He's got Alexi B in his sights. Getting away from him now. Oh, and a jumping Alexi. Still controls the spray, but allows him to trade. And Santara's fam ass. Worse for where Kalix boosted on the box. Needs a queen head shot. Does take the first. And the second, asking too much of him. Na'Vi, they've gotten past the, one of the scariest rounds of the game. Yeah, still very shaky and scary. I think Alexi got that kill from short up onto the balcony, right? That was at range with the MAC-10. Magic falling early, causing issues for Eternal Fire. I'm likely just to see them go for a couple of pistol upgrades, and that's exactly what's on the agenda. So Na'Vi, maybe just another default approach. Understandably so. This time you will be up against purely pistols. A bit braver out mid this time. No scout to worry about. A few still coming your way, and JL deals with the apartments lead. Woxic goes looking again. Last round pushed A ramp. This round through apartments. This round, nothing to his name. Lost bonus of 2,900 into the next means that we should see the Woxic AWP grace our screens for the first gun round. But again, just avoid the casualties, Alex, if you're Navi. Make sure that you don't have to rebuy everything next. You can carry these Galils through. Make sure you don't lose that Emma AK. And an A execute. That seems to be the plan. Nothing for Eternal Fire to stop this impending A assault. Just got in contact. Does mean Calix will have an opportunity, but he missed that first Deagle bullet, and well, you can see what happens from behind now. Bit comes out from underpass. Gets humble, but they'll happily sacrifice a single Mac 10 if they can hold on to their rifles. Zim has lost his AK. And those nades will ensure it's retrieved. Oh, will it be retrieved? There we go. Yeah, Wonderful did grab it. Got worried for a second in the flames, but there we have 3 0 start for Navi. Bit could drop right now in AWP for Wonderful if that's how Alexi wants to operate forward. So it's going to be key to see what the call is. Dropping some guns across. It looks like it will just be very rifle centric for Navi. Whereas Woxic, as mentioned, will have his AWP. Two quick smokes out of spawn. 
Window and Cat again. So just the combo to help them get this top mid control. Woxic lines it up, lobs it out. And will deny the top box control for now. That nade had his name on it, but he gets away relatively unscathed. Still susceptible now to those M4 bullets to the head. Felt like he saw it coming for ages, didn't it? Brave from Wakadia. He's uh, still just jiggling out mid, so seeing that Navi haven't actually grabbed any control. So if they think they're opening Gambit has bought some respect, it definitely hasn't. Yeah, they're looking for answers all over the shop. Yeah, and with the bomb. Currently back over towards A on Wonderful. Well, the push is still going. How far do you go, Zantaris? If you tuck into this corner, you can hear steps through T-Spawn. He definitely heard that. Yeah, man. Surely not anticipating. Yeah, this angle completely caught unawares. So a massive find from Zantaris. I feel like you're in a box right now if you're Navi. And you're going to start feeling like you have to go forward. Going back, no longer an option. Woxic set for success, and he nails his shot onto Fit. He will go down. Wonderful fighting back. Calyx. Around this smoke, he dropped for survival. They use it to delay, and yeah, there's a lot of other bullets coming down towards Na'Vi. A lovely find from Eternal Fire, striking in unison on that A commit. Yeah, beautiful. Just uh, calling the bluff on the mid control, taking the space back, getting the early information, and continuing to push with it. Zantara's, this is the opener. I heard that step of Immer, a little bit clumsy. Uh, not expecting anybody to push that far up, and you can understand. Retain the AWP for Woxic. See his shot and then traded. And the earlier damage that they've done, it's had ramifications against Na'Vi. They have been able to get out something resembling a buy. There is a Deagle in the mix for Immer. The rest have rifles. They'll be stunted here. That was a gap for Woxic to work with for a moment. Yeah, we've seen a lot of teams exploiting that gap, pre-aiming it. They're aware that the default smoke does leave one towards that side. Top left of window. Tarazi is just going to keep jiggling it out, checking no crawls through the underpass. They have to know it's possible someone crossed. Yeah, Wakati's just counting on being able to yeah, get the info safely. Now, more nades could have Alexi B's na name on it. They resmoke window. Still got 60 seconds. You've parked bit in B apps. You've moved JL away from A. And Wakati. Oh, actually gets awkward for him. He has to back away. With him finding that frag onto Woxig. Gets a bit scary for Wicardi. A wonderful nails his shot. And just like that, the whole defense collapses. Bit even winning his duel on the Bianca. So we can call this 1-4. That happened very quickly. And it felt like Eternal Fire must have known that mid was somewhat susceptible, especially off the jiggle. Kalex finds Imma. Sure. But it should be the save. Already on the hunt is JL. Quite smoke for now. And just as it fades, Zantares. It's a ding for his troubles, but does get the kill. And Navi responds, so... It was slightly compromised, but it was the biggest of Immer's Deagle that was the one that opened up the round onto the AWP of Woxic as well. That must have been quite the shot. Yeah, we might get to see that one in the replay. It seemed, like, unbelievable initially. When you saw it on the X-ray that this Deagle was going to try and fight its way out of underpass, it didn't look like it did favor Immer. The fact he's pulled one off, and it does lead to that house of cards just tumbling down. Calix, ooh, he holds on. He's done a lot there on the exit. Might even manage to recover that AWP. Where'd it go? It's lost. Got blown away by the bomb. <laughs> oh, that's terrible timing. That's going to be uh, costly. I don't think they can afford one. Are they? Oh, it was in Tara's mu ooh, 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 yeah. It was a banger. Not bad at all. Steps into that. Removes the big green. And they have been able to facilitate one of the hands of Woxic. Zantara's had enough money to do so, but it's, he's very cost? light on with the U2. Yeah, so he only has a smoke. All right, Eternal Fire, you're three rounds in the hole right now. You essentially get a free crack here at Mirage. It was Anubis we were discussing is the third and final of this series. Navi were on a five-map winning streak on it yesterday. Maybe they've addressed some of the shortcomings overnight. That B-bomb site felt uh, somewhat weak. Yeah, well, I think multiple Anubis, multiple teams have been struggling with that B-site the threat of this kind of moving accuracy on the sidearms and the ease of which you can just kind of th creep bodies into that B-side. We'll talk about it more when we get there. Because right now we are into Mirage and it does look like a good old-fashioned exec. 
Tares tries to destabilize them early with some bullets down range, but a bit low on notice. JL needed to win that duel. Calyx is looking sharp today. And combined with Vicardia, they've managed to make it a four versus three. Hits another dink. Wonderful operating on just 16. Sure, it's a three on three. Would have loved some lethality. Would have loved a plant. Alexi B, those smokes are up. Now is his chance. But worried about a potential push. He's got Emma House keeping that. Doubling up on CT. They don't have that space either. Still no plan. Gives it a go. Spam comes through from multiple fronts, but does manage to get the code punched on the reload. Match is a dead man. Good awareness from Emma. Coming in, that double CT hold. They know it's a bit of a dark spot for them. They don't have that control. Pre-aiming is Alexi. Good shot first on the Galil. And now maintaining that AWP becomes Zantara's priority as this, uh, this gap, this hole, as you described it, gets bigger. I lose this as well. Emma's already starting to cut him off at the pass. We can see it with X-Ray already tracking, looking through the murder hold to see if Zantara's wanted to creep back. And he did. Emma, a very impactful round there. To get three in total to his name. Back to back. Yeah, uh, beautiful stuff. I think the fact that he pushed through the smoke, hearing all those bullets being unloaded from Magic there, just hoping he could deny the plan, essentially gave up his life by doing so. So great work because the opening exchanges did fall in the favor of Eternal Fire. Both Calix and Wakadia won their initial fights, but then isolated the smokes, the executed, was doing the job it was destined for. I tend for Alexi. They're likely up against the pistols here. Before Deagles and a 5-7 for Woxic. They've gone for full mid control. Ooh, Cardia, he had an idea. Just mistimed it a little. I thought this is where you're essentially allowing your players to play. It's like a free day. Oh, and he's having fun with his free time. Takes down JL on the D. Wow, MS just tap it away. Wasn't expecting Madjo, a little late to react onto that one. Knows he's trapped towards the site. Pressure applied by Emma. This is another round which we can start giving him credit for. He's even nearly taken down Santaras as well towards the kitchen. The bomb, they're in no hurry. They're taking the space, they're nading on the face. Santaras gone. Yeah, looking very confident. And that's one of the things that I feel has been lacking from him in some of these maps. And maybe that's because the utility that's meant to be thrown to be able to facilitate the fight stream hasn't quite been there. But it is a bit of an eco bash. You'll still take him. And necessary shots, especially after Wakadia opened up the account with a nice deagle shot of his own. Yeah, and not falling into that trap of kind of playing scared upon the early disadvantage. We talk about like dictating the tone as Moxig just looks away and back again. They're going to thrust into it. They're actually going to molly. It'll be quite interesting now because they've taken a decent amount of damage and they need to get away from this bomb. Molly's working against them. Ooh. Should be fine. Got a bit stressful for them in a, for a minute. But we talk about confidence and we talk about a team like dictating the tone of a game. Right. Uh, they, these things need to, to go hand in hand, but you need to be looking for fights that you want to take, right? And that's especially so when you have an AWPA. Right? If your AWPA is like, I've got this spawn, I want to go for this duel, and you can set them up to do so, and then they find that opening, that's great. The whole game plan obviously can't be based around that. But if you're an in-game leader and you, your AWPA is taking initiative, that's really good. Same with the rifles, your space takers, they want to send them in. And then otherwise, you can just use them like chess pieces and hope that you can play with the is it just me that I keep saying? No, that happens to me too. Okay. I just assume that no one else can hear it, so I don't want to sound crazy. All right. It must be the network, though, because the whole thing dies. Yeah, it's bizarre. We just kind of can't hear each other for a minute. Yeah. Oh, well. Yeah. Well, it wasn't happening until they moved the setup downstairs, was it? It was. Yeah, it was for me. You see, they fixed your monitor. Yeah, it's you looking know what great. they used? They took the duct tape off and they used some um, Ooh, cable ties. <laughs> it's quite the contraption, actually. <laughs> yeah. It's a mutant. It works. And we are, oh, they've hit the panic button, Chad. Yes. Uh, they got a little bit stressed on Nuke with the double ops as well, didn't they? Madja. Only one kill to his name. That Centaurus, though, just charging up mid. Sometimes he just takes these rounds into his own hands. Had the spawn, takes initiative, and takes the head off of Alexi B. However, this Imer push. Oh, catches Centaurus completely unaware. He's got confidence back. He's making his moves, and he hasn't stopped. He's continued to push, trying to force the issue. Kalex jump spotting. Magic onto JL. The AWP now revealed. Not a pressure applied. He's got three players looking his way, and it's just Magic here. If Wonderful can find him, all oh, the opportunity. That would have been round defining. Instead, though, a missed shot. If Bit could get, well, if Bit had the bomb, he could have tried to apply some pressure towards B. Now it's going to be a much tougher task. 
Emma can hear a lot of footsteps and rotations from this position if a ton of fire allowed about it. But Wakadia knows this is a possibility. It's not going to come down to the timing of when Emma wants to initiate. Wakadia silent. If he makes a sound cue, he's a dead man. And yeah, perfect. Well managed from Wakadia. And now rotating over towards B, so they're ahead of this 40 seconds. Navi have to go for the finish. Ooh. And Badger Ooh. is going to hit one with a flick of the wrist. Yeah, rolling back the years. Madja the sniper. And wonderful the saver. 28 seconds, wants to hold on to his investment. Quite stop start this half, right? The fights happen, we pause for a moment, some space taken, another flurry of kills. And Eternal Fire will be getting their second on the board through the double orbs, but that will be known by Alexi, right? Like, okay, they have a double orb set up. Do we want to try something a little bit faster, more poppy, but we've retained an AWP, so maybe we don't want to go in that fashion right now. Do we want to send Wonderful out to try and find a pig heads up against Woxic? or the likes of Madja. Well, they will have enough money to get themselves a buy. That well, won't be a problem. I guess you would feel quite motivated if you're wonderful that you could probably beat Madja in a head-to-head -head if, you, if you do manage to find it. Yeah, precisely. So, uh, you know, we don't see too many head-to-head -head orb of jewels, but this is one that you should feel quite confident to take. Madja with two big kills in this round. Yeah, maybe not if he keeps hitting shots like that, but uh, that's a big one for Eternal Fire. Let's try to stabilize in this half and a convincing one with four bodies still up. Let's see what the go is. No insta window. Uh, the smoke coming out of spawn late, so it's like time delay on this Torres one. is just going again. The amount of space. He's already across. Oh, Wonderful's caught a whiff. He already knows. And that should be communicated to Na'Vi. They can work around that. It's wonderful. Interested in the duel. Takes down Zantares. That's an opening from Na'Vi Zor. Oh, look at the rotation. Just um, everyone's heading straight to A. Straight to A. Yeah, and you can see JL even has the bomb in that direction right now. So this could be quite a gamble, quite an effective one if Imet doesn't cause chaos with once again another Imet push past the line of sight. All these backs are turned. Wicardia not actively searching for jungle. Now Kalex taking fights towards the ramp. JL will win his duel. Magic distracted. Wonderful. Hits it. Nails it. Fall away from Catwalk. They're not going to let you go unchecked there, Wicardia. He hoped and prayed they'd be peeking him unawares, and instead it's going to be five alive for Na'Vi. Oh, he's going to get away. Wonderful, see you. Catch him on the cross, wonderful. Removes everything from Eternal Fire. Clean sweep and frustrations. This one is getting away from them quite quickly. Being absolutely outclassed on Mirage so far. A great t half from Na'Vi. And Zantara's sure he was able to get to the top mid box, but the fact that Wonderful had caught him heading to that position, it was a fight that he was more than willing to take. Great impact from Wonderful with three kills within this round. Two important ones, and the third removes that AWP threat. Or at least we thought, as Eternal Fire have enough for another buy. Ooh. Peppered. Yeah. A well-managed spray puts Alexi on notice. 50 HP for him to work with. Wow, he does this. <laughs> he did the same back, I was going to say, but it's Antares that will... Use that HE as a bit of a cue to put a couple more down range. Finishes him off. Well, with the number advantage, you have to confirm this one Eternal Fire. Rounds are hard to come by. Yeah, this is a really solid opportunity gifted to you by Zantares. Resmoke window from Imet. Ricardi is currently like maneuvering back towards Kitchen, I suppose. Ready to react if Zantares hears or sees too much. They're allowing the window boost, so I'm going to be cautious of that. Not playing for info at the moment either, so Emma has a chance and Zantaris steps out. A great round from Zantaris. He might even have another one. As I say that, he actually looks away. I think he was just trying to make sure he was on the right angle, but timing favors a bit on this one. So it was a 3v5. Oh. And it's Woxic this time on B. Wonderful did go looking, went searching. Next victim, it's Wakadia on the rotate and just JL up the ramp. He knows he's in trouble. However, with two, oh. make it three. Quick kills out of JL. He has miraculously made this round doable. The smoke's perfect as well, but the bomb is not with him. 20 seconds. Woxic in the duel. That's where he was. An impossible clutch for JL. Maybe he can get away. Maybe he can get to B. Or instead, he went straight into the orb. So close to beautiful. And yeah, that really got a little too scary a timeout just to think about that. And what's it closing the round? We saw him against FaZe yesterday, struggling to close out the clutches. This time a very important one to do so. 
It's a great job from Woxic here because Zantara has felt like he did an awful lot of work. This is the kill that Woxic was able to make just transitioning. Wonderful wasn't ready for that type of a peak with this JL triple. What a beautiful sequence. Couldn't make good. The time was a problem. Ooh. And uh, yeah, Zantara's could probably call those frustrations down. They've taken the 30 seconds to do so. A tactical timeout still because even though they won the rounds, the finances are still looking somewhat bleak for the Turkish side. Yeah, I mean, that, that JL round, I mean, it's going to feel bad, but it could lead to a, a little bit of an easier time here in this round. As you highlighted, it's not fantastic. No one wants to be running, whipping out a FAMAS in round 11 of the game. No, and it, this is the thing. It's not a fight. They obviously have to shove all in and, and get the best they can, but already feeling, you know, outmaneuvered across the map. It's very pitter pattery, isn't it? It's like a dripping tap at the moment with the way these fights are coming in. There's no big Whoa. explosions. Yeah, and a significant lack of utility. 3B. Oh, when Tantaras thinks better of sticking around. Boxing, active. Already holding a powerful line in the B apartment. Frees up the riflers to work their magic elsewhere. Jumped across, Boxing will report. Zakardia could be the first man tested in this round. It's not an easy duel. He's, oh, he actually tried to turn the nade. Still gets one. I think that's admirable, considering three were coming for him. Centaurus, some audio cues and a rotation required. Maja slips to B ahead of the push. Wonderful boosted up. There is that Woxic Orb you've got to get past. Bit just parks the bus in the apartments of Lexi B. He's actually maneuvering the bomb elsewhere. It's not really a gap, is it? Not with no. Okay, the game plan's been made, but this is Centaurus' angle. It's oh, not a problem. Not a problem at all. That's just his third frag, Chad, but it's taken down the star of the Eternal Fire show. Well, they know Kallax has to be towards A somewhere. He's gone looking. He's completely pushed the ramp. Oh, JL, power position. And he's going to get brought down by Madja. It was just the legs exposed. Now it is a three on three, and they're not sure where Kallax is. He could be planting now. Little do they know. He's in transition. We was pushed up ramp, now maneuvering for Palace for the retake. Bit tucked in. Moxic working jungle. Head-to-head -head duel coming in thick and fast. Woxic, if he doesn't find this one, yeah, it looks like eight is secure. Madge has just got to try and hold on to the orb. And it's not happening with Bit actively hunting. An eighth round for Na'Vi. And the ramifications of so many deaths combined now with a Na'Vi round, this 12, it's bleak. Running away from Eternal Fire, that dream of a 2-0, looking more distant than ever. Yeah, and it felt like Zentara was in a great position to be able to secure that kill onto Alexi, which looked like a freebie. Obviously, X-Ray makes it look one way. There was that Wakadia turn of the nade, still did good to get one. Maybe even had the double up, and Alexi just... Pippin and Zantara's at the post right there, and even aware that Kallax had to be aggressive A somewhere. It's a great job from the in-game leader. As Eternal Fire, I purchase everything in the kitchen sink for this final round. It's all right, I can see Eternal Fire's by. I know how this ends. Yeah, another round. Let's yeah, make it four, shall we? Let's make it four. Last round of this half. And look at what Zantara's is up to. He's got himself an AK, he's got himself a kill, and Kallax has got two with the FAMAS. Of course, he even dings bit. 9 HP on him, but cobbled together by, trying to recover the half, and yeah, Zantara's actually does get caught. Unnecessary, he didn't need to do that. They have a big number advantage, he's pushing to try and finish the round right there, could have just stayed alive. Now the mind games begin. Bit's not moving a muscle, he's going to chill and hope that perhaps he's overlooked. Well, Madja has a nade, if at any point he wants to whack it in, that'll be the end of Bit. Okay, that does make things difficult for Bit. And Wonderful is heading towards A for now. Probably just letting him play, right? Just let him look around, work it out. Try and get a good idea of the setup. Powerful smoke. Is Magic going to fight on his own? You'd hope not. Now they know there's one CT from that smoke trajectory. Prioritizing the plant with that smoke still up. The nade we discussed. It's not going to do much, but that is Wonderful. Finds the CT player. He knows the bullets were coming from Connector. One's already pushed through, though, towards the jungle side. Bomb retrieved. 20 seconds. Worried about everything. Up on the stairs, not an easy shot, but that's Woxic pushing in. He's been spotted out. Wonderful's movement managed well. 
Managing his angle, sure, but 10 seconds for him to find that frag. It's Woxic to close, and Eternal Fire making it work with the little guns. Four is all they have as Na'Vi look to take us the distance. I think oh. the opposite. Oh, I don't know about the op in this position. Snappy's in. This is why he's got it. Oh, it's just a scout. Boros, he's going to get the headshot. Snappy just tearing through for control of the site, causing pandemonium. It's Bedlam and B. A liege in E box flashed out of his angle. Molotov, smoke, huge gap on that, though. <laughs> Massive. Nothing he can do to stop the plant unless he takes the risk of running out. He'll do so. Quick kill to Magisk. Nice dink on Madden. What? No scope through the wall from Halzer. Okay. And we're into the 2v2 here. Temple and Long is what they'll have to play with. But the flank from Sun Pius. Ooh, dirty. That should very well end it. The scout is desperate. Oh, he didn't pull the trigger. Now he's tagged down low. Two kills for Halzer trying to hang on to the bomb site. He did his damnedest as his teammates fell all around him. He's going to elicit the push out, but the Glock's enough to end him. Seven to one. Snappy just running through that site, dodging bullets. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. I mean, that was uh, just basically an anti-force here for Falcons. Great execution overall. Um, yeah, all the trades come into place. The Hauser shot was pretty crazy. Just trying to collect the icons. Essentially, is there anywhere back into this game at all for complexity? I think so, but it's, uh, you know, we're, getting, we're into requiring the pistol, maybe even requiring an eco round to be won. Let's see if they can do it. They got a good stack. Nice. Oh, they got a great stack. You know, we saw Falcons die to something like that from Rebels wow. yesterday. Wow, four in the kill feed at once. Finally, an answer back. That's right. The exact same the position. Rebels. Although Rebels had Flay on an AWP, this is even less for complexity. You said, is there a way back in? This will help. Yeah. It's not enough, but it helps. require a So we venture forth into the second half of our second map. Nuke went well for Eternal Fire, finding it in the last round of regulation. And now we find ourselves here on Na'Vi's pick. And it looks like Na'Vi's pick. At least the scoreline indicates as Na'Vi are comfortable. Eight rounds on their first half of play. Fewer unforced errors, at least for Na'Vi. And Eternal Fire, yeah, it looks like Anubis might be where they have to battle for survival. Yeah, somewhat disjointed of a CT half from Eternal Fire. The stakes are there. The importance of this match, elimination on the line, survival in this lower bracket to try and contest tomorrow for the final spot from this group to get yourself a place in the Spodek. But the excitement hasn't lived up to this matchup just yet. Now, if we do go the distance, we do go to the third, it'll happen one way or another. I haven't had any crazy plays. I mean, too many out of the box clutches. And it has had uh, somewhat of a slower pace about it. This is interesting. So they plan to have Kalix throw two smokes from the same position. Imagine the feeder. Before it was the thrower. He doesn't have to throw him this time. What a luxury. A little bit delayed on the second, but the smokes will fly in all the same. Wicardia spotted out mid side. Dick readies himself for that first tap, and wow, he goes ahead of the play. It's Ime using those dual Berettas, just spamming his mouse as fast as he could. It leads to a double kill. That's nice from Woxic, tracking Alexi in the back of the head. Not always easy. 
but it's a two versus four all the same. A P250 for Walk Ticket to, oh, excuse me, for Santares. It's a good weapon for the job. About to be four from four from pistols, an RV. Yeah, it just certainly seems like a guarantee at this point. No doubt in my mind, Ima is going to mow down Woxic. Just like that. Actually, hold on. Woxic at least aware for the potential. Ima just standing on the bomb saying, come and get it. You've got 20 seconds and they're just begging for a frag. No one giving them anything. And now with the time so close to elapsing, Zataris just walks down the ladder. Ima can't <laughs> believe it. <laughs> He's like, someone holding it? No, clearly not. Doesn't seem to matter. Nine in the bank. <laughs> you get two teammates CT and somebody slips out Palace down the ladder and almost shoots me in the back. Boys. I would be sassing them. You gave me the jewelies. You were setting me up for success. And success is what Emma found. So he sees the nades coming out, steps ahead, just starts to unload. That stalls out the assault with the bomb. A beautiful shot there from JL. And is this where CS2 is at in that sense? In like, that is the best play for Ima. Instead of hiding in the corner and kind of catching them as the contacts found, is it better to just be ahead of the play? Be the one to swing? It, it looks like, you know, with that setup, if Bit starts baiting, they focus on him and they run out Tetris and then right. he pops them up. But I, I, I guess, it to the fight. If it's working, here we go. Second round force. It could be quick and poppy. And it's already Bit. Onto Zantares. Wicardia into the site. He's strong in these rounds. And it's looking okay. The damage is inflicted, but unfortunately, the rifles at long range have worked. Wonderful finds Calyx. It's Wicardia next on the naughty list. And long range MP9, Alexi, finishes it off and secures the 10th. Yeah, Emma just completely blind. He lost complete control of where they were coming from. He spam in the sky. It was Jail's impact through that connector smoke. As uh, this one, I think it's going one direction and one direction fast. I can't name a single One Direction song. Go on. That's what makes you beautiful. Is that them? That's what makes you beautiful. It could be. That's one. I remember, was it Zane left a few years ago? Oh, like a decade drama. ago now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're so out of Liam. touch. <laughs> Niall, Neil. You're doing well. That's two of the... Liam. Four? And then the one that they all like. Oh, Watermelon Man. Yeah. Harry. Okay, we named them all. We did it. Okay, see, we're, we're down with the kids who are all grown adults now, of yeah, course. Well, and that is the modern equivalent of the Spice Girls. Fair enough. Shout out to the uh, 30 to 40 year olds understanding that reference. It's good I to have, have you with us. I had their cassette tape growing up and steps, of course. They've gone for this Antares Hero AK again. We saw this work wonders on Nuke. He ripped Bit's head off. Yeah, the Wicardia Tech 9 is truly terrifying. It'd be a lengthy B that could feel its wrath. That's not how you say that word, but I did anyway. And the bomb is postured out B, so there is a very clear uh, plan here. Madge is just holding any potential aggressions. Santara is allowed to work. I guess the issue is nobody's really worrying about underpass. It was both Joe and Wonderful looking top mid. Emma's now had a glance. Mm, could be misinfo. This could be the window of opportunity for Zantares to kick up a fuss, and he has. Finds the first immediate adjustment of his crosshair, anticipating the window. Nice company. Lex, he's hearing this, but Ricardia unaware. It's nice find. Takes away the threat. With support of JL. It's not going to be easy to leave the apartment. He's missed his spray, though, and so Alexi B is the one that has to step up. Calix is deep, solid, finds wonderful on rotation, but it's JL and Alexi B holding on for what they can. Good work from Woxic, but unable to find the round. It was one versus two as it closes in for an 11th. Still gets dicey. Every time. They're threatening. They really can make rounds out of this, can't they, Eternal Fire? Coach has got head in hands after this. I think he really wanted the 2-0. And I will remind you that perhaps the intrusive thoughts come for Eternal Fire after your drop of the ball in, in the third map of your series yesterday. You felt like maybe the 2-0 would have been well, a whole lot more efficient. Well, that, the mental step required as well. Right? Uh, some of these players on Na'Vi, well, especially the likes of Alexi. Alex bought no nades. Does that mean he's planning on doing something crazy fast? Just being a... Blunt object. It does look like they are setting up for a B execute, but the bomber has been left behind on Woxic. So are they just going to send him in for a look? Are they just trying to challenge Alexi as the B anchor? That appears to be the case. Alexi Ooh. using the uh, bumper. 100% accurate a on nice that. nice little, little look in. It's a good ang. Isn't it just? 
I heard the players talking about how it's uh, a lot easier to do this ju jump nowadays. Not taking anything away from Alexi. I still can't do it. It's kind of does catch up, a bit of a dink. That's going to probably cancel his plans. At least Alexi's going to be cycling that information that B was under threat. Tara's trying to work through mid with smokes are up. Ricardia swallows that nade from Alexi B. Essentially three players on B. Jail short. Alexi gravitating over to get this boost. Zantaros could change the round. Oh, most definitely. The jump up. He can't adjust in time. It's Alexi B. Wins out on the duel. Now Wonderful's position is rewarded as the orb just racks up the frags. One back. Woxic down. JL rotates through and just so many bodies there. That's when they're shaking their head. 3B. 12-4. Map 3. Imminent. And Na'Vi making Mirage look like their home turf after all. Well, this is more like Na'Vi. This is what you'd be hoping to see. And it's been a good, strong performance from Imminent throughout. I think Eternal Fire didn't do themselves any favors with some of their CT setups looking somewhat disjointed. But uh, Na'Vi showing why they picked Mirage. And then going into Anubis, I'm sure they would have been comfortable with that map pick. Now, Eternal Fire, their win-loss record, and I think yesterday was 19%, but those results were all from 2023. And we're in the new year. We're already in February, so they've had a whole month to work on it. And, well, surprise, they showed that they can have decent form on it. Good old-fashioned A execution. All five members of Eternal Fire looking to flood into this A site. Smokes in the sky. Frag in the feed. Madja draws first blood. Wakadia versus Ime. The next duel on the docket. It's Kalix. First bullet out of the AK. Na'Vi needs something from Wonderful on the CT position. Alexi B joins him. It's JL actually catching Wakadia. He wanted to take jungle control and it's cost them the advantage. They've lost it. It's foregone. JL versus Woxic, they both take a heavy beating through the smoke spam. Not a comfortable retake whatsoever. Alexi B knows Woxic's trapped towards the Tetris boxes. Spots a glimpse of him on the jiggle. Tatara smoked off for now, but it's still Kalix and Woxic hitting their shots. A good, must have been one hell of a headshot onto Wonderful seeing it from that POV. So they survived the night. A whole lot more required. Yeah, this feels temporary though, doesn't it? Just with how commanding Na'Vi have been in this map, but it feels like Eternal Fire just extending the pain. Just one more round required, but a couple of nice shots hit on the way out. Here's the Woxic shot, just popping his head up from Tetris. Wonderful, didn't have a chance. A second for good measure. Na'Vi, looks like they are going to be taking an eco. Imma, bought in with an MP9. Could be a little bit late if you wanted to jump out window and head underpass. Gets himself mounted up on the concrete boxes. Well, they're cinder blocks, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. The official technology. Concrete blocks? Block? Cinder block? Hey, man, MP9. Yeah, I am a little bit worried for some reason. There's nothing around it. But him out. He has the threat. He has the luxury. And he's used it to great success. A destabilizing blow. Taking down Madja. Zantara's catching bit hidden up. He's got a double swing window. Oh, oh wow. Robotic from Zantares. He welcomes the duel, controls the spray. <laughs> it's Zantares. It's his playground right now, an ace. And he's so nonchalant about it. He knows it's, it's all for naught if they don't find another six rounds in a row. They're looking very determined there, isn't he? That's some tidy shots. That's a highlight real moment. Even though it was just an extremely light investment, still hit some absolute bangers and make a mash of Na'Vi. But you're right, six more, Alex. It just feels like such a tough task. Navi are going to call on Blade to stabilize. They took the eco for a reason. The guns are kind of come out. And before things start getting out of control, and maybe some of that tilt <laughs> creeps in to soak the confidence of Navi. If he can just assist them to get across the line. Take things to map number three. Let's see if they can survive this best of three series against an impressive looking Eternal Fire. We do also have Falcons currently taking on Complexity. That one's being brought to you by Launders and Scrawny. And the winner of that will take on the winner of this 
for this final spot in Group A. Yeah, just two spots in the spell deck left. Yeah, uh, we really nip them up quite quickly, don't we? FaZe and Spirit from Group A, Ents and Mouse from Group B. The Group B lower bracket could be juicy. We could get a heroic G2 rematch. We could get multi-game Legion locking horns. Yeah, there's a lot to look forward to, but just two more seats at the table and a whole lot of teams vying for it. As you've already mentioned, the big ones, we've got Eternal Fire Navi here as one of them. Dodged. Wow, didn't even land. They hit the lip. Couldn't quite track onto Alexi again. Slower default call from Eternal Fire. This time, not so many bodies in through the underpass. You've got Woxic top mids and Tara's at the mid boxes. Madja through the aforementioned lower side of things. Calyx A ramp and Wakadia in towards Palace. So this feels like it will be rerouting into an A split. Window smoke. Madja a deep one into Connor. Molly as well to help clear that out. So Tara stretches his legs and starts to work his way up short. Looking like they want to disperse this and they're all. A leg shot into Zantaris. Nice little one-two combo. Yeah, that's really cool. Going to limit Zantaris' options. Kalix spamming out that smoke bit. Hiding in plain sight. He's been flashed off. He's a dead man. Team play both ways. Spots out another one. Takes the duel. Welcomes it, does Wakadia. Gets a three-on-three. Three, taking down Ima as well. Oh. Wow, JL was not expecting Zantaris to be so far forward. Look how disconnected Alexi is. Zantaris thinks twice about that push. Alexi be maneuvering. Tentaris was audible jungle. Alexi's got to have to make a move, but he doesn't have the weapon for this. Cardi's even going all the way around, so he hurt his. I think that. the fact that the orb was heard market makes it feel like it's a save. And he's not expecting this at all. He's been caught off guard. Takes the rifle upgrade. Centaurus was low HP. He can't break that. <gasps> Molly, and he knows that Wakadi was coming behind him. Alexi V can do this. Wakadia surely starts to push eventually. Just starting to imagine the bomb being a applied pressure to. Here's this, expecting the flank. Alexi's overthinking it now. He looks away, and Wakadia does profit from that all the way. Maneuver, Wakadia finds seven for Eternal Fire. Almost got out of control. I said disconnected, maybe plugged in was Alexi. What a move that was, coming around the A ramp. And yeah, I think because the scope was heard, it made them feel like it was going to be a save situation. Not the case. But it's just now a five-round game if Eternal Fire want to take this to overtime. So round after round, the pressure as their backs are against the wall. But again, they've alleviated a lot of pressure. Two tidy shots there from Wakadia. It will be a Navi Eco. Jail getting caught, right? Just looking away. Zantaris is lurking up Con silently. And Eternal Fire, by keeping things quite silent and slow, that information doesn't appear that it's flowing for Navi. Wakadia again. Finds out the aggressive push of Emma, who's been having quite a good mirage after 17 kills, matching yeah. Zantara's on the other side. And with that knowledge of a bit of an early palace push, you can see that the mid boys are just going for a bit of a press. Free smoke window. Andrew in the underpass, Molly's out, top con. Yeah, this is diligent stuff. It does look like Jail's found a nice safe haven. This could be overlooked by Zantares by virtue of. That Molotov oh. is not misread. He didn't expect to see Zantara's in ladder. He didn't even clear it. Woxic will catch him. Now they have lost the AWPA. And it's been recovered by Alexi. Wonderful. Maybe able to get that in his hands if they throw it. Why do these keep feeling so dicey? Yeah, it's sketchy all day, every day. Zantara's at least onto bit. So, I mean, that one can go down in A now. Everything's fine. Albeit losing Woxic's not ideal. Still that ladder presence made clear. Alexi tested by the Bacardia Jiggle. Reaction speed test, but he doesn't pass. A couple of shots missing there from Alexi, and he's going to be sprayed on down. <laughs> oh God, what's going on? <laughs> How many bullets was that? Oh, too many. A full mag. <laughs> and then there was the, followed by the Zantara's tilt. But he just chased him out of the window after whiffing. <laughs> what do you think is going to happen? Yeah. Alexi V's kept a cool head on his shoulders. <laughs> do you think he keeps the orb? Oh, it looks like it now. Wakadia is over towards the B side, but he's been spotted too. Dinked up by the USP of Wonderful, but that's likely bought enough time. The nade not far off the mark. The hunt is on. Alexi oh, gets to hold the AWP. That is going to feel good. They have so much cash to splash, but even still a luxury afforded to Wonderful. The in-game leader bringing him across a big green. Well recovered. I mean, Alexi. 
did not get flustered. And in contrast, Zandares did. But, you know, we talked about this comeback. We said it would be a ridiculous haul. Still ain't happening, is it? No. But we are four rounds in to that eight-round comeback. We'll revisit two more. All right. Different look, more direct, not the default spread. Same smokes that make it look like they're taking this mid-control, but Immer, it's way too quiet. Alexi doesn't really have a lot of help right now because Joe is in the vent room. He needs to start pivoting back and fast. They're coming in. Cardio in his timings. He feels like now is the time. Leaps through. He knows where they are. He's got them both right where he wants them. Playing in the safe spot. Gets away from JL. Finally, the frag comes through. He's run out of bullets. Could be caught by the spread. And Extinguish in a retreat. Playing the numbers game here. Taras to work the space again. He's out mid on the lurk. We'll need to find a pick and soon. Jail towards short could be his first target. Yeah, JL's holding for it. Just looked away. They're going to clear from Kondo. Just turned his back as bit. Rounds the corner. Potency nullified now. He's lucky number 13. The new this is. Locked on in here for Na'Vi. Defense of the beast side. Madger, however, wants to change the dialogue. A two versus four for the map. Even if the bomb goes towards A, Bit's up in Palace. Selling this fake, Bit's not going to move. They're going to allow the bomb to be the next key piece before Na'Vi do anything. You've got 25 seconds. Woxic essentially has a free sight, but if he walks in, starts punching in the digits, he's going to go down. Flanking B? Uh, guys, seconds. the rounds. this game is over. Seconds. Let's go to the third map, shall we? It certainly seems that way. I mean, a triple plant, maybe. He's dead, no matter oh, what. Oh, no, he's planning open. No matter Palace. what. It's all over, ladies and gentlemen. A third map is required. Eternal Fire. They fall on Na'Vi's pick. We will go the distance. Anubis required. As this lower bracket run, one of these teams is going home at the end of our third. Still up for debate. We're going to break it down.
Oh, man. We do have a full-on series now. It is undoubtable, indubitable at this point. I don't think that's really a word, is it? Indubitably. Man? Indubitably. That's the one. Dang, I was so dang close. And Well, actually, so were Eternal Fire. First language. Close in this series. Oh, yeah, pretty much. They were pretty close to closing the series out, but not necessarily on Mirage, it seems. 13-8, to 8, Navi run away with it. We do lock in a third map, and that's going to be Anubis. And I also welcome you back right here to the right now to the Intel Extreme Masters. It's kind of, it's, a, it's 2024, almost at 23. But hey, that doesn't matter here in Northern. That's a good start. We think good. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it was like last year or whatever. Anyway, point being, we Miragi. got a full series. Yeah, we got a yeah. full series this time around. You know, the problem for Eternal Fire was mostly that first half. Of course, lose the pistol and all of that, but they couldn't string consecutive rounds together, right? Just when they would win a round and you need the second one to maybe force Navi to go on pistols and get some economy behind yourself to give yourself more options on that CT side, you know, they couldn't pull that off. Yeah, no easy round for EF, as you mentioned. I think for Navi, it's a, it's a pretty classic but well executed mirage. That's what we've seen. It starts with step one, which is defeat your opponents on that mid map control. A couple of situations where they're an, there's an attempt at sort of resisting the mid take, and then it's completely cleared out from Navi. And once you've established that, what do you do? You hit them with a couple of very well, simple A execute, good utility, good pacing as well. Um, we talk about starts 6 1 on the first half, 4 0 on the second. Hey, that's sometimes what you need, Trace, to get a bit of momentum, get a bit of a wind in your sails, if you will. Yeah, sometimes. You know, we talked about first kills, and I'm going to bring it up here again because, you know, first kills actually go the way of Eternal Fire right here in this map. But still... What is that the number? 12. 12 first kill. Yep. 12 to 9. Well, that I means some rounds were misplayed. Yes. That's what we say. I, th I think those, some of those are, you know, when Navi's executing A, Trade. and then Eternal Fire, you know, Vicadia gets the first kill, and then he's traded immediately, and Navi still gets the side. So I don't think they hold as much weight, and maybe mm -hmm. you would see it in a slower-paced game or a game where there's that's more default heavy. But, yeah, unfortunately for Eternal Fire, they didn't unfold like this on Mirage. They couldn't really get going. They didn't have an opportunity to do so, and Alexi B gets to that Anubis to do his master class. Yes. Yes, a master going class. B, then going A. But if he's at A already, would he go back to B or no? Then you that depends. Going A, then going A. Okay. Yeah, if you're at A, then go also to A. Fair enough. Okay. Before we do that, though, okay. I'd imagine that there's a round or two that you guys would like to look at at the very minimum. Yes, we were talking about simple Counter-Strike, but good Counter-Strike, and that is an example right here. 4 to 1, in control, Navi with that A execute. You see 1.10, so it's relatively quickly into the round. Uh, up and down smokes, that's pretty basic. You have a Molotov under shadow, but what I like is not only the simplicity of it, but then the good trades and good execute as well. JL is going to sort of sets it out, out of apps, gets found out, but then the space has been taken in ramp, so you can see the trades are coming in from Navi. They're aware of that position here, a little bit of a mistake, and what I do appreciate from here is how Navi is going to slow down the pace just a little bit. They keep track of the timings of the smoke, will refresh towards connector, and that gives them a little bit of time to wait, just sort of gauge where the danger is, and then, then they strike. There's a little bit of a mistake here, the reload, Emek crosses the smoke, Alexi B has a strong post plan position, and just like that, you close this. So Sometimes it's good to play just simple Counter-Strike. You don't have to always recreate the wheel. Yeah, Navi were doing that, but they're not doing that anymore because he's not playing there. Oh, you mean like the simplicity of Counter-Strike. Okay, yeah, fair enough. Nice. I think also... <laughs> <laughs> it's immediately disappointing. Sorry, what's, yeah. what's important there is they're waiting a little bit to see if someone tries to play through the smoke, right? Like something was, I'm going to break the smoke, I'm going to do this. The spray through the smoke is the mistake they're they going to do for. that. Once they have all that covered and see that Eternal Fire is taking it slow themselves, that's when they feel safe enough to plant the C4, right? Play the post plant. And yeah, that was one of those reset rounds we talked about. Eternal Fire got two entries, Trace. Mm. Even like the first two kills, they were in a 5v3 there for a, you know, really small amount of time, uh, and then it slipped through their fingers. Yeah. <laughs> it's sometimes when it, sometimes in this line of work, I don't know if you know this or not, but uh, sometimes there are, you know, giggles or little smirks that can happen every now and this actually happened and to Steel yesterday. Later it gets in the day, yeah. the higher the probability. But I feel like it almost can help us track back down to our conversation about energy and mental energy. Because if right. I'm smiling and laughing, just looking at you, goofy face, imagine the player <laughs> situation right now. When it's they see our faces, yeah. No, it's not about our face. It's about being past 10 o'clock, having a third map that's on the card, yeah. and having to manage energy, both physically and mentally. 
fundamentally. And for both these teams, I think experience is going to come shining into that department. And the stakes are simply much higher for this side of things than they are think? up here. <laughs> uh, yeah, I would think so. Again, this is elimination. I don't know, Chase. The way you've been doing your job is on the line, buddy. Okay. Oh, I didn't know you were in charge of no. shit around here. So. <laughs> <laughs> Why? No. I think, though, I'm interested to see on Anubis, right? We pointed out some of the rounds from Navi. We pointed out how the openings are the same. There's a similar race of opening rounds, but that doesn't mean what happens in the mid round and the late round is going to be mm. the same as well. So what is the approach going to be from Eternal, Eternal Fire to counter that? Uh, that's a good question. I was re-watching quickly uh, the game against FaZe in Times 2. What a great feature. I didn't have the time to watch the game. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't watch the game in full uh, life. You know, you should and just hold the left click over the video. But on, on the little, there's a wheel. Yeah, you, you can just on set it, it right? You just the speed. set it, you know? You didn't know about that. No, I knew about it. I just... Look, I watch all my movies like that. You uh, watch it Times 2? Yeah, I mean, that way I kind of take it in a lot faster. I can watch more movies that way. It's Did like, you watch like... Inception in times two, so it was like six levels and of backwards. Games. That's like a whole other story. <laughs> you should probably watch that how to tie your tie at 0.5 speed. Man, I've been watching that one multiple times, front ways, back ways. I'm also watching this going to Nubis, like we said. And this is where it all kind of boils down to right here. Uh, I believe there's going to be a ninth round probably for side. So whenever you get that information, feel free to feed us that. But just to talk about the Eternal Fire T side, because we were talking about how they could approach this, uh, it was very p a wolf pack mentality. That's how they played against FaZe a whole lot, not having two different groups of attack going, but really one clear, and it would be either towards the A side or towards mid as well. They punished a couple of times FaZe, who allowed a, a few duels, so we're gonna have to see if they keep up with that sort of mentality and try to grab players from Na'Vi. Yeah, and I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah. It was just interesting to see Eternal Fire go for Anubis. I mean, that tells you of their confidence, because if you look at their win percentage, it isn't very high, and Inferno was available to them, which was a map that they picked against FaZe, so who knows what's going on there. I don't know. Do I, you? I was looking for the knife round, but I think unless these two are just playing each other, then that's not going to be. But they're not going to do it here, Trace. They're doing it on the server. Oh, so not like in the parking lot or anything. Okay, no. good. Just glad we can make sure of that. What would, would be the ideal though. start here? <laughs> what would be the ideal start? I think both teams would like to start T. Uh, it's a blanket okay. statement, but not only does it obviously fit the map, Anubis is an extremely T-sided map, but in general, I have a feeling that both these teams are much more comfortable on their T-side. And this is where they play their best Counter-Strike, this is where they get the IGLs to sort of dictate the pace. T-side is much more lackluster. Also, if we're talking about stamina and fatigue and stuff, you know, you can start dozing off on that CT side, you know? I surely if, feel like that. If you play against the slow default and you're okay, you're, for, you're waiting, but nothing's happening and nothing's happening. And, you, and then all of a sudden people are coming your way, right? If you start on the T side, you get to keep calling, keep talking, right? Mm -hmm. Moving around, you're the aggressor and that can help a little bit with momentum. And that's a very interesting point because I think some of these teams today have made the mistake of sort of putting themselves to sleep on their T side while playing too slow. And I don't wow. want to see that happening. This is the third map trace. We're playing for elimination. There's a whole lot of stakes. So keep up the pace, keep up the rhythm, keep the adrenaline. Eat that banana. Be out there, my boy. Hey, Eat the banana, just like, like he said. Hey, you. That's right, you at home. Wakey, wakey. It's almost time to get the eggs and bakey over here on the last map of this series. Somebody's going home. We're going to find out when we return. pressure A and B more because Wild Floppy have already used the smoke. Now he want to go and make them use more utility here. They want this, you see? They want to have oh. this area. You want to fight for this area. I'm here with Snappy, in-game leader of Falcons, uh, formerly of Ents fame, the team that rose to success over the last couple of years, and your in-game leadership, massive part of that conversation. Now, uh, I want to take a bit more of a bird's eye view of Anubis and how the teams are approaching things you like, things you don't like. This is a mistake, they should do this, this was a nice move. And we'll just talk through the game as it goes. Yep. 
The way you make CT uncomfortable is by taking that area. This is an area where the CTs want to have control. Baskets and um, stuff. Yeah, because okay. when the CTs have control of that, it's really hard to hit a... Elish coming through. No molly, just... Yeah. That's I'm not, a risk, right? I'm not sure I like the way that... Because now it's the third time GL I've gotten an injury in mid. Why is it you need to fight that hard for middle at the start of the round? I don't understand it. Now, this, this I like, the fact that now they go for the A control, because this, yes, like obviously they get the kill here and this makes the round pretty easy probably, but the thing is, you want to start exhausting the sides rather than middle, because if the sides keep having utility, it's going to be hard to hit the sides. But who cares if middle have utility? JL will probably use his exhaust himself pretty early on regardless. That's okay. why you want to bully the sides to make them exhaust their utility, in my opinion. I can tell you, as a B guy, it's really easy to hold B if I have a full belt. But it's really hard if they exhaust me of my utility. You run out of because angles, at that point, yeah. then I have to risk it and just sit with my gun out in cave and hope I win the one-on-one -on -one duel. If I get a flash in the head, I'm dead. Or if they molly me, I don't have a smoke to take it out. As the B guy, it's the same. as If you can smoke up B, you can help the cave guy. Mm. But if you exhaust him of that smoke earlier in the round, he cannot help the cave guy. It's the same again for the A guy. If you exhaust him of all of his utility, now you have you force the CTs to do these uncomfortable pushes and now you can just wait for them because the T on this map have the advantage in every single angle that the CT is going to push pretty much. They don't need to instantly pressure A now and then JL reacts and goes and pressures Cave instead, right? And I think this is good because Floppy have already started using his utility here. They, they're just waiting for the smoke, so now it's really good the reaction JL has, I think, that he just instantly goes and then he presses JT on the other hand. Because while Floppy have already used his smoke, now he want to go and make them use more utility here. And then if they want, they can, he can always come back to bit or Wonderful can help bit uh, taking A. This is a way better way of playing, in my opinion, where they are pressuring the sides properly in order to use utilities. This is why I like the way that they play Naive. Because now, one more smoke. Yeah. One more smoke. This is CT smoke, this is CT smoke. They're out of utility now. It's very obvious that their plan is to pressure this area. They want this, you see? They want to have oh. this area. And I think this is the approach you want on the map. You want to fight for this area. Basic but effective. Thank you very much, Snappy. That's perfect. I love it. All right, a bit of a look at Nanubis. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you. We're back in business for Anubis, and I'm joined by one of the stars of that show, Chaddy B, talking to Snappy. We learn a little bit about one of the uh, priorities for the T sides in terms of Anubis, and that's exactly where we find ourselves in this do or die match, fighting for one last opportunity and that one of the two last seats at the Spodek table. I'll, uh, we'll have a bit of an alert right now. The siren's going off, it's blaring. Spoiler alert, spoiler alert. If you're hoping to watch the Complexity versus Falcons game a little bit later, close your ears, close the stream just for a moment. That has concluded the victor on the third map. Just to, uh, I guess, finish a bit of housekeeping. That was Anubis. Uh, Falcons picked it up two to one. So maybe Snappy's approach on the map working quite well because he was reviewing a Complexity versus Na'Vi demo in that game. And now we get to see the other side of that coin, Na'Vi. Taking on Eternal Fire. Oh, and we're already fighting. Quick connector, Biff. Yeah, it's a nasty opening to concede him. I just wanted looking for info. He ends up dying. This will be their first pistol EF. Be a perfect time to find it as well. Alexi B flashed, smoked, trying to contribute, but also backing the hell out of dodge. They've given them the sight. They're trying to play this 4v5 retake. They really like playing from B main. We saw this yesterday as well. They like to soak away a lot of that sight pressure, play out in the main and fight together. Well, they're expecting no smoke, so it's a viable strategy with the plant as it is. They've used the flashes just to get in, so redundant. And no time for this. Chasing ghosts. Yeah, where are they? They can't even find Look at Kallax. I mean, he's holding Dark, sure. He can arrive there late. It's a beautifully executed pistol. I mean, Alexi was on the defuse. That was Antares just to pluck him off of it. And yeah, no time for this. He can get some kills, sure. But the round is Eternal Fires. And Woxic, he'll take a couple on the exit as well. Terrorist. 
Thank you very much. So the first pistol, as Chad has highlighted, goes the way for Eternal Fire. Took him a while. Took him a while. We got it on the third, where it matters most. Yeah, this uh, CT side can be quite brutal, so not getting the pistol around is going to hurt. I wonder, does Alexi B want to call them into a force buy? And also, I'd like to know if they are going to play these setups where they're evacuating out of the site for the post plan Eternal Fire, if Na'Vi are going to have smokes left over to be able to clear off that position, or at least deny the vision. There's uh, one flash invested for Bit. Not using it offensively, so they're allowing Eternal Fire to play their hand first. Flash forwards, Ataris clears closed doors. We'll have company, an awful lot of CTs on the other side. Two camera, two temple. Yeah, they landed some bullets onto Zantares there. Info. Wonderful in here, Matt. Combine. Get a rifle. Avoids the majority of the damage there, considering the absence of armor. But JL actually has some. He'll be able to wield that AK-47. Now sweeping through to clear Ray, as it seems Madra and Wakadia will call be pretty clear pretty soon. Uh, well, they're in. The bomb will follow. Moxic punching in the digits. Now to position for now. Now, Wonderful was also able to pick up another flash. So if they can creep up behind this smoke deployed by the T's, they might want to explode. But again, Tunnel Fire playing passive, foregoing a lot of the site control. It's only really Madger to report. Oh, Wakadi has just pushed into jail. Flash could be good. Madger turns it nicely. Perfect find, farming up some frags. Actually, JL using that rifle to great effect. He'll take that. Two kills, keep the AK in Kev. Financial damage, respectable. Yeah, so, you know, th this is what Eternal Fire has kind of been doing to Na'Vi in a lot of these second or third rounds, pressuring their economy an awful lot, and it just makes things awkward. Guns need to be dropped. You don't have all the goodies that you require. Wakadia has enough to buy, uh, so does Madja, but the drops are possible from Waxic and Calyx as well, so they won't have those issues. Not going to have to operate with Deagles or Mac-10s. They can't get those full purchases through. Eternal Fire like to pressure the A main position uh, with Madja throwing this like smoke a little bit deeper, and then he's going to, well, when I say deeper, from a more passive position, closer towards spawn, be able to push in and exploit that. So we'll see how the likes of Bit, the A anchor, is to deal with it. But I feel a lot of this is the CTs either having good reads or good gambles to be in the 3 2 split. Uh, there's aggression available, just like this. Bit having a look to see if anyone's defaulting up close and personal. That's not the case. The smoke that's just landed behind Bit. what we were just discussing. So they'll exchange utility over towards A main. Yeah, I mean, combined with that flash, Bit's going to be apprehensive of moving forward again. So we're kind of flying blind on that side of the map. As you can see, they are starting to regroup. The key is the orb, wonderful here. Optis opts for this angle on the obelisk. As Alexi calls for aid, what's going on? A flurry of frags back and forth. It's going to be a three versus two, thanks to the MF Amas farming. Gets a triple onto Madger as Kalix punching in the code. Zintares hunting for Imer. Could very well be determined by Zintares. As Kalix has got himself the AK-47, he's a sharp shooter as Kalix misses his opening tap. And just like that, Na'Vi. Put themselves on the board early, a quad kill out of Imer. Yeah, hugely impactful round from Imer. You have to think on Mirage, he was definitely finding his form, so the confidence from one orange map to the next is going to be important here for the Romanian. That is huge work because his teammates were in transition. They were trying to reposition as this pop comes through. So catching them at the minute mark, but Imer delivers, trying to get his hands on that. Galil gets around the corner, picks it back up, and sits Zatara's on his ass. First round now for Na'Vi. And this is where the pressure really will start to mount. So if Zatara's can't keep it cool, and we are going to have to talk about the mental of Eternal Fire in a game like this. It could just start to crumble. They're on the T side. This is where they're hoping to get up the lion's share of rounds on the map. And they have been able to buy back in with something quite threatening. Two AKs. Tech Nines, Deagle. And over towards B again. So they want to continue to try and punish this side with another pop. Ooh, that flash forces out a reaction from Zantares. So presence noted. No rotation, however. Yeah. A lot of pressure on this side of the map. And Imer, he tries his hand at a duel. Have they seen enough? Yeah, they weren't knocking. They got what they were looking for. 
Burning more smokes from the CTs. And as you take a look on the radar, you can see four, well, three, one just faded. Wow, they've got everything they need. Still three smokes. What an advantage. Make it two. Kallax has thrown one out of his own design. Should be the deep, dark smoke. Wonderful floating. Uh, see, Alexi's called the gamble elsewhere. He said, nah, it's all right, boys. Let's gamble A. We think it's going to be A or middle. Uh, and this is the thing with the CT side. You either push or gamble stack. And Alexi, you have to get a lot. Oh, he's in so much trouble. The smoke may be a little bit of a savior, really. You can incendiary the deep. Oh, oh, yeah, not ready for that. Woxica does sweep through. How's he not ready for that? Yeah, that is... Uh... Abysmal for Alexi. The whole site was for gone. Uh, Alexi right now, zero and four. And this is it. This is where your instinct as an in-game leader, you know, calling the bluff, thinking the tendencies that you've looked at. How do they rotate around when they are denied space? And this time, if they did think it was going to reroute them towards middle or A, that's the wrong call. Overwhelmed. Nothing done. Hardly even any damage at all. Especially considering it was only those two AK-47s boasted prioritizing the utility that works out for the fakery. Oh, if you lose your orb here, Wonderful would be very, very upset if a wide swing in Magia showed up. Does it look like he's... Wonderful just looked away. Magia's not moving oh. an inch, and yeah, what could have been... But Eternal Fire have got to be happy with that. Yeah, they get the round, and they even managed to scoop up Alexi's M4, so picking everything they could out of that round, considering the way it unfolded. So back in immediately, and Alexi just standing, looking like a bit of a tip behind the smoke. He wanted to drop that molly to deny as the bomb's going down. You know, that one's a bit of a brain fade. So Eternal Fire now have a very juicy looking buy. Well, let's get into the full gunnies. WP on both sides of the server. Three player B start as Emma again goes down towards connector. Alexi behind the pillar and wonderful on the plat. As Zantara's, he could really just creep through middle at whatever luxury he'd choose. The molly lands. It's not going to burn deep enough. His feet aren't on fire, so retaining this little window position, he can slink forward. Uh, Joe will know this is possible regardless. Doesn't really change the timing too much, but the A defender's a bit, and JL really feeling a little bit of pressure, especially with that Temple Smoke landing. Very deep as well. That one, make sure there's no hijinks around the mid push from the CTs, and look at this leering forward. He's across. I'm not sure JL saw it. Nope. There's a real opportunity now. Oh, especially with Woxic landing that tag. Just through the corner. JL lucky to be alive. He's still got all his util. You'd think he's going to start, yeah, dumping it. Incendiary lands. But now Wonderful's out of position. He's just had to go beach, heaven, to assist. Bogdan's law and Wakadia through the smoke. B, extremely susceptible. Back and forth they go. Ping-ponging across the map. Eternal Fire toying with them. Lexi B, he's having a nightmare start to this Anubis. Elimination match. You don't want to be starting the third map like that. Oh, barrel. Spotted. Kalix prepared. Bit aware. Adjusts. And makes it a four versus four. Only for a moment. Ima extends their advantage. The CTs are holding on despite the loss of Alexi B through that smoke. Regrouping. You can see Madger bringing the bomb this way. It's pushing again. They know it has to be beat. seconds, Chad. What are they supposed to do? Oh, man. That's a gift. Ima, he doesn't hit his shot. They are across, and they're punching in the code in time. Wonderful has caught Wakadia, and it's hard fight for Madja. He is going to get run down. Wonderful making it work from the IV position, closing in on the Orpa now, and a missed shot makes it very difficult for Woxic. Yeah, going to get sprayed on down. Navi, return the favor. They, uh, they had so much space. I think what's happening there, Alex, right, is they, they get the space, they get the kills, and then in the moment when Madja's calling the finish to the round, that's when those pushes came in. Even with the barrel that Kalix spotted, he gets the better of him. Now he's locked into this fight, whips the first few bullets, that anticipation, then Emma swings out. So just as they're starting to pull the round together and what they want the finish to be, Na'Vi strike, and very fortunately so. Because that was looking like a, a round where Eternal Fire, if they just grouped up and closed out the round, they could have done it together. Oof. Watch out, though. Tech Nines are in the mix once again. <laughs> Always so scary with Eternal Fire. Yeah, and Woxie's got himself six francs already, so he's definitely not uh, slowing down into this third map. Those warning shots enough for Jail to respect. It's a dangerous game, mid. Isn't it? You don't want to give it up for free. You want to harass a little bit. Yeah, show presence, but don't get spammed, naded, or double molly egg sect on. Uh, while, while trying to hold on to your util for as long as you can. Yeah, really, like this flash, what do you do if you're JL? You're going to know you either have to back away or just hold this angle and call for help. It was committed, but bits here for oversight from camera. Oh, that could be a well-placed HE. Oh. 
Oh, look at the chip damage, and it does destabilize the push. Could have done more with that. JL does go down, but his bit goes wide. Ready for another engagement. Bit takes two. It's a numbers game, and finding that double kill makes all the difference. Alex is across. Now they have the bomb, so no real potency to this immediately. He's got 44 seconds just maneuvering through that A site, looking to go around the world. Kind of lose him, perhaps, but Wonderful's already considering the potential. I was so focused on the mid fight there. Did they extend out B main during all of that? Did Ima push for info? Because the rotation towards middle was there so quickly, it felt like clamping down together to deny the space for EF. Yeah, no, I was hyper focused on mid too. But you're right, it did feel like, I mean, maybe JL was just asking for it, but you, you wouldn't be doing double rotations. You had Bit and Wonderful there almost instantaneously. Yeah, Spot it out now. No fun for Calix. 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, and Alexi's going to be very happy with that. Well handled. Well, right now, EF probably going to try one of these little B explodes, I would imagine. Right? Get out those Tech Nines and they whip into the site very quickly. We've seen them work into great success previously. And that nade, yeah, yeah, you mentioned did a lot of damage, so softening them up, making it much more susceptible. And yeah, it's not just that. Alexi's there as well. So there must have been some form of aggression to facilitate that heavy rotation. And wow, it's going to be a full eco from Eternal Fire. How many times have we said that? I saw a dialogue. Like, Magic's not looking at his screen. He's looking at the teammate. Maybe we can get a camera on them as they might just be talking through the next round. Loss bonus will be coming through a 2400. So Navi destined for four. As Calix softened up extremely by a HE through the windows. Well placed. But this is a gimme right now for Navi. Yeah, normally, you know, all it, all it takes is maybe one tech nine and a bit of Kevlar, and we would be getting a whole lot more excited. But this one, there's only really one objective, one goal, and that's to kind of screw your heads on tight for this must win map. It's T-side Anubis as well, right? So the fact that uh, Na'Vi in the gun rounds do seem to be having the edge. Yeah, and I imagine that's why we're seeing a total fire look a little bit more stressed as well. And keeping the conversation going, hopefully this is not an argument. But it's a discussion. Good, good. Uh, Our observers are doing great. We're actually getting to go back and forth <laughs> between the two people. Okay. Now, what does the Dyers have to say in reply? Good. Well, JL. Gets himself a double. Now that M4. Oh, I was going to say it's retrievable. I think it gives it a good go on the wall bank. Tarez does get his grubby mitts on it. Here they come. Should be all bits right now. Don't expect too much more. Dink, not bad. Wakadia will get a chance, but Wonderful will take him down before he can line him up. And that round that we said was a gimme definitely is. So that conversation, that lengthy, that locking eyes chat between the likes of Zantara's and Manager, the in-game leader, and one of his star riflers, where does that leave them? It's always an interesting line, you know, and I think it's drawn in depending on the individuals, but where, what conversations are left for after the game, which ones have to happen in, the, in that game. See if this is situated EF well for the rifle round. Bomb left B side. Gonna be an AM push. Bit has a bit of support, so wonderful compost up on the line. That nade to stairs might make you think that is the A player, and you're not ready for the play. Mm. Chef's kiss, little combo. The one two punch. All right, then they've parked the AWP, so wonderful's just gonna stay. Bit noisy on his escape. Jail's still tending with middle. Bit will be able to rotate over to help out Alexi and Emma, and because of just how strung out Eternal Fire are, they're not packed up, they can't explode. They're gonna be left taking these fights one by one. Cardi's going to have to move. He has to. Forced in by the flames. Look at the damage down. A single bullet will finish him off. And in the meantime, Emma gets greedy. He did want to find a second. He knows where Kalix is. And Kalix is a man to be feared. It might not be expected. He was a main, remember? That's true. He got the opening. And so he, the element of surprise from that glyph position. Woxic just trying to punch in the code in this one versus three. Bit delaying. That smoke allows Woxic to move. But covered, Woxic. Right. 
He gave it a good go. Wonderful closes it down. And Na'Vi, they weather the storm once more. All right. Well, now we should see a half by from Eternal Fire, right? With the Lost Burners 2900 coming into the bank, you have the bomb going down as well. It puts them in the position where they could go for AKs or Galils, but they're going to have a timeout to discuss exactly that option. And that push, right? So you're getting the HEs coming through the window. Your T-Stairs player, he's a bit rumbled. He has to move off of the line as that nade comes his way. Steps back out and bit sharp as you like. Removes him. Nice little combo there from Na'Vi, making sure they're staying proactive. And smiles on the face of Alexi. We don't see this every day of the week. The mood, sour on Nuke, but starting to sweeten. They're ever closer to staying alive in this lower bracket of Group A. And now we know who waits. Their competition will be Falcons. Got some fun trivia for you, Chad. I know you're talking, looking at uh, mouse weights a lot. Mm -hmm. Walk six mouse is incredibly heavy. It's uh, 92 grams. Isn't that a, uh, in terms of the numbers I hear you talking yeah, about, like days, 45, yeah, 50, pretty, pretty something pretty heavy. Like that. Yeah, a lot of people are on the super light, right? So yeah, that is uh, one of the heavier mouse, mice uh, in the professional player's handbook. Maybe that's why sensitivity is uh, out of control. Let's see how far out of control this gets. Eternal Fire have opted to buy, but they're lighter on in the U-Tool department. You can see it's mainly the rifles they're opting for. So I'm expecting a slower pace. Allow this CT protocol utility to be limped out, spent through, and then see if the likes of Wakadia and Zentaris can find your opening picks. But speaking of it, Ima staying active. Flashed out B main. Spots out one. Flashback. So this rally of U-Tool to try and control B long is... Definitely underway, but for Eternal Fire, they can't use too many more flashes in that fashion. They've only got two remaining and two smokes. But grouping outside B, and if they are to pop and think this is a weakness, there's three players. Can Na'Vi withstand the hit? Yeah, and this was from Spawn. Like, they started here. Throwing out the U-Tilt. Wonderful's AWP moving forward, magnetizing into the fight. Trying to catch them ahead of the play. Oh, and he does. Catches Wakadia on the crouch. Trying to isolate the jaw. Woxic with the pre-fire clears out the Orpa. It's Ima dead next at Woxic's hand. A double entry frag from Woxic. He is not giving up without a fight. And this retake uncomfortable now for Na'Vi. Good spam. Brings Woxic low. A single bullet could do it. They're all playing outside main again. This could get awkward with two Molotovs available. But Na'Vi are going to be so worried about site positions too. As they come in through connector, they can clear out Pillar and turn their attention. Yeah, at this point, Alexi's going to piece it together. It's too quiet. It's suspiciously quiet. Now the mollies are going to be thrown out. Boxic, that low HP, we discussed it. He's burning. He's gone down. Kalik stands only for the one. It's up to Magic to deliver. He has to knock him off the bomb. Alexi, the go all oh, goes down. It's looking good. A messy spray, but is there time? It's too close. It's too close. Uncomfortable. It works for Eternal Fire. They continue to make it work with this avant-garde post-plant strategy. Yeah, so I, I, again, I think it's just because you, at that point, you know that the CTs are so unlikely to have any smokes remaining. The Molly, it was great. It flushed out one, but Magia, even though he doesn't connect the dots on the final frag, he had done enough. Got them off the defuse, but that has to be on Woxic. This is a huge double. You can see him pivoting here between Jail and the dark position and that smoke that's becoming a bit more meta now that people are throwing on the right side, obscuring a lot more of the vision. They've worked out a way that they can throw it where it can't be one way over. Wow, I'm amazed that they managed to recover that. You can see Alexi was just doubting. There's no way they're all there. But look at the buy. So even though they won the round, they got Mac 10s and look at Emma staying proactive. A nuke on JL's toes. Emma finds a fight, but might want to get out. So much damage done to Na'Vi in the early stages of this one. Yeah, walking wonky. Emma and JL barely hanging on as mid is taken. They surge towards that position. Smoke's already landing towards Temple. What's the reaction? What's the go? They are moving rapidly into bits, yeah, don't they? Coming, it's been completely caught off. Okay. Save? Bizarre. How are you meant to get back into this with two players with a combined HP of 49? Emma and JL, there's no way they can voice any concerns. And that happened so quick. I said they were coming, they were there. Yeah, what do you think it, it was just a case of, of a mis miscommunication in the sense that maybe it, what, maybe JL didn't emphasize enough, like they could have mid. Maybe it was more of an offhand, I'm, I'm rotating off mid, no info mid, I don't know, because Bit was so surprised to see so many. Well, uh, like, yeah, I, I'm not sure. That's That has to be a miscom, right, right, for him not to be aware of that. Or maybe it was communicated, but you know, sometimes you have to take a bit of a gamble. Yeah, you're not expecting them to just not stop. They did not. I think the fact that it happens in the fashion it did and they get to hold on to four rifles is quite key. So uh, there will be a drop from 
wonderful made available. So they should have more than enough of the finances, Navi, to have out a full buy. And we have two rounds remaining within this first half. And the timeout has just been called, I believe, from Eternal Fire. I thought I saw the T symbol. And there it is. Eternal Fire. Significant success in terms, in terms of getting into these bomb sites. The amount of round, every single round they've won is by the uh, detonation. And even three retakes successful from Navi. So they're getting into the sites. It is interesting the coach is taking this because it feels like things are going quite well in the last batch. It's now two in a row. Yeah. You know, Madger, if he's feeling his streak, feeling his stride, but definitely a converse to be had and a nod from Madger. So whatever the coach has steadied them with. We'll see if they can run with it and grab seven before we head into the halftime break. Yeah, Madger stuck with that Mac 10. See if he can generate any space with Cardia, the impact player of the round. Haven't said too much of his name, actually. Just three frags in this uh, must-win map. And on the T side, where we typically see him do some of his best work. Zantares, the same. Kept humble. The off starting A, and they've actually opted to boost on, on Fountain to see if anyone's going to take that space. And the thing is... Nobody is. So if they both just hang around lingering, and while well, that flash from Madger now just being in towards main, it, they're well aware that the control hasn't been taken just yet. Oh, it's drawn again. So th this is just Emma on the site. Alexi's just on deep temple to help clear out middle. Alongside of JL, he'll be poking in from camera bits here as well. So they want to get some information, but it might be too little too late. As they clear middle, the fight is heading towards B. Yeah, and what's Emma supposed to do with this? At least it's retake. Yeah, a 5v5 retake at this uh, stage. I say that, Alexi B. He's been spotted out on Temple. He's having one of those games, seven assists. Well, we all know how that feels. Certainly not what you want in your third map of an elimination match in Katowice. Dale on the flank, he was being held, but he's just confirmed three bodies outside main. Still no smoke, but Bit's got ahead. Takes down Madger, Kalix is coming to try and nullify him. Now that's oh. a dink exchange. The Galil just body shots him down. Oh, and Zantares was full blind on that, just controlled his spray masterfully. They're actually defusing! Alexi B holding it down despite all the frags of distraction. That's unbelievable. Ah, uh, sorry, what? Yeah, uh, what? That's exactly what Eternal Fire are going to do. How has that happened? That's an oversight. That's unbelievable. Uh, maybe he, he started it as the, they were flashed. They didn't hear it. Bodyguarded. Spray transfer. What? He's just pulled off daylight robbery. That is. How on earth has he gotten away with that? Well, we've been talking about the way they like to pay these post plants. They're meant to all be able to swing and take the fights. It felt like Bit threw his life away for nothing. Emma bodyguarded one. There was a flash in play. That's six for Na'Vi. Yeah, no, I mean, you, you said it. Daylight robbery. That's thievery from Alexi B. And his defuse kit. Who needs kills when you can win rounds with a defuse? And now it's Emma making moves. Cuts down Majo with an aggressive maneuver. I love that combo. You notice how it only disperses that left-hand side of the smoke so he can go for that type of a swing. He was using it yesterday as well. Really cheeky. Oh, and these last two combination rounds. That's amazing from Wicardia. Was that full 30 bullets before he started to find Alexi? Alexi may only have one kill for the half, but... Uh... The fact that he stole away six to at least guarantee that for Navi is huge. And these flanks from JL, you know, we just saw it in the previous, but he's, it seems like he's kind of been reinvigorated. He's kind of suff, sussed it out, solved what's needed from him from mid. Keep the pressure onto these B commitments like this. Oh, nearly missed up on Watsik. And Kalix from the dark position has lost all of his teammates. Imet dancing around the site to convert Navi. They lead with seven, a two round discrepancy. One of these teams going home at the end of our next half.
in business and Alexi B, one half of Counter-Strike with one kill but one defuse that could shatter the hopes and dreams of a Turkish team in the Spodek. You can see what it's done, the camaraderie, the mojo, it flows in one direction right now. Na'Vi, they are in it to win it. A game for survival and then one game away from the playoffs of Canavita 2024. This is the Intel Extreme Masters, anything can happen. And right now, Eternal Fire need a pistol. They need a conversion. Doubted by the bookies, and it's up to them. Wonderful work on a P250 and a whole lot of util. Look at all this on the floor. A molly for good measure. You'd feel a seven rounds on the CT side should be more than enough for Na'Vi to be able to close things down. This is a map where they traditionally feel quite comfortable on, and that streak broken yesterday. A five on the trot. Well, there's a little blip on the radar now. Looks like a more confident team today. Hey, interesting camera molly and a quick headshot to walk to. You're not repeeking that. So heaven's clear. You're up. Bits already onto the side with JL as well. Now you layer on a smoke. And it's Ime that strikes. And Taris, just as he averts his gaze towards the fight, JL keeping heaven on lock. They got three, make it four players fighting for heaven. It's just a drive by. Beautiful. It's destructive and helpless, our eternal fire. Now they won the pistol in the first half, their first pistol of the series. That's going to be. Five in favor of Na'Vi across the three maps as Kalix will be felled by Bit, and that is beautiful stuff. All five staying alive, not a single point of damage done. That armor going to be upgraded with ease into head armor. Oof. You get the AKs out. You don't need to worry about too many MAC-10s, and this is a beautiful lurk from Immer. Just coming through mid is the opening incision. They're already in the site, so things just get worse. And that's great. That tells me that type of round communication is flowing. They swing heaven together. The two of them, they're taking the fights. The execute works perfectly. And Eternal Fire, traditionally fantastic with these second round force buys, are opting for a full eco. This game has gotten away from them. They yeah. played good Counter-Strike. They did. They really have. I mean, look at this second round buy for Na'Vi. They do, they've nearly got full nades and full AK. Yeah. Brutal. That's why, you know, it's the little things, not having to invest in the head armor if they're just going to lock things down as they push out main. Bit falls, sure. He should be the only one. Alexi, get over here. We got a rifle. Hold up. Oh, Kalex. <laughs> he did some significant damage. Bloody hell. 
Thankfully, Wonderful was there. I mean, he... I wonder how he even got his hands on it. He's quickly made the move while Wonderful was covering that off. So a little bit of damage considering the full eco. Yeah, not too shabby. We might be seeing the swan song of Eternal Fire quickly if they can't get this first gun round under their belt. Which is where Alexi B starts licking his lips, right? You've got to be excited as an IGL knowing that if you make this right call, if your team plays it right, you are on your way to that final best of three required. Smoke lands dark, default spread. Not necessarily entirely default. JL working dark and wonderful right behind him. We saw from that little uh, snippet with Snappy talking about Navi T sub in this map that they want to fight for that main control. So exchanging utility across the map, pressure to Zantaras, we'll have to respect it. Oh, he's working with Lexi, he's proactively pushing. And oh, he hears a rotation off. He heard Zantara stampeding through the temple position. Maybe a timing available for him for a pincer into the A defense. Waxik and Makadia have done this before. We've seen them defend Anubis two versus five. Yeah, but didn't Waxik have an AWP when he did that? That's right. Just the rifle this time. And he's got nades in his hands. Throws that out. Alexi, be aware. Starts to unload his magazine. Pressure from every front, every angle. They're left with just the one. And this already bleak for Eternal Fire. Yeah, beautiful in the lurk again from Imer catching Zantara's. And this round is done and dusted. Just Magi. And look where he is. T-Spawn. The wrong side of the map. May as well just be holding on to this one. 10. The double digits for Na'Vi. And it was beautiful. As soon as Alexi comes through, he's already bought the attention. It means they can't both be focused over towards that A push. The flashes come in. They separate the defense. They have the mid lurk. Picture perfect from Na'Vi. Looking right at home here on Anubis. Like, yeah, you, you watch that one back. You try and find counterplay and it was just... There's nothing for you there. Those two players hadn't stood no chance. There was no opportunity. That's just team Counter-Strike from Na'Vi. And exploiting that little bit of a sound cue, you know, knowing that the mid player had kind of rotated off, you could assume, unless there was some funny business afoot, that you had a bit of a room to maneuver for Alexi. The smallest things in Counter-Strike can have the biggest ramifications. You know, like a defuse. Yeah, and that one, I still can't believe that happened. I have to check it back because I didn't even have any focus on it. There's no way. How are they going to be able to defuse the bomb with so many bodies for Eternal Fire outside ready to turn that into a shooting gallery? Oh, and that. just as we were heading into halftime when the cameras were on them, they were face palming. They were done. They were dusted. And now they look like they are more than on the ropes. Eternal Fire falling apart at the absolute worst time. But a round like this, you win a round that you have no right to, that can be somewhat of a... Ooh. Motivation. They have lost Zantares. He's forced to watch now as his teammates try and defend this side. There's multiple bodies there. Kalix run down by JL. Confidence now just surging through the veins of Na'Vi, having to push flames into fight and taking them all. It was the strongest weapon, the save rifle of Magic that was gambled over towards A. The lighter upgrade stacked B out of position once more and again, becoming extremely familiar with the spawn of the opposition. Gosh, yeah, Magic's having no fun these last two rounds, just not feeling like he can contribute. There's nothing more frustrating. And again, Alexi still only has one kill, Alex. Just one kill. <laughs> There's going to be a story written about this. The tale of one kill and one defuse by Alexi B. And you know what he just did? He did just, first you go A, then you go B. What happens next? We're all waiting to find out. Yeah, it's, it does feel like they've just lost their grip again. This third map, you know, they're reliving the potential of these two zeros they've had in front of them. Close games, you can see the recap there. Na'Vi were in full control of map two, though. Yeah, and in full control of map three, so the momentum shift once we made it to Mirage. A little bit of a later stack made towards B main. Woxic. Does he have an AWP? He does. And he's gotten away with the first. Mission accomplished. Yeah, they respect the smoke. So darting back immediately, have drawn that out. Boosting up and over mid. Might be able to catch Zantares looking, and they have done. They had the number advantage, but Zantares still looking for a fight. He finds one that's not favorable. Oh, that's going to be another horrible one for Zantares to stomach. 
as the advantage squandered. And Kalix goes trying to make a play. Not blind was him. That still controls the spray. He could have another one here. Tagged up Magic just spamming smokes. Magic's gonna walk on this. No flash, but he's not ready. Ima and not expecting this reaggression. Wonderful at least trade, so that's still a 3v2. Alexi flanking Wicardia. He's screwed. Yeah, in the corner. It's gonna be cleared. Is this Alexi B's second frag? Maybe not. Dinked up. They're pushing him. Wicardia is in so much trouble. And Alexi B will be kept on one. The round, however, goes Navi's way. Wogsik thrown into a 1v2. What can you do? What can you do? Two bullets, two opponents, and a 10 second defuse ahead of him. It seems certain that a 12th is imminent. Jail on jail, though. Oh, and it's held. Nails the shot, and a single round now for Navi to knock out Eternal Fire. Full control for Navi. They found themselves right when they needed to. Yesterday, the win against Apex, they got it done with individuals misfiring. But now those individuals are performing at quite the pace. Wonderful with 19. Emma has been activated. Got himself 15 kills, impactful ones. 19 kills for JL, bit on 14. And that share has been made available as we look at the bleak realization that things are done for Eternal Fire here at IEM Katowice. Yeah, taking down Falcons to start off this group stage. Phase too much. But only too much. It was overtime in the first two maps. That's the 2-0 they were probably going to be thinking about. And that was for the Spodek. Yeah. That was to be on the stage. That was to be playing in front of thousands of fans. And now they're just one round away from packing their bag, getting on that plane, and going home with their frustrations that what could have been. Yeah, and just the muck they're in right now, mentally. All of that rattling around your skull at the same time as you're trying to play Counter-Strike. It's not possible, it's not feasible. Pressure applied to the A side of the map once again. It's Wicardia goes trying to swing through. The frags are coming and it seems certain that Na'Vi will have one more best of three between them and this lower bracket run to the Spodek. The Falcons are waiting in the wings. Oh, and now Falcons started to take flight, taking down complexity. Another lengthy series, but more practice for this newly formed roster as it's just two more kills for Na'Vi. Matches him some shots, but so is Alexi as his third frag is secured, and it's Na'Vi. They will meet Falcons for the spot, the last spot that Group A provides to the Spodek. A lower bracket run, first Apex, then Eternal Fire, and now Falcons stand between them yep. and the glory of a playoff spot at Intel Extreme Masters, Canavica. Ah, they just have nothing to their name. Nothing to their name in this second half of play. It's just a clean sweep. Na'Vi with a masterclass on their T side. And it was that ever since the defuse, they didn't pick up another round. At oh. one point, the half could have been theirs. Eternal Fire showing a good brand of Counter-Strike. This is a great mixture of players. Ifs and buts, though, it doesn't go a very long way. You either get the Ws or you don't. And today, Na'Vi are the victors. That mental sludge that they were yeah. in, the lack of confidence, seems to have been lifted, performing much better. Still have some issues as far as missing utility is to go, but they get a night to prepare. Tomorrow, they do battle once more. And it's the biggest game so far. Turkey's got some real talented players. You know, ever since the Space Soldiers, there was a void in Counter-Strike, and we've got them. Internal fire. Madge has got the right pieces. Uh, you know, analysts like to watch this game. Evolving for Eternal Fire, they're making deeper runs and the playoffs, as you highlighted, were right at their fingertips in some of the bouts they've had. FaZe Clan taking them down, sending them to the lowers, and they do not survive. They do not survive the cutthroat lower bracket. Banks is standing by with the victors. It's Na'Vi. Na'Vi do live to fight another day, and it was a, a little bit close, at least in the first map, and they could have been a two of your way, mate. Both pistols, and you still couldn't close out Nuke. Did that one hurt a bit, or are you still happy? Of course happy. I mean, <laughs> a win is a win. I'm super happy. I mean, I started the game with low energy. I didn't want to tell the boys, but you, yeah. You I, I felt a little under the weather. I didn't want to tell anyone. So I didn't want to manifest it. But yeah, it was a tough game for me, at least. And uh, I'm proud of the boys. They played good. The vibe was fun. Even though we lost first map, we came refocused on the second one and we got the job done. And this is the thing, right? Looking at Mirage, it looked like it was always in your hands. There was a bit of a, a small few round comeback from them the whole way there. And then here on Anubis, you looked very much untested. You just knew you had it in the bag from that point? 
I mean, if Navi get seven rounds on CT and Ubis. <laughs> Oi, how can you not feel confident? We won games with three rounds, with four rounds, and... Uh. Now, there was a moment where we saw your mouse uh, might have not been fully charged. Yes, that tilted me as well. What, 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 I felt so stupid. <laughs> I, I, I felt like I charged it under, uh, like, over the night, but I think what uh, didn't help me charge the mouse was I turned off the PC uh, oh. as a habit, so... I mean, my old PC would charge it during the night, this one didn't, and I felt like shit in that new game because uh, yeah, I should have called not live, I thought it was going to be faster, I couldn't find a fucking cable, sorry for the... But yeah, I... Uh, so is that why you had the timeout, to give you some extra charge time? Like, you, just, you all sat and spawned for a whole round and you just waiting? Uh, yeah, and yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I was saying my bad boys, uh, uh, whatever, you know, shit happens, let's move on. We didn't move on, we moved on to Mirage. <laughs> But we got the job done. You did get the job done, but the job's not done yet if you want to get yourselves into the arena. And you'll be facing Falcons next on that one. What did you see as a tougher opponent, though, in your mindset? This EF you just faced or going up against Falcons tomorrow? I mean, EF is a dangerous team, and I feel like they're the better team than the current Falcons. So we play the grand final right here and there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, let's see how it happens against Falcons. I've been talking shit all tournament, sucking uh, on server, so... Let's have an interesting match. Talk shit, try not to get banged. I think that's the key one. Let's get ourselves back to the desk. Hey, uh, everybody. It's Trace. I just got something thrown to me from the Navi camp. It is a moon ball, whatever that is all. Is it a wireless mouse charger? Uh, no, but they're looking for those still around there, apparently. Anyway, yeah, so Navi do it. Uh, they outlast the storm here, the eternal firestorm. Uh, and then we obviously kind of have to say goodbye to them in the same right. Indeed, uh, not unlike JL's mouse, Navi kept their batteries for that third map. Uh, we saw them, a little bit of resistance. Oh, Jesus Christ, just balls on your business. around over here. Watch, watch uh, your this, balls. This was, the, this was the Navi that I expected on map three. Uh, obviously, the defuse is going to be a talking point. I actually don't think it played any role. I think Navi was superior, as demonstrated by the CT side. JL is on the money. When they get so many there on the T side, it's always going to be a relatively easy road and they deservedly stay alive in the lower back. I respectfully disagree, Trace. I oh, think, boy. I think it played a significant role because on the mental side of things, on the psychological side of things, I think for Eternal Fire, if they win that round, Navi doesn't have a great buy for last. It's 7-5 for them. Yeah, but that's enough for me. Navi wins anywhere. Yeah, but I think, you know, they, I think it hurt them a lot more in the manner in which they lost it compared to how much they would have gained by Fair winning enough. it. I think, you know, we were talking about Eternal Fire and their stamina coming into three map series, right? Yesterday, tough one against FaZe today. And I think that was sort of the final nail in the coffin, right? I think the next step for this Eternal Fire team has to be dealing with frustration and managing their emotions and energy a little bit better than they've been doing uh, here in Katowice. I fully agree. And that's usually the issue, right? With the fiery rosters, no pun intended, where, you know, frustration can also amount a little bit. And I think it's no surprise to see both IGL struggling so much on that third map that's because the amount of energy they're using just mentally as well uh, but on the side of Alexby he had a whole lot of people around him to mm -hmm. step up and help him go through because I mean he was in the backpack he had a good time you know one yeah, three kills so I, bro and they won easily just had a good time hell yeah <laughs> that's been nice do you know how it is hell man? yeah no I mean that's how you win as well Trace sometimes I get some frags but sometimes I just might as well DC from the game but we're not going to do that just yet what we should do is kind of get back into the game a little bit look at the technicalities here yeah, let's relive it for all do our it. Eternal Fire fans, right? I mean, top to four before post plant, right? They even get a kill on JL here on the Lurk. Bomb is planted for uh, This flash is the MVP, right? I'm not sure exactly who threw it because I think that masked the sound of the diffuse yeah. potentially for the players, right? And the guy who peeks, he sees it, he dies, and then we, they can't spray transfer quickly enough. Alexi B gets it, and Navi steals around, and Eternal Fire doesn't win around ever since. Obviously heartbreaking. Also, I uh, tell as well, all of these post plan situations from EF on the B side, they, they played it very passively. They didn't have a whole lot of territory. That's the second or maybe even third time they played all back from main. And I mean, it's one thing to know where the bomb is planted, you can play with the smokes and all, yeah. but that's the kind of risk you expose yourself to as well. You allow the CTs to have all of that space when they're retaking and sort of constrict you. But I agree, the flash, MVP flash, man asking the defuse, and from that moment on, is just uh, finito. Finito, finished. Well, almost, at least. Or Lamy. <laughs> please, guys, please, just, just hold on, just one second. Uh, in doing so, I'm talking about the US Air Force Aim High MVP. Uh, in having that, who we got here? Wonderful. That's right, he had a hell of a series. 
yeah, he continues to deliver uh, relatively good Counter-Strike. I, I made a tweet out there, I think he's pretty underrated as a player. He doesn't get a whole lot of praises and uh, light and spotlight, and I think he contributes a lot. I think his rifling skills, his hybrid skills are pretty underrated as well. That was a strong series from him too. Here we see him being dominant with the AWP, uh, posting mostly towards middle or towards the A side, blocking the few splits that Eternal Fire were trying to throw at him, and then as well changing his position. Uh, good performance again from Wonderful. I love how when Mania gives even a backhanded compliment, it it's sounds not. so great. He plays does. Oh, relatively good Counter Strike, Dead. right? <laughs> Just you know. But what was funny to me, I'm looking at the stats for the series, right? You will see here 57 32 right 7 0 in open duels 15 multi kills so much impact coming in from wonderful and yeah he seems to be coming into his own with this navi squad which is a cool thing to watch relatively it is you know hey, i wish to amend my previous statement and re okay. remove the relatively i yeah. think maybe that wasn't really appropriate <laughs> he played a really good game on counter strike so you're not going to stand behind those words i mean i can always you can always do a one remix uh, yeah. It. After that, the mixtape is out. Yeah, you know what? Just hit the rewind button. No one's ever going to, they're never going to know, you know? I know. <laughs> I don't think he knows. Uh, we are going to be waiting just to hear from Eternal Fire here in just a few seconds. Obviously saying goodbye to them. It is cool that, I mean, we're talking about Wonderful being a cool story and seeing him come to light, but it is very cool to see these guys back in the server. Uh, yeah, it's really tough for them, right? Because they, they open up by beating Falcons. They are so close to beating Phase 2-0 even, right? Yes, that first map absolutely. went into overtime. They lost it in OT. They had a great opportunity at match point, actually, in regulation to close it out. And, you know, then you face up against Na'Vi. You're 1-0 up. But the next two maps, you fall completely flat, right? The bad stars, the, the lost pistols, all of that accumulates itself. And it is disappointing the way it ended, but I think they've I definitely shown signs of promise and a lot to learn from uh, here at Katowice. I agree. I think it justifies quite a lot of hype around this roster, and I'll be looking forward to seeing them again at whatever event that is. I, I do think from a mental perspective, I think uh, Major, who's currently answering a few questions from James William from that uh, quickly, I think he has to do a whole lot of micromanaging throughout and the more independent his players would become throughout the game, I think the more stamina they would have as well. Because I think the level of management he needs to do throughout these games is probably a, a lot. He's got a ton of experience, brick ton of experience compared to the rest of the roster, Bars and Tares, but still, uh, I think they would gain by having a little bit more open play style, bit more of the players. And so maybe, just maybe, at 11 o'clock, it would have looked slightly better. Yeah. I have but a watch too. <laughs> yeah, I guess we're all just kind of, it's weird flex, yeah. guys. I'm going to be honest, weird flex know, for like, all of us. What are we doing here, you know? Like, <laughs> you know <laughs> Spider-Man <laughs> meme up here? Not quite. That is not a bad idea. Surely there's a content piece about that to be had. But yeah, again, we are waiting to hear from Eternal Fire. That should be coming up. How about, how about right now? Let's hear from him. Eternal Fire have proved to be a team that have won the hearts of many and have fought hard in every single game. Madja, I want to start on the positives of this fight. I know you're gone, but let's look at that nuke. For example, you lose both pistols, you still fight back the whole way, you still manage to take down Na'Vi, it starts off really well, but then we go on to this Mirage, and it looked like they were just a step ahead of you. Did you feel that way? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, like, uh, what can I say? Uh, first of all, uh, yeah, I'm really sad about our performance tonight. Uh, I don't have any excuse. Yeah, on Nuke, we lose both pistols. On Mirage, also, we lose both pistols. Uh, it didn't help. On Nuke, we did a good fight, yeah. to be honest, uh, because we are behind on T side. Uh, we are behind. But, uh, like, I don't know. I didn't feel uh, like my team was in a good day today because the energy was a little low. Mm -hmm. Uh, we did our best. I believe my, my teammate did our best, but uh, I don't know. Playing <laughs> playing night didn't help us a lot. Like I think uh, we lack of energy on two maps. But of course, this is not an excuse. Like uh, we show good sales, but today tonight we didn't show good sales. I'm very upset about this, and uh, I want to say something in Turkish, maybe. Uh, I'll let you at the end. I still got some more questions for you in English, but I'll definitely let you say it for that. I want to touch on the last map as well, because it kind of felt similar to what we saw in the phase game, that you guys on the third map didn't come in in the same energy, didn't come in the same way. Obviously, you said you're tired, but is there anything you, you would notice where you think the nerves maybe got to some of the players? I know some of you are very experienced, but obviously not all of you. Uh, I don't think it's about nerve, but I think uh, they play they play good. They play good CS. Uh, we didn't show like on on Anubis T side. We try to fight. Uh, it should be better because we have better T side normally. Mm -hmm. But today we just win five rounds. 
with the pistol, uh, so it's not so good for me. Yeah. But on City, we didn't fight on Mirage, we didn't fight on Anubis. Uh, the City side was really problematic today. We was a uh, very low reaction, uh, like uh, a little sleepy, to be honest. And I'm sad because it was an important match. Yesterday we did a good showing against FaZe. Today, like my team, I believe my team was able to beat Navi today. Uh, we, we, we are able to beat Navi, but tonight we didn't show, unfortunately. But overall, if we look at this, right, from the play-ins, beating BB in a convincing fashion, 2 0 in Rebels, then getting the 2 0 onto Falcons, which was huge, fighting really well against FaZe, then this game against Na'Vi. What would you like to describe your Katowice experience and, and just the progress your team has made in general? I think up and down all my career like was like this. All Turkish team up and down, we can show very good CS and then we can one day like showing bad CS, but we're trying out, we're working hard, to be honest. Uh, I spend a lot of hours working, watching demos, uh, all my teammates working out. Uh, yeah, of course, we are upset, but I say to my teammate after the game, like, just, uh, I don't know how to say, chill, chill, chill up. Yeah. Uh, I'm proud of you. We did good. Uh, yeah, this is a tournament, but there is a major in a few days. This is important. Major is really important. This tournament also is important, but yeah, we need to just watch the demos, watch the mistake, why City Side was so horrible today, and that's all. You live and learn through it all. Yeah, try fix it all, try and get through it. What do you want to... Never give up, like even if you fall down, you need to... 100% yeah, I agree with you. So what do you want to say to the Turkish fans out there, all the guys who've been giving you love and support? Yeah, generally I didn't speak a lot of Turkish, but I will say maybe I trust it in English after. Beyler, yani, gerçekten her zamanki gibi <gülüyor> son son çarede üzüyoruz size ee, çok üzgünüz ee, gerçekten çok hissediyorduk dün falan yani bugün de ama yani demek ki bir kader var olmadı ama çalışmaya devam yani ben pes etmeyeceğim sizin desteklerinizle pes etmeyin size seviyorum ee, desteklerinizi buradan hissedebildik dünden ve bu akşam için kusura bakmayın ee, yani inşallah bir gün olacak sözüm olsun Ceren e, çocuklarımızı öp seni de çok seviyorum özledim. Thank you very much to Major and Eternal Fire. They put up a good fight and I look forward to seeing them at future tournaments. Yeah, and you know, it is uh, the end of the run here for Eternal Fire. Yeah, we are going to be uh, sending them off as they are eliminated today. And again, we you know we spoke their praises. We talked a little bit about what we've seen in the server. We've seen these guys in the server for, for years in some rights and in some ways. Uh, but for them, it didn't just work out here. No, I think uh, Majors talked about it through and through, the lack of energy today. Um, mm -hmm. A little bit frustrated, maybe that he feels they didn't show up their best Counter Strike. I, I tend to agree. I think I would hope it is a learning experience for this Eternal Fire. Same, but uh, as as well as you're gonna learn today, so am I. How about that? Gonna learn today? Yeah, let's learn, guys. Brackets. I'm down with that. Uh, let's try to get our get our head in the game and understand who is still alive in Katowice. It's very simple. You just have to basically Thank you. to the right side, the <laughs> right hand side. <laughs> so basically what's happening here is Falcons and Navi are still alive, Chase. It's on the right side. Oh my god, you're right. Wow. So on the right side, face well, clan. Well, I'll help you out, Trace. We lost complexity today to Team Falcons. Okay, there we go. NA is out. Complexity haven't lived up to the hype ever since IEM Sydney. Also, we just saw Eternal Fire drop to Navi. That sets us up for Falcons versus Navi for that last spot in the spot that can group A. And we also have face clan Team Spirit playing tomorrow for a spot straight in the semis. I'm really looking forward to that Spirit challenged by face clan. Yeah, group B for we bop bop bottle boat. B bop bop. Yeah, but I <laughs> that, that's what's happening. <laughs> Cloud9, <laughs> of course, fell. Unfortunately, to oh. Monty, I couldn't follow that series, but apparently it was a little bit of a blockbuster as well, which sets us up for two matchups in the lower bracket, Gamer Legion versus Heroic and G2 versus Monty, the winners of which will face once again to find that sixth spot in Spodek, whereas Enz and Maus will fight for semi-final or quarter-final berth trace. And Enz from the play-ins to the Spodek, right? Uh, Wild. And Cloud9, they were one second away mm. from winning their opening game against Maus. Instead, they no. lose. Then they go to the lower bracket, lose to Monty, and knocked out in last place. Ooh, G2 versus Monty lower bracket. The FaZe Clan versus Spirit. Now, that is... that is. I know... Somebody has to lose there. So, I mean, is Dong's gonna lose? Is FaZe gonna lose? Probably. The viewers are gonna win, though. Yeah, absolutely. That's the uh, the middle of the pack game there for the A stream. That is Phase Spirit. Now we're excited to see how they square up against each other. Yes, 
This is Gamer Legion taking on Heroic to start the day off over on the B stream. And you know, why don't we just skip on down that end's mouse game? Why don't we do that? I mean, that's all right, but also just to clarify, the final game on the A stream will be the winner of Gamer Legion Heroic versus uh -huh. the winner of Monty G2, and that's going to be for the last spot in the spot deck. Which is a wild timeline. We're it almost is. there, guys. It is, we're getting there. Talking about Absolutely. stamina, we'll see who has it tomorrow. These teams will You're have right. to play, the team that qualifies will have to play two games tomorrow in the same day, two best of three, so who will that benefit? I think Monty. Hmm. Interesting. They used to play 100 maps a day or something. <laughs> That's actually a reasonable number. Let's check out. Not many people. In fact, if you are playing 100 maps of Counter-Strike on any given day... Of, I salute you. I have to salute you, but also I need to worry about you at the same time. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching the Extreme Masters. We're coming to a head here in the group stage, so obviously we're going to come right back here in Katowice tomorrow and round this whole thing out. In the meantime, the in-between time, we hope that you have bookmarked this and used your hashtag IEM to let us know how you're watching. We're going to go to bed. And uh, on that note, I think that does it for the broadcast. Also, shout out to my friend Keegan at home. Good luck, bud. This ain't new to me Since the age of 22 I've been using it Like it's fuel to level up Like it's champagne in my cup Like there's nothing interrupting my pursuit of dreams There's a vision in my mind It's consuming me Take my confidence combined with opportunity Mix it up with unity Soon to be the greatest of my generation Operation Victory Fight or fly We will stay Through the perils we dare not to stray Spark the match, light the flame Out of luck, out of sight, dangerous Dynamite Dynamite! Set it fire to the clouds at the speed of light Going up, I call it down, screaming We are, we are Superman's kryptonite We are, we are Blowing up dynamite Dynamite! Lonely nights, a lot of tears, a lot of fights Big dreams met with bigger lies It ain't what it seems from the outside My downfall they pray, will I surrender or will I betray Given the trauma that lives in my brain Or use it to fuel up the fire in my veins I never complain, I boss up and do it If there's a battle, I'll fight my way through it If the wind blows, I thank God that he blew it Cause what is a blessing depends on you view it The fruits of my labor are in abundance Indispensable, I'm not redundant Incomprehensible, the way I've done it When the struggle pushes me out, I'll shove it I'll rise above it Fight or fly, we will stay Through the perils we dare not to stray Spark the match, light the flame Out of luck, out of sight, dangerous Dynamite Dynamite! Set it fire to the clouds at the speed of light Going up, I'm coming down, screaming We are, we are Superman's kryptonite We are, we are Blowing up dynamite Dynamite!
Welcome, my friends, to the Cathedral of Counter-Strike! Elevated level on our way to the top, headed to the peak. All them boys want to talk, hit them on the wall, but don't got receipts. Same place there, simple, just jumping casually into the side. Wait, 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 what, 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 what was that? Never miss a play again. Simple, it's not allowed. This is not FPL. This is a major. Finally. With Face It Watch, you're in control. Switch between player POVs live and see the game through the eyes of any pro. Never miss a moment with replays. Relive each highlight on demand from all angles. Watch it, control it, face it. Girl, you stay on my mind 